to all welcome to part 1 of hybrid test ng framework using page object model page factory and also it includes extend reports and lot of other stuff okay so this hybrid test ng framework is a combination of data driven framework okay we are going to include data driven framework in this test ng framework and along with the page object model and page factory design patterns we are going to implement and also we are going to include the other stuff like extend reports and whatever that is needed okay so uh, with maven project we are going to create the project okay we are going to create a industry level framework guys okay whatever the framework that we generally use in our companies right that framework we are going to create you see in this hybrid framework we can also include keyword driven framework but it's not a good idea because in real time okay 99% 99.9% we don't use keyword driven anywhere okay nowadays whatever the projects we are taking up and all those stuff right keyword driven is not part of them only data driven and this page object model page factory and other stuff okay other stuff like test ng related stuff and uh, extend reports poi api all those stuff will be there okay we'll create a beautiful framework guys by the end of this uh, uh, series okay for now it is only for now it is only part 1 guys okay for now it is only part 1 in multiple parts i am going to cover so fine so fine guys uh, and also i am going to use the latest version of selenium in this uh, in creating this hybrid test ng framework okay so i am going to use selenium 4 as per this uh, time date and time i am working on that is 30th november 2022 i have this selenium latest version okay i'll be using the selenium 4 latest version uh, as part of this series okay so let's get started first i need to launch eclipse id guys first what i have to i have to launch eclipse id so hoping that java is already installed in your machine the latest lts version of java need to be installed guys so if you don't know what is lts lts means long term support so here search for java versions you will get an article from wikipedia okay in the search results just click on that You see, as per today, like what is the latest LTS version? As you can see here, this is thirtieth November, fourteenth, fourteenth uh, September, twenty twenty one. This LTS version is there, and Java SC seventeen is the LTS version which has a support till twenty twenty nine and later. Okay, so that means uh, I I have this Java version seventeen, guys. I'll show you. I'll just type cmd, command prompt. I'll open and I'll I'll say Java hyphen version. You will see. the java version i have 17.0.5 is there whatever the latest version lts version you have 18 is also available but uh, uh, i am not going to go with 18 because it's not a lts version guys i have to wait for 21 21 is not in the market so i'm just going with 17 lts version okay for now that's enough guys okay so even if you go with 18 also there is no problem but i will stick to 17 guys okay i want to go with the lts version so i have the java already installed in my machine okay in the previous sessions also i covered how to install and configure java for selenium and all those stuff so hoping that you are following my previous sessions before directly coming to this session okay this is a lot of sessions i covered on this uh, selenium 4 guys okay selenium 4 full detail course playlist okay a uh, lot of uh, sessions are already covered and uh, hoping that you covered them and came here so that uh, you have the idea of java and all the other prereq sites before we get started so i clicked on eclipse id guys is asking me to select any workspace i'll just create a new workspace guys okay i'll just create a new workspace in my machine somewhere at pure fox folder new folder i'll just create something like hybrid framework right hybrid test ng framework this is okay hybrid test ng framework sorry yes small spelling mistake hybrid test ng framework okay select this folder and click on select folder now you see this is my workspace now okay hybrid test ng framework is my workspace uh, shall i give this space or not uh, i'm just guessing i can give space no problem but uh, let me not re let me remove the space guys okay but better this is better way of giving the folder name okay so hybrid test ng framework so uh, i i am also going to uh, create hybrid uh, test ng cucumber framework also in the upcoming sessions but for now this is hybrid test ng framework before we go to cucumber uh, let's stick to test ng for now okay only test ng i'll go 
I'll create a cucumber framework separately, guys. Hybrid cucumber framework. I'll create separately. This is hybrid SNG framework with page object model and page factory extent reports uh, and other stuff like PoA API and all those stuff, test engineer related stuff. Okay. Whatever that is feasible, I'll create here. Okay. In hybrid uh, cucumber uh, test ng page object model page factory. I'll create one, one more framework for that. Okay. So for now, I'll click on launch, guys. Uh, with that uh, uh, there, I'll click on launch. So guys, in this uh, in this sessions, guys, I'm going to go with the uh, problem and solution basis. Okay, I don't want to da start directly. So without understanding what is the use of uh, we doing some stuff. Okay, if I directly explain you that stuff like we have to do like this, like this, you'll not understand. So we'll create create a project from scratch in a normal as a normal person will create and we'll identify the problems or we'll look for a betterment of the project. And that's where the learning of framework will come. We'll, we'll keep the code becoming better, 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 like removing the hard coding and all those stuff, organizing the stuff. We'll first go with a natural way. And uh, obviously, we'll get some problems. From the problems, we'll build the framework. Okay, that's how my approach will be. And also, it's very, it will be very easy for the beginners, guys, okay, who are like uh, kind of reluctant to start creating the frameworks and all, right? This session is going to be very, Mm, apt for them because uh, you see in the industry who are is teaching frameworks right they directly start you have to create like this you have to uh, delete like this all the stuff but they don't explain you why this uh, situation is coming why we have to go like this in the framework okay that I'm going to cover in this session so this sessions will take time but ultimately you'll get benefited a lot. You'll understand a lot from this case, okay? The problem statement, if you don't know the problem statement directly, if you are implementing the solution without understanding the problem, that's not a good learning, I feel, okay? So I'll go with this approach of uh, showing you the problems first and later correcting the problems to improvise a framework or creating a better framework, okay? I launched Eclipse ID in the new workspace. Just now I selected while launching the Eclipse ID, I got this welcome screen, guys. I just close this welcome screen. I don't need this outline. I'll close this outline and I don't need this. Uh, okay. I'll just uh, minimize this one. Only this project explorer and this blank area I need. Okay. So what I will do next is uh, I'll create a Maven project. Okay. First thing that everyone does is they will create a Maven project side by side. Uh, I'm just thinking whether I have to create a mind map so that I can attach this mind map to the notes. Okay. At this moment, the notes doesn't have anything. Only practical demonstration is there. What I'm planning is after my demonstration is done, I would like to share you some notes, guys. Okay, I would like to share you some notes. Okay, I, I would like to update these notes and attach with the video. Okay, so that you guys can follow it properly. So what I'll do is I'll open the XMind, guys. I'll open the XMind. Uh, you don't need to open XMind. This is as training point of uh, perspective. I'm opening the XMind. You don't have to do anything in your machine, guys. Okay just to make the notes uh, and notes uh, possible for you. Okay, just to make the notes. I'm just taking this mind map side by side when I'm creating this stuff, uh, I'm just updating the mind map. Okay. So for now, uh, let's not let's uh, it will take some time guys. x -Mind will take some time to load. Meanwhile, I'll create a Maven project. First step is create a Maven project. How to create a Maven project? Just click on file guys, select new and select project. In this new project dialog, search for Maven. Just search for Maven, guys. Once you search for Maven, it will filter this Maven folder containing the Maven project. You need to select this Maven project and click on next button. Okay, we are creating a Maven project. Don't create the normal Java projects, guys. In real time, people use Maven projects. Okay, so this is a Maven project, guys. Looks like uh, this got launched. Let's see. It has given me a jerk. Okay, it's still, okay, it's launched, guys. Just give me a second. It's a one-time task. I'll say file new in this Xmind. And here, I'll just select this, uh, this format. And here, I'll select a template that I generally choose. And here, I'll give the central topic name. Let it load, guys. So okay, it's loading still. Okay, once this item comes, I'll write hybrid test ng framework okay hybrid test engine framework so i explained first of all i explained uh what is this uh framework include okay what does this what does 
this framework include it includes data driven framework okay i'm going to include data driven framework i'm going to implement page object model design pattern okay page object model design pattern i'm going to implement and page factory design pattern i'm going to implement two design patterns okay then what else is going to come next uh, extent reports by api by reading the data from the uh, Excel files and uh, don't worry if you don't know these terminologies, but I covered all this stuff in the previous sessions, guys. Okay, that's what I'm saying. Okay, you guys have to watch my previous sessions before coming here. The previous sessions of this series, you have to watch first. Don't directly jump onto this hybrid test engine framework. Okay, even including Java, you have to learn. Okay, a lot of knowledge of Java is also required. Py API, and uh, then we have now uh, what else, guys? Uh, properties, properties. Okay, Java properties, we are going to implement in this framework. All these are included and others. Okay, I'll simply say others guys, because the list will keep on going and this is not the right time for me to put all this item. If uh, if during the session, if I feel, uh, if during the session, if I feel uh, I have to add any items here, I'll add, okay? So first we started with uh, creating a Maven project, okay? Creating a Maven project. So we are creating now a Maven project, guys. Uh, I'll save this on my desktop so that will not uh, the data will not be lost. Save, done. Now we are creating a Maven project, guys. Here we are in the process. File new project and then selecting the Maven project. And here don't select this checkbox option, guys. Okay, I'm going to choose a template. I'm going to choose a template, or you can even select this checkbox option also. But uh, I prefer not choosing this checkbox field. Okay, so. I want to go with a template because it will make my job easy in creating the framework, okay? So instead of selecting create a simple project checkbox, I'll keep it unchecked and click on next button. So here, select an archetype, some, you, know, you see you will get some templates. Archetypes are not nothing but the Maven project template projects, okay? So here, I need to search for Maven, hyphen, archetype, hyphen, quick start, this template I want. Okay, Maven hyphen archetype hyphen quick start. Then I'll get these three items generally. So I'll go with the Apache one, Apache dot Maven archetypes, Maven archetype quick start. It is showing me 1.40, whatever the version that is your Eclipse ID is showing, that's fine, guys. But uh, here you have to go with Maven archetype quick start. There are three Maven archetype quick starts, but I uh, have to go with the Apache one. Okay, Apache. Click on next. Then you have to give the project name. In which field you have to enter the project name in the artifact ID field, you have to give the project name, guys. What is the project name that you want to give? So I would like to give a proper project name, guys. I would like to automate this application, guys. Okay. I would like to automate this application. Tutorials ninja.com slash demo application. This is a demo application I'm going to use for automating. As part of this, guys, I am going to uh, it looks like a live project only. Okay. This is a live project only. Okay. So I'm not uh, you know, right? Kind of. It will you'll get a feel of working on a live project now. Okay, so in this I'm going to give the project uh, project name as tutorials ninja. Okay, project or something or tutorials ninja project. Okay, so project means project only, right? Just give some name like this and here give some group ID TNP. Just give anything guys, anything unique that's enough. Okay, and here some default package name it's taking. Let it take. Okay, you don't have to change anything else. Just type, give the project name tutorials ninja project. Okay. Okay. Selenium project or whatever it is. Or if you don't want to give Selenium here, just say project that is also fine. And just give some short form of this uh, or any other thing that you want to give here as a group ID, some unique ID you have to give. Now click on finish. The moment you click on finish, you see the progress is going on and it struck at 33%. Okay. In general, Earlier, guys, this is not going to happen. Now, at the time when I'm recording this video, you see the progress is not going ahead. It's still 33%. It's not changing. Okay, with this Maven Archetype Quick Start template, right? It's stuck at 33% only. Okay, what I'll do is I'll just click on this option. Then I'll be able to see this uh, logs coming up. Okay. Just need to click on this option and I'll get these logs. Uh, let's go with this logs. After all these logs are completed, then only the, uh, you see it's asking you to enter Y, guys. Okay. Do you want to continue Y? Okay. Just press Y, guys. Okay. This may not be required for some people, guys. Okay. At the time when I am recording this video, when I am creating the Maven project with this Maven Architect, this kind of approach, maybe this is the latest thing that uh, Maven Architect 
quick start uh, template is asking you to do. If it's asking, do that, guys. Otherwise, not required. Once the build is success, you see, immediately the progress will be completed, guys. Okay. Don't wait for 33% uh, to be completed. You have to click and then just uh, enter Y there. Then only it will be completed. But uh, if this is not coming in the future versions, that's fine. Uh, the project is created. After the loading is completed, the project is successfully created, guys. Once the loading is done, the project is successfully created. Here, here this is a Maven Java project. You see, M and J are there. M stands for Maven and J, for, J stands for Java. It's not a normal Java project. It is a Maven Java project. Expand this project. By default, you are getting two source folders. These are the two source folders, SRC main Java, SRC test Java, two source folders you are getting. Inside this SRC main Java, you are getting a package name and a app.java. You don't need that. I'll delete this package name. When I delete this package name, automatically the file under this also will be deleted, guys. So just select delete and say, okay, this package name along with the file app dot, uh, app test dot java will be deleted. Just select delete. This also got deleted. Two source folders are there. Two source folders. And uh, what else we have? Then I deleted the packages and uh, app, uh, app, dot, app test dot java files under these two source folders along with the packages and all. Now, okay. That's fine for now. So we, we have to visit this form.xml file. We'll be, we'll be visiting that later. For now, we'll get started somewhere. So what I will do here is under SRC test Java, this is starting point, guys. Okay. This is starting point. I'll go with SRC test Java, SRC test Java source folder. Right click on the source folder, select new and create a package. I'll name this package as com dot tutorials application name. Okay, ninja dot QA dot test cases. Okay, I'll give the name as either you can give test or test cases, whatever you feel convenient. This is the package name I'm giving it. Okay, in real time, we give the packages name like this. So we'll reversely say tutorials ninja.com. Okay, instead of saying tutorials ninja.com, we'll say com dot tutorials ninja. So since it is a QA work, a QA dot test cases I'm writing. Okay. Uh, it's up to you. How do you want to give this? This is generally given real time. This, uh, whenever who is creating the framework set, generally create the packages like this. Okay. Click on finish. The package got created, guys. Under this test cases uh, package of this com tutorials ninja QA test cases package. Okay. Here com is a main package. Under the tutorials ninja is a sub package. Under that QA is a, another sub package. Under this sub package, a test case is a sub package like that. Okay. Now right click on this and select new and create a class. Let's say what test cases I want to automate, what test cases I want to automate. I'll show you one thing. So meanwhile, we'll update the notes also. We'll create the uh, Maven project with archetype. What is the archetype we have used? Maven, iPhone, quick start, uh, Maven, iPhone, archetype, archetype, iPhone, quick start. Okay. Then uh, after creating the project, what, what we have done? Uh, we have, I will not document each and everything. So only important stuff I'll document here, remaining you have to understand. Now, what I'm trying to do here is uh, I need to, so here I need to create the test cases. Okay. So for that, I already have created some test cases guys earlier. So in my library, they are, okay. So just give me a second. I'll open the test cases for you. So I'll give you the link in the here. Okay. Here I'll give you the link in the, I'll update the notes guys for you. Don't worry. So. I'll, I'll make everything proper for you, but, uh, let's, let me go here and uh, I'll just type for test cases, test cases. I have created a complete test cases for the entire application guys. Okay. So where are the test cases? Let me find them. So complete test cases are there with me with the results also, but uh, I'll go with the test cases for now. Complete test cases, test scenarios, test cases. Test execution, complete test cases with execution results are there. I'll copy this link and I'll go to my one of my browsers and uh, just enter here and I'll download the test cases. Okay. I'll just uh, put this link here somewhere here. Okay. Test cases, I'll say. Test cases. These are manual test cases, guys. Okay. These are manual test cases. Okay. So I'll click on the download button, guys. I'll click on the download button. The test cases will be downloaded. Okay. The test case will be downloaded. Show in folder. Okay. Edi enable editing. Enable editing. 
so these are the test cases guys that i already have created and i have provided the link here i'll i'll provide this link in the notes also later all these notes will be updated uh, into the into this notes guys okay i'll update this notes you will see a different notes at the end of the sessions okay so don't worry i'll put everything there test cases okay manual test cases are there i'll open the test cases i'll go to one of the test cases that is uh, let's go with the login test case for now i'll go with the login login type register also there but i'll start with login guys okay i'll start with login so that it will be easy for us to start with so i want to automate the test cases of this login how many test cases are there in this login for this application you see there are 23 to test cases okay for this particular application if i go to the login functionality here to test the login functionality i have created how many test cases 23 test cases I have created okay small and uh, high whatever the type of test cases are there right different test cases 23 are there so uh, i will not automate all the 23 for now but uh, to get started with the framework it will be deviating our framework part so what i'll do is uh, to get started with the framework i'll be choosing only few test cases okay out of this 23 as a sample i'll choose four to five test cases from this login functionality okay first test case let's automate the first test case guys verify logging into the application using valid credentials okay using valid credentials how so pre sites are open the application url in any supported browser login credentials for an existing account are required login credentials for an existing account are required okay so already you should have some valid credentials with you to test this uh, particular test case click on my account drop menu click on login option enter valid email address into the email address field enter valid password which is there here into the password field and click on the login button what should be the expected result expected result according to the test case user should be navigated to the login page okay and once uh, you should be navigated to the login page uh, as part of this one guys okay when you click on the login option after after uh, click on my account drop you after you select the login option in the my account drop down you should be taken to the expected result one is should be taken to the login page then once you enter the valid email and valid password and click on the login button then you should get logged in and taken to which page account account page okay account page these are the expected results let's automate this test case so to, uh, to automate the test case what i will do is already i have created the package here in the framework com dot tutorials ninja dot qa dot test cases i will right click on this click on next okay and create a class i'll just create a class case okay i'll just name this class as i'll just name this uh, class as login okay only login so login and click on finish okay so once i create this login class uh, i don't like the font okay so you see it's a very small right uh, whoever is watching my recording may not uh, understand this uh, the size is very less okay you cannot people cannot see they have to maximize the screen and all so what i will do is to overcome that problem i'll go to window and select this option known as preferences okay windows menu preferences and then i'll say general and i'll go to appearance and i'll expand the appearance i'll go to colors and fonts then i'll expand the basics scroll down under basics i'll select the text font click on edit i generally choose a number known as 18 guys size as 18 okay so you see in the preview it's showing say okay apply apply and close now the font size looks good okay hope you are able to see my screen now properly i'll just uh, unnecessarily this space okay i can increase the space of the view here okay so i created the login here i'm not going to create the main method anymore okay because i'm going to use test ng in this i'm going to use test ng in this so uh, i'm not going to create a uh, main method here instead i'm going to use a uh, test ng so in the previous sessions of this series i already covered test ng in detail okay with that knowledge you should be able to understand whatever the test ng i'm going to do it okay i'm not going to explain again uh, I'm expecting I'm expecting that uh, everyone should watch my test ng videos before coming here. Okay. So before doing anything here, guys, I'll go to the palm.xml file. Okay. In this Maven project, the heart of the Maven project is generally palm.xml file. Just open that palm.xml file, guys. Once you open the palm.xml file, here you will see something known as dependencies. Okay. Since you have you chosen that Maven archetype quick start. Uh, template right all these things are coming by default for you okay otherwise this many things will not come in the palm.xml file if you create the maven project with uh, the checkbox selected without selecting the template right you will not see all this stuff okay a lot of things are coming by default and we don't have to do much okay otherwise you have to add the things manually guys that is a very hectic process okay so what i'll do is already dependencies came by default guys i didn't add any of these dependencies i didn't add any of these dependencies and here there is a JUnit dependent uh, dependency which is added by default in this project okay along with the java library this project also came with the jinit library 
So what I will do is I don't want this JNIT guys because I'm going to go use the test engine in place of JNIT. Okay. I'll remove the JNIT dependency. Save this. So here I'll say remove uh, J unit dependency. Here I'll write automate automate uh, sample test cases of login functionality. Okay. Like this, I'll write, okay, remove JNA dependency. So here I uh, save this guys so, and uh, the li libraries, okay, will be gone. Now here inside this public class login, I will create a test engine test method. First I'll create a normal method guys, public wide. Okay, public wide. Uh, verify test case name. Let's say this is the test case I'm automating, right? Verify login into the application. Verify login with valid credentials. This is the first test case I want to create. A meaningful method name I'm giving, guys, okay? Which uh, uh, resonates with this uh, test case, okay? Verify login, login with valid credentials, okay? So like this one method I created, but this method is a normal method, guys. So what I want to do is I want to convert this normal method because I'm not going to use a main method anymore. Test ng I'm going to use as you already know in test ng in main method is not required, right? So I have to write an annotation here from test ng at the rate test annotation. Now hold the mouse on at the rate test and you see JNIT thing is coming. I, I don't want JNIT. I want to import this at the rate test annotation from test ng. But test ng is not configured in this project. This project, this project, by default comes only with the Java library and the JUnit library. I removed the JUnit library from the form.xml file. So for now only Java library is there. JRE system library is nothing but Java library. But I want to configure this project, not only uh, it by default it's coming with the Java library, but also I want to add testng library so that I can import this annotation. How to add the testng library? Again, open the form.xml file, go to the section under the project, go to the dependencies section inside the dependencies tags you need to add the dependency tags of test ng from where i can get the dependency tags of test ng for that open any browser guys open any browser so here type mbn repository dot com okay here i'll write uh, add test ng library to bomb dot xml file mbn repository repository.com okay mvn repository.com i'll just give the high level notes here anyhow i'm not going to write notes in detail but at a high level important notes once i go to mvn repository.com i'll search for test ng guys just type test ng and you'll get this uh test ng click on this and uh, take the latest version what is the latest version as of today the latest version is 7.6.1 Click on the 7.6.1, copy this Maven under the Maven tab, copy this. And uh, once you click it, it will be copied to clipboard guys. You don't have to do much. Just paste it here and organize it well. Just select this and press tab. It will be organized. Now, after I click on save all button here, the test engine libraries will be downloaded and you will, you will get something under JR system library, you'll get Maven dependencies. And under the Maven dependencies, uh, you will see the libraries of test engine and associated uh, jar files of that library you'll get okay save one you see here only jre system library is there after i said save one maven dependencies came under that test ng and it dependent library uh, jar file scheme okay test ng jar file and it uh, related jar file scheme now this project is now not only having the java library but also have the test ng library i'll go to the login.java hold the mouse on at the rate test now i'll get an import statement guys okay just hold the mouse on at the rate test not able to hover it so i'll just do one thing i'll just close and open once now i'll hover you see now i'm getting import test annotation from this package of test ng library select that that's it now this normal method has converted to a test case test ng test case you can say or test ng test method you can say okay test ng test, ng test method so once it is done uh now we'll be writing the code here, automation code, okay? To automate this particular test case, first we have to open the application URL and all those stuff, right? We'll auto we'll write in a normal way, guys, okay? So uh, I'll write web driver 
driver is equal to new selenium code i am writing chrome driver web driver driver is equal to new chrome driver over the mouse on web driver and you see i'm not getting any import statement because this project is not configured with the it's not uh in this project there's no selenium library only java java and exchange libraries are there again i have to go to the palm.xml file under the dependencies i need to add the libraries of selenium so for that i'll go to the mvn repository.com again mvn repository.com and search for selenium selenium space java search for that you'll get selenium java guys click on the selenium java and what is the latest version we have 4.6.0 okay i'll go with the latest version that is 4.6.0 so in 4.6.0, there is something new happened guys. Okay. So just a few days back, it happened. Okay. Just few days back, it happened. So in Selenium, uh, the Selenium Java latest version 4.6.0 onwards, there's something included known as Selenium manager guys. There are built-in drivers now. Earlier, earlier we have to go with web driver manager or we have to go, we have to download the driver.executable files and give the path of the uh, files before you launch the browsers, right? But now they are not required guys. We got something new in this uh, Selenium Java version 4.6.0 onwards. We got Selenium manager, which will inbuilt. Okay. Maintain the drivers inbuilt. Okay. Only this line is enough. In the code, this particular line is enough guys. You don't have to write web driver manager dot chrome driver dot setup, or you don't have to create a folder like drivers and put all, uh, download all the driver dot executable files of the browsers and then give system dot set property, all those things you don't have to do anymore. Directly this line you have to do, write guys, okay? For newcomers, it is no, it's so easy. For the previous people who uh, know that you have to configure the driver before opening the browser and all, right? For them, this is the thing. Selenium Manager is coming now with the inbuilt drivers now from the 4.6.0 version, okay? So simple thing guys, copy this uh, Maven dependencies, go to the palm.xml file, paste it. We'll see that in action anyhow. Just uh, save this you see the selenium libraries will be downloaded and added to the maven dependencies and configured to this project automatically you'll get selenium you see selenium java 4.6.0 came that's fine and uh close this palm.xml file now hover the mouse on web driver guys hover the mouse on web driver and sometimes it may not come just it will take some time just uh hover again you will get it you see now you got web uh, importing this web driver interface from selenium and hover the mouse and import this Chrome driver class from Selenium. That's it. You see, I'm, I'm saying that uh, this Selenium version 4.6.0 onwards, we are getting Selenium manager, uh, okay, which includes inbuilt drivers. You don't have to write web driver manager. You don't need the libraries of web driver manager anymore. Okay. So it has Selenium manager inbuilt drivers. Okay. So that means I just want to see without uh, getting any, without providing the driver path and uh, without using web driver manager, I'm able to launch the Chrome browser or not. Let's see because Selenium manager, which is coming with 4.6.0 plus on uh, 6.0 and version onwards, we are getting Selenium manager, which will maintain the internally maintain the driver executables inbuilt drivers are maintained. So it should work for us. Okay. Right click run as I'm not able to run it guys. I'll not be able to run this code. Why? When I'm trying to run, I'm not getting an option because it's not a main method, right? If it's a main, main method, I'll get Java application option here. But here it's not a main method, but it's a test ng test method. I already had, uh, but I have already added the test ng library already, right? I added the test ng library already, right? Here, test ng library is already added, but still I'm not getting an option here. Right click run as I'm not getting test ng option at least. If Java application is not coming because it's not a main method, but this is a test ng test method, at least I should get the test ng option to test ng test option to run the test, but it's not coming. Why? The reason is this Eclipse ID, we have to install a plugin. In this uh, in this Eclipse ID, we have to in install a plugin known as test ng Eclipse ID plugin. How to install that test ng Eclipse ID plugin? So to see whether test ng plugin is already there or not, go to the help and click on install new software. And already installed, click on already installed, you'll get a dialog is. And here search for test ng. Search for test ng. You see, there is no test ng available here. There's no test ng available here. So test ng is not installed. You, and one more check you can do is uh, go to window, then say show view, select other. Here, type test ng. If you're not getting any anything in this box, that means test ng is not there. So test ng is not there. So how to install test ng plugin in this Eclipse IDE? For that to happen, for that to happen, I'll have to 
I have to go with a website. I have to go to a website, guys. Okay. That official website of test change I have to go to. Okay. So I'm uh adding add test ng eclipse id plugin now. Okay. So how to add that? Uh, for that, I have to go to the official website of testng, that is testng.org website. Once you go to this official website of testng.org, here the, you will see an option known as Eclipse. Uh, my editor is Eclipse, right? So I have to go with Eclipse option. In the Eclipse op option, there are table of contents here. I have to go with the first table of content installation, select that installation. In the installation, I'll see this install the plugin link, click on that link. And after I am taken to this page, current release version, Maven Gradle snapshot, Eclipse plugin section. Under the Eclipse plugin section, you'll see something known as install from update site. Okay, I have to install from update site. So here some instructions are there, I have to follow that. In Eclipse ID, I have to select help install new software. Okay, in Eclipse ID, what I have to do? Help install new software, I have to select. I'll get this dialog. After I get this dialog, what I have to do next? Then enter the update site URL in the work with field. So copy this URL guys, copy this URL, copy link address and go to the this place and in the work with paste the URL. Once I paste the URL guys, in a while, you will get this test change option here. Select the test change option and click on next button. So we have we are installing test change Eclipse ID plugin now. Okay, we are installing test change Eclipse ID plugin. And here also we are doing one more thing. Start already automating sample test cases already is there. So here we are already working on this. Okay. And uh, we also added the add uh, Selenium Java library. Selenium Java library. Okay. I explained about a concept known as Selenium Manager here, uh, which has inbuilt uh, inbuilt drivers. Now you don't have to download the driver executable files or no need of uh, no need of web driver manager anymore. No need of using any web driver manager anymore. Okay. Inbuilt drivers are there in Selenium Manager. This is the new feature in Selenium Manager has come in which feature? In uh, Selenium Java 4.6.0 onwards, okay? Like this. Now let's go back to Eclipse ID and see. I got this dialog guys while installing the TestNG Eclipse ID plugin. Go over TestNG, TestNG, TestNG. Click on finish guys, it will install. It will ask you to this, uh, it will give you some dialogs in between to trust or not, okay? Trust dialog will come. Nowadays this kind of dialog is coming. So you say always trust all content and say, yes, I accept the risk. Yes, I accept the risk. All the checkbox options will be selected here and click on trust selected. In a while, it will install the software and uh, it will ask to restart the Eclipse ID. Okay, let's wait for the 100% and uh, you will get a restart, restart uh, now kind of thing. You say restart now. Software updates, restart Eclipse ID now. Okay, done. Save login.java, yes, save it. This file, I have to save it, okay? So this is the process of adding uh, TestNG Eclipse ID plugin or installing. You can say instead of adding, you can say installing. Okay, installing TestNG Eclipse ID plugin. Otherwise, you will not be able to run this uh, automation scripts that you are running, writing. Okay, just saving here and now. So Eclipse ID is restarting, guys. Let's wait. Let's wait guys for the Eclipse ID to launch. Yeah, once it is launched, what you will do is, you see earlier we didn't get this run all, run debug options are not coming earlier. Once you have installed TestNG Eclipse ID plugin, you will get run all. You see this particular class can have multiple test methods. If you want to run all the test methods at a go, you can select run all. Eclipse ID is giving this option in integration with the TestNG Eclipse ID plugin. Okay, and if you simply say run here under that only this particular test will run in using test change. Okay, there are different ways of running this particular test method now. Since we have installed test change Eclipse ID plugin, we are getting this extra option. Now right click. One way is to right click and say run as test change test. Or you can click on this run button. Okay, or you can expand this project. Under SRC test Java, we created this login. Uh, here right click on this login.java and say run as test change test. This is another way. Okay, so what is the simplest way? Just click on this run button. 
Okay, only one test is there. So click on this one and we'll see whether this Chrome driver, Chrome driver constructor will launch the Chrome browser or not. Okay, inbuilt drivers are there. We have to know uh, if this Chrome browser is launching means inbuilt uh, drivers are working. Okay, inbuilt drivers from Selenium are working. We don't have to download any drivers or we don't have to use any web driver manager anymore. You see Chrome browser has launched, but you see it's passed. But the problem here is, the problem here is, it's not in maximize mode. So we have to write the remaining code, driver dot manage, driver dot manage dot window dot maximize, then driver dot manage dot timeouts dot implicitly wait, okay, implicitly wait, give duration dot of seconds and give some 10 seconds for now, okay, this implicit wait, okay. So first I'll write the code in a raw format. Later I will, uh, you know, right, remove this hard coding and all the stuff will happen later. Okay, I'll not do it now. So fine. So what else? Driver dot manage dot page uh, timeout dot page load timeout. Okay, duration dot of seconds. Here for page load, I'm giving five seconds. Within five seconds, the page has to load. Otherwise, the script will fail. I'm giving some timeouts, uh, page load timeout and implicit uh, wait timeouts. Next, what? What is next? I have to open the application URL. For that, I'll say driver.get. I'll provide the application URL, guys. So what is the application URL? I'll hard code the application URL here. Initially, I'll go with this uh, application URL. I'll launch the application with this tutorialsinja.com slash demo. Copy this URL and paste it here. Okay, this is now hard coded, but uh, later we'll remove the rest. Okay, first we'll write in a raw format. After you open the application URL in the browser, what I want to do, what I want to do after opening the application URL, just close this part. After I, I'll also close this notes guys, because there's nothing in the notes now. So let's keep only whatever that is important for now, open. So here, uh, what I have to do to automate this verify login with valid credentials, after opening this application URL, I need to click on my account and then select login option so that I will be taken to the login page, right? So I just went back. I need to click on the my account and then select login option. How to do that? I have to inspect this my account, okay? Inspect this my account. Let's create a locator for that. You see span, my account is there. I'll copy this text, copy the text between the tags and tag name is span tag. I'll create an XPath expression, guys, okay? Control F. Here I can create an XPath expression, double slash span uh, text function is equal to my account. Okay. Uh, if you don't know uh, how to create the XPath expressions on your own, just watch my previous sessions, guys, of this series where I covered locators topic in detail. Okay. Go to the XPath expressions and CS selectors how to create. This is the XPath expression. One of one is coming, only one element. Copy this. So in this session, I will directly create the XPath expressions without explaining them. Okay. So uh, the focus is more on the framework rather than the, the creating the export expressions and all. So watch my previous sessions for the export expressions in this series. Fine. Now I'll say driver dot find element i dot export. Normal way I'm writing the automation script guys. Okay. So dot. What I want to do? I want to click on that. Okay. What else I have to do after clicking on this my account? I want to select the login option. For that I'll inspect this login option. You see it is a hyperlink. So most probably it is a link text. Copy this, copy this login and say driver dot find element by dot link text. Provide the link text. That is login dot click. This will select the login option. Once the login option is selected, you'll be taken to the login page where you have to enter the email address, valid email address into the email address field and valid password into the password field and click on the login button, right? Valid email address into the email field valid password into the password field and click on the login button. So inspect this email address. And here we have an ID. Copy this ID for that email address field. Simply say driver.find element by dot ID. Provide the ID of the uh, email address and say dot send the keys. Provide the send keys. What text you want to enter into the email address field? I want to enter a valid email address. Let's say arunmotary cap9 at the rate gmail.com. I want to enter. There's a valid email address. Okay. Then 
I want to inspect this password field and this is an ID for that password field. Copy this driver dot find element by dot ID provide the ID of the password field dot send the keys here provide semicolon and provide one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now I need to click on the login button, inspect this login button. And here we have the input tag with a value login value as login. Copy this login value attribute you remember and create an XPath expression. Okay. How? Control F double slash input at the rate value is equal to login. Double slash input at the rate value is equal to single quotes login. It is locating the login button. Only one element is locating. Copy this XPath expression of the login button and simply write down driver dot find element by dot XPath. Provide the XPath expression of the login button and say dot click. It will click on the login button. So once I click on the login button, I'm taken to the account page, right? As per the test case, also same thing is there. You should you should be navigated to the login page. And in the login page, we have entered the valid email and password and clicked on the login button. Then users should be logged in and taken to the account page. Yes, we are taken to the account page. But how the automation uh, script can understand this? So here I'll verify one option which is not available for the not non-logged in user. Okay. So for that, I'll verify whether this particular edit your account information option has come. This option is not available for the non-logged in user. If the account is successfully logged in, then we'll be taken to the account page where you'll see this edit your account information or any other option. You don't have to especially go for edit your account information. You can even go with the change your password, mark your or any of these options you can go with. These options are not available for the non-logged in user. Only if the account is logged in, these options will be displayed. So I'll verify whether this element is available or not. Okay. I'll inspect this edit your account information. And here is a text between the tags. This is the link text actually. Copy this link text. Anchor tag and text is there, no? link text. I'll say, here, I'll write an assertion base, okay? A test ng assertions, okay? Refer to my previous sessions if you are not aware of the test ng assertions. Assert dot, there's a predefined class known as assert in test ng. Assert dot, assert true. I'll go with assert true from test ng, guys. Make sure that here JNIT is not coming. Some cases, some people may forget to remove the JNIT from bomb.xml file and they will get JNIT here and they'll wrongly select the option. So better you make sure that it is coming from org test ng asset. Select this. Uh, true and here write down in, in place of the false clear that and write down driver dot find element by dot what is that uh, link text right link text link text give the link text uh, of that particular option what is the link text guys this edit your account information link text element so at the end i'll say dot is displayed command of selenium this will return either true or false so in this case most probably it will uh, get logged in with valid credentials and it will return true and since it is expecting true only, the test will pass. Okay. And finally, I want to quit the browser. Driver dot which. Okay. Here verification is done, guys. I am quitting the browser now. This is one of the automation tests I created. So as per this, uh, whatever the test I wanted to automate, I automated it. Okay. I verify whether the user got logged in and taken to the account page. Okay. So how uh, taken to the account page? How to verify? You can add one more assertion if you want here. Uh, to if you really need. Okay. Here you can verify the breadcrumb. Anyhow, edit your account information will be there on the account page only. So there is no need to verify it again. So one assertion will be enough, which will verify that you are on account page. And also this edit your account information means it will definitely on the account page. You don't have to verify again. So this, this much is enough guys, for the test case. We have successfully automated the first test case guys. Now let's go to second test case. Verify logging into the application using invalid credentials. You have to give invalid email address and invalid password. Now, before I automate the second test case, I'll make sure that this first test case is working properly or not, whether I'm getting the test engine test results or not. Before that, I'll refresh this project once. I'll refresh uh, this project once. I'll get the test output folder. I'll delete this folder, guys. Okay, I want to show you something. Every time you run the scripts, you delete this uh, folder. After refreshing the project, delete this folder and then run the script so that you'll get fresh results in the test output folder. Okay, now run. Click on run button here. Let's see whether the Chrome browser will launch, login will happen, and the browser will close. Everything should happen, guys. Okay. You see, login. Yeah, done. And you see, apart from the console output, this time, because you are running the testng test method, uh, apart from the console output where you see detected testng version and uh, this particular test case from this package, com.tutorialsinja.qa test cases package, 
there is a class known as login class. Under that, there is a test test case known as verify test case or test engine test method known as verify login with valid credential test method that got executed and it got passed. You see, one got passed, zero got failed, zero got skipped. And you can see the test engine results tab also. After you have installed test engine Eclipse ID plugin, then onwards you'll get in uh, get the results in the test engine results. Apart from console, you can also see the results in the test engine results tab. And here you will see something known as under default suit, default test, we have com.tutorials in Java QA test cases package. Under that, we have a class known as login class. Under the class, there is a test method, one test method known as login test method. And uh, that is sorry, uh, uh, login class, we have a test method known as verify login with valid credentials test method. And that particular test method got executed and got passed. It's showing here. And apart from that, guys, now you can reference the project here. You can reference the project and you'll get this test output folder. You'll get this test output folder. And uh, if you expand this test output folder, you will see something known as index.html. Can you see something known as index.html? Right? This is the report, guys. This is the test ng report. Selenium by default doesn't have any reports, but uh, when Selenium is configured with test ng, test ng will generate the reports, okay, for the test that got executed. So right click on index.html, say open with an Eclipse IDE, and say, web browser, it will automatically open in your default browser in your machine and you will see the test ng report here. You see only one method, one test that is password method, verify login with valid credentials. From the login class, we have this verify login with uh, valid credentials test case which got passed. Okay, it's in green color, tick mark means it got passed. Okay, so you can also go with the older theme, older theme is like this and new theme is uh, this retro theme, uh, this older uh, new theme is ultra theme, old theme is retro theme. So anyhow, this one is better, but we are not going to use test ng reports any uh, in the coming sessions. Okay, I'll I'll show you how to integrate this uh, framework with uh, extend reports. Okay, so these are not the ultimate uh, reports, but we should have some knowledge that uh, how the test ng reports will be generated. Anyhow, I covered all this stuff in the previous sessions of this series. Fine. Anyhow, we got the test ng report. You also get some emailable report here. Right click, open with. Web browser will get an emailable report, guys. This you can it's an emailable report, guys. Okay, it looks different. So two reports will come with test ng in the test output folder. That's fine. We created one test case, guys. The test case is working fine. No matter how many times you run this test case, test case will work fine. Okay. Now let's create another test case. Let's create another test case, guys. So what is the second test case we have? And here also I'll update the notes parallelly. Uh, automate uh, login test case. Uh, automate login uh, test case. Uh, we, uh, login with valid credentials test case. Login with valid credentials test case. Okay. Login with valid credentials test case. Save this. Now go back. Now go back. One minute. Okay. Just come here and here create one more test case. Second test case is login with invalid credentials. Let's automate that. Public void verify login with invalid credentials. Invalid credentials, some appropriate name I'm going to give. And here I'll put at the rate test here. And here inside this method, I'll write down the code. Web driver, driver, in a raw format I'm writing is I know a lot of code is getting repeated and all. I'm going to update that. At part of the framework, I'm going to do a lot of changes later. But for now, as a beginner, if you have tried the automation scripts, you can start writing like this. And once you learn the framework, you'll write in a different way altogether. Web driver driver is called new Chrome driver. Okay, then driver dot manage dot window dot maximize, then driver dot manage dot emotes dot uh, implicitly wait duration dot of seconds. 10 seconds I'll give. Put a semicolon. Uh, then driver dot manage dot timeouts dot uh, page load timeout duration dot duration dot of uh, duration dot of seconds. I'll give five seconds for the page to load. The URL is open. Driver dot get. I'll give the application URL. Same application URL, guys. Give the same application as first logout. Better logout. And uh, give the application URL like this. Copy this URL, come back here and paste it here and put a semicolon. Okay. Now, guys, now, guys, driver.get is there. 
Now what I'm going to do, driver dot find element by dot. I have to click on the same my account option. I don't have to write the code again and again, right? Already the code is there. You see this code is I copy paste. I'll copy all this code guys. Okay. Till here I'll copy. I don't have to repeat the code. I don't have to rewrite the code. Okay. Uh, this will click on the my account option. Uh, this will click on the my account option. After that, we have to click on the login option that will be clicked. After the login option is clicked, we have to enter an invalid email address here. Okay. I'll say some junk, junk data I'll give here to make this invalid email address. And here password also I'll give invalid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero. Both are invalid now. And I'll click on the login button. So here I'll give some junk data. And I'll give one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, which is also invalid. Click on the login button, guys. You should get a warning message, right? You should get a warning message when trying to log in with invalid credentials. So how to verify that? I have to write the assert statement here. So what I'll do is first I will retrieve this warning message. How to retrieve this warning message? How to retrieve this warning message, guys? Inspect this. And this particular warning message is part of this due tag. Inside the due tag, we have this I, and along with that, we have some text. So I'll do something. I'll I'll say alert dismissible. Here multiple classes are there in this class attributes. Okay. Here multiple attributes are there. Uh, that is uh, there are three classes. Uh, in class attribute, we have alert class, alert danger class, alert dismissible class. I'll go with only one of the class which looks uh, uh, unique. That is alert dismissible. I'll go with alert dismissible part. Copy this part. I'll say control F double slash due. Due at the rate. At the rate. Class is equal to only one class I'll give. Alert dismissible class I'll give. It's not working. So. Here, uh, I have to say at the rate uh, class, what I have to do guys, one minute and let me go to the due tag, inspect this again. Let me create a proper XPath expression class. Only one class I'm taking. Class is equal to will not work. Class contains class hash trick. Enter. No, it's not working still. It's most will have done everything fine. Class ends with right dollar. Okay, sorry. I'm just mixing up. Okay, this is not the way. So I'll do one thing. I'll say uh, uh, you XPath expression. If I have to create, then how to create? I'm just guessing. CSS selector is fine, easy, but XPath expression. I'm just mixing up XCSS. That's okay. So I have to go with only one class here, but uh, I'm not able to take that class. In here, I'll say contains contains method at the rate class comma provide that only one class okay now it's locating right now it's locating due tag in inside the due tag we have this warning message right inside this due tag we have the warning message so due tag is starting here ending here we are locating the due tag in which this warning message is there i'll copy this xpath expression okay so now here i'll write down driver dot find element by dot i'll write uh, xpath right xpath i'll say dot dot get the text this will retrieve the text between the tags and store into the thick warning message is equal to okay uh, actual warning message you can say better now here i'll write an assert statement assert dot assert equals i'll use a method known as equals now assert equals and also guys one more thing here you see if this assert true here is displayed is returning some false let's say in that case of this fails you can write uh here i can write edit your account information option is not displayed okay this extra message as a best practice you can write this kind of extra messages guys when this is displayed is returning false and it is a, uh, if this display is not coming, then this message will be added into your uh, test G results. Okay. This message you are adding here will add it. Okay. If it is failing only that uh, uh, expecting is true, but if it is coming false, then this message will be for the failed test. It will be coming in the results. Okay. So it's better to maintain the results. Okay. So here write down 
for the mouse on this asset equals you see first actual is there then expected is there first let's write the actual warning message here so we'll do one thing instead of writing asset equals i'll write still uh, asset true only uh, and i'll mention here double quotes i'll give okay warning message expected warning message is not displayed expected uh, warning message is this message i'll write not displayed okay i'll write down then here i'll say as a true warning message dot contains okay dot contains contains expected warning message what is expected warning message here i'll write down string expected warning message is equal to in double quotes give the expected warning message from the test case you can take if you want okay go to the test case this is a message, right? This is a message that should be displayed. Okay. You can see the application also. Yeah, that is a message. Let's go here and give the expected warning message here and copy this expected warning message and say like this. Done. Actual warning message dot contains expected warning message means actual uh, when you when you retrieve the actual warning message here, why I'm saying contains means in the due tag, I tags will come warning text. This both will come in the uh, text here actual warning message uh, will contain both this i tags between the due tag and warning okay combination you'll get in that is it containing this warning no match for email i'm just just writing that's the reason i'm writing the code like this contains okay so this part is done and finally i say after the assertion is done after the uh this part these three lines are for assertion only after the assertion is done i'll say driver dot quit driver dot quit i'll say the second test case is done guys. okay so let's run the script and see whether second test is working fine or not we have to run write some sample test cases guys I, uh, it's not just a framework guys whatever i'm explaining is not just a framework but also you can treat it as a live project guys okay a small live project you can treat it as because i'm right uh, i'm automating the real test cases here okay i'm automating the real test cases click on this run button only this particular test will run if i say run all, all the test methods inside the login will run you know, only verify login with the invalid credentials should you should get the warning message and browser will close should close warning message and browser got closed test got passed you see test got passed let me run it again second time there is a reason why i'm running it multiple times i keep on running this test multiple times to see how many times it is passing there is a reason behind that i have to explain you second done okay pass Pass is equal to one. Now, second time also, this test case got run successfully. Now, third time, third time, it has run, passed. Fourth time, I'm running. It got passed again. Fifth time I'm running. Again passed. Sixth time I'm running. Now it got filled. You see why it got failed you see according to the security implementations of this application it will not allow you to enter the invalid same invalid email address more than five times okay if you give sixth time automatically you will get this warning message warning your account has exceeded allowed number of login attempts as part of security feature this is a not a issue guys this is not a defect it's a valid feature of the application where uh, security is being uh, checked your account has been exceeded a number of login items please uh, try again one log for one uh, for one hour it is a uh, it is uh, not allowing you to log in with the same email address invalid email address okay so same thing occurs in our day-to-day -day life right when we go to atm and we put our card and if you enter the password wrong more than three times then it will block your card for 24 hours right as part of security same thing the application is doing so but but in this case this security feature is becoming a difficult thing for us because it's failing the test because we are getting a different warning message when you are repeatedly running this automation scripts for one or two or three or four sixth time when you are running the same automation script with the invalid credentials 
there is invalid email address, same invalid email address. The test is failing instead of getting passed. And here we are getting a message. You see, uh, Java assertion error, expected warning message is not displayed. Okay. So whatever I have written here has come. Expected warning message is not displayed. It is saying expected warning message is not displayed. Expected true, but found false and all, all those things are coming. So what I can do now, then how to overcome this problem? That means the only solution for this problem is every time I have to give a, every time I have to give a new invalid email address. Every time I'm running this automation test, I have to give a new email invalid email address. For that, what is the solution here? I need to append this particular change text with a timestamp. You see, timestamp will keep on changing, right? Uh, so I'll append the timestamp here with this email address and uh, you see what happens that new invalid email address will keep on dynamically changing and uh, uh, the same warning message that is a uh, warning no match for email address and our password will come. Otherwise, if you use the same invalid email address, static invalid email address, after five or six attempts, you are going to get that uh, security warning message and the test will fail. So what I will do now, how to overcome this problem, guys, how to overcome this problem. Now, what I will do here is, I will write some code guys. Okay. First I'll write this. I'll explain you this code in a different uh, place. I'll, uh, I'll delete this package guys. This is a temporary package. I'll say experiments, experiments. Okay. Experiments package. And here I'll write new class. I'll say demo class with public static void main. Click on finish. And in this class, in this main method, I'll write some code guys. That is date date is equal to new. Date. Okay. Simplest way to generate the timestamp. I'll show you for the mode on date and import this from Java library, java.util package. And then simply say system.out.println date dot to string. Okay. This is from Java guys. Hope you have referred my Java sessions. Okay. Uh, before coming here, uh, this part is already covered, but I'm explaining again because it is important to generate the timestamp. If I say date dot to string, to string method of this date class, if I use and print this, uh, resultant, you will see the timestamp coming guys. Right click run as Java application. Today's date and time, year and time timestamp will come. Okay. You see Wednesday, November 30th, 12, 23, 59, IST 2022 has come. But here there's one thing. I don't want these spaces guys. I don't want these spaces. What I will do here is I'll simply say dot. Okay. I'll simply say dot, uh, replace. Okay, I'll say date dot to string replace. What I have to replace? I have to replace the space with underscore. Underscore. How am I able to use replace here? You see, date dot to string is returning an object of the string class. The, the object reference of the string class dot replace method I can call. So that's fine. Now run this code. Right click run as the obligation. This is called as a method chaining guys, method chaining concept where uh, you don't have to write multiple lines. You can, okay. So when has the underscore number underscore 30 underscore, all the spaces got replaced with underscore. Now I want to replace this uh, columns also with underscore. Okay. So again, I'll say dot replace dot replace. I'll explain this method chaining concept also guys, just wait a while here. I'll give colon symbol and replace the colon with Again, underscore only like this. Now run this code, you will get a proper timestamp now that can be appended with the email address. You see, I got a proper timestamp now. All the words are words and things are got uh, separated with single underscores. Okay. So this will form a single name timestamp. Every time you run this timestamp will change. For now, that is there. Run this again. So for some small portion will change anyhow. Every time you run 47k. Okay. Again, you run, you will get a different thing. So this timestamp will be different every time you run this timestamp. I'm going to append in the email address. That's fine. But uh, you have to understand one concept here, guys. Date dot to string dot replace concept. Okay. Date dot to string dot replace concept uh, dot replace. This is method chaining concept, guys. Okay. So if I don't have to write like this, what I have to do is I have to write date dot to string. I tell you, okay. It's clear. It will be more clear for you. I'll not uh, leave any doubts behind. This to string will return the string object. Thing. Uh, date text. Okay. Date text. Then I'll say date text dot replace, replace the space with 
underscore replace the space with underscore string day text without spaces is equal to I'll write now day text without spaces dot replace uh, replace the colon with underscore. This is the actual code you have to write, but uh, with method chaining, right? You are writing in a single line. I tell you, Re replace is giving again string only. String day text without spaces and columns. Colon. Now write down system dot dot print then day text without spaces and colon. Run this code. Right click run as Java application. You see, this result came. So what I'm going to do is, why to write this many lines? Simply say day dot to string. This is written in the object of the string anyhow, right? You don't have to save that. This is nothing but the object of the to string. Okay, object of the string class. Object of the string class dot, write down directly, guys. Object of the string class dot, like this write down. What is the use of creating these extra statements? Okay, now <clears throat> object of this, uh, String class date text without spaces. Instead of writing like this, simply this is object of the date text without spaces. Dot directly write down the last part here. Okay, this is method chaining concept, guys. It will reduce the number of lines. Now with this, we got this result, guys. If you take this and it will return the string anyhow, and if you put this inside the print statement, in two lines you will be able to complete. You don't have to write that many number of lines. Okay, you don't have to write that many number of lines. Run this code. Right click run as Java application. You still get the result. Hope you understood the method chaining concept as part of this. Now, this code I'm going to use, guys. Okay, this is only for explanation I created. I'm going to delete this, but I'll copy these two lines of code and I'll delete this uh, experiments package in a while. So I'll come here and create a method here. Okay, public void. For now, I'm creating this method inside this uh, login class, wherever this method is need to be called. Later, I'll move this uh, method to a different place. I'll tell you based on the problem statement, I'll, I'll move this method. Okay, later. Public void generate. Generate timestamp. Generate timestamp. When you call this method, this will contain these two lines of code. And here, instead of printing this uh, date timestamp, I'll return this. Okay. I'll return this uh, timestamp. The return type should be string here. Okay. Whoever calls this method, this timestamp will be written. So I'll call this method from where I'll be calling this method. I'll be calling the method from here, guys. Okay. Instead of this gen code here, I'll remove this gen code and uh, put this place here. And uh, I'll call this method and say plus again and uh, start the double quotes here. Okay, like this. You see, the front portion of the email address will be a motor in cap nine. And in between, we'll have the timestamp new time every time new timestamp will be created and at the rate gmail.com will be there. Okay. So this is the thing, guys. This is the thing. So now you run any times, it, it doesn't matter, guys. Every time a new email address will come, no matter you run six times, seven times, the test will not fail it will pass because same warning message will be coming because every time a new email address new invalid email address is being used by this script okay so run this code any number of times i'll run this six times i'll show you i'll prove, the, prove you that okay i will prove you that this will not fail one it passed second time six times i'm going to run this six times i'm going to run Let me complete the login test for the session one, guys. In session two, I'll continue. I'll I'll write automation scripts for another class, another test cases. Uh, it's second time it passed. Third time. Third time. It got passed. Fourth time I'm running. Fourth time the script is running. I'll check six to seven times and uh, then we'll be okay. Okay. Fast. Fifth time I'm running. Fifth time I'm running the same test. Every time a new timestamp, new email timestamp will be created, guys. You see, every time new email timestamp, it got passed again. Sixth time. This is sixth time, guys. This will prove whether our code is working good or not. 
Six to time. It should pass. Then we are good. We are good, guys. You see, six time also. Seventh time. I am running it for one more extra time for you. It will still pass. No matter how many times you run the script, every time a new email address will be created. Same uh, email address will timestamp will be created and the test will pass. Okay. The expected warning message for the invalid credentials will come. So with this, guys, we completed two test cases. Uh, if I run these two test cases, which test case will run first? This test case or this test case? Which test case will run first? You see here, verify login with valid credentials. Verify login with up to here is same. Here I is there, invalid. So do you think valid credentials method will be running first or invalid? Since it is in the first position, this may not run first. When you run all, if you say run all, here there are two tests. Which test out of these two tests will run first? In alphabetical order, it will run. In alphabetical order means verify login with the same for the both of the test method names. But here valid is there, but here invalid is there. Here V is coming in the last, I is coming first. So verify login with invalid credentials method will run first, followed by verify login with valid credentials. You see run all, I will say. You will see the order in which the test cases are getting as Already I covered this part in the test engine series of the same session, of the same training session I covered in the test engine videos, I covered this part. Login with invalid credentials will run first and then login with valid credentials will run next. You see, login with valid credentials got run next. You can see the test engine results also. First invalid credentials and valid credentials got run. How to change the order? Here I have to give the priority guys. That's the reason we have to give the priority every time. Priority is equal to one means no, it will not go with the uh, alphabetical order anymore. It will go according to the given priority. Okay. I'll give priority is equal to two. Priority is equal to two. I'll say, okay, done. Now save this, this time, this time guys, uh, the test will run in a uh, given priority order. Okay. Test will run in given priority order. Run all. First login with valid credentials because of priority one, it will run. Then login with invalid credentials because of priority two will run. Okay. One, you see, two tests got passed and you see first login with valid credentials, then invalid credentials because of the priority we mentioned it happened. Now let's create other test cases guys, uh, two, two to three more test cases I'll create, uh, which are easy guys. It will not take much time for me to create the remaining three because I already have written most of the code in this uh, first two test cases. So sir, third test case is verify login to the application using invalid email address and valid password. Okay. I'll write down public void. Uh, verify login with invalid email and valid password. Both credentials are not invalid. So only one credential is uh, invalid. Okay. At the rate test uh, annotation, I'll give and uh, I'll give the priority also, guys. Priority is equal to three. I'll give priority three. And here, um, what I will do next uh, is I'll copy this code. Most of the code is same, guys. Okay. So this part of the code, I'll copy paste. Uh, uh, invalid email address every time a new invalid email address should be created i'll copy all this code for now till here i'll copy paste till here i'll copy paste okay so here in but valid password should be there one two three four five is a valid password and uh, same warning message is expected guys okay whether you give one invalid or two invalid you will get the same warning message right for example if i am giving something like this and valid password here click on the login button you'll get the same warning message okay i'm verifying that and here also we are generating the timestamp Okay, because every time a new email email should be given. Okay, this part is also done. Verify login with invalid email address and valid password is test case is so fastly done because we already have written most of the code for it. Verify login into the application with valid email and invalid password. Valid email and invalid password. Okay, let's create one more method. Public void. Verify login. Verify uh, login with login with valid email address. And invalid password. Valid email address and invalid password. And here write down at the rate test method. Mm. And here write priority is equal to priority is equal to four. Okay. And write down most of the script will be same, guys. Copy paste all the script till here from the previous thing. And here give a valid email address, guys. Okay. Just give here a valid email. What is the valid email address? In the from the first test, you can take the valid email address. This is the valid email address. But in password should be invalid. Okay. So give the valid email address here and give the invalid password here, 67890. Okay. Now do the same thing here in the real time application. So give the valid email address, cab 9, 
is react.gmail.com is a browser right better do it here hmm. here give it is a valid email address but i'll give invalid password one two three four five six seven eight nine zero which is an invalid password click on the login button you'll get a warning message you see you'll get a warning hmm. message the same thing i'm verifying here guys i'm verifying the same thing here and i'm quitting the browser okay so four tests are completed one more test i'll create guys. it is also easy it will not take much time so verify login to the application without providing the credentials okay i'll copy all this stuff public void uh, verify login without providing credentials without providing credentials like this you see no matter how many test cases are there you can keep on creating the test case automation test for each and every test case in this login uh, this login dot uh, login dot java class okay file all the test case you are writing here for each. so here write down copy all this stuff guys copy all this stuff it looks same the code will look same almost same but the only thing is that you should not enter any email ad email address you will not enter email address you will not enter any password and you will get the same warning message why because you see here try here guys don't give email don't give password and click on the login button you will get the warning message warning no match for email address and password in which okay so i completed all the five test cases guys let's see whether all the five test cases are running or not okay all the all these five test cases are running or not i'll see one way to run this is all the five test is did i give priority is equal to five here uh, i didn't give the error test also okay let's give priority is equal to five priority is equal to five and done so one two three four five now save all and I can click on the run all button, all the tests inside this login will run, or I can right click on this, I'll delete this experiment, it's not required. Okay. Uh, I will uh, also update the notes in login, login with values and Login with uh, invalid credentials, invalid credentials, test case, login, uh, login with, uh, uh, what is that? invalid email invalid email and valid password and fourth test case login with uh, uh, valid email and invalid uh, password login without providing credentials without providing credentials these are the so far automated test cases okay so we have to automate the other features also here only login we have automated we have to automate the register search few few things will take we'll not automate the entire test case that will take a lot of time so as because our focus is on the framework right i'm creating some sample test cases okay i'm automating sample test cases so to run this i'll uh there are multiple ways now i told you right i have to click on run all to run all these test cases or i can right click on the login.java and say run as test ng test is another way or right click on the file and say run run as test ng test anyways it's fine all the tests will run all the five, five login tests should run. All the five test methods in the given priority order should run, guys. Okay. First test case is completed. Second test case is getting executed now. Now, third test case. Now, fourth test case. Now, fifth test case. Done. All the five test cases got passed. Guys. All the five test cases got passed. We'll get the results tab and we'll get the uh, test engine results as I already mentioned. Okay. So with this, guys, uh, we just get started with the framework, guys. Okay. This uh, I have not properly implemented the framework, but in the raw format, we started our framework. This project we started, but this we cannot call it as framework because we have to do a lot of stuff in the upcoming sessions. Okay. This is only the part one, guys. In the part two, I'm going to cover uh the extension next thing what we have to do next i'm going to cover okay step by step we are going to go guys okay for now we implemented up to here okay in this first session we have implemented up to here so let's meet in the next session where i'm going to cover uh the other other things okay slowly we'll build the framework by the end of the sessions okay so see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part two of hybrid test ng framework using page object model and page factory. So let's get started. So in the previous session, we have created the test cases, few sample test cases for the login.java file, right? In the login.java file, we created around five test cases. We automated five test cases using Selenium. Now let's do something. Uh, let's optimize this. Okay. Let's optimize this code and see 
what's happening and all. For example, guys, okay, uh, let's get started here. Uh, for example, here, let's say there is a test one. Okay, you can see that there is a test one. And in this test, uh, what we are doing, we are providing the valid username, valid password, valid email and valid password, clicking on the login button. And you are taken to the account page where edit your account information is displayed. What if I intentionally add ABC here? What will happen? If I intentionally add ABC here, this link text will become wrong and the is displayed method of Selenium or command of Selenium will return false. Here, this assert statement is expecting true, but since I added explicitly, intentionally added ABC here, which is link text will not be there. So it will return false and the test will fail. So what will happen when a particular test fails? We'll see that in action, guys. Okay. We'll see that in action. So I'll run this only test, only test, uh, only this particular test I'm going to run. And you will see what will happen when a particular test fails because of this assertion, what's going to happen? You will see. Okay. Click on run. We'll see. It will open the Chrome browser, maximize the browser, open the application URL. It will click on my account, select login option. It will enter the email, password, and click on the login button. But this option will not come. ABC option won't be there. It will log you in, but after logging in, here, edit your account information is there, but ABC is not there. That's the reason it got failed. It will not fail immediately, guys. It will wait for 10 seconds because uh, we gave implicit wait duration as 10 seconds here. So it will wait for 10 seconds. Okay. But finally it got failed and uh, it mentioned that no such element exception. Okay. So there is a no such element exception uh, with this uh, link text locator. There is a problem with the locator or something is being displayed. Okay. Fine. Now, if you observe the browser is not closed, can you see that guys, when the test is passing, the browser is closing, but when the test is failing, this particular browser is struck there itself. Now I'll close that and uh, again, I'll remove the ABC here and see this time the browser will close automatically. When the test is passing, the browser is closing, you see? So you have to understand this problem statement, guys. When the test is passing, when the assertion is passing, the next statement driver.pt is executed, okay? This time the test will pass. You see, the browser got closed. But what if I add ABC here? The test will fail and here assertion error will come because of the assertion error the test will stop abruptly and the remaining statements which are there after this assertion like driver.bit will not be executed. You see, run it again. This time you will see that the browser will not be closed. Okay, the test will fail and the browser will not close. Driver.bit will not be executed. Guys. Okay, you will see that. You see that test has stopped here and uh, after 10 seconds, you will see that the test will be failing and the browser will not close. The browser is still open. Guys. Okay, the browser is still open and you see that has got failed, but still the browser is open. That's a problem statement. So how to overcome this? Okay, when the test is failing still, if you want the browser to close, still you want the driver.quit to close the browser, what do you have to do is a question, right? Not only this particular test case, but there are a lot of tests here. The test may pass most of the time, but sometimes when they fail, this driver.quit will not happen. The browsers will be open in the, in our laptop okay the browsers that are opened by the automation script will not be closed automatically we have to manually close them if the test fails all these driver.quit statements are going to be a problem to overcome this problem guys we can create a method here okay to overcome this problem we can create a method that is public void public void tear down or closure you can give any name guys okay so closure or tear down you can give any name so here we will simply say driver dot which Okay, I'm not able to say driver dot. The reason behind that is driver is not global. Here, this particular web driver is declared locally. Okay, local to this method. So it cannot be accessed outside this method. So I'll make it global first. I'll say web driver driver. I'll remove the double declaration here. And from all the test methods, I'll remove the double declaration first of all. Okay, so already declared at a global level. Why to declare again at the local level? That will uh, result in null point kind of exceptions and all. So we have to remove from the local level once it is uh, moved to the global level. Okay, from all the places I have removed the local level declaration and, and I declared this uh, web driver driver at the global level. Now, if I say driver dot, I'll get the commands. Okay, earlier I didn't get that. Now you see it's working fine, driver dot pitch. So these statements are no more required. Once you create this method and 
provide an annotation like at the rate after method annotation of stng if you annotate this particular method with after method over the mouse and import this after method annotation from stng library you don't have to provide driver.pit inside the methods you see all these driver.pits are not required anymore go to the next test method and remove the driver.pit so why i'm saying we are uh, not required to write driver.pit anymore i'll tell you the reason okay so we created one method and annotated the particular method with the tear down method a tear down uh, we created some sample method like tear down method and annotated that method with after method annotation so what happens is after every test method got executed not only this test but uh, each and every test in this particular login dot java file after each and every test method got executed this after method will be executed guys here how many test methods are there first test method second test method third test method four test method five fifth test method after each and every test method automatically this after method will be executed that's the thing okay so five methods of five test cases are there five times this after method will be called after each and every test method got executed and it will quit the browser no matter whether the test will pass or fail doesn't matter you see the first test is going to fail because abc is still there here but all the remaining four tests are going to pass but the browser will close in all the aspects whether the test is passing or failing doesn't matter because after method will be automatically called after every test method whether the test passes or fails that's one of the you have seen the problem statement now you got the solution guys okay whether the test passes or fails because of that after method now all the browsers will close okay irrespective of the test values and test results we'll see all the five tests okay whether the test will pass or fail the browsers are going to get closed you see here the here abc is not there so it will wait for 10 seconds after 10 seconds it will close the browser guys okay after 10 seconds is going to close the browser you see browser got closed irrespective of whether the test passes or fails the browser is going to get closed second one is done passing also closing the browser failing also closing the browser that is done okay you see there are five tests in that four got passed and one got failed okay but the browser there is no browser instance open okay all the automation script browser instances got closed automatically because this after method got executed irrespective of whether the test got passed or failed and for each and every after each and every test method this method got executed okay now you can see the results guys here you see first test case got uh first test case test method got uh, failed and remaining all got passed okay and there is a reason for the exception and all the sub no such element exception and all okay so this is the thing guys this is the thing uh with after method and uh, now comes one more thing now comes one more thing that is you see i am repeatedly writing some code here this code is common right this code is common till opening the application url it's all all common okay this part is common case okay this part is common and even this part is also common okay this part is also common you see till uh just entering the details is not common but uh, till here it is common guys okay till clicking it is common here also let's see till clicking the login button it is common remaining is not common till clicking on the login button it's common okay till clicking on the login button it's common because we have to go to the login page right we have to go to the login page every time we have to go to the login page okay that's why it's kind of common so what we can do here now is i'll create one method where i want to reduce the number of lines of code every time i have to repeat this code okay in every test method that's not a good thing so i'll create one more method that is public void setup method you can okay uh, startup method or setup method whatever the name you want to give just generally we just give setup method and annotate this method with a test and annotation known as at the rate before method annotation that's it over the mouse on before method and import this before method from test ng library now in this method you copy all this code which is common till here it is common copy that code okay till it is till where it is common just copy that code guys okay into the setup method okay fine now you don't have to write that code in all the methods okay only this much of code is enough you just remove all this code you don't need all the code okay just remove this code you see things will become easier guys. okay 
based on, uh, if you are learning this thing as part of your uh, problem and then solution kind of thing then you will understand all this stuff otherwise you will not understand the framework okay so this annotations test engine annotation test engine plays a major role in frameworks guys okay that's why you see a lot of methods we are using from test engine a lot of things we are using from test engine you see common code has been moved to the before method from this class okay done so for now this is a common code for the five test methods and then that's the reason we have to go to the login page otherwise we cannot work right so till login page is going to be common okay anyhow so what else i think this is fine and we have removed the common code from all the test methods now test methods look simple okay you see here i have not removed okay i'm double checking that's the reason here i have not removed fifth test also i have removed the code okay now all the code has been moved to the common method that is setup method which is annotated with editor before method annotation that means this test method will be executed before every test method here five test methods are there five test cases methods are there before every test method got executed before method will be first executed then only this test method will be executed again before method will be executed and next test method will be executed so the order will be like this guys okay before this particular test method will be executed with priority one priority one is there now before method will be executed it will open the chrome browser maximize the browser uh, open the application url it will click on my account select the login option everything will be done after this uh, this test will run where enter valid credentials and pass valid password will be done click on the login button and here assertion is done after that after method will be executed after this first test method after method will be executed where the browser will close now second test method before it gets executed again the before method will be executed okay once this before method is executed then test two uh, test method two will be executed then after method will be executed the same repeats for test three test four test five before method test three after method before method test four after method before method test five after method like that is okay so like that all for all the five test methods before they get executed before method will be executed for all the five test methods after the test methods got executed after method will be executed now let's see whether i'll click on run all and see whether uh we are getting the same results or not here still the first test case will fail guys because abc is still there remaining all test cases will pass test methods will pass i'll click on run all you should get the same results now all the tests should uh, run It will fail because ABC is not there here. Edit your account information is after 10 seconds, it's going to close. It is irrespective of failure, it will close. Second test. Third test. Fourth test. You see fifth test for each and every test the browser got opened application url has been opened maximized and all the stuff navigated to login page and all the same results we got four tests got passed one got failed because of that abc and you can see the results here first test will be failing because of that exception and remaining all will pass okay done guys okay this is how we can learn the things okay learn the things one by one now what else what next we have to take care of what next we can take care of now what i will do here is what I will do here is uh, I will create uh, something like this. I'll uh, this is okay. Here, if you observe, guys, there is only Chrome driver. Tomorrow, if you have to run your scripts in Firefox browser, what you will do? Okay. Or tomorrow, if you want to run your scripts in uh, uh, different browsers, you want to run your scripts on different browsers. Okay. Here, Chrome driver is mentioned. Tomorrow, you have to run uh, your scripts on Firefox browser. Uh, Firefox driver need to be mentioned. If you want to run your scripts on uh, Edge browser. Edge driver should be mentioned, right? So, how to overcome this problem? Okay, how to mention the browser always? Okay, to overcome that, we can write some logic here. Guys, okay, we can write some logic here where we can mention the browser name. So, I'll create some um, code here. Just see that I'm writing the raw code. This is not the place to write, but I'm still writing there. Later, we'll move that code to other place. So here I'll write spring browser name is equal to give some browser name. Let's Chrome. Let's say Chrome guys. Okay. Now if 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 browser name if this particular browser name is dot equals if it equals Chrome then I'll write the logic like, like this. Okay. 
then i will write the logic like this if it is chrome i will write driver is equal to new anyhow web driver driver is there here driver is equal to new chrome driver i'll write put a semicolon else if else if browser name dot equals if it is firefox okay if it is firefox if the string variable has this firefox value stored in that case driver is equal to new firefox driver put a semicolon for the mouse on this firefox driver and import this okay else if else if browser name dot equals if it is h h then i'll write down driver is equal to new h driver okay like this now hover the mouse on this edge driver and import from selenium now there are other browsers also like chrome firefox edge we have opera opera got deprecated guys okay opera got deprecated there is uh, selenium is not supporting opera now okay so we cannot write opera here and uh, coming to the internet explorer browser you see it's not from selenium but it's from the microsoft company microsoft company uh, is discontinuing the internet explorer okay if you if you are in the windows 11 operating system like me okay so you will not get ie browser by default and also in windows 10 you may have ie browser but uh, in the next update uh, that is going to happen in uh, january or february of the next year guys they are going to remove the ie browser from windows 10 also so what is the use of writing the code for ie browser here oh, this three browsers are enough chrome firefox edge opera is deprecated okay the support for opera is deprecated because uh, for now, these are the major browsers. So Selenium has decided uh, to discontinue Opera. And uh, coming to this uh, IE browser, Microsoft is discontinuing. And in place of that uh, IE, Microsoft is recommending us to use Edge browser. So no need of using IE. And other remaining browser that Selenium supports is only Safari browser, guys. Uh, my machine is Windows machine. I cannot have Safari browser in my machine. But still, you can write if you want to. Else if browser name dot equals, if it is equals, Safari, if it is Safari browser, you can type driver is equal to, this is not going to happen because uh, my machine is, uh, you know, uh, Windows machine, but I'm just writing for the sake, okay, Safari driver, put a semicolon over the mouse and import the Safari driver from Selenium, this is the case. Now, this line is not required anymore, right, so based on the given browser, based on this given browser name here, if you say Chrome, it will run the script on Chrome browser. If you give Firefox here, it will run the script on Firefox browser. If you give Edge here, it will run the scripts on the Edge browser. We'll see that now. Okay, we'll see that now. Uh, see that now happening, guys. Okay, it's Chrome now. I'll click on Run All. You will see that all the scripts will run on the Chrome browser because Chrome is mentioned here. It will open the Chrome browser now. Just see here what is going to happen. It will open the Chrome browser. You see, Chrome browser is open. The scripts are running in the Chrome browser, guys. Okay, the scripts are running in the it will fail the first test will fail after 10 seconds it will close let's wait close second test onwards it will be fast second test then third test it will not take much time guys third test then fourth one will come then fifth test Mr. Five test got executed, one got failed as usual. Okay, same thing. So what I will do here is, guys, just to save time, guys, I'll remove this ABC because the test had need to pass from now onwards. Okay. Now, what if I give Firefox here? The script should run in which browser? No, Firefox browser. It should not run in Chrome browser. If I say Firefox into the browser name, the script need to run on the Firefox browser, guys. So I'll click on Run All. You will see that the scripts will run on the Firefox browser. Let's see whether the Firefox browser the scripts are launching or not. Okay. Slowly we are going, guys. We are going step by step. Okay. This video should be easy for the beginners. Okay. Not for the advanced people. Uh, advanced people also should get uh, advantage of these sessions. But uh, I have mainly want the beginners to understand the frameworks. Okay. From scratch. I don't want to directly uh, go and create directly in the uh, destined places. Okay. Rather, I want to go in a raw way. And later, after showing you the problems, I want to modify the things so that you will understand the framework well. Okay. 
framework need to be created based on our requirements, based on our needs. Okay. So there was some reusable code in all the test methods. We have moved into setup method. Okay. Irrespective of whether the test will pass or fail, we want to close the browser. We have created after method that is tear down method in our uh, project, right? So here the scripts are running in the Firefox browser, as you can see, guys. I'll try one more browser that is Edge browser, guys, to see because I need to check whether the things are working fine or not. You see, all the things got passed and all the scripts got run on the Firefox browser only. I'll write this time, I'll write on Edge. I'll give Edge, guys. Okay. I'll give Edge. Now let's see what will happen. Click on run all. The script should run in the Edge browser now. Okay, let's see whether scripts, you see Microsoft Edge web driver was started successfully. You see, this is Edge browser, guys. Whatever that you are seeing on the screen, it's the Edge browser. And scripts are running on the Edge browser. All the scripts should run on the Edge browser. This is the last uh, browser that I'm going to run the scripts on. Okay, I was able to run on Chrome browser. I'm able to run on the Firefox browser. I'm able to run on the Edge browser. Okay, so just I need to change the value of that particular string variable and uh, things uh, accordingly that test will be running on the respective browsers. Right. Okay. So you see all the tests got passed. That's fine. Now, now the thing here is this kind of method, let it be there here for now. So let it be there for there for now. Whenever we want to run the scripts on uh, different browsers, we just need to change the value here, right? That's it for me. Okay. That's it for now. You need to understand. So now let's create the test cases for other functionality apart from login. Uh, we can go for register test cases, okay? Register account, for example, if you go to this application and uh, go to this application, guys, okay? And here, apart from login, we have register, okay? To log into the application, first we have to create an account, right? So the register account uh, functionality we are going to automate, okay? That is case, few test few sample test cases of register account we are going to automate now. So here are the test cases, guys, okay? Mm, which I shared you as part of the first uh, session. Okay, now we are going to look into the register. So some test cases we'll choose, uh, like four to five test cases will automate for register also, similar the way we have done with the login. So guys, uh, you may be thinking this code uh, look, big, look uh, looks very big, right? So that's fine, okay? So there, uh, this code is being, uh, need to be moved into another separate method, guys, okay? This code need to be moved into a separate method, but without uh, showing you a problem statement, I cannot move it, okay? That's the reason I'm putting it here. So now let's go in, go and create another class under uh, com tutorials in your QA test cases. I create another class. When the time comes, I'll move this code, guys. Okay. You need to understand the problem. Then only we have to move the code. Now write register. Okay. Register. Register or register account, whatever you'll see in convenient. Just create the register. And in this, create a method public void test cases. For each and every test case, you have to create a test method. Public void, what is the test case we have? Verify register an account by providing only the mandatory fields. Verify. Restring verify register with string verify restring and account with mandatory fields. Okay, a proper name I have given verify restring and account with the mandatory fields. Okay, and I'll convert this normal method into the test method, test ng test method by writing at the test annotation from test ng over the mouse and import this test from test ng. Now here we have to write the code guys, how to write the code again, the same process, web driver, driver is equal to new Chrome driver, web driver, driver is equal to new Chrome driver, we'll repeat the steps, okay? So I'll quickly do this because this is already covered as part of the login test, login, uh, login.java. So here I'll say driver dot uh, manage uh, dot uh, uh, window dot maximize then driver dot manage dot emotes dot implicitly wait duration dot of seconds give 10 seconds okay press semicolon here then driver dot manage dot timeouts dot uh page load timeouts duration dot of seconds give 10 seconds here again oh sorry five seconds sorry this is five seconds right five put a semicolon here now here write driver dot quit uh driver dot get and in double quotes provide the url guys url of the application that we are going to launch. This is the application we are going to launch uh, and provide that application URL here. After that, after opening the application URL, we have to click on the my account. You have to click on the my account. For that, already we have written the code for my account here, right? If you remember, 
So this is the code for my account. Uh, copy this and paste it here. Okay, I don't want to waste the time. So I'm copy pasting. This will click on the my account. Now, after clicking on the my account, after clicking on the my account, we have to instead of selecting the login option, we have to select the register. So I'll inspect the register option. It's nothing but a link text. You see, it's nothing but a link text, guys. Copy this uh, text between the tags, and here write down driver dot find element by dot link text provide the register link text and say dot click. Okay, dot click. Now what next? After selecting the register option, you will be taken to the register page where you have to enter only the mandatory fields, first name, last name, all the things that are provided with this asterisk symbol or the mandatory fields. So let's start with the first name. Inspect this first name. It has an ID. Copy this ID and write down the code here. Driver dot find element by dot uh, ID. By dot ID. Provide the ID. And say dot. Send the keys. What details you want to give? Let's say I want to give Arun here. Okay, my name, Arun. And uh, after entering Arun here, uh, I want to enter my last name. Okay, last name. Inspect this. And uh, here, input last name is ID. Simply say driver dot find element by dot ID provide the last name field and say dot send keys and here provide the my last name here. Okay. M O T W R I motor. Okay. It's my last name. So now after entering the motor here, now I have to in uh, now I have to enter the email address. Now I have to enter the email address. So if I have to enter this email address, guys, there is a problem. What is the problem? A fresh, a fresh, okay, a fresh brand new email address need to be entered. Otherwise, when you create an account with already existing created account, uh, if you enter here, okay, already existing accounts email address, if you enter here instead of entering a brand new email address, okay, then what will happen? You will get duplicate account exists. Some kind of warning message you will get. Okay, account will not be created because with that email address already an account is already there. That is a problem that you may you may expect. So every time you create an account, you have to, whenever you have to run this automation test, right? You have to create a new account, brand new. So how it is possible? That is possible with the help of timestamp. If you remember, I have used timestamp, right? In the login also I have used one place uh, timestamp for creating, uh, for generating a new brand new email address every time. So what I will do is I'll do the same thing guys here also. First, I will inspect this email address field where I have to enter the email. It has an ID, copy this ID and say driver dot and element by dot ID of that email address. Then in double quotes provide that ID dot send keys. Here I have to enter the email address. Okay. I have to enter the email address, which should be uh, based on timestamp and all, it should be there, guys. Okay. Based on timestamp and all, it should be there. So what I'll do, uh, I'll do one thing, guys. I'll simplify this method also. Okay. I'll simplify this method. This is the generate timestamp email. Okay. Instead of saying generate timestamp, uh, generate email with timestamp. I'll say otherwise. Okay. This method looks even more better, right? Generate email with timestamp. And here, the this is login.java base. Okay. Don't get confused. Login.java. And somewhere here we are generating the email address, right? So let's go to the place we are generating the email address. You see, we are calling the generate timestamp. This time we'll not uh, do that like that. I'll say Instead of writing all this stuff, I'll remove all this stuff from here. Okay. Here, I'll just call this method, guys. Okay. Which line this is? 87th line, right? Remember that line. I'll just simply call this method, guys. Okay. Whenever you call this method, automatically email time, email will be created. Email will be returned with the timestamp. Okay. 87th line. Just add that line here. That's it. Okay. Generate email with timestamp. This is the best way, I feel. Okay. Same thing applies here also, guys. Uh, here also, I'll call the same method whenever that. Uh, generate email with timestamp. So whenever this method is called, guys, whenever this uh, method is called, what I will do here is here uh, along with this. Okay. So here, instead of directly returning, I'll say string timestamp 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 is equal to like this. I'll say, and here I'll say return. I'll say spring a motori plus this timestamp, I'll append this timestamp here only. I'll directly pass the email address, guys. That is the best way. You see, we have to make our code simple, simple. Okay. Better, better always. Okay. So why to why to generate the timestamp and uh, create an email here? Rather create the email here itself with a new timestamp. That will be better, right? 
So here I'll say at the rate gmail dot here only I'm doing the concatenation and all the stuff and put a semicolon. That's it. It will return the generated generate email with time something. Okay. Now here also if I come here also a uh, we need to generate a timestamp. Okay, email timestamp is required. So can I call this method here? Can I call this method here? This method is part of the login dot Java, but I am calling it in the register dot Java, which is not possible. Because the same method need to be there in the register.java also. I have to write the code again. Public wide generate email with timestamp, right? This is a method, if you remember. And here I have to write the code again. Date, date is equal to new date. Date, date is equal to new date. For the most, import this date from java.util. And here I'll say spring timestamp. String same code I am writing. Timestamp is equal to date dot to spring dot replace uh, replace a space with underscore. Same logic I am writing is okay. Nothing much. This logic I already explained to you when I am creating with the login dot Java file. Uh, here replace a colon with a colon with also underscore. Replace a colon with underscore and put a semicolon here. And now I have to return a string which contains email address plus this timestamp this email address with the timestamp need to be generated and sent okay at the rate gmail.com this is what i have to send this should be the spring the return type should be instead of white it should be spring okay you see the the fine but the problem here is if you understand there is a problem guys the problem is in login.java we have generated with uh, generate email with timestamp method in register also we have the same method it's duplicated. It's duplicated. Is there any way we can overcome this problem? Right? This method is required for multiple Java files. This generate email with timestamp is required for multiple Java files. In that case, we have to implement the concept of inheritance where you don't have to mention this method in all the classes. Most of the classes, if this uh, more than one class is requiring this same test method, say, uh, same uh, method, then why to write this method in all the classes? We can implement implement inheritance, right? How to implement in a, uh, inheritance concept? I'll explain. So here under SRC main Java, I'll create a new uh, package. Okay, I'll name this package as com dot tutorials ninja dot qa dot. Okay, utils I'll say utils utils package I'm creating under SRC main Java. Okay. Click on finish and here under utils, I'll create uh, a class known as uh, and you just need to create a class like utils class you create otherwise. Okay, utils or utilities you can say if you want to be more explanatory utilities. Okay, utilities. Click on finish and in this utilities, I'll move this method. I don't have to write this code. This method I don't have to write in each and every class here. In login, I have written the same method. In register, I have written the same method. So in that case, to remove the duplication of the code from one of the class, I'll remove this method and move into the utilities Okay, like this. Okay, and uh, if you want to access this method easily, you have to say static case. Okay, just make it static so that you can say you can call this method using utilities class. Utilities dot generate email with timestamp. You can call to make this method static. Static methods can be accessed using the class name, right? That's the reason. Okay, save this. Now go to the register, remove it from here. Okay, remove it from here. That's it, remove it from here. Okay, now how to access this method, guys? Inheritance concept also you can uh, you can implement or you can make this method static and uh, by calling this uh, utilities.generate email with timestamp also it can be done. Here I'm not implementing inheritance. Rather, I'm using static methods, okay? Static methods. I'm not going with the inheritance case, okay? I feel like static methods will be more better than the inheritance because every time I have to extend this uh, utilities and all the stuff, that's that won't be a big deal, a uh, big thing, okay? That will be a big thing uh, because here I have to every time say login. On the top, you have to say login extends, utilities I have to say, I don't want to do that. Rather, if I make this method static method, it will be more easy. I simply need to call this method uh, uh, call this method with the help of the class name. I don't have to even create an object. So what I will do here is whenever you need that method, 
generate our uh, email timestamp method, generate email with timestamp method. So this is a method name, right? Here, uh, what is the name of the class? Utilities, right? Utilities dot, like this you have to say. Over the mouse on utilities and import this utilities from which package? Utils package. Over the mouse, import it from utils package and from there you are calling this method. Same thing will happen here, guys. Okay, uh, in the login, we. Uh, in the login, we have removed the method. In the register also, we have removed that method. Now, how to call this method? You can simply say utilities, utilities dot. So uh, hover the mouse on this utilities first of all and import this utilities from utils package and say dot, dot generate email with timestamp. You see, this is this much easy it is now, right? Utilities method we have created this, okay? Some reusable methods, okay? Uh, that has to generate some email with timestamp. Such kind of methods we will write in the utilities uh, class, Java class file. Okay. So we have removed the uh, duplication of the method in all the classes. Okay. From login and register, we have removed the duplicated code here for this generate email with timestamp. Now, this is how we have to generate the solutions on the go, guys. Control shift O, unused import statements will be removed in the register also. Uh, here, control shift O, save all. In the login, there is still an error. Where is the error? Let's see. Here is the error. Here also there is email timestamp. We have to call this method with the help of utilities. Utilities class dot generate with timestamp. That's it. Save all. Done, guys. Okay, all the errors are gone. Close all. Now everything is good, guys. Login is good. And restart is good. We are working on the first test case uh, where we got uh, to create this generate email with timestamp method again. And we move that into the utilities class based on our requirement. Okay. Based on our problem statement, we are creating the framework here. Okay. Now, after generating the email with timestamp and uh, after the email is being entered here, for example, email is entered something like this A motori 3011. Uh, some I'm writing randomly, guys, at the rate gmail.com, some random email I'm writing. And here I have to enter the telephone field now. I'll copy this uh, input telephone ID driver dot find element by dot id provide the telephone say dot send keys dot send keys i'll write the telephone number there's no problem with the telephone number but email should be unique every time okay one two three four five six seven eight nine zero is the telephone number i have created next after entering the telephone number as one two three four five six seven eight nine zero i have to enter the password i'll enter the password as one two three four five copy this id of the password field driver dot find element by dot id of the password field provide the id of the password field and say dot send keys and provide the uh one two three four five code one two three four five password here similarly enter password confirm also copy this id and simply write down driver dot find element by dot id provide the id of the pass so password confirm input confirm is the id so copy this and uh, paste it here, send the keys. And here, give the same password, guys. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, done. After entering one, two, three, four, five into this password field, uh, this privacy policy is also mandatory, guys. It's not showing with asterisk symbol here, but it is also mandatory. If you click on continue, you'll get an error saying you have to select the privacy policy. Inspect this privacy policy from here. And uh, let's see, its name is equal to agree. Name locator is there. Copy this. It is a name locator, guys, Abhita Agri. So here I'll write down driver dot find element by dot name, provide the name locator and say dot click. We'll select the checkbox field. Once the checkbox field is selected like this, now we have to click on the continue button, inspect the continue button and this continue button has the value as continue, which looks unique. Double slash input at the rate value is going to continue. That is X path expression you can create. Double slash input at the rate value is equal to continue. Enter. Okay, you see only one button got located. Copy this X path expression and write down driver dot find element y dot x path provide the x path of that continue button and say dot click okay dot click done once you click on the continue button what's happening with the details you are taken to this account success page this is not account page guys this is account success you can see here this is account success page you are on the account success page and here your account has been created heading is being displayed if i verify how can i be sure that account is successfully created if this heading is coming in the account success if this heading is displayed on this page means we are on the account success page and account has been created successfully, right? Your account has been created. I'll validate that. I'll verify that. I'll accept that. Okay. So your account has been created. So how to get this particular text case? Inspect this. 
actual text h1 tags are there with id is there uh, i'll say double slash div at the rate id is called content slash h1 if i say it will it will get uh, it will go to the h1 it will locate the h1 tags control f uh, double slash div at the rate id is equal to okay slash h1 you see now heading is being located in inside the heading tags we have the text so i'll copy this xpath expression and here write down string actual uh heading actual heading is equal to actual success heading is equal to driver dot find element by dot xpath provide the xpath of that actual success heading say dot get text it will retrieve the text between the tags and store into the actual and here i'll have to write the assertion now assert dot assert equals i'll write assert equals here actual part should be there here expected actual is actual success heading expected is what expected is expected success heading what is expected success heading i'll write it manually here here in the test case you can get the expected okay you should be logged into the account success page is there so we'll copy paste otherwise okay from the application itself copy this and paste into this uh, as a actual heading okay and if this headings are not matching account success page is not displayed this is the message i want to throw okay if an exception comes or if i assertion page access account success page is account is not created uh, account uh, account success page is not displayed account success page is not displayed that means uh, account is not created indirectly. So fine. And finally, I have to write driver dot quit here. Driver dot quit. Okay, done. One test case is done, guys. One test. Uh, one test method in the register is done. Second, uh, remaining test methods will not take much time, guys. First test generally, whenever you are writing a new test case, right? Automating a new test case. First test case will take a lot of time. Remaining test case will not take much time. Click on this run, guys. Uh, only this restart test method should run. It should pass. Go to the restart page and then enter all the details. Done. You see it got passed. Done. It's working fine. Now let's create one more test method. And as you already remember here, I'll give priority is equal to priority attribute. Priority is equal to one I'll give so that this will be running first in the register. Public wide. Second test method. Second test case I'll go through. The second test case. Uh not required. This one I'll automate. I'll not I'll not automate everything, guys. Okay. This this need to be automated, but I'll not be automating. Okay. So I'll be choosing only few automation tests uh, just to be relevant and uh, to save time. So here, all the fields, verify registering an account by providing all the fields. Okay, this one is better. Verify a registering account by providing by providing all fields. Instead of mandatory fields, we have to provide all fields. And I have to convert this method into the test method at the rate. Uh, test here itself, I'll give the priority also. Priority is equal to two, I'll give. And here, I have to write the code. I have to repeat the code, guys. Okay. Web driver driver is equal like that. Instead of repeating, I'll copy paste. Till here it is same now. And also all these details are also same. I'll go till here, guys. I'll copy paste all the code just to save time. And I'll update uh, modify the changes. Okay. So here uh, so it will it will go to the register page. After that, it has to enter my first name, last name. It will uh, it will uh, generate a uh, email with a new email with a timestamp. So a new brand new email will be created and entered into the email field and the password is entered. Uh, sorry, uh, telephone is entered. Passwords are entered into the password and password confirm fields. Before selecting the agree, uh, here into in order to enter all the fields. Okay, so I'll, here I'll log it, I'll log out and show you what what does it mean by all the fields. If I go to the register page here, guys. Here first name, last name, all the uh, all are mandatory fields, including privacy policy. Everything is mandatory, but here this newsletter is not mandatory. If I include newsletter also, that means all the fields will be entered into this fields. Okay, first name is entered, last name, email, telephone, password. Earlier, the subscribe is not changed. Only privacy policy is selected and continue. We have skipped this part in mandatory fields. But now we are going to create an account with, uh, with all the fields. That means I have to select this uh, subscribe option also. I'll select the subscribe as S yes, and then 
So for doing that, for doing that, what I have to do after after entering the password into the password confirm field, I'll write down uh, I'll write down code here and inspect this uh, yes radio button that need to be selected here. Value is equal to one is there. Okay, name is equal to newsletter. Value is equal to one is there. So I'll create something like this. Okay, copy this newsletter double slash input at the rate name is equal to newsletter at the rate value is equal to one I'll say. Okay. Now enter, you see which radio button is getting selected. Yes, radio button is getting selected. Okay. So copy that X path expression and here write down the code guys. Okay. Driver dot find element by dot X path uh, provide the X path of that rate uh, S radio option and then say dot click. That's it. With this single statement guys, this uh, method is completed. Verify registering an account by providing all the fields is completed. And we are going to verify whether this, uh, your account has been created uh, Okay, your account has been created. Uh, heading is coming or not? That proves that uh, whether the test got passed or failed. Now let me run the second test separately to see whether it is working fine or not. Restring with all the fields. It will not take much time. Let's see what will happen. Okay, it's selecting the radio button also, and you see that is got passed. Two tests completed, guys. Two more tests I will write. Not more than that. Okay. Okay, so I'm just, uh, let me go one by one and choose some tests, okay, randomly. Verify registering an account by providing an existing account. Already existing email address I'm going to provide, guys, and with that, I'm trying to create an account. What will happen if I try to create an account with an existing email address? I'll show you. So already with this email address, account is already there, but I'm giving it again. So let's see what will happen, okay? It will give an error message, okay? It will give a warning message. Just click on this or click on continue. You will get a warning message saying warning email address is already registered is coming. Okay, this test I have to write. Public void. Public void. Verify. Register. Registering account with existing email address. Okay. Just to get a feel, I'm creating some automation test, guys. Okay. So and also it makes sense okay when you create multiple automation tests only you will get the solutions of uh, removing the repetition of the code and all those stuff okay so here the same code will be repeated i don't want to waste your time i'll copy paste all this stuff and paste it here verify registering an account with existing email address and uh, all these things will be same except this uh, generate email with the timestamp thing here i'll give an email address which is already there a motori app nine at the red gmail.com. This email address is already registered. So if I try to create an account, uh, what will happen when I click on the continue button guys, uh, then this will not happen. This will not happen. Rather you will get a warning message. So here, what warning message? I have to inspect the warning message. I have to expect for this warning message. Okay. We should account should not be created. Instead warning message should be displayed. So here due tag is there alert dismissible. If you remember that, right? Uh, we have done this uh, double slash due. Double slash to you at the rate class, uh, otherwise contains, contains at the rate class, comma, give that uh, one of the class. And then you see, due, due part is uh, selected. Inside the due, I will retrieve all the code. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. And uh, including this i tag and watching, everything will be retrieved, guys. String, uh, actual, actual warning, actual warning is called to driver dot find element by dot by dot spot provide the x path and say dot a text now here i'll write an assert statement saying assert assert dot assert true actual warning dot contains what it should contain it should contain a message like this okay should contain this message guys same message should be there okay warning message already is this it should be there okay then it is passing so if it is not there then you can uh, write a comments uh, contains where is the contain sending this part comma just provide the message if in case this particular asset to fails okay assertion fails then this message should be displayed in the uh, output okay in the test engine the stack so or in any reports also okay um Warning message is not displayed. Warning message uh, regarding 
duplicate email address is not displayed. Okay. Here's what I'm going to write. And then private dot bit. That's it. So I'll give the priority as three here. That is six. Priority is equal to three. Save this. Run the test. Let's see whether the test is running properly or not. Go to the register page, enter all the details, existing email address. Test is passed, guys. Okay. We are getting the warning message, and the test is passed. Fine. Three test cases are done, guys. Last final test case. Uh, or this much is enough. I'm just thinking. So let's see what I can do. What if I create an account without providing any details? Okay. Okay. You see this one, this test case I'm going to automate this. Verify proper notification messages are displayed for the mandatory fields. When you don't provide any fields into the register account, page and submit, okay? It is going to be very simple, guys, okay? The test case is going to be very simple, but we have to assert a lot, okay? Assert a lot of statements, public wide. Verify, registering an account, uh, registering account without providing, without filling any details. Okay, we are not going to fill any details of this uh, register page and we are going to create an account. So it should give you all the lot of warning messages. Okay, at the rate test, uh, priority is equal to four. Last test case for register, guys. Priority is equal to four. So then here, I'll repeat this code. I have to till uh, going to the register page, everything is same. Na? After going to the register page, what I'm trying to do, you just understand here, guys. Okay, I'll go to the register page. After going to the register page, I'm not going to enter any of these fields. Directly, I'm going to click on the continue button. How to click on the continue button? Here, directly, I'll write this last line. I'll not enter any of these details, my uh, this uh, Arun Moturi, anything I'll not enter. Directly, I'll click on the continue button here. After going to the register page, directly click continue button without entering any of these fields. Click on continue button. You see all these warning messages are coming. What is warning? You must agree to the privacy policy. First name must be between 1 and 32 characters. Last name must be 1 and 32 characters. Email address does not appear to be valid. Telephone must be between 3 and 32 characters. Password must be between 4 and 20 characters. All these warning messages have to validate this. How to validate that? So here I'll write string, string privacy policy warning. Okay. Is equal to what is the privacy policy warning? Actual, right? This is actual privacy policy warning. Okay. Actual privacy. It's not expected, it's actual. Okay. So how to get this actual thing? During the automation, inspect this. The automation script has to get it. So it's between the new tags. Again, alert dismissible is there here. Copy this part. Double slash due contains at the rate class alert dismissible. Control F, double slash due contains method. Contains here at the rate class, comma, that alert dismissible class. Okay. You see, it got located. And inside this, I will get all this text, including the tags and all, and we'll verify the contains thing. Okay, copy this part and write down driver dot find element by dot x path, provide the x path, and say dot get text. Dot get text. Now, this is actual privacy policy. Here, I'll write an assertion as a dot assert true. Here I'll write actual privacy policy warning message. Put a semicolon. Dot contains should contain what? What is the actual privacy policy warning message that I'll copy paste from here, guys? Okay, this is the warning message that is expected. And as a best practice, you can write some text. Okay, privacy policy warning message is not displayed. Okay, if any test fails because of this reason, assertion fails, this message will be displayed in the output okay, in the destination details or whatever it is. Now, next one, next assertion I'm going to write, that is first name, this one, inspect this part. And here you see, uh, here name is equal to, ID is equal to first name is there, but this one is not unique. So with the help of this one, I locate this part. With the help of this field, I locate this part uh, using XPath access that I covered in the previous sessions. Okay, you can re uh, refer to the XPath access concept, guys, uh, to create an XPath expression, proper XPath expression for locating this warning message. I'll I'll take this ID, guys. 
double slash input at the rate id is equal to i'll write first of all double slash input at the rate id is equal to give the id sorry is equal to has not come is equal to it has located the first name field you see it has located the first name and but we need to locate the warning actually not the first name okay we have to locate the warning the warning is just below this this due tag is nothing but the warning which is this part is located but due tag with the help of this one we have to locate so i'll say slash following f1 sibling colon colon this due tag right due i'll say that's it you see it got located one of one this time warning message got this is xpath access copy this string actual first name warning right this is first name warning first name warning is equal to driver dot find element by dot f x path provide the x path dot get text that's it directly get text here get text because view tag is getting located dot get text get text done put semicolon and write the assert statement assert dot assert equals i'll say this time equals actual part actual first name warning is here expected uh warning is here expected warning message is this one copy this part and paste it here and if it is not matching, I'll write down. First name warning is not displayed. First name warning message is not displayed. I'll write. Okay, put a semicolon here. That's it. Done. Next. Next one. Last name. Similarly, we have to repeat for everything, guys. Okay. First name, last name, email, and all those stuff. I'll copy paste, better it will take not take a lot of time to copy paste actually. Okay, just modify after copy pasting. Okay. So this is last name. Just say last name here. And if you inspect this uh, last name warning, you will get that. Here ID, this due part is same, but ID is uh, input last name. So here input last name. If you change, it will get the last actual last name warning automatically. And here you just say actual last name warning and here say last name message must be between same thing, right? Uh, and here last name. Okay, done. You see that is done. Now another assertion. Uh, next one is email address. Okay. Actual email warning. So for that, I'll inspect this uh, email field. Uh, it's an ID again, copy this ID, paste it here. In this ID, you just rename the chain the ID. Uh, that's it, due tag only, here also due tag. And here actual email warning you just provide here and you say email, email must be, I guess, email address or email must be, email address is there. It's better to copy paste in this case, okay. Okay, after giving this, just write down, Email warning message. Email warning message is not displayed. Now copy paste this one. Next warning message will go through. What is that next warning message? Telephone must be, okay. Telephone must be between three and 32 characters. One and 32, one and 32, three and 32 characters. Okay. Just remember that. So here, tel actual telephone warning, I'll say telephone warning. Here I'll inspect this uh, ID of the telephone field. With the help of ID of the telephone field, we'll locate this part due tag. So I'll just modify this part a bit. And after that, here I'll write actual telephone warning here first of all, and then copy paste this uh, message and paste it here. Just to save time, I'm copy pasting the things, guys. Okay, but we have to make sure that everything is uh, okay. Telephone. So you should not forget to update anything. Okay. If you forget to do something, then you will get errors. Okay. So final warning message is password guys. Password. Again, I'll copy paste the last two lines and paste it here. And uh, this is for password, actual password warning. I'll say password warning and inspect this password field. And then input password is there and the div tag is there in between password between four and 22 characters is coming. So just replace this ID and uh, a yeah, small mistake. Then actual password warning should be copied here. And here the warning message as it is, you just copy and paste it here. And then paste it here. 
uh, no, it has not come actually. So control Z. Here you have to copy paste. Password uh, must be. You see, it's pasting also is a bit difficult now. Control V. I'll remove this part. Okay, done. And here, password warning message is not displayed. I'll see. This is the last test case, guys. Okay, last test case. And finally, I have to say driver.pitch, as you already know. Driver.pitch. I've done, I'm done with the last test case also, guys. All the assertions I have verified when I don't uh, enter any details into the re register account page and then trying to create an account. All the warning messages, what, whatever has to come, are, are asserted here or verified here. Okay. So now if I run this test, let's see whether the test is passing or not. All the assertions are passing means all the warning messages are coming means the test will pass and the browser will close. Let's see. We have created four test cases per uh, register so far. That is enough, guys, for this framework. That is enough. Uh, in real time, we have to create all the test cases, but uh, for now, this is enough. Okay, this uh, test is passing, guys. Okay, the test is passing, so everything is fine. Now, let's run all this. Uh, did I give priority is equal to four here? Yes. So, let's run all this test together. Let's run all this test together. Run all, I will say, all the four register tests should run. Let's run them together. So, whenever you write some automation scripts as part of your projects, right, better to run them and check the combination separately and all different ways to see there's no problem there itself. Okay. You should not rectify, uh, identify this problem later onwards. Okay. There itself, you have to run the scripts and verify the stuff. Okay. Looks like all the tests are getting passed. Done. So all the tests got passed, guys. All the tests, four tests got passed. Now we have four test cases inside the register, but there is a problem. The problem is same, guys. You see, if any particular test fails, this driver.pit will not be executed, right? If any assertion fails, driver.pit will not be executed. We have identified a solution in the previous class, login class itself. That is same class I'm going to create. Public wire, wire tear down method I'm going to create. And uh, I'm going to provide an annotation at the rate after method annotation. And over the mouse, import this. Uh, annotation from test ng and move this particular line here driver dot quit line just move it here you'll get an error after moving driver is not identified the reason here is web driver driver is declared locally inside the method so i will declare it globally after declaring globally this error will be gone but this double declaration should not be there otherwise you'll get null pointer exceptions better remove this uh, local declarations after it is declared globally don't forget to do that so from all the four test cases, have removed the uh, local declaration of the web driver. I made now I made it global, and this test will run. For, uh, and I have to remove this driver dot quit. Okay, it is already there. I have to remove this driver dot quit. Here I have not provided anyhow, not a problem. And here also driver dot quit. And here also driver dot quit. I have to remove. Okay, done. So driver dot quit is removed from all the test methods. Uh, now the common common code I have to move into the setup method okay public wide what is the common method we'll see public wide setup setup here okay, write down at the rate sorry. at the rate before method this method should run before every test method and import this before method from test ng and what is the common code if you see the common code is up to going to the register page guys remaining is not common till going to the register page it will be common okay so till going to the from launching the browser to the maximizing the browser, opening the application URL, clicking on my account and going to the register page is common. So remaining all is not common. Okay. So here, here also you can remove up to the register page. Okay. This kind of common code can be moved to the uh, before method. And here also till going to the register page is common. There's no way of changing it. Here also going to the register page is common. Okay. For, for test cases, I, Okay, that, that's it, guys. That's it. Okay. Let's reduce the spaces. Necessarily having spaces is also not good. Let's remove the spaces here and there. Okay, that's good. Looks good for me. Yeah, fine. Save all. Now run all. It should work. Still, it should work after moving to the before method and after method. Still, the test should run. Okay, all the four register tests should run now. Let's see what's happening. First test, second test, third test. Now, 
fourth test done all the four tests got run successfully and got passed now what if i have to run on different browsers i have to write the logic i have to implement the logic here right instead of writing like this i have to implement the logic where restraint i have to write browser name if you remember browser name is equal to if it is chrome i have to run the scripts on chrome browser whatever the value added into this variable in the setup method that on that browser browser only the script need to run i'll say browser name dot equals i'll write it fast guys because i have written already implemented this as part of the previous uh, logging at java so here i'll say driver is equal to new chrome driver this part but else if else if uh, browser name dot equals if it is firefox then you have to run the scripts and we have to launch which browser driver is equal to new firefox driver import this driver from selenium library else if browser name dot equals if it is uh, edge browser in that case okay driver is equal to new edge driver done for the mouse import this edge driver from selenium else if browser name dot equals if it is uh, safari then driver is equal to new safari driver like this after for the mouse and import it from selenium okay now whatever the browser name you give earlier the scripts were running on chrome so i'll give something like edge now and see whether the script is working or not chrome it should work firefox this will go and work it should run on the firefox browser now if i'm giving edge here and run all the scripts you'll see all the scripts will run on the edge browser instead of the chrome browser now okay that proves microsoft edge browser is launching you see it's not chrome browser edge browser it is all the scripts will run on the edge browser now Okay, all the four tests got passed. Everything is working fine. But there is one problem, guys. So what is the problem? You see, every time you create a before method, you have to write all this code. For choosing the browser, you have to write all this code. Okay, in the login.java also, you have written this much of code, right? This much of code you have written. And also, this maximize implicit weight page loadout, opening the application URL. Okay, everything. Till here, guys, till here, this is common code. This part is common, guys. Okay. Here, somewhere you are clicking on my account. Sometimes you are clicking on login. That may be different. Here, you are registering and my account you are clicking. But this part is common, right? Till here, it is common. This part is common. Whatever I selected is common. This part should not be there as part of the setup method. In both the setup methods of both the login and register class, it is there. So I'm going to create uh, implement an inheritance concept. So how to implement the inheritance concept? So here under SRC test Java, I'll create a package, guys, first of all. I'll name the package as com dot tutorials ninja dot qa dot I'll say base class base package somewhere base okay base I'll give click on finish under the base package I'll create a class known as base class you can give any name for this class but I'm giving base class click on finish so in this base class I'll create a method guys okay I'll create a method public void uh initialize browser initialize browser or uh, initialize browser and uh, and open application okay initialize browser and open application here i'll 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 receive a uh, browser name as a parameter okay browser name as a parameter i'll receive that's it i don't have to repeat this code in login and register i have to move that code into the base class okay i'm implementing inheritance concept using which Whatever the uh, common code is there, I'm moving to a parent class known as base class, guys. So we'll see that, okay? We'll see that. So base and uh, in initialize browser and open application URL, okay? Open application URL till there, till application URL, right? So the common code is up to here till opening the application URL, okay? Initialize browser and open application URL. So this common code I'll copy as it is and go into the base.java and paste it here. 
So here I don't have to create browser name, guys. Already browser name is here. We are getting from the parameter itself. You don't have to give the browser name. But here driver is a problem. Here driver is a problem, guys. Right? Web driver is not declared here. Web driver is not declared here. So what I will do here is I'll say web driver driver. I'll say simply web driver driver. Import this web driver from Selenium. That's it. And you see all the errors are gone. Okay. Now this driver I will return. Whatever the driver that is uh, created here, I'm going to return. I'll say return driver for now. Okay. Return driver. The return type should be web driver. Okay. Like this, some method I'll create, guys. Some reusable method I'm going to create. Okay. I'm returning the driver. Since I'm returning this particular driver using which the five browser is launched and uh, uh, maximized uh, uh, implicit weight and a page load timeout and application URL is open. That's the same driver I'm returning back to the method which is, has called this particular method, back to the class which has called this method. So dry, uh, whenever you call this method in this base class, uh, it will return the driver, but you are not going to uh, call the method in the base class. Rather, you have you are going to make this. Uh, I mean, you are going to make this base class as a parent of this login and register class, so that you don't have to create an object for the base class. Directly, you can call this method. I'll tell you how. Okay, I have created a reusable method, guys. I'll go to the login. I'll remove all this code. I don't need any of this code now. Okay, I don't need any of this code, guys. Okay, I don't need any of this code. Save this. Control Shift for now. What I'm going to do here is I need to initialize the browser in the setup method. I need to initialize the browser. This part is not required. Okay. All this part is not required. Only this uh, unique thing okay, for this particular setup method is required. But uh, here, I need to initialize the browser here right in the setup method. So that method is there inside the base class. So I'll call this method directly and see what is happening. Call, uh, just copy this method and uh, call it from here. And here, in place of the parameter, I have to pass the argument. I'll pass the argument as here Chrome, guys. Okay, here Chrome I'll pass. But this method is returning a, an error. The reason here is you cannot call this method because this method is not part of the login.java. It's part of the base.java, which is belong to another package. So what I have to do, one of the way is that I'll say extends. I'll make this login.java extends base class. Just say base over the mouse on base and import this base from base package. Now, once you import this, all the methods, all the properties of the base class will be part of the login and you can call this method directly. Now, if you hover the mouse on this initialize, uh, initialize browser and open application URL, it is returning you an object of the web driver. So driver, it is returning. Driver is equal to, you have to say, that's it. You got the driver and it got initialized. Control shift go. Un unimported, uh, unused import statements will be removed when you say control shift go guys. Okay. Together when you press control shift and unused imports or any non-important things will be imported also at the same time. Fine. You see here, a lot of code is reduced. Single line have I been able to. Same thing. Cop, same thing here also. We'll do the same thing. Guys. Here also, I'll remove this part till application URL I'll remove. And here, I'll simply call the method. How? What is the name of the method, guys, in the base class? What is the name of the method? Initialize browser and open application URL. Okay, this is the method. So copy this method again. Copy this method and call this method from the register.java also. And this time also I'll pass some browser, let's say it's uh, Firefox browser, I'll, I'll pass Firefox browser this time. Okay, in another test, I'll pass Edge browser otherwise, okay? In another, if I create another test here, login register, apart from login register, if I create any other thing, I'll I'll use Edge browser, okay? For now, I'll use Firefox. It will return you. You see, I cannot uh, call this method because I need to create an object for the base class if you have to do so. But uh, instead of doing that, I'll say extends base. So there is no problem. Now, all the methods of the base class will be part of the register. And you can call it directly, no need to worry. And uh, inheritance concept is this. return type is web driver. So I have to say driver is equal to that's it. Web driver driver is equal to you are getting the driver from this method. Control shift off, we are done. So you see this single line and the me method has been moved to the base class. This choosing the browser thing has been moved to the base class now. Okay. So slowly we are building up the framework, guys. You see, slow slowly a lot of uh, packages are coming. Okay, classes are coming under the packages and all those stuff. Okay, so for now, uh, this much is fine. Okay, uh, I think this much is fine. And uh, let's see whether the tests are running or not. Okay, whether these things are working or not. Okay, I'll run the login.java after implementing this, uh, moving the setup code into the base class. Okay, initialize browser and open application URL code has been moved to the base class. Still, it is working fine or not. I need to see. 
So I'll just run all and see whether all the login tests are running or not. Okay. Let's see. You see login tests are still running guys. Working fine. All the file login tests should run one. And it's still, uh, we'll also run the register also to make sure everything is working fine. The second part of the framework guys, second session of the framework. Uh, we are slowly moving into the building of the framework. Okay. Based on our requirements, we are going. Okay. So based on our problem statements, we are building up the framework. Now go to the restart.java and click on run all. Let's see what's happening. Whether all the tests in the register are running or not. Let's see. Okay. Working fine. First test is done. Second test. Third test. Now fourth test guys. You see all the four tests got passed, right? Five tests in the login got passed. Four tests in the register also got passed. Okay. So this much is enough for the second session guys. Okay. A few more things need to be done. Few more problem statements need to be identified, identified in this project. Okay. And few more things need to be done. And uh, at same time, uh, uh, here I'll write automating, automating register test cases. Auto, I'll just update the notes here, guys, so that uh, okay. automating register test cases. Register with mandatory fields. Register with all fields test cases. Then we automated a register. Uh, what is that other thing? Uh, register with duplicate email, duplicate email, and register without providing any details, without filling any details, filling any details. Okay, this four automation tests have created, and uh, uh, apart from that, I created utilities, utilities class mode. Uh, what is a what is the code I have moved into the utilities class? Uh, generate email with the timestamp method. Timestamp method I have moved. Timestamp method is moved. Uh, then what else we have done? Then created at the rate before method and at the rate after method. Methods in every class, every class. Okay. Then we created one more thing that is, uh, uh, we created base class and moved uh, base class and we have moved which code initializing mode, initializing browser and opening application URL code, uh, URL code there. Okay. So, so far this much, anything I have missed yes, uh, I think we have done everything. Okay. So this chair done, I think, yeah, that's it. That's it. We have done in this uh, session. So from our automating register test case and, uh, this part, this is the area, right? This is the area we have worked on. Fine. I'll attach the entire mind map in the second session, guys. Okay. You have to find by yourself this entire mind map. I'll attach to this uh, particular notes. Okay. You will not get only this particular mind map uh, and entire mind map will be there, but you should know that from here to here is uh, explained in this particular session. Okay. So that's all for this session, guys. In the next session, we are going to continue with our framework. We are going to identify a few more problem statements and accordingly we'll move further. Okay. Fine. So let's meet in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part three 
of hybrid test ng framework using page object model and page factory training series so let's get started so here we are till the previous session we have created this utilities class and base class and we have created this test classes login login class containing the login test and restart class containing some restart test now in this session we are going to create one more class here okay similar to the login and restart we are going to create one more class we'll going we can pick some random okay random functionality we completed restart few uh, test cases from restart like four around four we have automated already in our project similarly from login five automation tests we have automated five test cases we have automated now let's randomly pick one more functionality i'll go with search functionality guys so here i'll pick some three test cases guys okay let's for example i'm taking this okay it's not serious one if it's serious i have to automate everything right all the test cases of the search functionality all the test cases of restart login everything has to be automated but since our focus is on the automation framework i'm taking some sample three test cases first three test cases i'm going to take is okay first one is verify searching with an existing product name okay for first of all what i will do is i'll create a new class and name it as search click on finish in this search class i'll create a method required verify searching with an existing product name verify search with valid product or existing product valid product you can say verify search with valid product and convert this normal test method into the test ng test method over the mouse import this uh, annotation from test ng and give priority as one for uh, let's say okay priority is equal to one done now here let's write the automation code so what i will do is i'll write the automation code web driver driver is equal to new chrome driver i'll write okay so instead of doing like this, I'll create a method. Okay? So, so already demonstrated, right? Login register, why to waste time? I'll create one method, public wide setup directly. I'll create the method this time. And here at the rate before method, I'll say for the mouse and import this. And here globally, I'll create the web driver driver. You know why I'm creating globally now. Import this web driver interface from Selenium. Now here, call this method inside this base class. That is initialize browser method, initialize browser and open application URL method. Just copy this method name and go to the search.java and paste it here and pass some browser name. Here I'll pass the edge browser. Earlier I passed uh, in login.java, I passed Chrome browser name. You see Chrome I passed. In the register.java, I passed Firefox. Now in the search.java, I'm passing edge browser. So I cannot call this method directly because this search is not the uh, child of the base class. If I make this search class, a uh, child class of the base class, I'll import this base from uh, this uh, base package. Okay. Uh, after doing that, you see the, the error is gone. This method is will return the object of this web driver. So I'll simply say driver is equal to done. So initialization of the browser and opening the application URL is done guys. Okay. After doing that, after, after opening the application URL, after opening the browser, and uh, opening the application URL in the browser, what is the next thing that we have to do? We have to directly enter the text into the search box field. So for that, I'll inspect the search box field, guys. So that code I'll write here, guys. Okay, verify search with valid product. I'll write here rather than writing in the setup. I'll write here for now. Inspect the search. Here name locator is there. Copy this. I'll simply set driver dot find element by dot uh, name. Provide the name locator and say dot send keys. Provide the send keys and here I will type HP. HP is a valid product, guys. If you click on that, you see you'll get the results in the search results. Okay. So HP text I'll type. What is the next one? I need to click on the search button. I need to click on this button. Inspect this button, guys. You see, this is the button. This button has uh, BTN, BTN default, BTN LG, some different options are there. So I'll try this with BTL, BTN LG mm, class, BTN L, one of the class I'll take. Control F, double slash button, contains, iterate, class, comma, provide that class, square bracket, how many elements? One of two is coming. That's not correct then. I cannot go with BTN LG. I'll try with BTN default then. BTN default, another class I'll check. 
this time one of three is coming this is more too much okay this is not also the uh, so what i can do you now one of two one of one those kind of stuff is coming uh, okay here do id search is there under that this is there i'll go with the xpath axis kind of stuff so i'll go with the uh, double slash do at the right id is equal to double slash do at the right id is equal to search i will say so here this is locating this part under that uh, somewhere a grandchild is there okay this is a grandparent let's say this is a child and under that grandchild is there known as a button so i'll say descendant descendant colon colon button i'll say let's see what will happen you see this button is located one of one element is coming this is a proper xpath copy this now driver dot find element by dot xpath uh, provide the xpath of that button and say dot click okay once you click on this button guys okay you'll get the search results here you'll get the search results here in the search results i have to assert whether uh, we got this hp product in the search results or not how to do that for that i'll inspect this such product link and this is a link text guys so i'll simply say driver dot find element by dot link text provide the sorry, control z so here i'll do one thing guys i'll directly write assert dot assert true i'll say and here i'll say driver dot find element by dot link text i'll say in the link text i'll provide this link text guys whatever the link text of this product i'll provide and finally i'll say is displayed dot is displayed okay this will if the product is displayed in the search results uh, the test will pass otherwise the test will fail okay okay so this will be unique for uh, each and every test so i cannot make it common guys okay this only this part is a common code now now next one what is the next one uh i have to create one more uh, here i have to say driver dot pit guys instead of writing driver dot pit here as you already know uh, i'll move this into the another method that is public void public void tear down okay tear down here i'll say at the rate after method okay at the rate after method import this uh, and now here do one thing here write down driver dot pitch done that's it now one more one more test method i'll create public void uh, next test case i'll take verify searching with a non existing product name non existing product name public void verify search with uh invalid product non existing or invalid product okay with product which doesn't exist in the application at the test okay here i'll say priority is equal to priority is equal to 2 and here i'll write down the code this code is common guys initializing the browser opening the application url is fine now the same steps need to be repeated. I have to click on the search button and I have to search for something. I'll copy paste this code and here I'll search for a product known as Honda. Honda is not there in this uh, application, guys. If I search for Honda, you see, there is no product that matches the search criteria will come. The product will not come in the search results. So I have to click on the search button. The same thing is there, but assertion should be different, guys. Okay. So here, what I will do is I'll verify whether this message is coming or not. Inspect this. This message is here, guys. Okay. P. But here, the top of the P is content. Under the content ID, I think directly, if you see, P is uh, there here directly under this, okay? Okay, so how can I do this? Uh, there's one more P also here. Or else, uh, under this heading, we have... Okay, let's see. Let's do something, guys. I'll create some export access kind of stuff and then get it done. Uh, here, div ID is there double slash div at the rate id is equal to give the id of that particular div and under that h1 is there i don't want h1 then h2 i want h2 is under this slash h2 i can say it's located it's a following sibling for h2 this is p is the following sibling so i'll say slash following hyphen sibling colon colon p you see the p is located this text we can retrieve now copy this i'll say here string actual actual search message is equal to driver dot find element by dot uh, provide the xpath of that message and say dot get text dot at the end you have said dot get text okay put a semicolon here done 
now actual search text here instead of assert true i'll write down instead of instead of assert true i'll write down like this i'll just minimize this so that you can see it properly assert dot assert equals and here actual search message i'll say and here other search message okay so here one more thing i have to write here guys okay if this uh, is not displayed okay valid product is uh, valid product uh, hp is not displayed in the search results i'll write like this okay so if in case this assertion fails that message should be displayed and here guys uh, actual search message and expected search message is what expected search message is this one okay if it is not expected uh, i'll say uh, no product in search results no product in search results uh, no product in search results is no product message in search results is not displayed okay some valid message is not displayed something like this yeah right just put a semicolon here that session is done driver dot pit is not required here because already we have written in the after method it will be called for every test method as you already know now let's create one more test method one more test case Third test case. This is the last one, guys. For sample, I'll I'll be automating these three test cases. Verify searching without providing any product name. Without providing uh, product name itself. Public void. Verify search without uh, searching for a product. Without any product. Without any product. Okay. Either it test. And here, simply say priority is equal to three. And uh, here. Till opening the application URL, it is written. Now, what we have to do here, just copy this part. I'll paste it in the third test again. Copy and paste in the third test. And here, <clears throat> diver dot find element by dot name search. So in case, uh, here, I'll not write anything. Click on the search button and the same message should come. Okay, if I don't search for anything, automatically the same message will come. Whatever the message that came for non-existing non product folder, the same thing will happen when you search without entering any product. You'll get the same message again. There is no product that matches such criteria, which is already written here. Okay, I don't have to do much. That's it, guys. You see, I automated the search related test cases also. Now, let me run the search related test cases. Okay, run all and see whether the tests are running or not. Okay, three tests should run and everything should pass. Let's see. In Edge browser, they are running as you can see. Whatever the browser name I provide, in that browser only they are running. Okay, in Edge browser they are running. Login test will run in Chrome browser. Register will run in Firefox. Such tests are running in Edge browser like that. Okay, we have done something. You see, three, three tests got passed. Now my requirement, let me check login, run all. They are run, they will run in Chrome browser. Because we are, we are passing Chrome browser here. Chrome browser here, while we are initializing the browser and opening the application URL. They are running in the Chrome browser, as you can see. All the Chrome browser, five, five, five automation tests are there, guys. Five test cases we have automated as part of login, and all five should pass. You say five out of five got passed and everything got executed. Similarly, register, they will be running in the Firefox because we provided Firefox here. Click on run all. Individually, we are running the automation test of login, automation test of register, and automation test of search. <clears throat> you see, in the Firefox browser, they are running the register test. Four, four test cases are there for register. Completed, guys. You see, we're able to run individual tests separately. But my requirement now is to run all the tests together. The five automation tests from login, 
the four automation tests from register and three automation from search. I want to run them together. What I have to do for that, I need to create a testng.xml file. So what I will do here is guys, here we have two source folders, as you can see, SRC main Java and SRC test Java. I'll create one more source folder, right click new. I'll just uh, mention that as source folder, and this is going to be SRC. Mm, instead of main test, I'll write uh, test resources. Okay, test resources. Okay, this is another source folder I'm creating, guys. SRC, like similar to SRC main Java, which came by default. SRC test Java also came by default. But this SRC test resources, I'm creating manually. Okay, it didn't came by template by default. Here, under this SRC test resources, I'm going to create testng.xml file. How to create a testng.xml file? Right click, right click on this SRC test resources, say testng and say convert to testng. Here nothing is coming. So it's not a better way to right click on this SRC test resources. So you need to right click on the project itself, right click. Okay, right click on the project. Don't right click on the SRC test resources, guys. Right click on the project, select testng and say convert to testng. You don't have to manually create the testng.xml file. You simply right click on the project and say test ng and convert to test ng guys, you'll get this dialog. You see, it's automatically creating. The content is getting automatically created and you are getting the classes. You see, register search login, everything is coming in this. Okay. So where it is getting created, it's create it getting created directly under the project guys. But I don't want to create test ng XML file under the project. Rather, I want to create under the SRC test resources. Simply click on browse, guys. Expand this SRC test resources select. Say okay. Now you see the path has been changed. The testing XML file will now create under the will get now created under the SRC test resources. Okay. So click on finish, guys. Click on finish. You see, under SRC test resources, testng.xml file got created. You can name it anything, guys. Even though I'm uh, by default, we are mentioning it as testing.xml file, you can name it anything. So when I open this testing.xml file, it is uh, looking like this. So uh, he, here in the bottom, you just select the source tab so that you can access the XML content. This is auto-generated, guys. All the classes we have created under the SRC test, uh, SRC test Java test, test cases package, right? Login register. They are added here along with the package names, com tutorials in your QA test cases dot register. Com tutorials in your QA test cases as such. Com tutorials in your, I didn't write all this stuff. They it, it, it got generated by default. Eclipse ID is generating this particular file by default with the way I have shown you. You have to follow the process for doing that. Now, what else we have to do? We can give it suit name, guys, a proper suit name we can give. You can say tutorials ninja automation suit okay like this and here for test also we can give uh, remove this thread count for now not required just give the name of the test as tutorials ninja test cases okay automation tests are test cases anything is fine okay whatever you want to write uh, you can write guys okay test tests or automation uh, tests or test cases you can write okay Tutorials in your tests. And here we have classes. Under the classes, first, it's already auto generated, guys. Okay. So if I run this uh, testng.xml file, once, if I run this testng.xml file, guys, okay, if I run this testng.xml file, first register test will run because in the testng.xml file, which class is mentioned first? Register class is mentioned first. So, so register test will run first, then search will run second and login. So I want to change the order, guys. I want search to be in the third position. Login to be in the first position. Uh, sorry, uh, login to be in the close it. Close it. Okay. Login. Uh, login. I want it to be in the second position. Guys. First register, then login, then search. I want to go with this order. I want. Okay. I don't want to go with this uh, login register search. Rather, register login search. I want to go with. So, whatever the order in which you want the different uh, functionality test you want to run, you have to uh, update the order in the testing XML file. I want to run the restart test first. So this class is provided first in the testing XML file, then login test, then search test. Save this, guys. Save this. Now, what you can do, <coughs> right click on this and say run as testing suite. Run as testing suite, guys. Okay. Instead of running the login.java separately, instead of running restart.java separately, where only restart related tests will run, if I right click on search and say run as testing test, it will only run the test from the search. But if I want to run all these three tests, uh, all the tests inside these three classes, then I have to create this kind of test change XML file under SRC test resources where all these classes are provided. If any class is missing, you can just copy paste this one and just change the name. Okay. 
and uh, you will get that class also. All the tests from that class. And the order also you have to decide. And now all this uh, test from these three classes, register, login, and such in this specified order will be running, guys. And in individually in login, there are five tests and they have the priority. They will decide, priority will decide the order in the login test. But externally, out of these three classes, which class will run first? Register class test will run first. And internally, log priority will take care of the priority order. Okay. Rightly run as here you are getting a different option. Instead of getting test and GTS, you are getting test and GSP. Just select that option, guys. All the tests will run. 5 plus 4 plus 3. That is 9 plus 3. That is 12. 12 tests will run. First, you see, restart tests are running in the Firefox browser. Four tests will run in the Fire Firefox browser one by one. All the 12 tests should run and pass case, okay? One by one, okay? We are running as a batch. This call is running as a batch case, okay? You see now login tests are running in the Chrome browser. Now, uh, such tests are running in the Edge browser. Three such tests will run one by one. You see, all the 12 tests got run and all the 12 tests got passed. You can see the, what is the test engine results tab also. You can see here clearly under register, you see one, two, three, four tests got run. Under login, one, two, three, four, five tests got run. Under such, one, two, three. Whatever the test, test case I have automated under each and every class. Register login and such. They all got executed here and everything got passed. Nothing got failed or skipped. Okay, that's fine for now. So this is the testng.xml file and how to run the test as a batch. Okay, how to run multiple tests as a batch. I've shown you. Now, what I want to do next is I want to go to one of the file login.java and I want to remove the hard coding part. Okay. Next problem I'm going to solve, guys. Okay. Next problem I am going to solve. That is, I want to remove the hard coding part. What is the hard coding part? Here you see the Chrome browser is hard coded. Okay. And also in the base class, if you see, if you go to the base here, the URL is hard coded. URL is hard coded. Tomorrow this URL changes. I have to go to the base class and update it. Or this URL may be part of every test case. So I have to update it. Okay. So this browser, I have to go to each and every class, login class, I have to change the browser. Go to the register and have to change the browser. Search and go, in, uh, go and change the browser. Okay. So the high level details like username, uh, uh, sorry, uh, like uh, URL, browser name, such kind of things we need to, okay, such kind of things we need to uh, remove the hard coding guys. Okay. We have to remove a lot of hard coding guys. We have to remove a lot of hard coding. So let's start with this uh, browser name and uh, the URL. Okay. For now. And here valid credentials, invalid credentials, all these things uh, we have to, okay. So we have to pass these credentials from some place, okay. Some properties file or we have to create a properties file now, okay. To remove the hard coding, what we are going to do is we are going to create a properties file. I explained the concept of properties file in the previous sessions of this series itself. You can watch my previous videos of this training series where I covered the properties file, okay, in Java and all. So how to get, uh, how to use that properties file, I'll show you. So here, as part of the framework, under SRC main Java, I'll create one package known as package com dot tutorials ninja dot ua dot config. Okay, config, config properties file. Click on finish and here, right click on this package and say new and create a 
create a file guys okay create a file and here give the name as config dot properties file config dot properties file you can give smaller whatever you feel convenient okay no problem config dot properties file is created here i'll mention the url guys i don't want to hard code the url in the base or any other place okay this url I, I want to remove the hard coding tomorrow. If the URL changes, I will directly come to the config file, a central place known as config file, where I'll update the URL here. Tomorrow, your client will give you another URL. Okay, you should not touch any of the base class or login tests here. Rather, login uh, this any of these test classes you don't have to touch, or any of these base class you don't have to touch when URL changes. Directly come to the config dot properties and update the URL here. That's number one thing, <clears throat> and also. This automation test should run in which browser? All this automation test should run in only one browser. Login should run in Chrome. Restart should run in Firefox. Search will run in Edge. It is not like that, guys. Okay. All the automation tests should run in only one browser. Which browser? That browser should be mentioned here in the properties file. Browser is equal to, okay, let's say Chrome. Okay. All the tests will run in the Chrome browser in this case. Okay. Save this. So, any other properties if you want to mention, uh, you can mention here, guys. Okay. Any other properties. Okay. I, for now, let's go with the URL and browser for now. So what I'll do here is here in the base class. Okay. I'll create one method in the base class. I'll create one method known as public void load properties file. Okay. A method I'll create inside the base class known as load properties file. And here I'll do one thing. I'll create an object and create an object for the properties file in Java. Okay. This concept I covered in the previous session, guys. So properties, properties, prop is equal to new properties. Like this, you have to create an object for the properties class in Java. This from Java, guys. Okay. Import this from java.util package. Now say prop.load. Which file I have to load? I have to load this properties file. But here it's expecting the input stream. This load method of this properties class is expecting the input stream. So what I will do is I'll say file input stream FIS is equal to new file input stream I'll write down. Okay. Now import this file input stream from java.io package. And here this constructor is ex expecting a file. So for that I'll write file file what file prop file. Okay. File prop file is equal to new file. Okay. Here I have to provide the path of the properties file. Okay, I have to represent the properties file. So I have to import this file from java.io package. And this uh, here I have to give the path, guys. Path of the properties file. Where is this properties file available? I'll write down like this system dot get property user dot dir. Okay, user dot dir. If I write this statement, guys, this will get the path of the project up to the project path. Under the project, where is this properties file? Under the project, under src main java, under this com tutorials ninja dot qa config, we have the config dot properties file available. Okay, how to get that? So I'll say plus. So here under this project, double backward slash src, double backward slash main, double backward slash java, double backward slash com, double backward slash tutorials ninja, double backward slash QA, double backward slash config, double that's it. Uh, config double backward slash. Now give the properties file name. Config dot properties like this. Okay. Like this, you have to give the path, guys. After giving the path, take this proper file and give that in the file input stream constructor. And take this file input stream and give that in the load. Now you see you have to surround this particular two statements inside the try catch blocks. Okay. So how to surround these two statements in the try catch blocks? Uh, these two statements are giving some checked exceptions. So I'll write down try here and uh, catch. Okay. Uh, exception. Exception. Exception is a parent, so I can give no problem. Or throwable also I can give. Okay. Throwable, which is grandparent. Okay. So if any exception comes, I'll simply e dot. I'll say print stack trace. Okay, done. Like this, I'll write the code. Okay, if any exceptions comes, uh, comes uh, if this path is not existing, you'll get an uh, exception here. Okay. This for loading the properties file, guys. Once the properties file is loaded with this load method, then you can access the properties from the properties file. 
okay the properties file need to be loaded so here how the properties file will be loaded if you are calling this initialize browser and open application url before this itself this properties file should be loaded okay so i'll make it global guys i'll make this particular part global and remove the local declaration and here instead of hard coding the url guys instead of hard coding the url here i'll simply say prop dot get prop dot get property which property name from the properties file i have to give the url as a property you see i am removing the hard coding here guys okay i'm getting this url from the config dot properties file okay after loading the properties file automatically this will be done okay so this uh, method should be called first before this initializing browser method we have to call the load properties file method okay so that properties file will be loaded and uh, i'll make this public guys i'll make this public i'll make this properties file public okay this prop should be public so that it can be accessed inside of the child classes and all okay inside the child classes it can be accessed or inside the other other classes it can access we can access so here url hard coding is removed guys few more hard codings are there i'll come to that later here 10 and 5 are there i'll come to that later okay i i should not put this 10 and 5 everything i should not put inside the config dot properties file guys okay so this 10 and 5 has a separate place so uh, we'll put that there okay we'll put that there so what i will do next is here url hard coding is removed from the base class now i'll go to the login.java and before you call this initialize browser you have to call the load properties method so one way is like uh, since login is a parent of the uh, sorry child of the base class you can call this method directly that is uh, one way that is uh, you can simply call this uh, method and you don't have to do anything okay before you call this uh, initialize browser you have to call this method so nothing will no, no problem will happen okay properties file will be loaded and uh, things will happen properly so what is the other way is uh, if you don't want to call this explicitly like this there's another way where you can create a constructor in the okay instead of calling uh, instead of making this method as load properties file you can create a constructor here public void base constructor okay this base constructor will have this code for loading the properties file okay this base constructor will have the code for loading the properties file okay this is another way guys okay there are two ways either you can give the name as load properties file and call it uh, from the child class or you can make this make, make this particular method as a base constructor you see constructor will have the same name as the class name and uh, what i will do here is here instead of calling this load properties uh, file and all here i'll create one more constructor public i'll say login okay this is the, this is a, and here whenever this class is executed i'll write super here that means super means super class constructor to the login who is a super class base class base class constructor will be called automatically and the properties file will be loaded okay this is another way guys okay the, either this way or this way anything is fine up to you guys I'll, I'll stick to this way this looks good for me or you can also go with the load properties file method okay so here constructor what is the problem here change to const okay it should not have written type constructor should not have written type i wrote it from public no return type so base okay you see the code will be loaded this is one way or you can directly call also if you don't want to create this kind of approach you can simply call the method here every time you have to call the method or you have to create this kind of constructor which has which can call the super constructor okay parent class constructor automatically so any of the ways you are loading the properties file guys okay up to you so let's go with this uh, let's stick to this one of the method or you can go with that method up to you but for now in the framework i'm sticking to this method this looks for, good for me so it will load the properties file and then all the hard coded values will be gone so here in the login guys uh, after, after this properties file is loaded and uh, once we get the driver and all uh, here i want to remove the hard coding of the browser name i want to get the browser name from the properties file for that prop dot prop dot get property since this prop is uh, kind of a property of the parent class and it is also public right i can, uh, child class can access no problem without any problem okay so prop dot get property uh prop dot get property and give the property name what is the property name we have for the browser browser okay uh, browser or browser name whatever you feel convenient just give some name here save all and go to the login and give uh browser name here that's it okay you see hard coding is removed from the 
tests. I don't have to go to each and every test and every time I have to run on Chrome browser, I don't have to open the test and then change the value here. Rather now, these properties are being read from the properties file, okay? Next what? Next is, <clears throat> lot of data is there in this, lot of data is there in this uh, files. So, let's see what I can remove the hard coding of. Email address, password, that's fine. Username, password we can give. And uh, this username, password can be common guys, okay? Valid username, password, you may have to use multiple times. So, that's one thing. And a lot of data you cannot put into this uh, fields, okay? A lot of data you cannot put into this uh, config.properties file. Basically, URL, browser, one or two more properties you will generally put, not much, okay? Remaining all things we'll put into the Excel file, guys, okay? I'll show you how to read the data from the Excel files, okay? How to read the data from the Excel files, I'm going to show you guys. But for now, only few properties you have to mention, only uh, uh, project level properties, okay? Project level properties like URL, browser name, username, password, uh, which are common for all the tests, such kind of common properties you have to write here. Uh, individual test related uh, uh, hard coded values, you should not write here. You should not create the properties for individual test related. Common things only. Coming to the common things, you generally use login. You uh, Sometimes you have to login and perform some actions, right? This username and pass password may be required multiple times for us, okay? So these are common across multiple tests. So I'll, I'll, I'll remove the hard coding of this, okay? Remaining all hard coding, I'll not remove. For each and everything, I'll not remove, guys, okay? So basic ones, okay? Basic configurations only, basic project level, high level configurations only, and I'll put, okay? So I'll say valid email, valid email. Valid email is equal to, what is the valid email address we have? Uh, this is the valid email address we have, and I'll give that here, and Valid password is valid password. What is a valid password? One, two, three, five, or five is a valid password. Okay, save this all and go to the login. And here, remove this part. Remove this part and write down prop dot get property. What is the property name? Email address. Valid email. Copy this and provide inside the login. Okay. And here, valid password I have to give. Prop dot get property. Prop dot get. Uh, Okay, dot get property. I'll give uh valid password. Valid password. Okay, some hard coding I'm removing, not entire hard coding. Okay, not entire hard coding I'm removing. Only few hard coding, few portions of hard coding I'm removing. Okay. So the data should not be hard coded in the disk. Okay, the data should not be hard coded in the disk. Either it should be part of the config file, config.properties file, or some other Excel file we have to read the data from. It should not be there in the individual test methods, okay? So that is the thing. Now, what else uh, is hard-coded still? So remaining all, I will put it as usual, guys, telephone number, uh, password, uh, invalid password, let it be there, gender time, so I don't have to do anything. Remaining all, I will just leave it like that. Okay, so any other stuff is there. Okay. Here, valid password again, okay? In this case, write prop dot get property valid password I have to give. Then this is valid email. So here also I have to change prop dot get property valid email. Not all the things shouldn't be part of the config dot properties. Well, only important things should be important project level properties should be part of the Important common project level properties should be part of the config.properties file. Remaining all will come from the test cases, guys. Okay. I mean, Excel files, Excel files. Okay. Remaining data will put into the Excel files. Uh, I'll show you that later. Okay. For now, let's partially remove the hard coding using the properties file like this. Okay. By accessing this uh, things like this. Okay. Any other places? Uh, I think this is fine in the login case. Uh, I'll go to the register now. I'll go to the register.java and uh, here also Firefox browser is there. I'll remove this and say prop. Get property. I'll write down the property name that is browser. Only one browser should be, uh, all the tests should be running only on one browser. It should be not be a mix of browsers. Okay. So now this time all the tests will run in the Chrome browser because that is the properties, property, config.properties file. Chrome browser is mentioned. Any other stuff? Foreign motory and all. Uh, this is actually a valid password, guys. This is a valid password. Prop.get property. 
this is valid password so i'll wherever possible i'll provide the valid password guys okay prop dot get property here also valid password i'll write down sorry i'm writing valid uh, email i guess valid password i have to write password valid password done okay then next i think this part is done here also i'll just copy paste this one guys for, for valid password okay valid password valid password remaining all okay i don't have to worry okay fine here again valid password valid password sometimes when you paste it will go to another tab that's okay come back and then paste it properly any other place no that's it okay i think we are good in the register.java file also close this register.java and open the search.java here edge browser is there in place of this only one browser should come that is from the properties file prop.get property and browser name i guess copy this browser name copy this browser name and in the search you provide the browser name that's it okay and a valid product all these things will come from the excel file okay we'll remove the hard coding of the remaining data by putting this data into the excel files okay i'll show you how to do that so for now this much is fine any other stuff okay this is fine guys only basic high level project level common properties need to be put into the config.properties file okay so the things which are common across multiple files okay that need to be coming here uh, which are unique for every test okay individual classes related Test data will be there, right? That should not be part of the config.properties file, okay? Common data should be part of the config.properties file. Uncommon data, which is specific to any particular classes or individual tests, should be part of the Excel file, okay? We'll store the data into the Excel file and read. Using this framework, we are going to read the data from the Excel file later. Remaining portion will remove later, okay? Save this. For now, we have implemented the properties file. I'll again run the testng.xml file and see whether the tests are running properly after moving the common data into the uh, common config data into the project level config data into the properties file. Okay. Let's run this code. Right click run as test and issue. And let's see whether, uh, let me stop it for a while. Let me stop it guys. So I forgot to do one thing here only in the login. I provided this, uh, constructor and super. Okay. I have to repeat the same in register also. Okay. You should not forget this. Okay. Register, register constructor, super. Okay search constructor search you see when search uh, constructor is called autom uh, automatically search constructor will be called first okay uh, when i run this search constructor will be called and automatically super constructor uh, that is uh, nothing but in the base class whatever the parent class constructor that is base class constructor will be called and uh, the properties file will be loaded otherwise you will get errors case okay make sure that uh, you have provided that in each and every class that constructor okay now run the testng.xml file, right click run as uh, testng suite and see what's happening. All the two well text should run. Yeah, data is coming, that's fine. URL is coming and means it's fine. I think 5.4 test should run first, but what happened? Chrome browser tests are running first. Let's see what's happening. Let it run, guys. Uh, if any problems, we'll resolve. Okay. So why it's running in all the Chrome browser, guys? Uh, you remember, right? Properties. From properties, we mention only one browser that is Chrome browser. Okay, no more the scripts will not, individual test classes will not be running in different browsers now because at the project level, we gave in config.properties, we gave the browser name as Chrome. So the scripts are running only in Chrome browser. Okay, whatever it may be, register test or login test or such test, all the tests are running in the Chrome browser only. All the 12 tests will run in the Chrome browser, guys, one by one. Okay, when search are running in the Chrome browser, no more edge browser. You see, all the tests got passed. So what if, uh, if I have to run the scripts on a different browser, I don't have to touch any base or login register search, just go to the config properties. Tomorrow URL changes or browser name, you want to run the scripts on different browser. Okay, just give the browser name here and save it. Okay, 
or username password change, you can go to the config.properties and change it. Okay. Now the test will run in the Firefox browser, guys. All the tests, all the dual tests will run in the Firefox browser. Okay. At a high level, you can update the browser name. You don't have to go to the individual class and update. So we have removed some partial hard coding guys. Okay. Partial hard coding, uh, the two of the, we create by creating the config dot properties where we have put all the high level pro pro project properties. Okay. High level project properties, common project properties across the classes. So all the tests are running in the Firefox browser now. Let all the 12 tests run, then we'll be good. So few more hard codings were there. Uh, I'll show you other way of uh, removing the hard coding of the, those kind of things, constant kind of things we can say. Okay, we cannot put them into the config.properties file or neither we can put those kind of stuff into the uh, Excel sheets. So we have to put it at different place. Okay, I'll show you that removing of the hard coding of other things that cannot be put into the config.properties file, neither they cannot be put into the uh, Excel sheets, okay, test data, like a test data. So those are like kind of constants, guys. I'll show you one example for that. You will, you will see after this test got run, I'll show you the examples for them, okay, of the hard-coded values, which can be removed from the test or from the files to remove the hard-coding. And those cannot be put into the config.properties file and they cannot be put into the Excel files. After this running, I'll show you that part. All the dual tests should run. Let's see. So we are at which part? Let's see. We are at which part? You see, all the dual tests got run in the Firefox browser now. Okay, Firefox browser. That's all good. I'll change it back to the Chrome browser, guys. And let me stick to Chrome browser for a while. Okay, until it is needed for me to update. Okay. So next thing is, I told you, right? Uh, if you go to the base.java, guys, there are some hard-coded values. Okay, apart from the URL. Here, 10 is hard-coded, 5 is hard-coded. These are constants, guys. I don't want to update them. Okay, I don't want someone to update them. So how to do that? I don't want to update these values directly from here. Rather, I want to put these things as common things from a different place. Okay, I want to access this 10 and 5 from a common place. But I cannot put this 10 and 5 into this uh, config properties, uh, nor I can put into this uh, Excel sheets, because these are not the test data. Okay, these are project settings kind of data. So what I will do here is, uh, uh, remember we created under SRC main Java, we created something known as utils package. We have the utils.java. Here one method we have created. So similarly, we'll create uh, variables here, okay? Public, static, final, like this I'll create, okay? Final means you cannot update later, okay? Public, static, final. Variable name you give you, that is uh, implicit weight time, okay? Is equal to, implicit weight time is equal to, just give some 10. Okay, I'm not able to put uh, syntax error token float expected. Okay, public, it's a problem. Public, uh, okay. Let's sit, wait, what is the problem here? Okay. Mm. I'll do one thing. Public static. I'll say public static and say wait time is equal to 10 if I write. Any problem coming? Variable declarator ID expected after this token. Okay. It's the public utilities class and uh, this is the method, right? Uh, this is the method, and before the method, inside the class, we are creating this. What if I remove this uh, 
then also it's a problem sorry i forgot one thing guys okay public static final inch now it's fine okay i forgot the data type okay you see how much crazy i am public static final int wait time is equal to 10 i am saying and uh, this is not going to change because final is there the 10 cannot be updated from the other places here only when initialized you have to update okay static means with the help of this utilities class you can uh, access this variable that's why i'm making this static that's the reason i'm making static final means you cannot update the value anywhere else inside the other classes so wait uh, implicit wait time right implicit underscore wait time okay again one more public static final i'll say int again int i'll say implicit wait time is over page wait time page wait time okay i'll give five here okay like this now how to access these things i'll go to the base.java guys okay and instead of giving these values directly hard coded here i'll say utilities first i'll say utilities dot implicit wait time just select that that's it you see it's not hard coded anymore it's being accessed from the utilities class ut if we have to change this value we have to go to the utilities and then update the value of that waiting time okay this is page wait time okay page wait time page load time or page wait time better it should be page load time right i'll change it to page load time here so that it will be good the reading wise it will be good implicit wait time and page load time so here i'll say page dot page load time utilities dot page load time done okay so we have removed the hard coding complete hard coding from these things okay uh, none, none other things are hard coded here that's fine okay so this is fine guys uh, this are uh, nothing is hard coded okay nothing is uh, remaining in this base class let's see whether these things are working fine or not after i have moved those things into the config.properties file let me run this time in the edge browser guys edge browser i'll give it here edg if you want to give in capital case lower case then it will be a problem guys case sensitive right so if you give capital case it is not going to work because inside this base class i have written the logic like this dot equals if i have to ignore the case i have to write some methods like this uh, dot equals ignore case i have to write instead of equals i have to use equals ignore case if case doesn't matter for me okay and uh, it should be chrome here okay remove this part okay the better way to do is instead of equals right equals ignore case because in sometimes we forget to uh, provide in lower case and we'll provide in upper case then problem will come okay so instead of equals use dot equals dot equals ignore case based on the problem statements we are doing all this stuff guys you see i'm explaining everything based on the problem statement okay so this is how we have to learn the framework equals ignore case and remove this part done okay now here also dot equals ignore case remove this part okay okay uh, okay so what else is there Save this. That's fine. Mm. Okay. So done. Now I change it to Edge browser and also I remove the hard coding of uh, this uh, two variables. So let's run in the Edge browser and see whether still it is working fine. Okay, the scripts are running in the Edge browser or not. Right click run as session is switch. All the scripts should run in the Edge browser now. Okay, first restart test should run in the Edge browser, then login test should run in the Edge browser, and finally the search test should run in the Edge browser. First restart tests are going to run in the Edge browser. Okay, restart tests are running in the Edge browser. All the 12 tests should run one by one.
you see all the tests got run in the edge browser okay great so it's working fine guys all the things are working fine uh, now i'll just change it back to the chrome browser i'll stick to the chrome browser oh, unless it is required to change to other browser i'll come here and change okay done any mistakes no so well done so so far guys this much uh, for the third session i think this is enough for third session guys we removed the hard coding partial hard coding we have removed still there is something that need to be removed the hard coding of uh, if you see the login dot java there are a lot of other things which are still hard coded okay there are other things which are hard coded guys for example here one this uh, invalid uh, tell, uh, invalid uh, password is hard coded still a lot of things are hard coded here guys okay so here invalid uh, password then if you come to the restart dot java here also this arun is hard coded first name is hard coded last name is hard coded telephone number is hard coded okay a lot of things are still hard coded a lot of things are still hard coded here valid product is hard coded invalid product is hard coded like that many things are hard coded okay those i have to take into the I have to read from the excel file okay I want to store the remaining data into the Excel file. I cannot store everything into the config.properties file, as I already mentioned. I'm going to store such kind of, I'm going to uh, centralize those uh, data by removing the hard coding from the individual test by moving the data into the Excel file and reading the data from the Excel file into this individual test. Okay, that's what I'm going to do in the next session. Okay, in the next session, we are going to see integrating of this framework with Excel files uh, by using POI API, reading the test data from the Excel files into the into the project, okay, into the project tests, okay. So we'll be removing the next level of hard coding next, okay. So hard coding should not be there, guys, okay. We have to centralize either in config.properties file or utilities.java, we have to hard code, remove the hard coding and move the data into the utilities.java. Now remaining data, we have to move into the hard coded data, we have to move into the Excel file, okay. Remo remaining data, we have to move into the Excel file, okay. Let's see that in the next session. So that's all for this session, but uh, before moving on, I'll just mention a note here. Uh, removing the hard coding. Okay, removing the hard coding from base and uh, test classes. Okay, test classes. Uh, what are the different things we have imp implemented as part of uh, <clears throat> Okay, as part of this, uh, one minute uh, here, I need to change the structure a bit. This creating the Maven project, installing. Uh, okay, I'll just move it here better. Just make a different structure on the go. So all this stuff, uh, utilities class, before method, after method, create base and all, removing hard coding, all this will come here. So one minute, like this I'll put. Don't worry guys, I'll provide this uh, X mind as part of the notes. These notes will be updated now, okay? Uh, when I started a session, there are the notes are not there. So this mind map I'll provide as part of the notes, okay? So removing hard coding here, let's update. Okay, this is how we have to create the mind map. So removing the hard coding from the base and test classes uh, uh, using properties, using properties, creating config.properties, config.properties, okay? high level properties. Then uh, what else next? Uh, where did I explain the running as batch uh, in this session only, right? Here itself, running the test, test classes in batch, batch. I have used testng.xml file, okay? I created testng.xml file, src test resources folder I created, source folder, under that testng.xml file I created and I have run that, okay? Organized and run that. The next one is removing the hard coding I have started and uh, utilities, utilities, okay. Utilities have added some uh, static final variables, variables, okay. So waiting time and uh, implicit wait time, implicit 
wait time, removing the hard coding of implicit wait time and page load time. Okay, removing the hard coding of these two things. Okay. Then what else next, guys? Uh, that's it. That's it. Uh, that's what I have explained. Uh, let me see if I have anything else I covered in this session. Config dot properties is main thing. Then utilities also added something and. Uh, uh, I think that's the thing. Mm. Uh, loading the properties file. Okay. Loading properties file. I explained the, the code about the loading properties file. In every class, I created a constructor, right? Constructor. Constructor super keyword. I okay. Just highlighting the stuff. That's it. Okay. Super class constructor will be called properties file. You will be loaded, and all these properties will be updated and. Uh, yeah, okay. Anything else? I think that's it. That's it. That's it. That's it. I covered in this session. These two are the areas, guys. I covered in this session. So in the next session, I'll remove the other uh, test data, uh, other hard coded test data from the test uh, by moving those test data into the Excel sheets. And from the Excel Excel files, we are going to read the test data into our test. Okay. Fine. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part four of hybrid test ng framework using page object model and page factory training series in this session i am going to continue removing the hard coding data from the individual test okay i am going to remove the hard coding data in the previous session itself we started removing the hard coded data but we have partially removed but in this session we are going to completely remove the hard coded data from the individual test Okay, so earlier in the previous session, I have created this config dot properties where the high level project level hard coded data is moved to a centralized place. Okay, now this base and this uh, this classes will refer to this config dot properties. Okay, if any of the URL if a URL changes or browser name changes or any email or password changes, we don't have to touch any of this base or login register, such kind of tests. Okay. Rather, we can directly go to config.properties and we have to update the URL. And all these classes will refer to this config.properties and get the data from there, get the updated data from there. Okay. It's like a centralized repository for storing the data of all these particular tests and all these tests and classes will refer the data from this single location, single centralized repo known as config.properties. But now there's a lot of other data which is still hard coded in this individual test. If I go to this, uh, if I go to this base.java, everything is removed already. Okay. We have removed everything, guys. So here you see we have removed everything. The URL is also not hard coded. Uh, implicit weight is not hard coded. Implicit weight is uh, now provided in the utilities. Implicit weight time and page load time is also provided under the utilities as explained yesterday in the previous session. Now, if I go to the login.java, if I come from the first line onwards, if I keep on checking, okay, so here browser name is uh, removed hard coding. We have removed the hard coding of the browser name and uh, this, this prop.get property will get the browser name from the properties file, okay? So like that we have designed. Now keep on going down. And here, if you see here, valid email is coming from the config.properties file. Valid password is coming from config.properties file. And uh, here, yeah, that's it. Displayed, okay, fine. Next, there is no hard-coded data so far. If you see here, this is a dynamically generating data, guys. So we cannot, uh, remove this okay this cannot be put into a centralized place because it's it's it will change keep on changing every time right it will generate the email with time stamp so it's not in our hands but this data one two three four five six seven eight nine zero is an invalid password that we what what that we are trying to give provide here right there is invalid password so such kind of data i cannot put into the config dot properties file because i am already mentioned high level project level uh data okay which is common across all the multiple tests we generally put it here in the config dot properties but this is specific to this particular test or whatever it is so for such kind of data what i will do is i'll create another package guys okay i'll create another package right click new package com dot tutorials ninja dot qa dot test data i'll say test data in this under this test data package i'll create a properties file 
I'll create one more properties file. I'll say test data dot property extension should be dot properties. Okay, dot properties. I create proper, no, there is a spelling mistake here. Let me right click uh, rename proper properties. Now it's cut. Let's open test data dot proper properties. Okay, now here, I'll do the stuff, okay? So here, invalid password, right? I'll just provide, I'll provide a command here. So login test data, like this, okay? And here, this is a command, guys. Under this command, I'll provide all the test data, invalid password. Invalid password is equal to, what is the invalid password? This is the one. Copy this and paste it here. So how to get this data? How to read this data, how this uh, login test method can read this invalid password from this test data properties file. For that, again, we have to go to the base.java guys, where in the base constructor, we have loaded only one properties file. Okay, I'll create one more properties. Okay. I'll say prop uh, data prop is equal to new properties. Properties, okay. Here I'll say public properties data prop data prop otherwise data prop like this I'll create one more uh, object for this properties uh, class the object reference name is data properties mm -hmm. okay so now I'll say data prop dot load i will say load here input stream is required so again i will say file input stream fis fis2 or something is equal to new file input stream now this will read, uh, this will this will need file and say file data prop file is equal to new new file here system dot get property user dot dir. This will get the project path till here. Where is the test data dot properties file? Under this project, under SRC main Java, under this com tutorials ninja QA test data, we have this properties file. So I'll give the path here. Plus double code, double backward slash SRC main Java com tutorials ninja backward slash double backward slash QA test data double backward slash test data dot properties like this I'll create the file done I'll import uh, I'll copy this data properties here file inputs to the file input stream and here this file input stream to I'll just forward here okay Otherwise, I'll say data IFIS, data IFIS, okay, data IFIS, this data IFIS, I'll provide here, okay, that's fine. Now, here you're getting a checked exception, checked exception is coming here, file not found, and here IO exception is coming, you can put like this, right, catch, you can put either IO exception or you can say toggle, okay, if you don't want to worry much. C dot print actress. That's it. It's two lines you just organize by pressing tab. That's it. Enough. So here we have prop and data prop. Okay. They will be loaded automatically, guys. Base constructor will be called, right? Automatically it will be called. You see this uh, this particular constructor in the login, which has super, will call the super constructor. That is a parent class constructor, the base constructor, and base constructor will load all these two properties files automatically. Okay, in the beginning of the class itself. Now Simply, it's also public, right? So what I can do here is I'll go to the test method where I need to get this uh, data from the invalid uh, password. Data prop dot get property. What is the property name? So this is data prop, right? Data prop dot get property. Which property? This is invalid password property. Copy this and paste it here that's it okay we, are, we have removed the hard coding of the other data also okay we are putting that test data into the property another properties file instead of config dot properties we are putting into another properties file okay so then 
actual warning message is equal to get text. That's fine. Expected warning message I want to get from the properties file. Okay. This expected warning message I want to get from the properties file. Okay. So copy this part. What is this expected warning message? No match for email password warning. Email password, password, no match, no match warning is equal to give this warning message. Copy this and come back here. And here, instead of writing this thing, just say data prop dot get uh, prop dot get property in that provide that email password no matching from this here this one okay that's it so we have the actual message we have the expected message and uh fine that's fine that's enough okay so hard coding is removed from this test now let's go to the another test here this we cannot do anything valid password is already there there's nothing here no match for email password is already given right so this one same thing string expected warning message just copy paste here so you don't have to worry much this one invalid password okay invalid password so for invalid password already we have uh where is that data property dot get property invalid password okay I'll copy this and paste it here instead of hard coding we are removing the hard coding of the data from the files now again the same message copy this paste it here any other place I have to make yeah here also I have to paste and this one I cannot centralize in uh, I cannot remove this is a blank right so you are not entering anything in fact you can remove these things okay in fact you don't have to write these two lines there's no need of writing because you are directly clicking on the login button there is no need to write okay those steps you can remove those steps you see whenever you feel you can optimize the test you can keep on updating okay so i just found that okay why to enter anything if there is nothing to be entered i felt like that and i removed those steps okay like that okay then this login related hard coding is removed okay then so we got two properties under the login test data okay now here i'll write register register test data okay yeah better all here also i'll write test data like this okay it will be looking good save all so i'll go to the register.java guys okay and i'll come from the top nothing is uh, there here but here first name okay copy this come back here here mention first name is equal to test. then i'll just do a lot of uh, things and then i'll update then here we have the last name Come back here. Say last name is equal to that. Then we have this one. We cannot do anything. It is invalid. Uh, uh, this is telephone number, guys. Okay, telephone number. So I'll say telephone number is equal to done. And then what else we have? Valid password. Valid password. Okay. Okay. So anything else? this one this part your account has been created this is a heading right heading okay account uh, success, uh, successfully created heading account successfully fully created heading is equal to give that heading now same this is there anything else i have to do for the remaining test this is already done okay All these things are done right if you find anything we'll do it there's another warning message this part duplicate email warning okay duplicate email warning duplicate email warning is equal to that one then any other hard coding i have to remove so a lot of warning messages are there here. Let's go one by one with another warning. Copy this privacy policy warning. 
privacy policy warning is equal to then what else we have other warnings also we have first name warning is a first name warning then we have last name warning is a last name warning Removing the hard coding is very important, guys. Okay, so it will reduce our maintenance work. Okay, whenever you have to update anything, you don't have to touch any of this uh, test classes or base class. Directly go to the properties file, update it here. Okay, or go to the utilities and then update the values. Okay, for now. So then we have this email address warning. Email warning. Is equal to done. Then we have telephone warning. Telephone, telephone warning is equal to. Then we have password warning. This is password warning till here. Password warning is equal to done. So the register for now uh, will copy this first name property i'll copy this first name property and go to the register here i'll say first name where is first name here is the first name here i'll say data prop dot get property first name here data Prop dot get property here. I have to provide the last name. Here data prop data prop dot get property um, telephone right telephone number. Okay, this come back here. Telephone number. Now here, data prop dot get property account successfully created heading. Now here, the same things will be repeated around motory and first name, last name, telephone. They are same now. Nah? I'll do one thing, first name, last name, I'll copy paste just to save time. Then we have telephone number. We have to copy paste the telephone. This is the telephone. Done. Very well. Okay. There is nothing here. And your account has been successfully created. This is the one. Yeah, the same thing. Done. Now with existing email address, verify registering account with existing email address. So first name, last name are same. Copy this, first name, last name are same. And after that, email address, telephone, okay, email address and telephone. Email address is valid email address, right? This is, this is valid email address. Uh, I think we have to put a uh, normal prop. Okay, where is the normal prop? I'll say prop dot get property. From the config properties, we have to get that, okay. Valid email. Give that here. That's it. Now, for tele uh, telephone, we already have here. Copy this line. Come back here. Telephone. Done. For password, already there. Input confirm also there. Yeah, clicking on the button doesn't require. Warning email address is already registered. Okay, here. It should not be there. It's a warning message. Data prop dot get property. Give the pro, uh, warning. What is the warning, guys? Warning is duplicate email warning. Okay. Then after that, come back here. Directly clicking all the warning messages related stuff is there here. Here, remove this warning message, privacy warning. 
data prop dot get property privacy warning privacy policy warning done the problem okay there is one circular bracket missing so here also this is first name warning data prop dot get property and first name warning name warning then here i'll remove this part data prop dot get property last name warning last name warning we are completely removing the hard coding of the data from the individual test and we are centralizing them in this kind of properties files so here email warning data prop dot get property email warning then here telephone warning data prop dot get property here telephone warning here data prop dot get property it is password warning okay done we are done removing the hard coding from that individual uh, register.java files uh, then what next hash uh, then we have search search test data any test data is there in the search we can get it here open the search.java and come from the top okay browser name is already removed and here valid product okay hp i'll go to this test data and say valid product is equal to then what else test data is there uh, this is not required then test is displayed fine here honda another invalid uh, product invalid valid product invalid product invalid product is equal to give that invalid product here then uh, there's a message coming there's a warning message uh, i mean kind of text message you can say not warning this part, uh, okay there is no product no product text no product uh, text in such results is equal to this one then what else is there there's no product that's it for blank you don't have to enter this line is not required at all you directly have to click on the button without entering anything so i have removed that line whenever i get a chance to reduce the number of lines of code i keep on doing that this message is same so i think uh, we are good so let's start from the beginning and replace the hard coded data with the data prop let's read the data from the property files okay get property which property this is valid product property just give valid product here then we have okay that's it now invalid product this one data prop dot get property invalid product this is invalid product give it here then here this message instead of this message are putting this message data prop dot get property provide this no product text uh, text in such results property same thing you copy paste here also this place also done so it's done guys uh, we have removed the hard coding of all the tests and uh, let's see whether uh, the tests are running fine after moving the hard coding data to this uh, test data to this uh, test data dot properties file uh, all things working fine or not let's see so i'll right, right click i'll open this session.xml file uh, here all the test register login and such related test all the 12 tests should run from individual classes so 5 plus 4 plus 3 that is 12 tests right click run as test and should the tests are running fine we are good so chrome browser they are running because in the config dot properties chrome is mentioned
the contest got executed. Okay, let's see. Okay, you see, all, all the tests got passed. Okay, working fine. So now, is it done? No, guys, it's not done yet. Okay. So what we are going to do next is, uh, we have not completely removed the hard coding. I'll tell you the reason. If you go to the login.java, guys, uh, even though the data, the test data is removed, okay, the hard coding of the test data is removed. But if you see the locators here, XPath locator, link text locator, whatever the locators are there, they are still hard coded. If they change tomorrow, if any particular element locator changes tomorrow, it will be, we have to go to each and individual test and update the locator values. Okay. This is still hard coded guys. Okay. This locator values are still hard coded. So that I'll cover later guys, how to remove the hard coding of this uh, locators uh, inside this test. I'm going to cover that later. For now, what I'm going to do is the first test, I want to implement data driven testing. Okay, the same framework I'm going to implement to make this particular framework a uh, hybrid framework. Okay, it should be a combination of data driven framework and uh, it should use other stuff like page object model, page factory, test and etc. Okay, so here what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to convert this normal method into a data driven test. Okay, normal test method into data driven test. I covered all these things data driven testing framework already in the previous session, hoping that uh, you already have gone through that and came here. So you should understand easily guys, there's nothing much here. So we are going to read the data from the data for this data driven test from the Excel files. Okay. Excel file. I'll show you everything. Just wait. Okay. So what I'm going to do here is, uh, here, here, first of all, I'll create a under SRC main Java under uh, this com tutorials in your QA test data. I'll create a new file. Okay, I have to create a file like Excel file this. Okay, so let me create an Excel file here. So here I'll say Excel, Excel app came, open that Excel app. So I want to create a new file, blank workbook, that's fine. I'll say file, save as, where you want to save? I want to save in the downloads for now so that I can copy from the downloads folder. So I'll just name this as tutorials ninja test data. Okay. Tutorials ninja test data dot xlsx file. Okay. So in the downloads folder, I am creating this Excel file. Guys, save this. Once the Excel file is created, rename this sheet to login sheet. Okay. Because I am getting the, I want to retrieve the data from the login sheet into the login test. Okay. And here I'll give something like email. Here something like. Otherwise, I'll give something like email. Okay. Email. And here I'll say password. I want to read this email and password. Okay. And here email address, I'll give some valid email address. So multiple sets of data will be there in the data driven framework. As you already know, data driven testing, right? Multiple sets of data will be there. I'll be providing all those multiple sets of data. So valid sets of data I'm providing. This is one email address and password is one, two, three, four, five. Password is one, two, three, four, five. Then I'll give one more email address. And uh, here I'll enter and here I'll give one, two, three, four, five is a valid password and one more email address final third time, three times the test need to run because there are three sets of data for this test. Okay. I'll say about cap three here, one, two, three, four, five done. So here email and uh, password I'll highlight and remaining all I'll put a border. Save this click on. Now in the downloads folder, guys, in the downloads folder, we have this Excel file created tutorials in your test data. I'll copy this file. I'll copy this file, right click, copy this file 
and come back here and paste it here. Under the test data, I'll paste this. Okay, along with the test data dot properties, now we have tutorials in the test data dot xlsx file also. So I have to read the data from this xlsx file. How to read the data from the xlsx file? So before reading the data from the xlsx file, we'll not touch the xlsx file for now. What I will do is I'll, I'll convert this normal test method into a data driven test method. So here I'll create one more method, guys, which will supply the data to this test method first. Public void supply test data. Okay. Something like this. Okay. I'll just give any name, guys. No problem. Okay. Supply test data. Whatever the name you want to give, you just give it. Here at the rate data provider and write. Import. Now here, create an object array, two dimensional object array. Data is equal to create a shortcut representation of the two dimensional object array like this. This is two dimensional representation of the object array. Okay. Two dimensional array. Here, I provide first two email address. What is the first email address, guys? A motori cap nine. This is the first email address. I'll copy this and paste it here. Comma. I'll say one, two, three, four, five. Here, second email address I'll give. Comma. Second email address is uh, it's one. Copy this. Paste it here. Again, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Third also. I'll copy paste the same thing. The third set of data. How many sets of data you want to give? That many number of things you can internally give. Here, three I'll give. That's it. Now I'll say return data. Here, the return type is two dimensional object array. Here, I'm not reading. This data is not read from the Excel file. Right, this data, whatever I provided here, here is hard coded, guys. Okay, it's hard coded. This data, this data is hard coded in this data provider method and it's not read from the Excel file. Later, I'll show you how to read the data from the Excel file. Okay, for now, I'm hard coding the data and supplying this data to this test method. How to bridge the connection between this data provider and this, uh, this test method? Uh, here, comma, data provider attribute is equal to the name of the data provider method you have to give. Okay, this is one way. This is how you have to connect. And here you have to receive string, email, comma, string, password. Like this you have to receive. Now here, instead of uh, reading this data from the properties file, you will provide this, uh, this uh, parameter here. Here, you will provide this parameter here, password parameter here. That's it, guys. This particular test will run three times now. This particular test is going to run three times because there are three sets of data. If you give four or five sets of data, this particular test method will run five times also. Okay, four to five times also. Now let's run this and see whether this is working fine as expected or not. This data pro uh, data driven testing is possible with the hard coding of the data or not. First, we'll check. Later, I'll show you how to read the data from the Excel file instead of uh, hard coding like this here. Run this. Only one test I'm running, the data driven test. First set of data it has run. Three times that same test method has to run. Second set of data. Third set of data, it's going to run. Done. All the three tests got passed. You can see that in the results. You see, with first set of data, the same test method got run. Same test method with second set of data, same test method with third set of data. But this data is hard coded in this method. One more thing here is here I can give something like name is equal to okay. Uh, what is that? Valid credentials supplier. Okay. I give a specific name instead of method name, I can give this. Okay. Instead of uh, the method name, I can give the name of the data provider like this. Okay. Now let's run this and see whether it's still working or not. If you give the name attribute, you have to give the name of the data provider. Okay. Otherwise, you have to give the method name. Okay. It's still working. You see. We have to improvise this, okay? Step by step, we are improvising. Third test. With the third set of data. Same test with the third set of data. It's going to run. Done. You see, we got the same results. All the three tests got passed and with the different sets of data. This is fine. But the only thing that I want to change now is I don't want to hard code this data. Instead, I want to read the data from this Excel file. This is the thing. I don't want to hard code the data. So how to read the data from the Excel file and uh, then pass it to this test method from this data provider method for that guys, I'll go to 
utilities utilities class under utils package i'll create one more method public static by get test data okay from excel like this one method i'll create here string sheet name okay just understand the logic is okay if you have gone through my uh poi api uh training uh i mean training videos in in the same series okay in the previous sessions i covered uh, poi api thing if you have gone through that you can understand what i am writing here okay so here inside this method i am accepting the sheet name and whatever the sheet name that is accept, accepted based on that i will retrieve the data from that excel file okay so what i will do is first i will create an object for the xsf workbook okay workbook is equal to new xsf workbook like this you have to create an object for the xsf workbook for the more on the XSS workbook and you cannot import this XSF workbook because this is from Poi API. Because this project is not yet configured with the Poi API. So far in the bomb.xml file, which libraries we have, testng library we have, selenium java library, only two libraries we have. Now we need to add the Poi API libraries. For that, I'll go to the mbnrepository.com and search for Poi. Search for simple Poi. You'll get Apache Poi, normal Poi, Pi OXML, Pi OXML schemas. Three things you have to worry about. This three Pi, Pi OXML, and Pi OXML schemas. The three are enough, guys. Okay. This three are enough. You can even add Pi Scratchpad and all those stuff. Okay. Pi excellent. Okay. These are all can be added also, not a problem. Okay. Is there anything from Apache Pi? OXML light is there. Okay. So many things are there. So many things are there. But these three things are enough, guys. Okay. From my experience, these first three things are enough. Uh, if anything problem coming, you can add few more things also. I'll open these three things on the new tab. One, two, three. I'll just go to you see here latest version in the normal Pi is 5.2.3. Whereas in this uh Pi O XML is 5.2.3, that's fine. But in Pi O XML schemas, we have the latest version as 4.1.2, which is not uh uh, equal to 5.2.3. So what is the latest common version in these three tabs? That is 4.1.2, here 4.1.2, and here also 4.1.2. Even though we have the latest version, we cannot go with the latest version because in one of the things, PyO XML schemas, we have 4.12 as the last. Okay, so I'll go with the 4.1.2 only. Okay, copy this, come back here, paste it here. Here's the dependencies. Now, come back here. 4.1.2, copy, paste, done. Now next one, 4.1.2, copy, paste, done, save all. Now, now for the mouse on XSS workbook, you'll get the import statement this time. You see, importing the XSS workbook from Poi API library. Now I'll say workbook dot get sheet, get sheet, string name. What is the sheet name? This is a sheet name. Copy the sheet name and provide here. What are the sheet name you are passing to this method? That will be passed and the sheet name will be get. For example, if you pass the login, login sheet will be retrieved. Okay. So get sheet is returning the object of the XSF sheet. So I'll simply say sheet is equal to, sheet is equal to, Okay, the return type of this method should be added as a declaration of this sheet. For that, over the mouse on this sheet, create local variable. And you see, return type of this get sheet is automatically added here. Once you get the sheet, I want to find the number of rows and columns. Okay, in that Excel sheet, how many rows are there? How many columns are there? Okay, I want to find out. So I'll just open the Excel sheet here, and you'll see that in the login sheet. Just open the Excel sheet, and the login sheet. You see how many rows are there? One, two, three, four rows are. How to get the number of rows? Int rows is equal to sheet dot get last row number. There's a predefined method known as get last row number in this XSF sheet class. Okay. This will get the number of rows. How to get the number of columns? Number of columns is equal to sheet dot any row you get, get row of. Just give any row. Here there are four rows. Zeroth row, index zero, index one, index two, index three. I'll just give index zero, any of the row, even you can give index one also, but I'll just stick to get row of zero, get last, for getting the number of columns, get last cell number. What is cell number? One, two. 
So gate class cell number is two. So two will come here. Number of columns we got. Now I'll create a two dimensional object array. This method when you call, it will return you a two dimensional object array. Object array, two dimensional object array. Data is equal to new two dimensional object array. Like this, put a semicolon. Here, copy the rows and paste it here. Copy the columns and paste it here. That's it. Now write down for int i is equal to zero, i less than rows i plus plus. Okay. Like this, I'll write the code. Now here I'll write g dot get row of i plus one. Okay. Just remember this, guys. You should not write i, i plus one, you have to write. Otherwise, you will get an error. Okay. Get row, it is returning XSF row. To read the data from the Excel file, this is the logic you have to implement. Over the mouse, create local. Okay, done. Because we have to read the data from the this row onwards. Okay, zero plus one, first one. This data, three sets of data we have to read. That's why we have written i plus one. If you don't give i plus one, it will read email. That is not a email, right? That we want. So we have to only read the actual data. That is starting from the row one. The row zero, row one. Okay, row index one. So that's why I place one. Okay. Now for inch j is equal to zero, j less than columns, then j plus plus. Now I'll write down uh, row dot get cell. Okay, get cell. I'll say in this particular row, I'll retrieve the cells. Get cell. It will return the XSF cell. Cell is equal to for the mouse create done we got the cell now this cell values are different types you see here this string type whereas this is num numerical type so what i will do is i want to find the type of the cells cell dot get cell type cell dot get cell type it will return you the cell type cell type is equal to for the mouse create local variable now now i'll write down one switch case okay switch case Cell type I will pass, this particular cell type I will pass, and here I will write the cases. Case, if it is uh, string type, okay, if the cell type is string, string type, then I will say, I will assign the data, uh, okay, I will retrieve the data from the Excel file and assign it to the this object array, two dimensional object array. For that, data of i, comma ij, okay, is equal to uh, here I will say cell dot get string cell value. Okay, if it is string type directly, you have to use this method get string cell value. If the cell type is string, then get string cell value will be used. Now say break. Now another case case if it is numeric, numeric, if it is numeric, the data stored in the cells is numeric like this one, two, three, four, five, then. In that case, data of i j is equal to cell dot get, uh, get numeric cell value. But there is a problem, guys. When you retrieve this get, get numeric cell value, here instead of integer value, you will get double value. 1, 2, 3, uh, 3 4, 5, 0, 0 will come. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 0, 0 will come. That's not the correct password, right? The password is only 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So we have to typecast that with int, okay? Type as that with int, and now before you assign this value to this uh, data of ij, you have to convert that into the string. How to convert that into string? Integer dot to string of you just surround this all inside this circular brackets. Okay, we'll the first we have to convert to integer one two three four one two three four five point zero zero to one two three four five. Uh, that one two three four five we have to convert to string and assign it to data of ij. Now say break. Okay, now say break. Now case third case this is not required for now in our uh, test data but uh, if you have a boolean value or something in that case okay it will be useful i'm just writing just for the sake data of i in, in the sample test data i'm using we don't have any boolean value but we have to write this okay cell dot get boolean cell value okay and then break this is a switch case we have to write guys this is a switch case we have to write so switch is done. Uh, we have assigned the data. Now, uh, there's one more thing, guys. Uh, we forgot to do one thing. So where we have referred this Excel file, 
in this XSF workbook, we created an object, but did we refer the Excel file? No, we didn't refer the Excel file. How to refer the Excel file? You see here, I have to provide input stream. Okay, file input stream. Okay, FIS Excel is equal to new file input stream. Like you have to create an object for the file input stream. Import this file input stream from java.io package. Here you have to provide the file that is Excel file part file. Excel file is equal to new file of. And here provide the path system dot get property, not properties, property guys dot get property user dot dir user dot dir. This will get the path of the project. Under the path of the project, where is the Excel file here? Okay, so double quotes, double backward slash src, double backward slash main, double backward slash java, double backward slash com dot com, double backward slash tutorials ninja, double backward slash qa, double backward slash test data, double backward slash tutorials ninja test data. Make sure that you don't have any spelling in this LSX file. Okay, that's it. Put a semicolon at there and that's it. Now import this file from java.io package and uh, copy this Excel file into this file input stream, copy this file uh, FIS Excel into this workbook. Now it will read the data. These two lines are giving some checked exceptions, guys. Okay, checked exceptions are coming. So I'll surround these two lines in the try catch block. Try. Catch. Throwable. E. Then write E dot. Print that's it. Tab okay. Now, here, uh, this, this is local, just make it global so that you will not get the error here and remove the double declaration here. Now, still, error is coming. We have to initialize the value, it will be gone. So, any other errors are there? I think the errors are gone. Okay, so we are uh, we have provided the path of the Excel file here and we have represented with the help of the XSF workbook here. Okay, and now we are getting the sheet with the help of the sheet name that is passed here. And from the sheet, we are getting the number of rows columns and we have iterated and assigned the data based on the cell type. Okay, and now this particular method has to return the data. So here I'll say return, return data. Okay, this two dimensional object array I have to return. The return type should be, sorry, the return type should be here instead of why it should be two-dimensional object array. That's it. Okay. Simply call this method, guys. Don't hard code the data in the login.java. Just come here and call this method and give the name that is login. Okay. What's the problem here? So in order to call this method, it's static method, guys. It's a static method. We have to call this method with the help of the class name utilities dot get test data from Excel. Okay. Simply do one thing here. Write down utilities dot get test data from Excel and pass the sheet name as login. You see, everything is so sophisticated that you see now you are not hard coding the data and the data will be read from the Excel file and will be passed to this and this particular data provider will pass into the test method. Okay. Now let's run this code and see whether this part is working or not. Slowly we are uh, in increasing the complexity of the framework. We have implemented data driven uh, framework inside this uh, current framework now as part of this. Let's see whether the we are getting the data from the Excel file. You see, things are working fine. Second test data should be get from the Excel file. From the Excel file, we are reading this test data, guys. Data driven test data. Okay. Done. So three tests got executed with three sets of data. And this time the data is not hard coded in this uh, data driven data is not hard coded in this test methods. Rather, it has been read from the Excel file. Okay. So great. Now the final. I'm just guessing that, uh, so I'll, I, I told you, right. I'll remove the hard coding of this locators, right? So how to remove the hard coding of the locators. I'm going to cover in the next session. Okay. In the next session, I'm going to cover the removing the hard coding of the data from the, this hard coding of the locators from this test methods. Okay. In the next session, I'll do that. So for that, we need page object model design pattern. We are going to implement the page object model design pattern that I'll cover in the next session guys. Okay. Next, uh, next part of the this framework series. So that's all for this session, guys. 
I'll update this notes. Okay, so let me quickly go to the X mine. And uh, so doing the hard coding, hard coding of test data from test methods. Okay, so using properties, creating which properties file we created test data dot properties file where we have created this under package known as com dot uh, tutorials ninja dot qa dot test data package under this package we have created loading properties constructor super everything is same and uh, then in every test class method, uh, we have read the data. That's fine. Now, implementing implementing data driven framework in existing project. Now, now the project will become a hybrid project because this project not only includes uh, other part of the framework but also data driven plus remaining stuff. So it will become hybrid. Hybrid means it's a combination of mix of things. Okay, here reading data from excel files okay reading data from excel files we have implemented we have written the code we have touched the utilities utilities uh, where we created a method known as get test data from test data from excel files method excel files method then uh, what is the other thing we have implemented here uh, okay just test data from the Excel file under utilities uh, we have created. And anything else, guys? I think that's it. So this is what we have covered in this session, guys. In the next session, we have we are going to remove the hard coding of the locators from the test methods also. That is possible with the help of page object model and page factory design patterns that I'm going to cover in the next session. So guys, I'll update this uh, notes. Uh, once I stop this session, I'll update this notes, okay? So I'm attached to the video, so you can find it there. This mind map, entire thing, complete mind map from starting to ending, you will find in the notes. Okay. So this is nothing but the part four, guys. So in the next session, we'll go for the part five of this uh, hybrid test engine framework using page object model and page factory series. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part five of hybrid test engine framework using page object model and page factory design patterns. So let's get started. Till the previous session, I have removed the hard coding of the test data and other configuration data, right? Now there is one more item that need to be removed, okay, from the individual test, okay, to remove the hard coding. That is, if I open this login.java, you can clearly see there are a lot of locator space. Okay. The data has now been removed from hard coding. Okay. Earlier the data was hard coded. Now we moved the data to the config.properties file, test data.properties file, some data we are reading from the Excel file. Okay. And some data we are reading from the utilities. Okay. And all so on. Now, what about these locators? What about these locators? These locators you can also call as object space. Okay web elements, objects, locators, whatever the name you call. These locators or objects or web elements are still hard coded. They're hard coded. If any particular element locator changes, I have to go to individual test methods and update them. That is going to be a difficult process. What if I centralize these locators? Instead of writing them here, if I remove the hard coding of the locators from the individual tests and move them to a centralized place, that is going to be a good thing, right? From a single place, I can modify these locators, okay? And locators will no more be hard-coded in this individual test. But there is a problem, guys. What if we have thousands of tests and the thousands of tests individually have a lot of locators? You see, in a single file, if I centralize, in a single file, if I have thousands of locators, if I have thousands of locators in a single file, is it possible for me to identify a particular locator and modify that according to my needs in my test? No, right? Okay. If I have a lot of locators, that's not possible. I cannot put all these locators into a single file. 
So this concept will not work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to implement a concept known as or approach known as page object model. You can call it as an approach or design pattern. Okay, it is a design pattern approach, page object model design pattern. By using this or by following this approach, what you can do is, so you will not put all the locators in thousands of tests into this single file. Rather, you will create separate classes. For example, if I take you to this login page of this application, we have some elements like email address, password field, login button. Three elements are there for now. Okay, let's assume. These three elements I'm going to put inside a file named on the login, login page. I'll create a class known as login page dot Java. And into this login page dot Java, I'll put email locator, password locator, login button, and any other locators on this page, which are not there on other pages. Similarly, I'll create one more class and would like to put all the objects or locators of these elements that is first name, last name, email, telephone, password, password, confirm, yes, no, privacy policy, continue, whatever the options are there in the register. I would like to create register page dot Java and put the locator, centralize the locators of that register, dead, uh, register page into this register page dot Java and all the individual tests will access the locators from their in individual page classes. Okay. We are not going to put all the locators into a single centralized locate, uh, centralized class. Rather, we are going to divide these objects or locators across multiple page classes. Login page related uh, locators will be there in the login page. Register page locators will be there in the register page. Okay. And so on. And so on. Different classes we'll create. For each and every page, we are going to create a separate page according to the page object model design pattern. And the, the test, login test, register test, Okay, whatever the tests we have written, right? They'll be accessing this uh, locators from the required classes like this. Okay, from the required classes, they will be accessing the locators like this. Okay, we are going to centralize the locators, but not at a single place. But this is nothing but centralization of the locators, but we are not locating, um, centralizing the locators in a single file. Rather, we are ca categorizing, organizing these locators across multiple page class files. Okay, let me show you this practically, guys. So let's get started with this uh, login.java. So let's see where the locators are. For example, here, by.xpath, this is my account. This locator is my account related options, okay? This is a my account, guys, okay? If you can see on the top, this is my account, okay? So once we land on this application, here, guys, in the script, in the script, if you can see, once you open the browser and open the application URL, then you are clicking on which option here? You're clicking on my account option. Where is the my account option? This is my account option you are clicking, right? So this my account belongs to which page? It's there as part of every page, guys. Okay. If you go to login page also, this my account option will be there. If you go to the register page also, my account option will be there. Every page it is there. So what I will do is I'll stick this my account to, I'll stick this my account to home page. Okay. So if it is part of every page, I'll stick it to the home page. So I'll take this my account as part of the home page, guys. Okay. So what I will do now is to Centralize this locator. I will create a package here first. Under SRC main, I will create a package known as new. I will say package com dot tutorials ninja dot qa dot. I will say pages, or you can say page objects also. Anything is fine. Okay, you can either say pages. Some people say page objects. Click on finish. Okay, pages or page objects. You can give any package name here. Under this, I will create a class known as this is home page, right? My account is available on the home page for now. Okay. I'll say home page. I'll just name the class as home page and click on finish. Inside this home page, I'll create the web element. Web element, I'll say web element from Selenium, guys. This web element is an in uh, interface in Selenium. What is the name of the web element? That is nothing but this my account drop menu. I'll say web element, my account drop menu, right? So I'll write down here my account drop menu, okay, option. For the mode on this web element and import this web element from Selenium. That's one thing you have to do, okay? I created one web element and here on the top of this web element, I'll provide an annotation known as at the rate find by annotation, okay? At the rate find by annotation. 
this annotation is also provided by selenium base this annotation is also provided by selenium and at the rate find by is from page factory design pattern okay what is page factory design pattern and why it is provided by selenium so guys what i mean to say here is so, uh, we are going to implement a process or approach known as page object model design pattern it is a general one guys okay it's not belonging to selenium or something okay it's a normal thing even developer can also use page object model de design pattern as part of developing an application and all okay but here in our automation as automation engineers we are uh, using this page object model design pattern it, it is not a library or something it just uh, we are categorizing our objects or locators of the web elements of the different pages in individual pages according to organizing according to the pages okay that's what we are doing but there's a possibility of stale element reference exception okay if you only use page object model, there is a possibility of stale element reference exception. I already covered about the stale element reference exception in the previous session. So let me just show you where I covered. So here is my series. Stale element. Did I cover it or exception? Okay, looks like it's not covered yet. Stale element reference exception is not covered. Okay, let me cover then in that case. Okay, what is the stale element reference exception? You have to learn it, guys. Okay, this is very important. Let me again check, cross check this uh, series, whatever I covered so far. Okay, did I cover anywhere stale element reference exception? Let me see once. Okay. Yeah, it's covered, guys. It's already covered uh, as part of session 15 of this uh, Selenium for full course detail series. Uh, okay. The same series, guys, I covered in the session 15, stale element reference exception. So you already know what is stale element reference exception now, right? So the, the simple thing is with page object model, there's a possibility of this stale element reference, uh, reference exception because you are creating the web elements by organizing them according to different pages. But when you move from one page to another page, when you move from login page to register page or register page to login page, okay, what happens during this process is when you move to another page from a page and come back to the page, the previously created web elements, okay, will be broken. That is web element element is equal to driver dot find element something you will write, right? The connection between that web element element and the other side that is driver dot find element will be lost equal to web element element is equal to driver dot find that equal to connection will be lost case okay again you have to assign the driver dot find element to the element that's the problem otherwise you will get stale element reference exception and assigning the driver dot find element again to the web element element is not a easy thing so to make this process simple selenium guys to support this page object model design pattern has introduced a design pattern known as page factory what is the design pattern page factory design pattern page factory design pattern they have introduced okay page factory so so what we are going to do uh, with this page factory design pattern is we are going to auto initialize this web elements okay whenever you go go to another page and come back to the page okay we'll do a process where we'll auto initialize i'll show you where it will be auto initialized but for now to get started we have to create this web element and give the web element and here instead of writing web element element is called to driver dot find element We'll be simply providing at the rate find by and beside that we'll provide uh, x path is equal to what is x path here for this uh, this x path we'll copy paste okay so we'll write this uh, we'll create the web elements in a different way as part of this page factory design pattern okay to support the page object model design pattern selenium guys have given us the page factory according to the page factory design pattern if you have to create a web element you have to create the web element web element element name on the top of the web element we have to say at the rate find by annotation from selenium and in the circular brackets we have to provide the locator locator type and locator value we have to provide okay so now next one now we need to click on the login button where uh, login option okay after clicking on the my account i have to click on the login option login option is part of every page so i'll stick this to the home page for now so I'll create a web element in the home page, another web element. Okay. Whatever the web elements I need to operate only those web elements. Okay. I cannot, uh, you know, right. Create, create web elements for each and everything. Okay. So based on my test case, whatever the elements that I need to work on, 
when the time comes, I'll be creating the web elements and using them in my automation script. That's it. Okay. I don't have to create hundreds of locates at the same time in the home page. Okay. The home page, if you see from top to bottom, there are a lot of elements, but I'm not going to work on them at a go. Based on my automation test, based on uh, when I'm run, uh, creating my automation test, if a particular element is required and that particular element is part of the page, only then I'll be creating the web elements here. Okay. Only then I'll be creating, for now I'm, I only need login. So I'll work on only login guys, not other things. Okay. I'll only work on login. That's a login option. Here I'll say at the rate find by what is the locator we have already. We have created the locators for the login. It is a link text guys. So value is login. I'll simply say link text is equal to link text is equal to in double quotes. I'll give the login. That's it. Two web elements are created guys. Now let's see what next, what next is there. So what I'm going to do next is what I'm going to do next is here. I'll come back to the login.java guys. I'll come back to the login.java. Okay. Here homepage.java I created for now. Here, what I will do is. So I need to remove the hard coding of this locators, right? These two things. Okay. I need to remove the hard coding of these two things. What I will do for that is in the homepage, I'll create a constructor here. I'll create a constructor here, guys. Okay. After creating the web elements in the homepage, I'll create a constructor. I'll name this constructor public. And also, uh, these web elements, I'll make it private. Okay. It's better to make it private because I don't want them to be, I don't want these web elements to be accessed outside and updated anywhere. So I'll just make them private. But this constructor is going to be public. Public homepage. The name of the class should be the same as the name of the constructor. And return type will not be there. That is a constructor only. Now, to this constructor, what I'll do is I'll create a something like a web driver driver. I'll create a parameter. Okay. Web driver driver. I'll create over the mode on this web driver. I import this web driver from Selenium. And here also in this home page, also I'll create a variable like web driver driver like this. And to this driver, I have to assign this driver. Okay. For that, I'll say this dot driver is equal to driver. Okay. This dot driver is equal to driver. I will say after doing that, I will say I have to. This constructor will be called when you create an object for the home page. Okay. You see, I'll create an object for the home page here. Before this line, I'll create an object for the home page. Home page, home page is equal to new home page. What will happen when I create an object for the home page? Import this home page. Import this home page from pages package. From this package, we imported the home page. This constructor cannot be empty, guys, because if you see here, the constructor has a parameter. You have to pass the driver here. Which driver you will pass? This particular driver I'll pass here. Simple. I'll pass the driver that I got by initializing the browser and opening the application URL. I'll pass it from here. Okay. Now this constructor will be called the driver of this particular uh, login class will be passed to the home page constructor and it will be assigned to the driver of the home page class. Okay. Driver of driver from the login.java before method is coming and falling into the assigned to the driver of the home page. Okay. This dot driver is called driver. Now the next step that I want to do is I want to initialize all these web elements automatically to overcome that stale element reference exception page factory design pattern by Selenium provides a line here. Okay. As part of page factory design pattern, we have to write a line here page factory dot init elements. Okay. The name is init elements. Just select this. We have to say in the first argument you have to provide driver, whatever the driver that you have to assign, right? That driver I'm passing driver and this side, I'll say this, this means this particular homepage.java instead of writing homepage dot class, instead of writing like this, I'll write this, which is, which both are same. Okay. Initialize the elements, which are there in the home page. It simply says that we are instructing the page factory to automatically initialize when the constructor is called automatically initialize. That means the connection between this web element element and this part locator part here driver dot find element will not be there. This element will be attached to this locator. This element will be attached to this locator. Okay. That is happening automatically when I create an object for the home page. The moment I create an object for the home page, this constructor will be called and this all these web elements will be initialized automatically to overcome the stale element reference exception. Okay. The constructor is created. What next? Now everything is fine so far. Now what I want to do is inside this home page, I'll create some methods. Okay. These are objects guys. Okay. This web elements are objects, 
objects. We generally call this uh, web elements as objects. And now I'm going to create some methods. These are called actions. Actions. Actions means some performing some actions. Using this web elements, we are going to perform some actions. Clicking on something, uh, entering text into something. All these are actions. Okay. I'll create some actions here. Okay. So I'll select public void. Click on my account. Click on my account. Drop menu. Okay. Like this icon. Right. Click on my account. Drop menu. Okay. Click on my account. Also, you can say click on my account. And just provide the body for that method. And here inside this method, I'll write down my account is a web element having this locator. I'll simply say my account web element dot click. I'll say like this. I'll create a method, guys. Okay. For each and every web element here, I'll create a method like this. Okay. Now, second action I'll create. So I'll, I need to select the login option. Okay. Public wide. Public wide. Okay. Public wide. I'll simply say select login option. Okay. Select login option. And now I'll say login option dot dot click. Okay. Login option dot click. Fine. After creating these methods, I'll go to the, I'll save this and go to the login.java. Here I create an object for the home page. Using the object reference of the home page, I can call these methods because these are public, whereas web elements are private intentionally. These private web elements can only be accessed by these public methods. You cannot access these private elements outside this class. Okay, like that. So what I will do here is I'll say home page dot click on my account. That's it. You don't have to write this line anymore. Now driver dot find element dot click login option dot click. Instead of that, I'll say home page dot select login option. That's it. Okay, like this will do. Tomorrow, if any locator value, locator changes, locator value changes for this my account, I know that this my account is part of the home page dot Java. I'll update the locator value here. I don't have to go to the individual test and update. Here, hard coding is removed. Hard coding of the locator locators is removed from the individual test. That's where, what is the main intention of page object model design pattern. And to support the page object model design pattern, we got page factory design pattern given by Selenium. Page object model design pattern doesn't belong to Selenium. It is a normal general uh, general design pattern used by anyone. So, but when you implement the page object model design pattern, because of this tail element reference exception possibility, because of that breaking of the web element element is called driver dot find element part, Selenium guys have provided us a de another design pattern to support this page object model design pattern known as page factory that I have already shown in the home page. Okay. Once I create multiple home pages, it will be more clear for you regarding the page object model. Okay. So here home page dot select login option. Then next one. What is the next one? Next is let's go down. Okay, let's go down. And here I have some elements where in the first test case, I have some elements where this is a hard coded locator that is in email address field in the login page, password field in the login page, and uh, that is uh, login button in the lo uh, login page. Okay, these three items belong to the login page. So, what I have to do, where I have to put these elements, these elements belong to login page. These elements, email address, password, and login button belong to the login page. So, what I will do here is I'll create similar to home page. I'll create here under the pages or page objects package. I'll create a, another class known as login page. And in this login page, I'll create the required web elements that are needed by my script here, email address, password, and login button. Three elements are there, email address, password, and login button. So what I will do in this login page is I'll create the web element, web element, what is the web element? Email address field. Email address field, I will say. Pour the mods on the web element. Import this. Done. And on the top of this web element, I will say find by. And I will import this find by from Selenium. And here, which locator? Let's see. ID locator. It's by dot ID. So I will copy this ID value. And simply say ID is equal to. ID is equal to. In double quotes, provide that ID value. That's it. One element is created inside the login page. Okay. So next one is. Web element, web element, password field, password field. And here also, and say at the rate find by, if I go to the password field here, here's the ID of the password, ID, ID locator is there. I'll simply say 
ID is equal to, I'll give the password. Then again, we have something like login button. I'll copy this and go here and write down web element login button. On top of this, I'll write at the rate find by from page factory. So for login button, what locator is there? XPath is there. I'll copy this XPath and simply say XPath is equal to provide that inside this thing. Okay. Like this. Now three elements came. The three elements are for now required. So I have to create a constructor, guys. Public login page constructor. And here I have to provide a parameter known as web driver driver. So we'll pass the driver from the test method. And here I'll import this web driver from Selenium. And at the global level also, I'll create the login face driver, web driver. And now I'll say this dot driver is equal to, I'll assign the parameter driver to the class level driver. And here to initialize this web elements when the constructor is called, I'll write a page factory related statements. That is page factory dot init elements. Here I'll say driver. And the next argument I'll say this, this means login page dot Java. And now I'll make all these web elements private. Okay. They should not be accessed outside this class. Only they should be restricted to this class. But if someone want to do actions, we have to create some public methods here. So these are objects and action methods we are going to create now. Okay. So action methods, what are the action methods needed here? If you see the action methods are entering the email address, enter email address. Okay. So then enter password, click on the login button. These are the action steps. So I'll write down something like this public void enter email address, enter email address. I'll write some method like this, some understandable method name I'll write and simply say email address field dot send keys. Here I have to provide the text, which text I have to provide, which text I have to provide. I will receive this text from the calling statement string email text. Okay, email text, I'll say, we need to pass the text to this method when calling this method. So I'll do one thing to call this method. What I have to do guys here, I have to first create an object for the login page, login page, login page is equal to new login page. Okay. I'll pass the driver here from this test method. And here I'll import this login page from pages package here from this pages package. I'm putting the login page. Now using the login page, I'll call the method login page dot enter email address. Here, when you are entering the email address, it is expecting the email text. That email text is nothing but this email parameter. Okay. That email parameter. That's it. Okay. You don't have to give much. Remove this line. Similarly, I'll create one more that is public void enter password. Okay. Here, password also, I'll receive the password text string, string, uh, password text. Okay. Then I'll say, uh, password field dot send keys. So this password text should be passed here guys. And this email text should be passed here. Okay. That's what we are doing. Okay. Password text. Now who is calling this method? Let's see from here. We'll call the method from the text login page dot enter password. I'll say I need to pass the password. This password I'll pass password that is received to this method as a data driven testing. I'll pass here. This line is not required now. Now I need to click on the login button, which is also there on the login page only. Login page dot click on login button. I have to write. For that, I have to create an action method. Public wide. Click on. Click on login button. Okay, on the page. Here I'll say login button. Login button dot click as. Okay, login button dot click. That's it. Now I'll go to the login dot Java and simply say login page login page dot click on login button. That's it. This line is not required. Once you click on the login button, okay, we'll optimize this code later guys. For now, we'll write like this. Okay. We'll optimize this code. We'll try to reduce the number of lines. All those things will happen later. For now, whatever we are writing, just uh, let's go in the same format. Okay. I'll go to the better way uh, step by step. Okay. First, we'll write in this way and later we'll change the things. So assert dot assert true driver dot find element edit your account in after I click on the login button, you are taken to account page. Edit your account information is on which page account page, right? This option is there on the, you see, once, once I enter a valid email address, valid password and click on the login button, you'll be taken to which page account page. This edit your account information is on the account page. So what I have to do before I 
remove the hard coding of this locator, I have to first create an uh, create a page for class for which page account page. Okay, whenever you need, you just create the pages. Don't create all the pages that I go. Whenever you need only, you create. Okay, that will be easy, the easiest approach. Okay, here I have to create a web element again. Same process, web element. Web element. What is the web element, guys? Web element is edit your account information option. Edit your account information option. Okay. And here I'll import this web element from Selenium. And on the top of the web element, I'll add the red find by. I'll import this find by from Selenium. And uh, this edit your account information has which locator? It has link text locator. I'll copy this link text for now. I'll copy the link text. Just give me a second. This is the part I have to copy and uh, go to the account page. And here I'll say link text is equal to in double quotes. I'll give the value, guys. Okay. In double quotes, I'm going to give the value. So once this is done, I have to create the constructor, guys. I have to create the constructor here, public account page. And here I have to pass the driver. The driver, driver, I'll say as a parameter. I'll import this web driver from Selenium. And also I create a page level, uh, page class level web driver also, web driver, driver. And I'll assign this driver to this driver. So this dot driver is equal to driver. And also when this constructor is called, this web element or web elements in this particular page class should be automatically initialized for that page factory I'll use, page factory dot init elements, uh, driver comma. This, this means account page dot class. That's it, okay? Now this should be private. This web element should be private, should not be accessed outside the class. Now here we will create an action method. Uh, what is the action method I need? I'll tell you, okay? I'll go to the login, login.java. And here, you see, we are checking whether this option is displayed or not. Okay, edit your account information option is displayed or not. So I'll write the same thing, public verify. Uh, okay. Get display status of edit your account information option. Get display status of account information option. Okay, like this, I'll write a method. So, public, wide, or no. So, here I'll say edit your account information dot is displayed. This will return a Boolean value. So boolean display status okay is equal to either true or false it will return this display status i'm going to return return display status okay and here i'll say boolean just because of that okay we'll we'll optimize the code later guys for now i'll write in a descriptive manner okay so uh, when you call this method it this particular method will either return true or false if this option is displayed this method will return true to you if this option is not displayed on the page it will return false I'll save this and go to the login and here I'll write down here instead of writing is displayed and all the stuff. Okay. In this assert true, instead of writing is displayed, I'll remove this part from is displayed to here and simply write down. I need to first create an object for which page? Oh, oh that is uh, account page, right? Account page, account page is equal to new account page and pass the driver from this test and uh, over the mouse on this account page and import this account page from this pages package and now write down account page dot get display status of edit your account information option this is a better way hard coding is removed okay done this test method is done guys we have removed the hard coding of the uh, things completely so now let's move to the another one okay let's move to another one Okay, so here I'll write down this part. Okay. Again, email password are same, login button is same. So what I will do here is I'll write the same code here. I'll copy this, paste it here. So in place of entering the email, entering the email address, I'll pass this utilities dot general email email timestamp. Okay. Cut this and paste it here. This line is not required. Again, login page dot enter password. But while entering the password, which password we are entering? I'm getting the password from data properties invalid password. Okay, copy this and give it here. Okay, pass it here. The 
invalid password, you pass it to the method. Now I need to click on the login button, which is same guys. Click on login button, which is same. So write the same thing here. Okay, wait, okay, I have written. Here, right, I need to write here, login page dot click on login button. Mm. So next, what is next? Here we are going to get a warning message, actual warning message we are getting, but here the locator is hard coded. Warning message on which page this is? On the same login page, you will get the warning message. So I'll go to the login page dot Java and create one more web element here. Okay. Based on my requirement, I'll create a web element like private web element. Okay. Uh, what is that warning message? Uh, let's see. Okay. So email or username, email, email password not matching kind of warning message. Okay. Email password not matching warning. Like this web element name I'll give. At the rate, find by. So I'll go to the login and uh, I'll see the X path is there, guys. X path is there. I'll copy this X path. Here we are retrieving the text, right? We are retrieving the rest. I'll do the same thing. Close this. So I'll say X path is equal to this X path. Okay. So I'll create an action method. I'll create an action method, guys. What is the action method I'm going to create? Public void. Okay. Get X. Retrieve warning message text. Okay. What is the warning? Uh, uh, retrieve email password not matching warning message text. Email password not matching warning message text. Retrieve that. We have to return that particular text. How to retrieve that for that? We'll copy this web element, email password not matching warning, just now created web element and say dot a text format. This will give you the string text, okay? String, okay? String text is equal to, warning text is equal to otherwise, warning text is equal to, that I'm going to return, return warning text. And uh, here I'll return, make the return type as string. That's it, okay? That's it guys. Now, Go back to the login.java. So here, instead of writing get text and all, I'll simply write on login page dot login page dot dot retrieve email address password not matching text. That's it. Okay. That's it, guys. And expected is uh, coming from the uh, properties file, data, data properties file. And uh, we are actually checking actual with the expected. Actual dot message contains expected warning or not. We are checking. So removing. We have completely removed the hard coding from the second test also. All the locators, lo hard coding of the locators are now removed with the help of this page object model design pattern, which is supported by page factory design pattern. Okay. Now let's move to another test here. Again, same thing guys. Again, the same thing. We have to write login page. Login page is equal to new login page of driver. In the third test also, we have to do the same thing. After doing that, we have to say login page, login page dot enter email address. In when you are entering the email address, you have to write this part. This part and uh, this line should be removed. Again, write down login page dot enter password. And here, which password? Prop dot get property valid password. Copy this part and paste it here and remove this line. And here I'll say login page dot click on login button. Okay, this login button done. Then actual warning message, same thing, right? Same warning message. Okay, here already we have written. So the same code we have to repeat here. Okay, so just copy paste these three lines and paste into the next one. Okay, so let's not do the hard work. Let's do the soft work like this. Just copy paste. Okay, done. This test is also done, guys. Now let's go to the next test. Let's go to the next text. So next text is uh, here again, email address, password, login button. So what I'll do is I'll copy this login page. I need to create an object for the login page and say login page dot, login page dot, the email address. Here I need to enter prop.getProperty. 
Valid email. I'll remove this slide. Then next one, login page. Dot enter password. Fourth test this is, and we have to enter the password. This particular invalid password we are entering, and we are taking re retrieving it from the properties file. That same thing we have we have to pass to this method. Remove this, and we have to click on the login button for that login page. Login page dot click on login button and remove this part. Then we have to retrieve the text case. We have to get the text. same thing again. Email password not matching the same three lines. We have to copy paste. These are same. Okay. Copy paste the three lines. Hard coding is hard coding of the locators is removed from the fourth test also. Now go to the fifth test where we are directly clicking on the login button. So what we'll do is, what we'll do is, okay. So here also we have to create an object for the login page. Login page, login page. Okay, like this, we have to create an object for login page and say directly click on the login button, right? We'll simply say login page dot, login page dot, click on login button, remove this. It's not required anymore. And email password no match. Again, the same three lines. I have to copy paste. Copy this and copy paste here. That's it. So this part is done. We have completely removed the control shift to and un un unused imports. Anything are there, they will be removed here. And um, okay. So we have completely removed the hard coded locators from this uh, login.java. Similarly, we have to remove the locators from okay, hard coded locators from. Um, Restart.java and such.java also. Let's go to the restart.java. Let's complete this process in this session itself. Okay. Let's convert everything into the page object model and remove the hard coding. I, I'll explain one more advantage of doing so. Okay. If you remove this uh, hard coding of these locators from this individual test methods and move to the centralized uh, page object model page classes, then what is another advantage? Maintenance is less now. Okay. Okay. Hard coding is removed from the individual test of the locators and maintenance is less now. You don't have to go to the individual test and uh, modify the things. Rather, you can go to the respective page and if any locator value changes, you know that in which page that particular locator belongs to and you will go to the that particular uh, page and modify the value of that locator. That's another advantage. There is one more advantage, guys. I will tell you after I uh, change every of every automation test in this classes. Uh, at the end, I'll tell you. Okay. So what is that? I'll tell you later. Okay. At the end of this session, I'll tell you. So here, guys. Let's go to the restart.java again here in, after initializing the browser. Here again, we are clicking on the home page. Already we have created an object. Uh, we have created the home page, right? Home page, directly create home page. Home page. It will be a bit easy now because you have to don't have to create a home page class again and pass the driver here. That's it. Import this home page from pages package and now say home page dot click on my account. Home page dot click on home page dot click on my account. Okay. Click on my account. Then this line is not required anymore. And now write down. I need to click on the register option, but I didn't create any uh, web element. Uh, I didn't uh, remove this hard coding. Okay. So where is this register option belong to the same home page? Go to the home page. Earlier, only two web elements we created that is my account and login option. Now, this time, one more web element based on our requirement in the test we are creating that is web element register option. I'll say register option. And uh, this also at the right find by this is also link text, guys. Link text is equal to I'll provide the link text from this class. Okay. That is register home page. Just put it here. That's it. This is a private. Save this. And now I'll create an action class for this public void. Select register option. And here I'll say the uh, whatever the web element you created, that web element dot click. Dot click. Once you create this, save all. Go back to the register.java. Remove the login.java. Go to the Register.java and here write down home page dot select which option register option. Okay. Earlier we selected login option. Now in this particular test, we are in this particular uh, register class, we are selecting the register option. Okay. Now driver dot be there. Okay. Here now mm, what else? Here, verify registering an account with mandatory fields. Okay, this first test is there. Here, this all these options are on which page? 
Once you go to the register page, all these options will be on the register page. Here, you have not created any register page.java. Create register page. Register page. All these elements are on the register page. Okay. This first name field and all those stuff. Let's create the web element first. Web element. Web element. First name field. First name field. For the mode on the web element and import this web element. And on the top of this, I write at the rate find by. I'll and import this find by from Selenium from page factory. And go to the register.java guys. Go to the register.java. Here we have the ID. Copy this and come back here and say ID is equal to give the ID. One web element is created and make it private guys. Okay, better. Create them as private. There itself. Again, one more web element. Last name, private, web element, last name field. Okay, now here at the rate, find by ID is equal to ID of the last name field. Copy this. Done. Now, what is the next item we have in the register.java? Next one is input email, email field. Copy this ID of the email field. Come back here to the register page. Create a web element, private web element. Okay, email address field, email address field. Now, at the rate, find by, I'll say ID is equal to provide the email address field, ID of the email address field. Now, next item that is input telephone. And copy this input telephone. Come back here and say private web element uh, telephone field telephone field. And I'll write down at the rate find by ID is equal to telephone input telephone. Now next item that is password field. I'll write down private web element uh, password field. And here I'll write down the rate find by id is equal to input password now next one that is password confirm field private web element password confirm field and here i'll write down at the rate find by ID is equal to provide the ID of the password confirm field. Then what else? Then I have to select the privacy policy checkbox field. Pri uh, pri uh, private web element, privacy policy checkbox field, privacy policy field otherwise. At the rate, find by what is there is, what is the locator actually? That is name locator. You see name locator is there. So I'll write name is equal to provide that name. Next. Next one is this one. Continue button. On the register page, we have this continue button. Copy this. This is the next path, guys. I'll write private web element continue button. Here I'll write down. A lot of elements are there on this page. Find by. I'll say next path is equal to Use the export of that continue button. Any other things? Once I click on the continue button, we'll think about other stuff. Okay. Let's see. So first here, in the register page, we need to create a constructor. Public register page. Write down web driver. Driver as a parameter. And import this web driver, guys. And now write down at a global level also create a web driver, web driver driver. Now write down this dot driver is equal to driver. Okay. And now page factory, same steps. Page factory dot init elements driver, comma. This this means register page dot class. Okay, this class. Now let's create the action methods. Action methods. Okay. Here let's create register page. Register page. Register page is equal to new register page and pass the driver from the test. And import this register page. And here write down register page dot dot is not coming because we have not created any action methods. Okay. I need to enter in, enter first name. So for that I'll create a method. In the register page I'll create a method is public void 
enter first name like this one method I create and I'll write down first name field dot then it is here I have to enter some text I'll say string uh, first name text first name text I'll say this text I'll pass into the then it is okay so where is calling this method has to pass a first name so now I'll write down again Easter page dot enter dot in uh, it's not uh, save all Easter page dot there is something calling here Easter page dot register page is it correct register page dot now it's coming enter first name here we have to pass the first name using this from the properties file we are reading the first name the same first name we are passing to the thing this line is not required anymore now second line enter last name so here one more method you have to create let's create methods first public void enter last name last name string last name text and here i'll write down last name field last name field dot ten keys and last name text should be passed next next method next action method next action method is email address field enter email address okay public void public void enter email address string email text I'll write down this email address field dot email address field dot set keys this email text like this i'll create all the methods text, okay so next one telephone field telephone field guys okay telephone field enter telephone public void enter telephone field or telephone enter telephone number or something i'll give string telephone text okay on text i'll write down telephone field dot telephone field dot that is telephone text done next one uh, telephone is done then password field enter password public wide enter password password string password text okay and simply say this password field dot ten keys of this password text now confirm password enter con password confirms public wide enter confirm password string password confirm text Or uh, you can say password text also, the same password only, right? Password text. And now into which field? Password confirm field dot send keys and you simply say password text. Next, select privacy policy. Select privacy policy field. Public wide. Public wide. Select privacy policy. Let's get the bevelment privacy policy field dot pick. Then click on continue button. Continue button copy. Public wide. Public wide. Click on continue button. So continue button dot click. Done. Save this. Now go to the register.java. Now you'll get all the stuff. Here you see uh, there is spelling mistake, register page actually. Register page dot register page dot enter last name. Here you can get the last name from this data target property. Copy that and paste it here, and this line is no more required. Now register page dot register page dot uh, enter email address. I'll copy this part. then is not required then register page dot enter telephone number 
copy this telephone number that you have to pass. Then remove this part. Enter password. Register page. Dot enter password. So give this password. Let's copy this. Remove this part. Then register page dot enter confirm password and give this part here and remove this part. We are uh, removing the hard coding of the locators, guys. Know where the hard coding is there now. Okay. Locators are not moved to the register page actually. So register page dot enter uh, now select privacy policy. This part is not required now. Click on the continue button. Then register page dot click on continue button. Okay, this part is also done. Now, once you click on the continue button after entering the details, what will happen? Let's see. Let's go to the register page now and enter the details. Uh, let's say Arun, Mitari, some email address, some junk email address I'll give. Here one two three four five I'll give. Here one two three four five I'll give. And uh, I'll select this and click on continue button. I'm taking to which page? Account success page. Account success page. So here, this heading is around the account success page, guys. So whatever the heading we are creating next path for, for this heading, we are creating an next path, right? This, this heading is in the which page? It's in the account success page. So I'll create account success page. Right click new class account success page. And now create, create the web element. Web element page heading. Okay. Account success page heading, you can say otherwise. For the most on this web element and import this and say at the rate find by. And here this should be private. Okay. And import this find by from page factory. And then here, uh, if you go to this uh, restart.java, here we have the XPath for that uh, heading. Okay. Copy this XPath. And uh, go to the register page, uh, not account success page, sorry. XPath is equal to double quotes provided XPath. Done. Now create the constructor public account success page, account success page. And here web driver driver, same steps, guys. In every page class, we have to follow the same steps. Import this web driver. And here also write web driver, driver. And now write down this dot driver is equal to driver. And now write down the page factory dot init elements driver comma this. This means account page dot account success page dot class. Okay. Now once this is done, we we'll write the actions class. So uh, based on what we have to get the actions, we have to retrieve the text, right? We have to retrieve the heading, page heading. Public wide retrieve. Account success page, account success page heading text heading. Okay. How to retrieve for that? I'll write account success page heading dot get text. It will get the heading text. Spring on success page heading text. And I'll simply say return. Okay. Here I'll say return account success page heading text. And here I'll say string. Done. Save this. Now I can call this method. Instead of writing this line, I'll write down on which page, guys? On which page this is? Account success page. So we have to create an object for the account success page. Account success page account success page is equal to new account success page and say driver pass the driver guys pass the driver for the more than this account success page and import this and now write down this account success page dot retrieve account success page heading okay this will get the heading after getting the heading we are comparing that with the things okay this is done guys this test is done 
If this particular test is done, remaining all tests will be done very easily, guys. It will not take much time. Let me complete them. Let me complete them for the remaining tests also. I will do the same process. Okay. So, fine. So, here we will be writing register page, register page is equal to new register page again. Copy this, paste it here. It will be simple now because we have already done the hard work. So, register page dot enter first name. Okay, the first name is from here. Copy this, paste it here. Then, register page dot enter dot enter last name. And this is the last name we are entering. Now, register page dot enter email, email address. So, these two things are done. Sorry, because I have to copy this part, guys, for last name. Now, remove these two parts. Here, email address is this part. Copy this. Remove this. Now, say register page. Star page dot enter. What is the next one? Telephone, right? Dot enter telephone number. Copy this part and put it here. This is also done. Now, valid password val uh, confirm also. This you can copy paste from here, guys. Okay. These two lines you can copy paste. These two lines are done. Next part is. We are clicking on the newsletter option for th for this uh, hard coded locator. We have not done anything in the pages page classes. So this is on the register page. Let's go to the register page dot Java and copy this XPath first of all. Copy this XPath and go to the register page dot Java and here create the web element private web element yes newsletter option yes newsletter option. This is at the rate, find by xpath is equal to view that xpath of that s newsletter option. Now create the action class and this should be private. Did we create private? Yes. So let's create public void. Select yes newsletter newsletter option. Now here you can write down yes newsletter option dot click. That's it. Come back here. Now write down register page dot select yes newsletter option. And this line is not required anymore. Now select the privacy policy checkbox of register page dot uh, select the privacy policy. This line is done. Now we have to click on the continue button. Same thing. Register page dot click on dot click on continue button. This part is gone. Now, this is account success page. Already we have written the account success page. String driver.get text. Okay. This actually is. Uh... Okay. So we have to create an object for the account success page. And then these three lines, guys, just copy paste and replace these two lines with these three lines. It will be done. Okay. Done. Done, guys. Next one. Next one is again the same thing. Again, first name, last name, email, telephone with existing email address. Okay. This email address is something different, but remaining all are same. So we'll take the same thing. First two lines, first three lines are same. So I'll remove these three lines. Uh, first three lines uh, are same. These two lines I have to change. Same. And now while entering the email address, this should be careful. Register page dot enter email address. And uh, we are entering the valid email address, which is nothing but an existing email address. Remove this part. Then enter the telephone password, confirm password. And then we have to select the newsletter option, then privacy policy and click on the continue button. Everything is same. Okay. From here to here, everything is same. Okay. 
So I'll just replace all this stuff with this uh, till the continue button. And now here a warning message will be coming guys. Okay, we are getting that you see uh, duplicate email uh, warning message uh, regarding the duplicate email address is should be displayed. Okay, so kind of thing. Copy this XPath and this message will come on the which page on the register page only. We'll go to the register page and create the web element for that warning. I wait. Web element. Uh, duplicate. Duplicate. Email. Address. Warning. At the rate, find by. XPath is equal to provide the XPath. Now for this, I have to create an action class. What I have to do with the action class, let's see. We have to retrieve that particular warning message text for that. What I will do here, I'll say public void retrieve uh, do, uh, T R I V E retrieve T R E duplicate email address warning. Now here I'll say this duplicate email address warning dot a text and here I'll store into the string duplicate email warning text duplicate email warning text. I'll say return this duplicate email warning text and the return type is string here. Done. Save this. Come back here and it's on the register page only, so I don't have to create anything. So simply I'll say, instead of writing this, I'll say register page, register page dot retrieve duplicate email address warning, that's it, okay? And remaining all are fine, okay? Now, third test is completed. Let's go to the fourth test. Directly we're clicking on the continue button, guys. So first I'll say register page, register page, is called register page here, and directly I'll click on the I'll simply say register page dot click on continue button directly. Okay. This line is not required anymore. For all these warning messages, we have to create the web elements and all these warning messages will come on the register page only. So here, this hard coded locators we have to share. take XPath expressions most probably. So go to the register page, create the web element, private web element. Uh, what is that warning is first name, uh, not first name warning, I guess. What is the first name and this warning we are checking here? Privacy policy warning. Yeah, let's say privacy policy warning. Privacy policy warning. And here I'll say the rate find by. Spot is equal to privacy policy warning. Okay. Create the method. You can create the method here itself, not a problem. Public wide, public wide, retrieve privacy policy warning. Here I'll say privacy policy warning dot get text, get text. This will return privacy policy warning text is equal to I'll return this return privacy policy warning text and this should be string done let's go back to this restart.java and here write down here instead of writing like this you'll say register page dot retrieve dot retrieve privacy policy warning. Okay, that's it. Now, next one is this one. This is first name warning. Copy this XPath of that first name warning. Come back here. Here, create the web element, private web element, first name warning. 
at the rate find by at the rate find by control z path is equal to provide the x path now create the method public string retrieve same thing retrieve a name warning i'll copy paste from next time onwards okay i'll say first name warning just copy these two lines and here in place of this i'll provide first name warning dot get text i'll say first name warning text and i'll return this first name warning text that's it okay anything done now come back here and write down instead of writing like this i'll simply say register page dot register page dot retrieve first name warning done now last name warning this is this is last name warning copy this part copy this part copy this x part of the last name warning and come back here create the web element first private web element last name warning and here write write down at the rate find by x part is equal to provide the x part of that last name warning and create the method public void that type so i'll copy paste this method i told you right i'll just copy paste just to save time here i'll say last name last name warning here i'll also say last name warning text here i'll copy this last name warning and say dot get text here last name warning i'm returning Okay, done. Come back here. And here, instead of writing driver dot find element kind of dot get text and all, I'll write register page dot retrieve last name warning. Done. Next, uh, let's remove the next hard coded value. That is, this one is email warning. This is email warning, guys. Copy this. Copy this email warning thing. So here, write down private web element email warning at the rate find by x path is equal to provide the x path of the email warning and uh, save this now come back to the create a method public uh just copy paste this method so that it will not waste your time here retrieve email email warning and here I'll say email warning. Return this email warning. And also here email warning dot get text. Okay. Now go back and uh, just remove this part. Easter dot the page dot retry email warning. Done. Next one. Telephone warning. This is copy this X part of the telephone warning properly. Go back to the register page. Create the web element for a telephone warning. Private web element telephone warning. Render it fine by X part is equal to provide the telephone warning. I now save this. And create a web, uh, create a action class method, action method public. So I'll copy paste this method so that will not waste our time. So here I'll write down retrieve telephone warning. Here telephone warning text, and here I'll say telephone warning dot get text web element dot get text, and here tell return the telephone warning text. Now come back and write down here this chart page dot. Register page dot retrieve telephone warning. Finally, password warning. Final thing is password. With this, we'll be done with the register page that uh, register uh, dot Java test methods will be done with. Okay. Copy this. Okay. Enter X path of that password warning. Come back here. This is the last item. The register page public web element, sorry, private web element uh, password warning. 
okay at the rate find by x path is equal to provide the x path expression and now come back here and create a method the same method i'll copy paste the retrieve password warning here also password warning text return the password warning text and here web element should be password warning web element dot get text now come back to the register dot java and write down write down register page dot try password warning done that's it guys okay we are done with all the tests we completed all the tests guys all the code is control shift o any unused uh, import statements are there they will be removed save this close all this stuff now last one is search case it will not take much time because search is very simple it's unlike register we don't have so many fields or so many locators which need to be removed the hard coding of so directly initialize and open the application url we'll go to this uh here on the home page we have the search box field on the home page we have the search box field your name lo name locator is there so i'll first create an object for the home page home page home page is equal to new home page I'll pass the driver, put a semicolon, pour the mouse on the home page and import this home page. And now say home page dot. Uh, this this locator is not removed from hard coding. So I'll copy this locator and go to the which page this is home page, right? I'll go to the home page. Now on the home page, uh, how many elements are created so far? My account drop menu, login option, register option. I'll create one more element, private web element. Uh, what is that option, guys? Search box field. Okay, search box field. Search box field. I'll say at the rate find by name locator, right? Name is equal to I'll copy paste. I'll copy paste the name locator. Okay. Now I'll create a method for this in the, under the actions that is public. White. Enter. Search. Enter product details. Enter product name. For, uh, to search into search box field, enter product, enter product into search box field here, string product, product text. I'll say, and here I'll say search box field dot send the keys, and I'll give the product text here. Whatever the product text will pass, that will be added here. Okay, now save this. So this is on the home page. So here, home page dot enter. Product, product into the search box field. Which product? Valid product this time. So this valid product is coming from the properties file. Okay. And remove this part. This is done. Then we have to click on the search button. So this is the search button, guys. We have to click on the search button. Copy this. Come back to the home page. And so here we have to create a web element for the search box, search button. Private web element. Search button. We have to click on the search button. So I'll write at the rate find by name is equal to. Okay, name is equal to not name. What is the locator for that search button? X path, right? X path. So I'll say X path is equal to. I'll provide X path of the search button and create the method now under the actions. Required. Uh, click on search button. Click on search button. And uh, to click on the search button, what I will do, I'll just provide the search button, say dot click. That's it. Now go to the search dot Java and here write down home page dot click on home page dot click on search button. Okay. This part is also done. Once I click on the search button, I'll get the search results. In the search results, on the search results page, we'll get this uh, link. This locator is available on the search uh, results page. Okay, you see, once uh, this search box field is on the home page, we already created the web element for the search box field on the home page and search button on the home page because it's available on the pages. So these are part of the home page. But when I enter a product and click on the search button, we'll get which page? Search page. Search page is coming. Search results page or search page is coming. You can call it as search page. In the search page, we are getting this item. Okay. 
So what I'll do is uh, to verify this uh, locator, to remove the hard coding of the locator, I have to create one more page that is called as search page. Like this, based on our requirements, we'll be creating the page class as base. Okay, click on finish. While automating the requirements, uh, test methods uh, accordingly, we'll create the things, okay? So here I'll say private web element. Uh, what is on the search page, guys? Uh, first, uh, this is a, copy this. Link text locator, valid product. This is a valid product, okay? Valid HP product, valid HP product, I'll say. Otherwise, import this web element. At the rate, find by. So for valid, uh, it is a, uh, what? Link text, I guess. You see, this is the link text, copy this, and simply say, link text is equal to you that HP thing. Now, now create the constructor public search page web driver driver parameter. Now, here import this web driver from Selenium and here page level also, class level also, give web driver driver. Then write down this dot driver is equal to driver. Now say page factory dot init init elements driver comma this. Okay, like this will write. And now create the actions. What we have to do with this, let's go and check. So here guys, we have to verify whether it is displayed or not. Okay, it is assert true and we have to verify whether this, uh, this product is displayed in the search results or not. Okay, for doing that, how to verify that public void, public void, uh, status, right? Display status of, display status of, display status of, uh, which, what is that one? HP product. HP product, HP valid product. Like this, I'll create a method. And here I'll say valid HP product dot is displayed. It will return Boolean value, Boolean display status. And I'll return the display status. Okay. And this should be return type should be Boolean. Done. Save this. We'll call this method and it will return the Boolean value true or false. The option is displayed. So here we should not be writing is displayed anymore. Uh, for instead of this, we'll write. First, we have to create an object for the search page. Search page. Search page is equal to new. Search page for the driver. The semicolon. And I import the search page from page pages uh, package. And now say search page dot display status of valid. Okay, done. This test is done, guys. Now let's move to the next test. Here, search for invalid product. Again, the same code. Home page, home page is equal to, uh, and uh, on the home page, I'll say home page dot, home page dot, enter product into search box field, okay? Enter product name, which product name, invalid product name that I'm passing here. And then I'm clicking on the search button. That is this one only, home page dot click on search button. After I click on the search button, then on the search page, on the search page, we have to get this message, okay? So first we'll create the search page, search page driver. And here actual search message. Okay, when the valid invalid product if you give means we'll get a message. Okay, some message you will get. There is no no product uh, product uh, available kind of message you will get in the search results page. Okay, this is what we are automating. If you give some Honda like this, and click on search button, you'll get there is no product. This this is the text we are retrieving. Okay, this is the X path of that particular text. We'll go here to the search page and create the web element, private web element. 
no product message text no product message at the rate find by here i'll say what is that guys x path i guess x path is equal to provide x path done create the method public wide retrieve mm, no product message text no product message text multiple times that's okay okay so no product message dot get text this will return the text string uh no product no product message text return with no product message text when you call this method the text will be written this should be string done save this come back here and here instead of writing like this get text and all we'll say search page search page dot retrieve no product message text that's it okay all the locators got a uh, hard coding of all the locators got removed from second test that test is very easy guys it doesn't make a uh, doesn't take much time okay it's simple copy paste here we are not entering any product details and clicking on the search button so directly we are clicking on the search button so here this is a uh, clicking of the search button once you click on the search button you will get the same thing these three lines you copy paste okay we converted everything into the page object model design pattern which is supported by page factory okay so i didn't copy paste properly we'll copy paste again yeah still okay it's copy pasted yes Save this, all the tests, we have removed the hard coding of the locators also using this page object model design pattern. Now guys, I told you, right, there's one more advantage I told you. There's one more advantage of implementing this page object model design pattern, which is supported by page factory design pattern. Uh, the advantage here is, the advantage here is, here, uh, if you open the login.java earlier, the tests were not readable. Now you can understand what's happening in the tests. If you write driver dot find element, it's not understandable. But here you know we are initializing the browser, opening the application URL. Here you know that you are clicking on my account on the home page. You are selecting the login option. You see the readable readability got increased. Readability of the automation test got increased. On the login page, you are entering the email address, password. You are entering. You can read the text. You read the code actually. Okay, because of this page object model, the readability got increased. Apart from removing the hard coding of the locators and maintenance of these locators. Okay, readability of the Code also got increased with the help of this page object model. These are the three advantages. Someone asks you what are the advantages of the page object model. These are the advantages, guys. The readability will get increased. Okay. So click on login button. Then account, uh, we have to get the status of the uh, whether account success page got displayed or not. Edit your account information got displayed or not, like that. That's it. You say readability got increased. Now, guys, uh, I converted all the three classes containing the uh, tests with this page object model design pattern. So what I will do is I'll open this testNG.xml file and which will run this register and login and such test. Let's see whether the tests are running still after converting to page object model, are the tests running or not? Okay. Right click, run as test engine suite. Let's see if it is running, we are good. Okay. Let's see whether the tests are running. Restart tests are running, guys, on the Chrome browser, as you can see. Data driven tests are there in login, guys. So we'll get more tests here. Apart from 12, we'll get extra two. 14 should come. 14 tests should run because one of the tests in uh, login is uh, data driven. To make this uh, framework a hybrid framework, I implemented data driven testing as part of this framework. So we have both the data driven and page object model, page factory, and all those stuff. So it becomes this. Now this framework becomes a hybrid framework, guys. Okay. Keyword driven is not required, guys. It's not generally used in real time. And if you create the keyword even into this framework, right, that will make the things un uh, unnecessarily 
uh, necessarily difficult, complex, okay? So whenever you have to create a keyboard-driven framework, create it separately, guys. But in general, in real time, 99.9% .9 projects are into this thing only, page object model, page factory design pattern implemented uh, frameworks are there. You see all the 14 tests got passed, okay? So this framework is enough, guys, okay? This framework is enough, okay? You don't have to even go for keyword-driven framework. So this framework is enough. Uh, this is a general framework that we generally use, okay? We'll go for Cucumber BDD in upcoming sessions anyhow. So we'll take it to the next level. This framework will take it to the next level using Cucumber BDD and all. That is required, but uh, keyword-driven is not required. So based on the priorities, we are going to learn in this series, fine? Okay, so the page object model design pattern tests are running fine. Uh, then we have to do some more changes, guys, okay? We have not optimized our code. We have simply written our code using the page object model design uh, design pattern for now. So we have to do some changes to these things, okay? Well, we have to reduce the number of lines and all those stuff, even though the hard coding is removed completely in this session. So still, we have some changes that we have to do, okay? To reduce the number of lines and all those stuff, okay? Uh, we have to be smart in writing some, some things. So all those things I'm going to cover in the next session, okay? In the next session, I'll, because this is a lengthy session already, I don't want to proceed much in the same. In the next session, I'm going to continue with that, uh, okay, that thing. So guys, uh, that's all for this session. In the next session, I'm going to continue this page object model design pattern and any other things that are, okay, that I need to implement, I'll cover in the next session, okay? So see you in the next session. Thank you, bye. Hello all, welcome to part six of hybrid XNG framework using page object model and page factory design patterns. So let's get started. So till the previous session, we have implemented this page object model and page factory design patterns. And thereby we have removed the hard coding of locators from the tests. Okay. We have removed the hard coding of the locators from the individual tests inside the classes that we have done till the previous session, but the task is not completed. Yet, okay. So we have to reduce the number of lines of code. If you go to the login.java here, okay, if you go to the login.java, there are a lot of lines of code, guys, okay? I will try to reduce the number of lines of code by following some practices. You see, when you select login option, you will be taken to which page? Here, select login option, you see, you create an object for the home page using the page object model and all. You, uh, using this object reference, you click on the my account. And then you selected the login option. You will be landed on which page when you select the login option? You know that you will be landing on login page. Okay. So again, what I'm doing here is I am creating an object for, of the login page here. Right. I'm creating an object of the login page here. So separately, this line I, I want to reduce. I want to reduce this line. How to reduce this line? So I'll go to this home page, home page where this method is there, select login option is there. I'll do something there. Okay. So home page, open the home page from this uh, pages, page objects classes, and uh, go to select login option. Once you select the login option, we know that we'll be taken to login page. So what I'll do here is here, I'll return an object of the login page. Okay. The object of the login page I'm going to, and I'll pass the driver here, the semicolon. And here, the object of the login page, so the return type is login page. Like this, I'll change the code. Now, if I come back to the login.java, now you hover the mouse on the select login option, it is returning the object of the login page. So I'll say login page is equal to hover the mouse on this create local variable. Okay, create local variable. Now, this option I can use here, I don't want to write this line. All right, this line I don't have to write, one line got reduced. But the problem here is login page is not accessible because this login page is local to this setup method. I'll make it global now, okay? I'll make it global and remove the local declaration. You see, it's now possible. Here also, any local declarations are, this line's not required anymore, okay? So this line is also not required. You see, I have reduced number of lines just by changing the return type of a method in the home page class. This are not required anymore. Okay. Click on the login button directly. Okay. So one, one line got reduced. Okay. Where the select login option is uh, kind of giving us some kind of thing. And the home page object is not required by any of these uh, test methods. So let's keep inside local only. 
only the uh, classes which are required by other methods. Uh, login page is only required, right? Is there any other class that I have to make it global or something? Let me check. Expected warning message will come on the login page. Everything will come on the login page. Okay, so here, let's see guys, account page. There's something like account page. So account page is required by, where is the first test? This is the first test. Here we create an object for the account test, uh, verify login with valid credentials and second test log verify login with invalid credentials. From next test onwards, we don't need account page. So only for this method is required. So let's make it local only. When it is re when this account page object is required for multiple tests, we'll make it global. Otherwise, there's no need. For now, we'll make only login page as a okay, login page uh, as a global variable. Okay. That's enough. That's done, guys. Okay, we have reduced one line of code. And there is one more line we can reduce, guys. That is after. You click on the login button, you are taken to account page. After you enter the valid email address, valid password and click on the login button, you'll be taken to which page? Account page. So what I'll do is I'll go to this, click on login button of this login page. I'll open the login page. Click on login button, you find it. Click on login button. Click on login button. Here, write down, return, which page? Account page. Return new, account page. Account page is already created here. You see account page is there and just pass the driver here to this constructor, okay? and change the return type to account page. Now one line will be reduced as you can see, one line will get reduced guys, how means? Just go here to this uh, login.java. Once you click on the login button, you see it's returning the object of the account page because we changed the return type. So I'll say account page is equal to create local variable. I don't need this line anymore. Already account page is there. Okay, account page is already there guys. I simply say account page dot get displayed. That's it. Okay. One line got reduced. Any other places where here login page, login page, no, not required login page, not required login page to login page, not required. So first uh, login dot Java is completed as part of this optimization. Now let's go to the next one. Next one we have is the register page. Register test, register test. Let's open the register test and let's get started here. Here already home page is there. Home page dot click on my account is there. Then home page dot select register option is there. And here we are creating an object for the register page. What I will do here is I'll go to this method of this home page. I'll open the home page, select register option method. I'll go select register option method. Here I'll return new register page and pass the driver. Don't forget to pass the driver. Okay. Here register page like this. I'll write now save this. It will reduce the number of lines of code. Now you see this is returning the register page. I'll say register page is equal to over the mouse and say create local variable. The return type of this method will be automatically added here. Now this register page I have to use here. Okay. I'll remove this line because already we got the object of the register page. So I have to use this object reference of the register page here, but errors are coming because this is local. I have to make it global, copy this and make it global directly under the class you declare and uh, remove the local declaration of that register page. And you see this is fine. Okay. One line got reduced already. This line is also not required anymore. It said the okay, the setup method we have that register page object created will use the same object reference. All these lines we have to reduce. That's it. Now let's see if there are any other places we can reduce the lines of code. So till here it's fine. Register page we are getting enter first name, enter last name, telephone. And once you click on the continue button, you are taken to which page? Account success page. Here, once you click on the continue button in the register page, it should be taken to account success page. So I'll go to this page, guys. I'll go to this page. Uh, go to this method of this register page. Okay. So open the register page. Click on continue button. Method you have to find. Click on continue button. Here you write down return new account success page. Account success page and pass the driver. Now the return type you mention as account, account success page. Okay, like this. Now save this, go back to the register.java. Here, you don't have to write this line anymore. This line is not required because this click on continue button will return you the account success page. I'll write account success page is equal to account success page is equal to like this you write and over the mouse and say create local variable. And if this object is required any, anywhere else, we can make it global. Otherwise it's fine. Okay. Okay. So guys, uh, 
let's see what will happen. Mm, here also, we have account success page. Click on continue button, should return you the object reference of the account success page. So I'll make it global, guys. Another method also is requiring. I'll make it global, the declaration. And here I'll remove the local declaration. That's fine. And here also, directly I'll remove this part. Okay. So over the mouse, it should return you the account success page. Account, account, success page is equal to like this I'll write. And this is not required anymore. This line is not required anymore. Done. Any other places where we can do anything? Register page this is also register page. No need to do anything. Uh, register page, click on continue button. Again, we are on the register page only. So this is also done, guys. We have reduced the lines of code in the register page, register.java. Finally, we have search.java. Uh, there also we'll try to see if there is anything required. Home page, home page. Once you click on the search button, you should be taken to the search page. Okay. So we can reduce this line. We can reduce this line, guys. One line we can reduce. How? Uh, the return type of this method we have to change. This method is in the home page. Click on search button is on the home page. Open the home page and find that click on search button. Click on search button method. Click on search button. Yeah, here you write down return new which page search page search page and pass the driver put a semicolon and here mention search page return type as search page done that's it now come back here it will reduce the number of lines of code it will return you the search page write down search page is equal to for the most create local variable you see you don't have to declare this you don't have to create an object directly one line got reduced same thing here also we need to search page again Okay, again, the same thing, click on search button is there. So I'll make it low, global, guys. I'll make this thing global and remove the local declaration. The semicolon and remove the local declaration of this uh, search page because we need in multiple methods. So here I'll remove this part. And here, for the most, it will return you the search page. Okay, search page is equal to, we'll use it like this, search page dot something. Okay, here also, click on search button, will return you the search page. Such page is equal to, we don't need the object to be created, okay? Page dot. All the three tests got completed. We reduce the number of lines of code. Now let's run this code and see what happened. It's working fine or not. After reducing the number of lines of code by uh, providing some return type to the methods, whether this part, this thing is working fine or not, let's see. Right click or open this testng.xml file or right click on the testng.xml file and say run as testng suite and let's see. All these tests are running or not. Uh, 14 tests should run one by one without any issues. Okay, if this uh, change is uh, fine. So we have to keep checking, guys. Okay, whenever you are uh, creating the framework, there's a possibility that you may do mistakes at any point of time. So after you do a major change, try to run the scripts to see if your uh, things are working fine or not. Okay, one test is run. So it looks like everything is fine. Let's see. There should not be any errors in any of these tests because I changed everything. I changed login.java, I changed restart.java, I changed search.java to reduce the number of lines. Okay. So we should cross check everything before going to the next step. We have to cross check everything. Let's see. All the tests should run. Let's wait for all the tests to run. To run. What tests are getting executed? Uh, such tests were almost there, guys. Last test, it looks like. Last test, it looks like. You see, all the tests got executed and everything got passed. So no issues. Fine, it's working fine, guys. Our changes are working fine. So let's still optimize the code. Okay, I'll go to login.java, guys. Okay, so I want to optimize the code. So what I want to do is I want to uh, reduce the number of lines here. If you want to reduce, you can reduce guys. Okay. It's up to you whether you want to do this is also fine. But if you still want to reduce the number of lines, it's up to you. You can reduce the number of lines. You see clicking on a my account and uh, selecting login option will take you to the navigate you to the login page. These two lines are meant here for navigating you to the login page. So what I will do here is in the home page class, I'll write something like this. I'll optimize the code. 
and reduce the number of lines. So I'll, uh, there are two separate lines. Click on my account is one method and select login option. I'll combine these two methods now. I'll say public. Either you can use these two methods and uh, write two lines or public wide navigate to public wide navigate to login page. Navigate to login page. Like this also you can write. And uh, here you have to manually write all this stuff. Uh, you have to click on my account. Okay. And uh, you have to return this. Okay. Return the login page uh, object. Okay. Like this you have to write. Then it's fine. You see, instead of these two methods, one method will suffice, right? Either you can call these two methods to get that as done, or if you want to reduce, still reduce the number of lines, you can call this method. Anything, you are flexible. You have flexibility is there, okay? So navigate to login page. This time, instead of writing these two lines, I'll simply write down, I'll remove these two lines and say, homepage dot, homepage dot navigate to login page, which will return you the object of the login page, okay? Here say login page, already it's declared at the global level. This login page is declared at the global level. So you see, two lines got reduced with one line. Like this also you can optimize guys, your code, it's up to you. Now, here, login with valid credentials thing is there. Okay, three lines, email, password, and click on the login button. Here also we have email, password, and click on the login button. So we can, uh, we can reduce this lines guys, okay? These three lines we can reduce uh, with a single line. Okay, these three lines we can reduce with single line. Almost all places uh, we have three lines, or we can individually also use if you don't need. Okay, so I'll say I'll uh, I'll create this method inside the. Here you are calling this method in the login page, right? You have to go to the login page and create a method. Uh, where is the method? Uh, here instead of saying enter email address, enter password, click on login button. I'll create a single method, guys. Public, public wide, uh, login, simple login, I'll say, okay. Public wide login, I'll say, and it's not a constructor, it is a login. And here I'll say string, email text, string, password text. You see, I'm showing you some ways where you can, you know, uh, kind of reduce the number of lines of code. In this, what I'll do is, I'll say email address dot send keys of email text. Then I'll say, password field dot send keys of password text. Then I'll say login. These two lines I'll copy paste guys, okay? This should uh, return you the object of the account page. So here I'll say account page. Account page, done. That's it, save this. Now, instead of writing those multiple lines, I can write a single line now. Number of lines will be reduced. I don't have to write all these lines. Okay, these three lines are not required. You have to say login page. Login page dot login. Okay, you just enter the details. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll I'll just control Z. Let this be displayed by looking at this. I'll write the statement. Okay. So let's say login page dot login method. Let's call this login method. Here first I have to pass the email then pass password, and don't don't have to specially click on the login button. It's already there. Okay. I just need to pass the email and password. It's already being passed, guys. Okay. So remaining two lines I can remove. Okay. So fine. That's it. So here I don't have to click on the login button. Okay. This will return you the object of the account success account page. This account page only, right? Account page. Account page is equal to for the mouse and say create local variable done. And uh, here also. First test is completed. Second test. In second test, again, these three lines we can reduce. You can simply say login page dot login. Okay, login page dot login. Here we have to pass the email address in the first, first argument. We have to pass the email address and cut it from here. Data dot uh, property get property. This is the password and cut and paste it here. That's it. At the end, just put a semicolon and you can now remove all these three lines. In place of three lines, you are right, writing just one line, okay? This is how we can optimize, guys. We can optimize as much as possible, okay? And reduce the number of lines, okay? Login page dot login with uh, these things. Then what else is there? It's up to you whether you want to write in multiple lines or single line, whatever the way you write, it's fine, guys, okay? 
if you really want to reduce the number of lines, you can write like this, or you can write in the earlier fashion, like this fashion also is fine, up to you. Okay. There's no restriction that you have to optimize, not compulsory to optimize this. Okay. And just showing you one way where you can reduce the number of lines. That's it. It's not compulsory though. Both will work fine. Okay. Any other stuff I can reduce here also. Login page dot login. And here I'll pass the email address as first argument and password as the second argument. And put a semicolon at the end. And now these three lines are not required. Login, clicking on login button is inbuilt anyhow. Done. Uh, last test. Here only one thing, so I cannot actually call the login method. This we cannot ignore. Okay. This we cannot reduce. So login is done. Login.java is done. Uh, can I remove any other stuff? I'm just checking. Let's, uh, uh, is there any possibility of reducing any more stuff? I'm just checking. No, I cannot reduce here. Here I can reduce, guys. You see, I'm separately writing actual message. Okay. And all those stuff. Instead of writing actual, warning message, I'll directly write this part so that I can reduce one more line. This part I'll cut it and in place of actual warning message, I'll paste it here. That's it. Okay. So I don't have to write this. And here contains expected warning messages there. Either you can write like this or data dot get property you directly provide in the method. Okay. Dot contains in place of this expected warning message, you can paste this to reduce the number of lines. Okay, did I paste properly? Control Z, I'll say. Somewhere I went. Paste, done. Okay, this is not required anymore. You see, it's done. Okay, login page dot login and assertion. Only two lines we have now. Okay, we can reduce as much as two lines. You see, first test has two lines. Second test is also having two lines. Third test also, we can do that. Okay, login page dot login. It is something, something, actual warning message and uh, I think you can do the same thing and copy this line. Asset true, asset dot asset true, and these three lines you can replace that with the same thing. Uh, expected uh, warning messages uh, not displayed, and uh, what is this? Email password not matching, right? Here also, email password not matching. Warning. So I'll just paste here. That's it. Two lines. Here also, two lines. Again, the next test here. So let's see here also email password not matching warning message text same text guys again again you can write the same text here single line that's it okay copy paste it from the previous test fifth test directly click on the login button again the same thing is happening actual warning message login page dot something uh retrieve email password not matching same thing and provide here that's it you see now our test uh, number of lines in our test got reduced and but this approach is not compulsory. So it's up to you. Okay. You see, just for every test, we got only two lines now. Like this, we can keep on reducing the number of lines, guys. Okay. Well, let's go to the register.java and do the same thing. So home page, home page is equal to you see uh, navigate to register option. Okay, register pane. These two lines can be part of the navigate to register uh, page method. We can create inside the home page. Okay, let's go to the home page. And instead of click on my account and select register option, click on my account and select a register option is there here. Here I'll create one more method, public void, public void, navigate to register page. Like this, if I create a method and what I'm going to do is click on my account option. This I'll include as part of this. And apart from that, I'll just copy these two lines and paste it here. And the return type is register page. Register page done. Now I'll go to the register.java here instead of writing these two lines. You can simply write home page, home page dot navigate to register page, and this will return you the object reference of this register page. Okay, simply write register page is equal to you see, we can reduce the number of lines, and here also, uh. Verify registering an account with mandatory fields. All this can be part of a single method, guys. Okay. Only mandatory fields means up to uh, register with mandatory fields. 
I'll write a create, create a single method and I'll put all these lines into single method. Okay, how to do that? I'll show you. This is a register page. So I have to open the register page, guys. Okay. I have to open the register page. And in the bottom, I'll write public void register. Simple method register I'm writing. First, I have to enter the first name. Okay. First, I have to enter the first name. So I'll say, what is the enter first name? This is the enter first, first name dot first name field dot send keys of first name text. It should have a parameter, guys. This should be the parameter string first name text. Okay. This copy pasted here. Now, next field is what? Next field is last name. Okay. Last name. Enter last name. Go to the enter last name method. Enter last name and copy this line. Here, last name text we are re receiving as a parameter. So here, copy this, put a comma here and say string last name text. Done. Now, what is the third line? Enter email address. Enter email address. Go to the enter email address. Where is enter email address? Yeah, here enter email address is there. Copy this line. Copy this line and uh, here come down and paste it here. Okay, here email text is string text. String, copy this email text and paste it here as another parameter. Okay. Now next one is telephone number. Telephone number. Enter telephone number. Find that method. Yeah, telephone field dot send case. Telephone text is there. Copy that. Copy this text. And uh, put a comma here and say string. String, give the method. Okay. Put a semicolon here. Done. Now go to the next one. Enter password. So find the method, enter password, find the method, save, for now. this is the register. So I have to find enter password, enter password. So what I will do here for enter password, I have to find the enter password and then go to the last method and this password text I have to provide in the string parameter as a parameter, string parameter, string, password text, done. Save, click on register. Now enter confirm password. Again, one more method will be there like enter confirm password method. Enter confirm password, copy this line, come back down, paste it here. Password text is same, same password text. I don't have to create an additional parameter. Now select privacy policy is there. Find the select privacy policy. Select uh, privacy policy. Copy this privacy policy field dot click. So people can write this code directly guys, but I'm explaining you in a step-by-step -step manner so that you can understand why we have to write like this, okay? What, why we have to follow this format if you want to reduce, if your project needs less number of lines of code. In that case, this approach is better. If, if they are not worrying, then other approach is fine, okay? You can choose, choose based on your project approach, okay? Whatever suits the, for the project. Then we have to click on the continue button, guys. Find out that, click on continue button. Where is click on continue? Yeah, this is the one. These two lines you have to copy paste and uh, paste it here. And the return type is account success page. Just provide that in place of the wide. That's it. Now come back here. You don't need all these lines. Remove all these lines, guys. Even this line is also not required. Simply say register page dot Register. Okay. So here I'll min, I'll give a dip, main, uh, small difference in name. Register with mandatory fields, I'll say. Okay. Register with mandatory fields. This is a method name. So I'll say instead of register, I'll say register page dot register with mandatory fields. So here I have to pass all the values, guys. Okay. So what are the values I have to pass? I have removed it. So let me go back again. So let me put all these values and then after that I'll remove register page dot register with mandatory fields here. First name I have to pass as a first argument. Control Z. Next it. As a second argument, first name is done. The second argument I have to pass last name. This one I can pass it as a last name. Then so email this random generated dynamic email with timestamp. I'm passing as a third argument. Done. Email is also done. Now, telephone number, I'll give the telephone number, copy this, 
and uh, come back here and paste it here. Okay, paste it here. Telephone number is also done. Then here, this is valid password. Last two arguments are valid. Pa uh, only one one password will pass for the password and confirm password fields as an argument. That's enough. Okay. At the end, you just put a semicolon which that will be enough. And you don't need any of this stuff. All are inbuilt. Okay. This valid con confirm password and everything is there. All the arguments we have passed that we have to take care of. So uh, this is also done. Because this method that is a uh, register with uh, this method that is a uh, register with mandatory fields will return you an object of the account success page. Just write down account success page. Okay. It's equal to that's enough. Okay. So again, we are retrieving something and then again, we are writing this line also we can reduce. Just copy this part and wherever account success heading is there, just paste it. That's enough. Okay. So you can remove this line. You see, again, we got it uh, around two lines of code. Just two lines of code are required. Okay. Minimal, minimalistic code, you can say. The first test, we have two lines of code. Second test also, this is with all the fields. Okay. So it will be same, guys, but extra field is uh, select S newsletter option will be there. That is extra field. Remaining all are same, guys. Okay. Remaining all the things are same. Account success, relative account success, means everything is same, guys. Just this extra line is there. So for that, I'll do one thing. I'll I'll go to this uh, method. I'll go to this method. Copy paste. And here, instead of saying register with mandatory fields, I'll say all fields, all fields. Okay. And uh, I don't need to pass anything else. The same values are enough. But here, inside this, before you select the privacy policy. You have to do something else that is uh, select S newsletter option method. Just go to select S newsletter option method. So, uh, this one, this statement, I have to take it from this method and paste it here. Yes, newsletter option dot click. That's enough. Okay. This will become all fields. And we are re uh, returning the account, uh, object of the account success page. So now I'll do the same. Here I'll say register page dot register with all fields. Okay. And in the first field, I'll pass the first name. Okay. And then the second uh, argument, I'll pass this uh, last name. And uh, in the third one, email address, I'll pass this part. In the fourth one, I'll say telephone number, copy this telephone number. Copy this valid password and pass this as part of the last argument guys. That's enough. Okay. Put a semicolon here and you don't need anything else. Okay. Everything will be taken internally. Even clicking on the continue button also is there internally. Okay. We can see that here. Are we clicking on the continue button? Yes, right? Then here, this will return you the account success page object. Account success page is equal to, like this I'll write, and uh, I can reduce this line also by copying this part and putting that into the, in place of the actual success heading, okay? And this line is not required anymore. Just two lines we are able to complete, okay? Now again, Verify registering an account with, the, with existing email address. All the same details are there with all the details. But here, email is something you are passing an existing email address. That's the only thing. So these two lines, uh, this first line you copy. First line you copy. Okay, you will get the account success page. But uh, you don't need the account success page, guys. Okay, you just need to uh, register with all fields and you pass these things. You see, first name is passed, last name is passed. Here, this valid email. In place of the email, you have to give this email, guys. Okay, this third, third argument, you just change it. This is something changeable. Uh, okay, it's not so easy to change now because a lot of arguments are there. Okay, it's scrolling here and there. Okay, I'll do one thing. I'll just remove this part and paste it. Okay, done. Some somehow we have to find a mechanism of pasting it. These three things are done. 
Fourth one is telephone number. Uh, yeah, get property telephone number. This is also done. Have to cross check. Valid password, valid password. Yeah, done. These two lines are also done. Then select a newsletter option is inbuilt. Okay, all fields right. This is there. This is there. Clicking on continue button is also there. Now we'll be still on the register page. Right? We'll be still on the register page and we are getting the actual warning message. Copy this part and uh, paste it in actual warning place. Okay, you can reduce this line now. Done. You see, again, two lines we got. That's it. Now, fourth test, we keep on optimizing the code. This many lines we are writing. I want to reduce a number of lines. Yes, okay. I just want to reduce a number of lines. So, register page dot click on continue button. I'm not feeling anything. So, let that be like this. But here, I can at least reduce these lines. Assert statements, I'll keep it open. I don't want to reduce multiple assert statements. And in place of this, I'll paste this. And this statement is not required anymore. And uh, here also, register page dot retrieve warning message. I'll paste this here. And uh, this line is not required. You see, number of lines are getting reduced automatically. And uh, register page dot retrieve last name warning. And here I'll provide that. Then register page here. Multiple assertions are there in this uh, test. So we have to verify no, no other way. Mm. Okay, this part, copy this and provide that here. And this line you can reduce. Okay, we can do something, but uh, let's see if it is really required or not. Okay, so let's think about the solution. If you want to still reduce the number of lines of code, there may be a way. And this line is not required. So we are saying contain sign, we are passed. If we can pass all these warning messages to a method, that will be good now. Okay, so this is on the register page. So I'll go to the register page and try that public wide. Mm. I'm just thinking. Asset true should come, right? Only one asset statement I want to write and remaining all, you know, kind of thing I want to do. That's what I'm thinking about how to do that and all. So here, one of the method is there that is retrieve privacy policy warning. For first, let's go to this method. As uh, I'll say here, what I'm writing, retrieve privacy policy warning, I'm saying, but here, verify, uh, display status, uh, status of warning messages. Like this one method I'll create, okay? We'll try this. One method is to reduce the number of lines. Here, string, first one I'll say string. This is privacy policy warning, right? I'll write privacy policy warning. Okay, so uh, let's go for that method. First of all, privacy policy warning message. Uh, way, uh, retrieve privacy policy warning message is there. Okay, but I'm going to pass that actually. Okay, and uh, compare here. So this is somewhat different. Uh, so what I'm trying to do is something different. So I'll just uh, write the logic inside this. String privacy policy warning. String second warning is what? String first name warning. First name warning. Then string. Next one is last name warning. Last name warning, comma. Then string email warning string email warning then what else we have guys then telephone warning and password warning okay string uh, telephone telephone warning comma string password warning like this one method i will create 
and here what i will try to do is i'll write this uh, first uh, privacy policy warning i'll go to the privacy policy warning where is privacy policy this is a privacy policy warning text okay so i'll copy this part and provide that here string privacy policy warning this is a this is a expected this is a actual okay actual privacy warning warning text okay this is expected this is actual you can write actual if you want okay actual actual privacy policy warning what i'm trying to do here okay okay there is a mismatch here this is expected privacy policy warning i'll write it as expected then it will be good here for everything i will write expected yes. otherwise it will confuse us okay expected first name warning expected last name warning expected email warning then i'll write expected telephone warning expected telephone warning and finally i'll write expected password warning okay expected password warning like this i'll write now there's no problem this is actual privacy policy warning and here i'll say boolean 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 policy warning privacy policy warning status privacy policy warning status okay is equal to actual privacy warning dot contains okay dot contains this one you have to write contains only actual privacy warning dot contains contains what expected privacy policy warning expected privacy policy warning okay from the parameter whatever you are getting you have to provide here that's it one boolean value you got now we can we'll reduce the number of lines later first let's write like this okay the next one is a first name warning expected first name actual first name warning is here written somewhere uh first name warning string first name warning text okay first name warning dot get text i'll just come here and paste it here like string now i'll write this line and modify this okay so uh, otherwise i'll write manually boolean first name warning status is equal to first name warning status is equal to this is actual i'll write actual first name warning text dot equals i'll write equals case equals expected first name warning okay like this i'll write because here in the code you see we are using asset equals so i am using the equals method of the string to overcome that okay these two things are done now last name thing go to the top and get the last name warning text so logic we can create guys on the fly okay this is a logic i am creating just to reduce the number of lines okay you can think of different logics and get that here write actual last name warning text and here write down it will be same like this copy this paste it and here last name warning status is equal to actual last name warning text dot equals expected last name warning done now what is the next one that i have to verify let's see here these three are completed email telephone and password are there first let's find the email thing email warning copy this email warning text come down and paste it here now boolean this one i'll write actual actual email warning text boolean email warning status is equal to i'll write down actual email warning text dot equals dot equals have right equals here expected email warning text have right Ex expected email warning okay that's it put a semicolon done 
then after email we have telephone right telephone let's find the telephone where is the telephone yeah telephone somewhere here it should be there this is the telephone copy this telephone and paste it here and write down boolean again same thing same code guys here change it to actual telephone actual telephone warning text which is retrieved by the automation code and uh, here i'll say telephone warning status is equal to actual telephone warning text dot equals dot equals expected expected telephone warning expected telephone warning then put a semicolon that's it now final one is password retrieve warning password so password warning text copy this part come back here this is the last one guys ultimate last and ultimate uh boolean here i'll say actual password warning actual password warning text i'll say and uh, i'll write down password warning status warning status is equal to actual password warning text dot equals expected warning expected password warning okay whatever you are receiving from the method and when you are calling the method when that method is called whatever you are passing that will come here finally i have written a boolean value guys written privacy policy warning status ampersand ampersand okay i will combine okay the combination of all this stuff if anything is failing okay some warning message is not correct simple okay okay so everything should pass display status of warning messages if something is going wrong something is failing guys something is not okay there is a drawback with this but that's okay but if you want to reduce the number of lines uh, we can write like this what is failing we have to investigate later okay there's some problem in this warning messages are not displayed properly you can find it out okay figure out figure it out okay this one is email warning status then we have ampersand ampersand tel telephone warning status we are we are using some logic in java guys so we'll return the combination of all this stuff and uh, telephone is done password warning status return ampersand ampersand telephone warning status put a semicolon here and return type will be boolean guys okay return type will be boolean and the error should be gone yeah done and i can reduce the number of lines now so instead of writing actual privacy warning i'll write privacy warning dot get text okay i'll copy paste here this line i can reduce now this line i can reduce and uh, next one is instead of writing actual first name warning text i'll write like this directly and this line is not required anymore you see a lot of lines are getting reduced internally also uh, then this part take it here okay and remove this one okay this is not required anymore now email warning dot get text dot equals directly we are writing the statements are we are removing then telephone dot get text just write that here and remove these lines so we have we are optimizing the code guys uh, by reducing the number of lines unnecessary lines we don't have to write it's not compulsory it's up to you if you want to be descriptive you can still have the number of lines otherwise you can reduce the lines like this and showing you one way where you can reduce the number of lines but remaining is all up to you okay so fine ampersand the resultant boolean value will come if anything fails you will get false here okay one of the warning messages are not matching you'll get false here and uh, here what i will do here is i don't need all this stuff okay so i'll write down something like this i'll I'll just take it up to here. Okay. Till okay, it's not so easy for me. Okay, let me write down. I'll set data set true here. I'll call the method. Okay, so I'll call the method. What is the method I need to call? Here, warning messages. Some few uh. Oh, uh, warning message or messages is or are not matching or not displayed. Message or messages, okay. Message or messages are not displayed, okay. So, you have to see warning messages are not displayed. Something I'm right, all right. Here I'll say this page dot display status of warning messages 
this will result either true or false case okay so i just removed the code right again i have to go back you see this is the problem uh control z control z i have to do i should get all this stuff again I have to pass these things right, otherwise, how can I get? So here we'll do one thing. Uh, one minute, uh, telephone and password, everything is there. So what I'll do here is I'll write a single statement assert dot assert true. I'll write here. Uh, I need to call the method register page dot display status of warning. I have to pass the arguments. What arguments I need to pass? In the first argument, I have to pass uh, contains. This part I have to pass. It's not so easy. I'll do one thing. I'll remove this last line and then no. Otherwise, I'll copy this. All these lines is jumbling here and there. So better I do one thing. Here I'll copy paste and uh, I can reduce the lines. Okay. So this part I'll remove. And this one I have to data prop dot get property till here, right? Till here, I have to take copy this and come back here and pass this as one of the argument. This part is done. Now, second one. Second one is this one. Data prop. Till here, I have to copy. And as a second argument, I need to pass. Go to second argument, guys. In place of this null, you pass it. This is also done. Then third one, third one is copy this and uh, pass the third one. Done. Now fourth one, fourth one. I think I can get from here. I don't have to go to the text file. Copy this fourth one. Fourth null. Just pass this email warning. Then fifth one, scroll here. It's kind of less size, so we can copy this, no problem. And fifth one is also done. And finally, sixth one, last one. This line I'll do. Last one is this part till here. Copy this and uh, paste it here as a last null. Okay, you are passing from the expected warning messages. You are passing simple guys. Okay. From the properties file. This is single line, just we have reduced it to two lines ultimately. Save this. That's it. We don't have to do anything else. Now we are done with the what is there any problem with the register page.java? Save this. Uh, there is a semicolon or something will be missing, I guess. There is a mistake. First name, warning status. You see here, uh, circular bracket is missing. That's the reason we are getting the error. Save this now. Errors are gone. Done, done. Now, last one is search.java. It will not take much time, guys. Okay, this is a very simple one. So here, home page, home page is equal to click on search button is there. Uh, is there any possibility of uh, removing or something? I'm just checking. Otherwise, uh, it's okay. Okay, so here, this part, home page dot click on search button will return you the search page and say dot status that's okay let that be there i don't have to reduce the number of lines it looks good mm. okay here also here we can reduce such page dot retrieve this uh, we can in place of this we can directly write this we can reduce this line and uh, the other one is uh, this part and I'll reduce this message and you can remove this line. That's it. Okay. So here, uh, some three to four lines are coming. That's okay. Okay. Three to four lines are coming. That's okay. The, the tests are very small. That's okay. And you can actually create this object. Uh, this, uh, one more, one more statement you can reduce guys. What you can do is, uh, this home page, anyhow, you are, you have to create object, right? Every, everywhere it is repeating. So copy this and provide inside the setup method and uh, make it kind of global, guys, global. With this uh, approach, you can reduce the number of lines, okay? Home page is equal to home page, home page is equal to new home page. Now here, you don't need this line anymore, okay? This will reduce one more line. 
here also you don't need to enter this uh, create an object from which object will be created here okay in the setup method here also i'll reduce this line yeah this is fine guys two to three lines is fine no problem what about these two lines is it possible to reduce or not i'm just thinking here also two lines is it possible to yeah uh, here verify search with uh, enter product into the search box field and click on the search button okay i can uh, i can reduce these two lines with a single line guys okay it's on the home page guys go to the home page search for a product kind of method i'll create here some search related method we have to find first let's click on search button here i'll create a method public void search for a product search for a product some generic method i'll write and uh, what i'll do here is uh, just to uh, first i have to enter into the search box we'll enter product into search box field i'll take this copy this and here i'll say string product text Product test text and after that I have to click on the search button. These two lines will come and it will return the search page. I'll just say search page. Okay, so it may be valid product and invalid. Doesn't matter, guys. It's a unique uh, kind of method. So what I will do here is here I'll simply say home page dot search for a product. I'll say control Z Z again. I uh, I need the data. Search for a product and here I need to pass the data guys. This is nothing but this valid product data. Okay. Copy this part and paste it here. And after that, you don't need anything else. Okay. Here also you don't need this part because it will return you the object of the search page. Okay. It's clicking on the search button internally in the method. Search page is equal to you see, we have reduced the number of lines to two lines. Okay. Here also, again, we can do the same thing. That is um, here I'll say home page dot search for a product. Here I'll pass the invalid product. Okay, I'll pass the invalid product. And I'll remove these things. And this will return you the object of the search page. I'll simply say search page is equal to done. Not required anymore. Two lines, two lines, two lines. Okay, now it this also got reduced to two lines, guys. Okay. So any semicolon or something missing? Yes, semicolon is missing as expected. Now save all. Close all. I finally let's run the test to see whether this uh, reducing of the number of lines of code that I have shown you here uh, is causing any errors anywhere. Okay, we have to check this because we have done a major change before going to the next part of the framework. Okay, before integrating some other stuff into this framework, let's find it out. Okay, if there are any errors are there, I can open this our problem. Yeah, it's coming. Okay. You can either right click here and say run as test engine suit, or you can right click on test engine.xml and say run as test engine suit. Anything is fine, guys. Okay. If all the tests are running fine, then we are good. Let's see. Hoping that there are no problems. We have optimized the code as much as possible. Every test method is having only two lines of code. Okay. So much sophisticated, you can say. So you can get a lot of ideas like this guys. Okay. It's a, um, this framework is not the final framework. Maybe you have more ideas and you can, you can change other parts of the framework. Okay. Whatever the framework I'm giving you, I'm, I tried my level best and gave it, giving it to you, but tomorrow you are kind of, kind of an expert and, uh, you are good with Java and all you get some other ideas that I have not got. You can implement still. Okay. It's not a rule like a rule or something like a framework should be like this only. It's not like that. Okay. Your technical skills you can prove in this framework while building the framework inheritance concept. Any concept you try to implement, guys, and try to make it more, you know, right kind of. Okay, so try all your skills and try to change the stuff, guys. Okay, so implement the things and uh, make them more, 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 more better. Okay, improvise the framework on the go. Okay, you can have a side side project framework kind of stuff. Okay and keep on improvising your framework skills okay wherever you see someone uh, writing a better framework than you investigate and figure out like uh, what is that thing that they are implementing and try to implement in your framework that's how we learn that's how we improve our frameworks okay 
that's how we get uh, architect kind of skills in creating the frameworks and all okay so whatever i know so far i am doing that tomorrow my i may get even more ideas i can create a better framework but that's up to you that's up that's okay but uh, you see all the test got executed guys all the 14 test got run you see nothing got failed everything is working fine we got 14 out of 14 pass so with this note guys uh, we'll uh, we'll end this session i'll just uh, make a note here reducing the reducing number of lines of code okay optimizing the code by reducing number of lines of code in test methods okay like this i'll write a statement here that's enough so this is what i have done in this session guys okay i can't continue to the previous part and then i started reducing the number of lines of code that's only the thing that i have done so far okay so in the upcoming sessions what we can do is uh this is good now this uh, this project is good now this framework is good now but this is not the end of the project right this is not the end of the framework I still need to integrate some something like uh, I need to add some capabilities like generating an extent report. Uh, okay, uh, providing the logs into the extent report, showing the logs execution logs into the extent report, and taking screenshot whenever a particular test fails. Only for the failed test, I want to take the screenshot and I want to embed that screenshot into the extent report. Such kind of stuff, uh, stuff I want to do. Okay, this framework can be taken to the next level by integrating the extent reports and taking the screenshots and uh, you know. Uh, collecting the logs in the reports and uh, extent reports and all the stuff. Okay, the basic reports, whatever you're getting, are not that much good. So we'll use extent reports that I'm going to cover in the next session, guys. In the next session, we are going to integrate the extent reports and then uh, customize the stuff. Okay, so taking the screenshots only for the field test and attaching the logs. If any test is failing, attaching the uh, exception details of that particular test method which got uh, failed. All those different stuff we are going. I'm going to cover in the next session. Okay. So a lot of stuff, a lot of logs, a lot of ways of generating the logs and adding to the extent reports. Okay. So it's kind of uh, advanced concept on extent report. Already covered extent reports in the previous sessions of this series. With that knowledge, you can easily understand the next session, guys. Okay. So, but at framework level, I'm going to integrate. So that's also good. Okay. I'm going to create a better framework by doing that stuff that I'm going to do in the next session. So that's all for this session, guys. Uh, I'll update these notes. Okay. With this, uh, so far created mind map in the last session last part guys i'll provide you the uh, path of this project i'll i'll share you this project i'll show you guys how to import this project and uh, utilize this project also for your needs and for your learnings also in the last session i'll show you that till then you will be getting only this uh, mind map okay in the last session i'll show i'll give you this uh, framework completed framework at a go i'll give you fine so guys uh, that's all for this session i'll be updating this notes see in the next session thank you bye Hello all, welcome to part 7 of Hybrid TestNG Framework where I am going to show you how to integrate extent reports and take screenshot and embed those screenshots into the extent report in this session. So let's get started. So as I already mentioned, this is part 7, okay, till part 6, okay, we have created a framework which is a hybrid TestNG framework. Okay, which consists of data driven framework and also which has implemented this page object model and page factory design patterns. Now we are going to take this uh, hybrid test engine framework to the next level by integrating this extent reports and uh, we'll also provide a facility of taking the screenshots for the test which got failed and embed those screenshots into these reports under the failed test. Okay, so I'll open this Eclipse IDE. Here we have the project that is a project or framework that is created so far. Okay, so let's go to the next steps, guys. Let's go to the next steps. So first, we have to start with implementing the listeners. Okay, we have to first implement the listeners, guys. Okay, so listeners belong to this test engine. Guys. These are test engine listeners. What I'm listeners I'm talking about are test engine listeners. So what is their user and all? I'll tell you now. Okay, so you see there are some tests, guys. Okay. You see here we have under login class, we have login test file, login login related test, test cases we have automated. Here in the register, we have uh, four automation, uh, four test cases we got automated. And in the search, we have three tests, okay? Three test cases which got automated already. Fine. Now, the thing here is, whenever the execution of a particular test starts, I want to do something. 
whenever a particular test fails, I want to do something. When a particular test uh, passes, fails, skips, I want to do something. Okay. Like that, I want to do different activities. So I have already covered about this uh, listener's topic in the previous sessions as part of the test ng series. Okay. The same training series, guys, in the test ng related uh, videos, I have already covered this. Okay. So whenever something happens in this automation test, okay, like uh, when the test starts executing or when the test particular test passes, fails, skips, okay, for each and every action, we'll fire an event. This particular test methods will fire an event and that events will be listened by these listeners. Okay. And once these events are listened by these listeners, the methods in the listeners, appropriate methods in the listeners will get invoked and uh, whatever we want to do, what you want to do when a particular test passes, you can do something like that. Okay. So the events will be fired by these test methods of these uh, classes and based on the events with the help of listeners and its methods, we can do whatever we want. Okay. For example, the main thing that you can actually do is, let's say in, uh, in these three classes, if some test fails, okay, I want to take a screenshot. So when a particular test in this classes fails, it will fire an event, appropriate event it will fire. Based on that event, a particular method in our listeners will get invoked and they will write the code for taking the screenshot. Only when the particular test fails, you want to take a screenshot. That is possible with the help of listeners case. Okay. This test inside these classes, we are going to fire the events and uh, these events will be listened by the methods in the listeners class and all. And when these methods get invoked, we will write some code in those methods to perform such kind of actions when such kind of events occur. This is all the concept is. Okay. So I'll show you practically guys so that you can understand more. So what I will do is first I will implement the listeners guys. First I will create a package here under SRC main Java. I'll create a package. Right click new class. Sorry, not class package. Right click new. I'll say package. I'll say com dot tutorials ninja dot QA dot. I'll say listeners. Okay, listeners. You can give any package name. I'm just giving listeners. Some app name I'm giving. Under this listeners package, I'll create a class. I'll just name this as my listeners. You can name it anything else. You can name it anything. L I S T E N E R S. Okay. You, you can say my listeners, our listeners. Okay. Whatever the name you want to give, you can give. Okay. It is a user defined class. Click on finish. Now I'll make this user defined class implement, implements, I'll say, an interface, which is a predefined interface in test ng that is I test listener interface. Okay. This is I test listener interface guys. Here I provided you see I test listener interface. It's a predefined interface from test ng. Now hover the mouse on this I test listener and try to import it from test ng, but you will not be able to do so. You are not getting any import statement. Is this project already configured with test ng? Yes, it's already configured with test ng guys. If you go to the palm.xml file, already we have this. Test ng dependencies and test ng libraries are downloaded and configured in this project. But when I hover the mouse on this I test listener interface, I'm not getting the import statement. The same classes, same uh, interface is provided inside under SRC test Java. You would have been able to import this without any problem. But since this, I'm trying to import this I test listener from under SRC main Java, this is not possible. What I have to do? I have to go to this palm.xml file where we have this test ng dependency and change the scope up to test means only under SRC test Java only. If this particular I test listener is used, you can import that. But if you try to import this uh, I test listener, some libraries of this uh, library related predefined class in interface of test ng outside the SRC test Java, that's under SRC main Java, etc. That's not possible, guys. So what we have to do? Change this test to compile. Once you change the test to compile, it will apply. This library configuration will be applied not only the scope will be expanded now from SRC test Java to anywhere in the project. You can use the test ng libraries. Okay. Save all. Okay. Now it will be applied to the entire project rather than just for SRC test Java. Okay. You can still use the predefined class and interface of test ng and import them in the SRC main Java also now. 
Now let's go back to the my listeners class, which I have created under this listeners package of SRC main Java. Now hover the mouse after changing that test to compile scope, scope from test to compile in the upper.xml file. You see now you are getting import statement. So don't get confused, guys. Okay, if you are not getting the import statement, that means the scope of that test engine is up to SRC test Java. So we have to change the scope of the uh, test engine from test to compile so that you can use this kind of predefined interfaces and import them in the outside the SRC test Java. That's number one. Once they are imported, imported, you see uh, this my listeners is now implementing the ITest listener. I want to override the methods. Okay. In my listeners class, user defined class, I want to override some methods of this ITest listener. Okay. In ITest listener interface, there are some methods that I want to override inside this my listeners. So if I click on this and take you to this ITest listener, there are some methods guys on test start, on test success. You see, under ITest listener predefined class, we have these methods. These methods I want to override in the my listeners. How to do that? How to do that? For that to happen, guys, for that to happen, okay, I can manually by looking at that code inside this ITest listener, I can write the code here. Or the easiest way in Eclipse IDE is select this my listeners and go to source and select this override implement methods option. And you will get this override implement methods dialog where you see from ITest listener which methods you want to override. These are all the methods of the ITest listener, but which methods you want to override, you have to choose. On finish, I want. I don't want, uh, I want on start. Uh, this one on test failed, uh, but with I don't want that. On test failed with timeout, I don't want. On test failure, on test skipped, on test start, uh, on test success, all these four I want. Four plus two, six. Six methods I want to override. Just select that. You see, all the all the methods in the ITest listener are automatically added here and override uh, annotation is provided by test ng. This is uh, sorry, from Java, it came. Sorry, this is from Java, sorry. Okay. Uh, because we are overriding, overriding using Java concept, right? This methods in the ITS listener. Okay. Yeah, fine. Let's remove all this stuff. Just remove all this stuff. Save. So on test start, on test success, on test failure, on test skip, on start, on finish. Okay. These are the six methods I want to override. Now I just want to do some an experiment, a kind of experiment, guys. Okay. So based on the events fired by uh, this test methods inside this login register such class classes, there are five tests in login test and four tests in register, three tests. In, based on the events fired by this uh, test test methods, like when test starts. Okay, for example, a method is started executing the login. So which method should be invoked on test start in the listeners class should be invoked. Okay, based on the events file, appropriate methods in the methods in the listeners class should get invoked. And here we have to decide what should happen when this method get invoked. What do you want to do when this particular method gets invoked by the events file by the test methods in that inside its classes? That's what is the concept all about, guys. You see. Uh, what is this? Uh, there is on test start, on test success, on on test failure. These are all test methods based on the test methods. It's fine. On test skipped also is there. But here there are two other methods known as on start and on finish. I'll take this on start to the beginning of the uh, methods. Okay, on finish I'll keep it at the end. You can keep it anywhere. That's okay. But I'm just organizing it in a better way. On start. On start means what? It's not on test start. It is on start. That means. When the execution of the test inside this project starts at a high level, okay, this method will get invoked. So here, what I will do is for now, I'll not do anything. Okay. I'll just write a print statement instead. Okay. I'll just write a print statement saying execution of project test started. Okay. So before any of the tests got executed, I'll simply run the on start means the execution started just, okay. The test methods will now start executing. So execution of the uh, project test got started, okay. Next on test start, when a particular test method, here there are five tests inside the login. Before each and every test starts executing, this method will be invoked in the listeners on test start. Each and every test start, this method will be invoked. Here I'll be writing, which is test started here, I can get the name of the test which got started. Okay. 
here five tests, four tests, three tests, they all are going to start. But which test is starting? I want to get the name of the test. I'll say result dot get name. There is a method, predefined method. I test result is from test ng, guys. This is from test ng. And here using the object reference, we can call this method get name. It will it will get the based on the event fired by a particular test method using which this particular method got invoked. This method can now retrieve the name of the test which has fired the event. Okay. We can get the name of the test. This will return the name of the test string. I'll say test name. Test name is equal to I'll write. Okay. Now here I'll write a print statement saying system dot out dot print ln test name, this particular test name plus started started executing okay started executing then what about on test success when any of this test inside this classes got successfully executed without any failures okay when the test got passed then on test success will be invoked okay at the end of the test if the test is passed this method will be invoked and here again the same thing is which test got passed Further again, string test name is equal to result dot get the name. I'll write like this. And here I'll say system dot out dot print uh, test name plus got successfully executed or got passed, whatever you want to write. Okay, got successfully executed. Now on test failure means if any of the test methods inside this classes when executing got failed due to some exceptions or whatever it is then on test failure will be invoked. And here again, the same thing, thing string test name is equal to this result dot get name, sorry, result dot get name. And then I'll write down system dot out dot print ln, system dot out dot print ln, test name plus got failed. Okay, I'll write failed. Okay, now next thing. So when something is failed, we want to find out the reason, right? Exception details we want. We can also print out that system.out.println result dot get throwable. Okay, this will this will print all the details of the failure details. Okay, why it got failed, all the details will be printed. Okay, get throwable. Exception details will be printed, guys, using this get throwable. Okay, result dot get throwable will print all the exception details for the reason for the failure. Now on test skipped. A particular test got skipped okay i'll show you how to skip a test okay but uh, if a particular test gets skipped then i'll write down print test name. i'll get the test name result dot result dot get name and here i'll write system dot out dot print ln test name dot as test name place got skipped that's it and here uh, due to which exception this particular test got skipped, that also I want to print out. System, uh, when in case of failure and skipping, we can get the exception details. Okay. Result dot get throwable. Again, same thing. Result dot get throwable done. On finish means after all the tests got executed. Okay. Before all the tests got started, on start was there. Okay. Execution of the project has started. And on finish means all the tests inside all these classes in this project got executed. Okay, finished executing project tests. Okay, finished executing project tests. Like some sample print statement I'm writing here for now, just to show you how the listeners will work. Okay, now I will run this particular test with the help of testng.xml file. And I'm expecting this print statements to be printed in the output console. Okay, so I'm doing that. Right click, run as test ng switch, but this will not happen. None of this listener methods will get invoked because of the test. Test will fire the events, guys. Some tests will pass, fail, and all those stuff skip, but uh, none of these events will be triggered. You will see that. You see, nothing will be printed in the output console. The print statements I have written in the listeners, listeners class will, are not going to work. I'll tell you the reason for that. Let all the tests run, and you will not see any print statements that are provided in the listeners class methods are not going, listener class methods are not going to run this, not at all. Events will be fired by the test, individual tests, but the methods inside the listeners class will not get invoked. What is the reason behind that? I'll let you know. Okay, let all the tests run from all the classes. That is a register login and such classes. Once all the tests got executed, I'll show you 
why none of the methods inside the Linux class got invoked because of the test fight, test event, events fired by the tests inside the classes, which are currently running the tests. So we're almost there. Let's wait for the test to complete executing. Such tests are running, the final test. Two more tests, I guess. Yeah, last test. And if you see the output console of the test got run, you see all the tests got executed, but in the output console, you see none of the print statements got printed. None of the print statements got printed. You see nowhere execution of project test started has printed. Nowhere this started executing got printed, got successfully executed, got printed, got failed, and with exception details got printed, got skipped, and net throw uh, exception details got printed, finished executing project test got printed. Nothing got printed. This methods are didn't get invoked. What is the reason behind that? Just by providing this methods inside the just by overriding these methods in the my listeners, it's not going to work. Okay. It's not going to work, guys. Then what I have to do? I have to open this testng.xml file. In the testng.xml file, under the sweet tag, sweet tag, you have to add something known as listeners. Without this, it is not going to happen. If you don't add this listeners tags, then testng uh, will not invoke the methods in the listeners class. Here, we have to mention the listeners tag to inform testng to invoke this methods in the listeners class when the events are fired by the test inside this classes, test classes, okay? That's the reason we have to write this. Without you write this listeners and provide the path of this, uh, path of this, uh, what do you call? Mm, path of this uh, listeners uh, class, this is not going to happen. The connection between the test and the te events fired by the test and this uh, listener methods are not going to happen without this. So here under the listeners, right, listener, okay? Class hyphen name attribute, and just self close this tag. Okay. Then here you need to provide the path of this listeners class that is my listeners path using with the help of package name form dot tutorials without any spelling mistake better tutorials ninja dot qa dot list and ers like this you have to write. So under this listeners we have a class known as dot my listeners. Okay. Like this you have to write. Once you have written like this, now the connection is established between this events fired by the test methods and the methods in the listeners class. Now you will see the print statements getting printed when you run this testng.xml file, right click run as testng suite, you will see that. You see, execution of the project has started. One of the method inside the listeners class got executed already. Okay, before any of the tests got executed, execution of the project has got started. Okay, one of the is, you see, this started executing and uh, got uh, successfully executed. Second test, started executing and successfully executed will be printed. Started executing and successfully executed. Third test, everything will pass. For now, everything is going to pass. So started executing and successfully got executed will be printed for every test. I'll show you how to fail a test and then how to get that appropriate uh, events fired for the failed test and uh, all those stuff, okay? I'll do a few things. You see all the uh, all the tests what were are running for each and every test uh, on test start is uh, on test start method in the listeners class is getting invoked and on test success also is getting invoked okay none of the tests are getting failed so only those two methods two to three methods okay on on, on finish also will get invoked so out of six only four methods okay four or three yeah four methods i guess four methods will get invoked remaining two that is failed and skipped are not getting invoked anywhere because all the tests are getting passed. Let's wait for all the tests to run and uh, we are already getting the print statements printing here. Okay, the print statements are from the methods of the listeners class. You see 14 tests and you start from here, you see execution of the project has started. Then first test started executing, got successfully executed, started executing, got successfully executed, started executing, got successfully executed. Started executing, got successfully executed, got successfully executed, started executing, started, got successfully executed. For every test, we got the same messages. Okay. And uh, finally, finished executing project test. After all the 14 tests got passed, you see, final on, on, on finish got executed, on finish method got executed, and we got that statement printed on finish. Finished executing the project test got printed, you see. That means events are fired by the 
test methods inside these classes and appropriate methods are getting invoked. For now, on start got invoked, on finish got invoked, on test start and on test success got invoked. But on test failure and on, on test skip didn't get invoked because there are none of the tests which are failing. I'll go to the login.java guys. I'll go to the login.java or I'll go to the search.java guys. I'll go to the search.java last one. Okay. So what I will do with the last one is the priority to the second second test. First test will pass. Second test, I'll fail it intentionally, guys. Okay. How to fail this test intentionally? Even though there is no problem, I'm trying to fail it in, intentionally, guys. Asset dot asset equals uh retrieve. Okay. I'm um, data prop dot get property. No product test in search results. Okay. The data properties, test data dot properties. Uh there's no product that matches the search criteria is there. Okay, then what else is there, guys? Okay, so or else I will do one thing on test. Uh, where is the method? Search dot Java, right? Okay. So here, instead of giving data dot get property, I I'll, I'll give it again, guys. I'll give it again. I instead of reading this from there, uh, I'll just uh, give some. A, B, C, D. Okay. Which will fail, right? This uh, retrieved no product message will not match with A, B, C, D. So it will fail. Okay. It will fail. This particular test will fail. And third test, what I will do is I'll say depends on method methods depends on methods is equal to if this particular test fails, then this particular method should get skipped. Okay. Because it is depending this particular test method is depending on this method. So if this passes, this also will run. But if this fails, since this particular test is depending on this test, this will get skipped. Depends on methods. I'll give this method name. OK, I can give any number of method names. This method name, this method name. So both the tests. OK, so for example, here you can give multiple method names also. But here the thing here is. Thing here is, guys, both the test methods should pass then only this method will run. Otherwise, if any of the test method fails, this will get skipped. You see, this particular test method is depending on first and second one. But if this is going to fail, third method is going to get skipped. Okay. Any of the test methods here provided in this list, you can even provide one also, not a problem. But for example sake, I provided two. If any of this uh, pro, uh, specified test methods inside this depends on methods fails, this test method will get skipped. Okay. That's, I did this in the search.java. So that one of the test method will fail and other test method will skip. And I want appropriate methods inside this listeners. When the events are failed events and skipped events are fired from this search.java, appropriate methods that is on test failure and on test skip should be uh, kind of, okay? Here, I want to take a screenshot also, okay? Uh, for now, I'll write screenshot taken, but uh, later I'll write the code proper code for taking the screenshot, okay? Save this. Save all, save all, close all. This time you see, more events will be fired. Right click, run as test and switch. So some tests in the search will fail and one test in the search will skip. Okay. We'll see whether respective uh, methods in the linear or class are getting invoked for the fail test and uh, skip test. Okay. Let's see that. The first search, uh, okay. Still we are not at the search test. Okay. So they are simply passing. Okay, such test started. First test will pass, guys. No problem. Second test will fail. Okay, we are intentionally failing the second test and uh, and other tests got skipped. Okay, so now let's see the logs. Uh, let's see the uh, this. These are nothing but logs only, guys. Okay, these are logs, but we are printing them into the output console with the help of the listener methods. Execution of the project test started, and at the end, 
uh, finished executing project tests will come on on start and on finish got executed this one is like for, for the first test started executing successfully executed started executing successfully executed okay for all the tests it will be the same so till the such test the same thing will happen got successfully executed started executing started executing successfully executed okay then you see the second test in the search started executing it got failed guys okay and uh exception details got printed and screenshot is taken we have simply written the print uh, print statement for taking the screenshot but here this is not the actual code for taking the screenshot just we are printing just to see whether whatever we wanted to do in the methods of the listeners class are happening or not again the next test started executing got skipped because it is depending on the one of the tests okay so which are which is failed so again the reason for the failure got uh, got printed and done exception details were printed and finished okay this is how the methods in the listeners class can get invoked guys okay but this is not how we are going to use the methods of the listeners class i'm just going to i, I wanted to demonstrate how these methods in the listeners class are getting invoked when the event respective events are fired from this uh, met test methods inside the these classes that's what i want to do but what if i run the login.java will this uh, listener methods listener class methods will be invoked no these methods will only be invoked when you run the tests using the testing.xml file because here we have provided listener tags. But in the listener uh, login register and such, I have not provided this listener related stuff. So when you run them individually, these methods will not get invoked, guys. Okay. They will be only invoked uh, when you run these uh, classes using the testing. We generally in real time we provide the listeners tags inside the testing.xml file. So from now onwards, you have to don't run the test individually, guys. Test classes individually. Run the testng.xml file where listener stacks are mentioned. Then only the methods in the listeners class will get invoked for the events fired by this methods in the test classes. Okay, fine. Now what next? What next? So uh, have implemented listeners. Okay. Now let's look into the extent reports implementation. Let's implement the extent reports. So what I have to do? I'll go step by step, guys. Here under utils okay under utils i'll create a new class known as extend reporter okay it just gives some random name extend reporter kind of name you can get my extend reporter extend reporter whatever the name you want to give just give here just create a user defined class and inside this class create a method guys right? public white mm, generate extend report okay some some user defined method also you just create okay generate extend report and make this static guys so that i can access this method with the help of this okay when i have to generate an extend report i'll say extend reporter dot generate extend report it will generate a report for me okay line of thing now the next thing is here to implement this extend reports implementation of the extend reports i have to create an object for the extend reports class extend reports extend uh, report is equal to new extend reports like this you just create an object for the extend reports class for the mouse on extend reports okay so for the mouse on the extend reports just give me a second so for the mouse on the extend reports and you will see there is no import statement coming because this extent reports is a predefined class which belongs to extent reports library. Okay. So currently we have different libraries. That is Java library we have. In this project, by default, we have Java library. Apart from Java library, if you go to the pom.xml file, we have added testng library, selenium library, uh, Apache Poi API library are there, but we don't have extent reports library in this pom.xml file. That is the reason when you over the mouse on extent reports, you are not getting the import statement. So what you have to do, you have to go to this new, uh, just open the new tab and go to MVN repository and search for extend reports like this. Once you search for extend reports, you'll get this uh, com event stack extend reports. You'll also get uh, relevant reports, but this is an older one, guys. Okay, go with the event stack, which is the latest. Okay, click on this extend reports and the latest version we have, which got released last on September 19, 2021 is 5.0.9 as per today's recording date. Tomorrow, when you are watching these videos, you may get a newer version. That's okay. Okay. So for now, uh, this is the latest version we have as per the recording time and all those stuff. Copy this and go here to the form.xml file and paste the 
dependency tax of that extent reports here, okay, under this in between the dependency tax. Now we added the dependency tax of extent reports also into the bomb.xml file. Click on save all button and this uh, libraries will be automatically downloaded for the extent reports and configured with this project. Now go back to the this uh, class extent reporter and generate extent report method. Hold the mouse now. Now you are getting the extent import statement. Import extent reports from this extent reports library. Okay. Now, what is the next thing? Next thing is under extent reports, there are different type of reporters that we can use. Okay. There's no single type of reporter. There's no single type of report type under extent reports. There are multiple type of reports. I'll show you guys. Let's go to the official website of uh, extent reports. Just type extentreports.com. This is the official website of the extent reports. Okay. Once you go to the official website of the extent reports, here you see something known as docs option. Click on version five and say Java, select the Java guys. You'll be taken to the documentation of this. And here, if you expand this and say, there is an option like reporters. Under the extent reports, there are different type of reporters that we can use. Click on the reporters. These are the different type of reporters for now. We can use with the extent reports. One type of reporter is extent spark reporter. Second type of reporter is extent event, uh, event reporter. Third one is extent email reporter. Fourth one is extent glow reporter. Coming to the first one, it's free guys. Okay, you don't have to pay any license amount. So you can use it for free. Second one is extent event reporter, which is a paid one. Extent email reporter is also a paid one. This one we don't use. So we have to stick to the Spark reporter. Okay, people use Spark reporter in the free version. So I'll copy this line or you can create an object for the extent Spark reporter also. Copy this line is also fine. Or you just type extent Spark reporter, Spark. Here, write Spark reporter, okay? like this and here you need to give the path of the report whatever the report you want to create right get created right that you have to give here okay so what i will do here is i'll hold the mouse on extend spark reporter and import this extend spark report from extend reports library and now this constructor cannot be empty guys we have to provide the path i mean file okay which file file extend report file is equal to new file and I have to give the path of the path where I want to generate this extent report. Okay. Extent report will be in the .html format only, guys. Hover the mouse on file and import it from java.io package. Here, write down system.getProperty. I'll give the project path first. Where I want to generate the report and with which name and extension I want to generate the report. That all I have to decide here. This will represent the path of the project. Under the project, at which location? Under the test output folder. Under this test output folder. Okay. Under this test hyphen output folder, okay. Under this test output folder, I'll create another folder here. I'll write, uh, I'll provide another folder. I'll just name that folder as uh, extend reports folder, okay. Under extend reports folder, I want to give the name of the report as extend report and extension of the report as HTML, okay. With this name and extension under this folder of this test output folder, I want to. This, this extent reports folder is not there. If you expand this uh, test output, you see uh, extent reports folder is not there at this moment. Okay. Extent reports folder is not there at this moment in the under the test output, but it will be created automatically on the group. Now extent report file, you just paste it here. That's it. Now what next? Once you have started using one of the Spark reporter, using this object reference of the Spark reporter, you can set some configuration space. Okay. You see. Spark reporter, there are some things here, okay? Some configurations we can set. So copy this Spark reporter object reference and say dot config. Just call a method known as config method and say dot. The first one is theme. We have to set a theme. By default, which theme we have in this uh, extent reports? If you go to the official website of this extent reports and go to this documentation, the last part is uh, a complete example. Go to the last part. And on the top of this complete example, complete example here, a complete example here there is a link guys click on the link you'll be able to see a report by default the report looks like this guys okay by default the report looks like this this black and blue color template is there but there are other themes also we can change the theme okay instead of this theme i want to get a darker theme this is not a darker theme guys but i want to go with it i can configure the report to generate a i can configure this project to generate a darker theme for that i have to write spark reporter dot config dot set theme here i'll say theme dot 
you'll see if I say standard means you'll get the same report. This team you will get. But if I say team dot dark, you'll get a darker team. I'll show you that. Then, so extent reports I covered in detail in the previous sessions of this series, guys. Okay. So if you can watch those videos, this videos will be, this, uh, this explanation will be more easy for you. Okay. Spark reporter dot config again dot this time I want other one that is report name. I want to set a name for the report. But now what is the name of the report here? Name of the report is not coming here. This is the area after this timestamp before this timestamp. I want to here at this area where I am moving my mouse. I want to get the name of the report. So, but the report name is not coming by default. I want to set some report name set uh, document sorry, not report. Otherwise I'll say dot set report name. This is the method guys. Okay. You have to give the name of the report. That is, I'll write a proper name tutorials, Ninja test automation results. This is the name of the report I want to set. Okay. Name of the report results report. Okay, like this, I want to give the name of the report. Next one, spark reporter dot config dot set document title. I want to give the title of this uh, report, guys. If you see the title here, there's no title, guys. This URL is coming as title here. By default, do you see? the There's no pop, proper title on this tab, okay, in the sample report. The URL is coming as a title, but I want to give a proper title coming here, okay? The page title should be something good. I want to give a, my own title. So for that, uh, what I'll do is I said document title and here write something like TN automation report. Okay, this is the TN automation result, tutorials in the automation report. Okay, this is the title I want to give. Spark reporter dot config. What else is there? Dot config dot. I want to give a few more things like timestamp I want to give. By default, if you see this default report, guys, there is a timestamp here, but it is in a different format. First month is coming, then date is coming, then year is coming, then hours, minutes, seconds, and then AM, PM kind of stuff is coming. But I don't want this format. I want my own format. I want to change the format of the timestamp. So what I will do is dot set time stamp format. Okay. I'll give a set uh, use this method. And here in the double course, I'll provide the format, guys. I'll say uh, DD. DD stands for date. Uh, today is like 0 to right? 0 to is the date. And after that, I want slash month capital M M. The month will come. Y Y Y Y. This will get the year. This twenty twenty two year will come. Then hour hour hours I want to get H H. That is fourteen colon. I want minutes M M seconds S S. Okay, this format I want the timestamp. This is another format. This is not the format that I have mentioned. But I want the timestamp on the report should be in this format. Okay. So that's the reason I am giving this configuration. Four configurations I have given. I think that that's enough from the Spark reporter. Finally, after setting this configuration, guys, what I have to do is I have to say extent report, extent report dot attach reporter. Which reporter I am attaching to the extent report? One of the reporter. Okay, extent reports have different type of reporters. We were using Spark reporter. Okay, I'm just providing the Spark report. I'm attaching the Spark reporter to this extent report. All these configurations will be applied of the Spark reporter will be applied to the extent report now. Done. After this is done, guys, you have to say extent report. Okay. So in the generated report, okay, in the generated report, I want to display some information, some additional information uh, regarding this automation test. I want to uh, document, okay. I want to show in the report uh, the information like what is the URL I have used, what is the browser, on which browser I have run the automation scripts, who is the person, which username of the person who has run the automation scripts operating uh, system in which the uh, this auto, uh, automation scripts got run, Java version using which this automation scripts got created, whatever it is, all these details I want to get into the, uh, I want to show in the report guys, okay? In one of the tab of the reports, I want to show in the generated extent report I want to show. So here, if you see this report guys, here there is a dashboard tab here. I want to, under this uh, tables, I want to show that uh, details of the report, okay? So for that, I have to write this code guys, extent report dot set system, info okay this one i have to say and first i want to uh provide the application url details okay application url this is the key and what is the value that i want to show the value is i have to get this application url from the config.properties file if you remember in the config.properties file we have the url okay if any tomorrow if the client gives another url we'll update the url here right so it's better to read it from the config.properties 
So instead of hard coding here, you'll read it from the properties file. How to read that? I have to create an object for the properties file. Properties prop is equal to, uh, I'll say config prop is equal to new properties. Okay. Over the mouse on these properties from Java and simply say config prop dot load. It is expecting file input stream. I'll create an object for the file input stream. File input stream fis is equal to new file input stream. And uh, here, for the mode on this file input stream and import this from java.io package. And uh, this is expecting a file. So I'll write a file, file, uh, config prop file is equal to new file. Where is that config prop file? I have to give the path here, okay? And uh, here I'll give the path guys, that is system dot get property user dot dir user dot dir this is a project path under the project path where we have the config dot properties under this com src main java com tutorials in java config we have that so we'll try the same thing here it will be a kind of uh, big one but that's okay src main under java under that com under that tutorials ninja don't make any spelling mistakes under that qa under that config under that Config dot properties properties like this I'll write down config dot properties okay so once I provide this path of this uh, config properties file I have to provide this inside the file input stream and uh, fis uh, config uh, prop okay this one I'll provide here it will load that's it put a semicolon here that's it that's done guys okay now here since I am uh, um, I have loaded the properties file. I'll use this config prop and with the help of that, I can say dot get property and I'll provide the property name from this config dot. That is the property name is URL. I'll provide that URL here. Now put a semicolon here, done. Then again, extend report. This time I want to set another system info that is application browser name on which I have run the automation scripts. Browser name on which I have run the automation scripts. For that also same thing guys, config prop dot get property okay put a semicolon here and go to this properties file and i'll get this browser name okay done you see these two lines are giving some errors guys okay hold the mouse and some checked exceptions are coming so i'll surround these two lines with try catch block okay try here i'll end with uh end this thing and just uh, catch i'll say exception i'll say throwable Otherwise, throwability or e, whatever the, that you like, and say e dot print track trace. That's it. Done. Okay. Wherever it's better to provide try catch blocks instead of ignoring the exception. Okay. Now, the next one, next one is uh, extend a report dot set system. What is the email and password I have used in this automation? Just I want to write email. What is the email, email of this application? That I want to give again the same thing config prop dot get property and here put a semicolon and provide the email valid email okay copy this and provide that here and next extend uh, extend report dot set system info here write down the password okay password of this application that I all these details I want to print in the report, guys. Okay, I want to print all these uh, details in the report. So here I'll say config prop dot get property. I'll write valid password. Okay, valid password. Come back here and paste it here. Okay, valid password. Now what next? Not only this, guys. I want to print the operating system name, Java version name, user name of the user who is running the automation scripts, and so on. Okay. So a few more details I want to get, but I cannot get all the details from the properties file. Four details, which I'm adding to this uh, report, I'm getting from the properties file, this config.properties file, but other other details like application, uh, this theme is done, report, uh, this application URL is done, browser name is done, uh, email address is done, password is done, but operating system, username and Java version are not done. Three more details I have to add, okay? From where I can get this three more details, from where I can get this three more details like operating system, username and Java version. So that is a different story guys. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what I have to do, what you have to do. I'll create a package here, a temporary package. I'll delete this package. Once I demonstrate it for you, experiment, I'll say experiment. 
I'm going to experiment. Okay. So create a new class here, say demo class with the public static void main method. Inside this main method, I'll write a something system dot get properties. System dot get instead of property, I'm writing properties, guys. Okay. Make sure that you are writing these properties dot list. List when you say list, you are getting okay. System dot you just type system dot out. That's it. Okay. In this list method, you just type system dot out. Now run this main method. Right click run as Java application. When you run that method, you will get a list of properties. All the properties of the system will come here. Which properties? You see, a lot of properties are coming here. Okay. The property names and some values are coming. For example, operating system you want. OS dot name is a property. Uh, values Windows 11. Okay. We can retrieve this. Okay. We, instead of hard coding this operating system name manually in that system info, we can get the property name and get the value. Okay. Similarly, we have OS name and uh, what is the other thing we need? Mm, user, uh, username is some other thing and uh, Java version is a user username. Here is a username and somewhere here we have the uh, Java version. Okay. These three properties I want. Okay. So what I will do here is if I write down system dot System dot uh, out dot println. Sorry, wrong statement. System dot out dot println. System dot get property. If I write down one of the property here, that is uh, first property I want is uh, this one. That is OS name property name. Okay. To get the list of properties, I would write this line. This is only for temporary purpose. We are not going to use this in our automation framework. But just to find out the property names, I have used this line. Okay. So next system dot out dot ndln system dot get property provide. Uh, what is the next property I want to use? Apart from this, I want to use user dot name, the username of my machine. Okay. So that we can know who is running the automation scripts. And that one we can write here. And system dot out dot ndln system dot get property here i'll write down system dot get property java version where is the java version we have java version okay java version property it's giving the version of the java okay now run this code guys uh, remove this part the remove this part after you have come to know about the properties that's not required anymore run this you will get the operating system name username who is running the automation scripts and java version three things are coming these details i'll add in my extent report dot java here as system so extent report dot set system info here i'll write first one as first one i will write it as uh, operating system so i'll write operating system here operating system here i'll write on system dot otherwise i'll simply copy paste okay uh, that is uh, System dot get property operating system name. Okay. Come back here and paste it here. That's it. And put a semicolon. It will be done. Okay. So one more circular bracket is missing, I guess. Yeah. Fine. Now extend report dot set system info. I want to get the username. User name. So for that, I have to write system dot get property this username system dot get property username okay copy this and paste it here now put a semicolon last one extend report dot set dot set system info last one is java version i want java version okay and here i have to write down this statement system dot you you, you see you are not hard coding anything automatically it will be taken from your system okay so like that, we are sophisticating the stuff. Now, finally, I'll write down return this report. Whoever is calling this method, okay, we need to return this extent report. Return the extent report having this configurations and system info set. And the return type will be what? The return type will be extent reports will be the return type. Okay. When you call this method, the return type will be extent report. Save this. And now go to the demo.java, click on this, close all this stuff, remove the experiment. Package now, it's not required anymore. 
So now we have successfully created the extent reporter dot Java file. We have successfully created the extent reporter dot Java file. Now what else we have to do? We have to take this into action. Okay, we have to call this method and generate the extent report. Where? Where we have to generate the extent report? So go to the listeners. When on start method is there, I don't want to print this. Okay, I don't want to print this. Rather, on 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 start. I want to generate the report. I want to uh, generate the report. I want to create a report, extend report. When the test execution, before the test execution starts, I want to generate the, I want to create the extend report, then do the remaining step in the extend report. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to call this method guys. Okay, it's under the utils package, extend reporter. So I'll write extend, extend reporter. I'll write dot, the method is generate extend because this static method, I can call it directly. Like this, I'll call. It will return you an object of the extent reports. Extend uh, report object it is returning. Pour the mode on this extent report and create local variable. So we got the return type. Okay. Now, once the report is created, once the report is created, I'll write down uh, on start, this much is enough. On start, this much is enough. Okay. I want to generate the report. Next, when a particular test method starts executing, I don't want to write like this. Rather, I want to this particular thing. I I don't want to print in the output console anymore. This statement I want to print in the extent report. Okay, as a log. How to do that? For that, I have to use this extent report here. But I cannot use because this is local to this method. I have to make it global. Then remove the local declaration. Now I'm accessing this extent report outside the method. Now I'll say extent report dot create test. There's a method known as create test. And here we have to provide the name of the test. Name of the test we already have retrieved. Result or get name will give the test name of the particular test which got which invoked this particular on test start method. So we start created the test. This create test method will return you an object of the extend test. Okay, I'll say extend uh, test is equal to extend test is equal to create local variable. The return type of this method will automatically get added here. Extend test. So using this object uh, of reference of this extend test, I'll write a log here. Extend test dot log of status dot info log I'll write status dot info here instead of null I'll write this statement I'll copy this statement and provide instead of print statement I'm I'm, I'm writing the logs into the report here in the report uh, we are creating the test okay in the generated report in the generated extent report with the name of the test which invoked this on test start we are creating a test okay in the report we are creating the test test okay this is what means into the report we are logging this part instead of output console we are logging the details of like uh, a particular test name started executing, we are logging that into the report. We'll I'll show you that. Okay, these three lines we have written. Now next one on test success in a particular test passes. Here also we are getting the name of the report. Okay, and uh, uh, then again, the, I want to use extend test guys. I want to use extend test. Okay, but this is local to this method. I have to make it global. Put a semicolon here and uh, remove this uh, extend test. Okay, local declaration. Now use this extend test here. Extend test dot extend test dot log of status dot. This on test success means status should be passed, right? Pass status. Okay. I have to write pass status and the uh, log log details. Like uh, I just want to print these logs into the report. Test name got successfully. Whatever the test which has invoked this on test success got successfully executed. Okay. This print statement I don't want. Done, guys. On test success is also done. Okay, we have to pass the test. Okay, in the report, we are passing the test using this uh, method. Now, on test failure, on test failure, there's something different. So that is, uh, uh, here test name we are retrieving, that's fine. Now, I want to write down uh, this part, uh, test got failed should be at the end. I want to write like this and uh, get throwable should also be here. Get throwable should be here, screenshot should be here. Okay, this is the order I want to get take it. But for now, I'm not implementing the code for taking the screenshot. I'll implement that. Okay. Or if you really want to implement the code for taking the screenshot, uh, shall I do right away? Yeah, it's better. I do, do right away. So how to write the code for taking the screenshot? I'll I'll remove this line, guys. Okay. Once I write the code for taking the screenshot here, I'll remove this code. But the problem here is we need the driver. We need to type as a driver to take the screenshot, right? If you remember my previous sessions in the series. I have explained about taking how to take the screenshots here. I have write take screenshot. 
Okay, I have to type cache this driver with the text region, but how to get this driver? How to get this driver from the test methods is the question. Dot. I can write this code, no problem. Get screenshot as uh, output type dot file. All these lines I can write, but ultimately this will return file uh, src file, src screenshot. src means source screenshot is equal to like this. I'll write import this file from java.io package and hover the mouse on text screenshot and import this from selenium. All this is good, but this driver is giving me the error because this driver doesn't exist. But how to retrieve the driver? To retrieve the driver, guys, to retrieve the driver, this method is invoked by the one of the events fired by the failed events fired by this test method. One of the test got failed and this method got invoked. That method has to pass the driver and that driver will be stored in the result. From using the result, we should have to get the driver, guys. How to get the driver? Using the result, I'll write down result dot. You see that driver is giving error because there is no driver here. Okay. How to get the driver? Result dot. There's something known as uh, let's see what is the thing I have to use here. Get, get test class. Okay, this method I have to use dot get real class. Okay, so I remember the order, guys. Okay, you, you don't have to remember, you can copy paste from my code. That's not a problem. This is a format for uh, retrieving the driver object. Okay, get test class dot get real class dot. Uh, there's something like uh, get declared field get declared field here we have to write driver here okay and say dot again get and this object one and here we have to write again result dot this is a result dot the, this one if you don't remember you copy this case okay uh, get instance okay get instance you have to write inside this and put a semicolon this will get you the driver guys okay this will get you the driver in the object format this will get you the driver in the object format. Okay, you see the driver is coming in the object format. We have to typecast the driver. Okay, that object web driver we have to typecast. For the mouse, web driver interface we are typecasting. That controls it. For the mouse. Okay. Now here I'll write driver is equal to and say web driver. Driver is equal to. Okay. For the mouse on this web driver, I import it from Selenium. You see, the error is gone. Now the problem comes where here we are getting a checked exception. We have to surround which this one, this statement I'll write automatically to uh, it will surround with that state that driver statement with try catch blocks. Okay, and here web driver driver has come out, and here I'll provide is equal to null. Okay, is equal to null. Fine. We got the driver, guys. We got the driver and that got typecasted here. Error is gone. But there's one problem, guys. The problem is for this particular method to receive this driver. You have to go to individual classes. Don't forget to do this, guys. Okay, this is very important. A lot of people make mistake here. Open this login.java here. Inside this uh, uh, classes having the test methods, at the global level, we created this web driver driver, right? For this particular driver to be passed to this uh, methods of the listeners class, we have to make them public, guys. Otherwise, this will, this driver cannot be shared. You will get null pointer exception, okay? So give public here, public. And here also give public, okay? Otherwise, in all the classes, you have to write, make web driver as pub public. Otherwise, this driver will not be passed to the, to this uh, met uh, method inside this listeners class, driver will not be passed. Now everything will be okay, guys. Will not get any problems. So we got the driver, guys. We got the, we uh, successfully got the driver from the event uh, test method, which fired this on test failure method event. Okay. And then that driver we are typecasting here for taking the screenshot. And what is the next one? I'm writing the code for taking the screenshot, guys. I'll remove this line. So now I need to copy the screenshot from the source location to one of the location in my project. Okay. So what I'll do for that is I'll write some code like this. Okay. Uh, string destination, destination screenshot path is equal to system dot get property where I want to store the screenshot, where I want to copy the screenshot to that location. That is user dot PIR plus under the project, I'll create a folder case. I'll manually create a folder. This folder cannot be created automatically. I have to manually create. I just name the folder as screenshots folder. Directly under the project, I'm creating the screenshots folder. Under the screenshots folder, I want to capture the screenshots. Okay. Screen shots. Under the screenshot, with what name and extension I want to create the screenshot with the name of the test. What is the name of the test? 
swing test name is the name of the test. I'll say test name plus test name with extension as dot png. Okay, I want to take the screenshots. Now I'll write one more line here. Okay, for copying the screenshot from this location to the destination screenshot path, I have to write one more line that is file handler. Okay, this is provided by Selenium, guys. File handler class is provided by Selenium. You can import this file handler from Selenium library and file handler dot copy source screenshot and uh, to here you have to say new file of new file of you have to provide the path of this okay destination file path and put a simple for the mouse on this and uh, it's asking you to surround with prior cache blocks surround that as expected as required okay you see the screenshot is taken the screenshot is taken and captured at this uh, destination screenshot file path okay copied into the screenshots folder with a given name and extension test name and extension now what i want to do is i want to attach embed the screenshot into the extent report okay here in the extent uh, the screenshot is taken this screenshot is taken but i want to attach the screenshot into the extent report for that what i have to do is i have to write extent test extent test dot attack uh, sorry dot add screen capture from path which path from where i have to take the Captured screenshot will be copied to the screenshots folder. From that, I need to copy the screenshot and add it to the report, add it to the extent report. So this method will add the screenshot taken and put into the screenshot folder from there to the extent report. How? You have to provide the path of the destination. So we already have this path of the path where the screenshot will be taken and provided, right? That I have to provide here. It will add embedded into the screen uh, extent report. Now, next one is, again, I have to say extent test dot Okay, uh, extent is dot log status dot info. I'll say status dot info. I'll say this this info I want to give this uh, exception details. I want to get into the report. I'll add this exception details into the report. Put a semicolon here. This line is not required. Then extent test dot log here status dot fail. I'll say. And here I'll say test name place got failed. Okay. Test name got failed. Put a semicolon here. Remove this line. Okay. That much. So fine. On state on start is completed. On test start is completed. Uh, then on test success is completed. Right. On test success is completed. Then on test failure is completed. Okay. We have failed the test uh, in the report. We have uh, taking the screenshot and attach it to the report embedded in the report and we are showing the exception details also in the report but on test skip is still there where i'll write on extent test dot log dot log status dot status dot info and here i'll write down instead of uh, uh writing yeah I'll write this line, guys. Okay. I'll write uh, throwable. Okay. The reason for the skipping, I'll write down here in the status.info. And the next step, I'll write extend, extend test.log status dot status dot skip. I'll say skip. And here I'll write down skip. Test name got skipped. Okay. Test name got skipped. I'll write down and uh, remove these two lines. It's not required anymore. Okay. Instead of uh, writing our logs into the output console printing our logs into the output console using print statements we are now directly writing into the report in the report itself we are going to get the logs okay we are getting going to get the screenshot exception details everything in the report okay where we are for failed test we are getting the screenshot in the extent report embedded in the extent report uh, exception details get throwable using get throwable we are getting the exception details in the ex extent reports and uh, we are failing the test in the extent report when a particular test fails okay otherwise the test will not be Test will pass in the extent report. Okay. So here we are skipping the test in the extent report. And on finish, what I want to do, I don't want to write this print statement. Rather, on in, on finish, I will write extent report dot flush. If I don't flush all these details, all this information logs or whatever that is will not be added to the report. Guys, finally, on finish, I have to flush. So finally, the report will be created with all these details. Okay. Where the report will be created, you already know, right? We have given the path, okay? 
in the extend reporter we have given the path where the uh, report need to be created under this test output folder under the extend reports folder extend report.html report should be created close all save i'll optimize the listeners i'll optimize the listeners but for now let's see whether this code is working or not okay so i'll run this testng.xml file right click run as testng switch all the tests will be executed where in the search search class uh, second test will be failed and third test will be skipped, right? So for all the past tests, there's no problem. So a report will be generated, guys. Extent report will be generated for us in this framework. After all the tests got executed, I'll show you the report. Uh, it will contain the extent report will contain the log status, logs, screenshots for the failed test, exception details for the failed test, and skip test. Everything will come, okay? So all the tests are running one by one. Let all the tests run. I'll show you a report. After that, we'll optimize the, we'll reduce the number of lines or we'll we'll uh, do a few things, okay? In the listeners class, methods inside the listeners class. Some code we have to move it as a re reusable methods and all that I'm going to cover once this report is generated for us, okay? And later again, I'll run the scripts to see everything is working fine after moving the after creating the reusable methods and all those stuff, okay? After reducing the number of lines of code and after optimizing the code. So let see the which tests are running currently. Looks like uh, such tests are running currently. Valid product such tests. Say this test will fail. This test is going to fail. Uh, and the screenshot should be taken. And uh, because of the test got failed, another test got skipped. Okay, now refresh this project, guys. Refresh this project. And you see a screenshots folder is there. Under that, we got a screenshot. Open the screenshot or go to the location where the screenshot is taken. Go to the location where the screenshot is taken, guys. Just give me a second. This is the screenshot which is taken. Okay. Let me open the screenshot. You see, this is a place where the disk got paid. Screenshots are being taken and copied into the screenshots folder. Okay. And from here, they will be embedded into the extent report. Where the extent report will be created, as I already told you, under the test output folder, there will be a folder created like extent reports. Under that, we'll get the extent report. Right click, open with web browser, you'll get the extent report. You see the theme, whatever the theme we have mentioned, right? In the extent reporter, if you remember, in the in the extent reporter, if you remember, whatever the theme I mentioned, dark theme, that's the that's why we got the report in the okay, that's why we got the report here. Okay. The next one, uh, the next one is, uh, this is a report name. Let's see whether we got this tutorials in the test automation results report here. Yes, we got the report name. And next one is title, TN automation report. TN automation report is the title. We got then timestamp DD MM by 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 HH MM SS. Whether we got the timestamp or not, you see DD MM by 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 HH MM SS. Okay, we got the required timestamp. Then what else? So where this uh, details, set, set, set system info details, uh, like application URL, browser name, email, password, operating system, username, Java version, what is split. Go to the last tab here, guys. Just yeah, scroll down, you'll see system in, uh, system information. You see name value, application URL, you got. Browser name, you got. Email, you got. Password, operating system, username, Java version, okay? Everything we got here, guys, okay? So that is also fine, okay? So everything we got, guys, okay, according to the created report. And now let's look into the reports. You see, this one got passed. You see information. This particular test started executing. The logs are not being printed into the output console anymore. If you see the output console, there are no logs printed here. There are no logs printed here. Rather, okay, this is like this, okay? Logs are getting printed into the report. And here you see, got successfully executed and got termed as, it's info log, it's a pass log, okay? It got passed. Same thing for all the passive tests. But if you go to the failed test, you see a screenshot is embedded in the report. You can click on the screenshot. You can see the screenshot for the failed test. And apart from that, we got the normal info log. We got, you see, exception details get throwable. Okay, exception details are printed for the reason for the failure. And you see the test got failed. The test is termed as failed because we have written there extend test dot log of status dot fail we have written. Okay, this got failed. Log details got failed. And skip for skip. What's there in the skip? Okay, just give me a second. I've scrolled down. Skip. For the skip, you see, we are getting the info log. 
started executing and uh, it got skipped. You see, the test is uh, uh, marked as skip. And here we got the throwable details. Okay, throwable details. Fine. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. Uh, we can do a lot of stuff, guys. We can do other lot of stuff. Okay. For now, this much is enough for this uh, session, guys. Okay. So, as I mentioned, I have to optimize this listeners class. I'll do that in the next session. I have to optimize this methods inside of the listeners class and I have to do other stuff also. Okay. Uh, you see, once I run the rip, once I, uh, I have to move this code, the screenshot code I have to, for the screenshot code, I have to create another method. And uh, apart from that, I want to automatically open the report. I don't want to manually go and right click and uh, you see, I don't want to go here and right click and uh, say open with the uh, web browser. I don't want to do that. I want to, once the scripts are run, uh, run completely, automatically, this Eclipse ID should open the report for me. Okay. All such kind of things I'm going to cover in the next session, guys. Okay. So I cannot cover everything in a single session. So in this session, uh, we have successfully implemented the extent reports, listeners, and all those stuff, uh, along with taking the screenshots for the paid test. But we have to optimize the code and uh, we have to do more guys. Okay. So we'll work on more ex uh, second part of the extent reports. I'm going to do that uh, along with the listeners and all the stuff. I I'll make it better in the next session. Okay. This, whatever I have done now, I'm going to make it better, more optimized, more useful, more feasible, uh, more easy to use and all those things. I'm going to do that in the next session. Okay. More logs and all those stuff. I will, I'll do that. I implement that in the next session. So guys, uh, that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye. Hello all. Welcome to part eight of hybrid test ng framework, which I am explaining as part of Selenium 4 training series. So in the previous session, we have integrated the extent reports. And also I showed you how to take the screenshots only for the failed test using test ng listeners. All these things are done in the previous session already. But what I'm going to do in this session or what I'm going to explain in this session, I'm going to do a lot of other stuff, guys. Okay. So I have to first reduce the lines of code. Okay. Whatever the code I have written for this uh, test engine listeners and all, right? In that particular listeners class, my listeners class, I have to reduce the number of lines of code. There is a room for optimizing the code that I'm going to do first. And thereafter, I'm going to show you how to separate the screenshot code from the listeners class to another uh, a reusable method in one of the other classes. I'll move the code to and still the script should work. Then I'll show you how to auto align the extent reports. I don't have to right click, go to a particular folder, right click and open the extent report. Rather, my after running the automation scripts, my extent report should uh, automatically open for me. Okay, how to do that? Then we have, I'll, I'll show how to run the test using Maven. Okay. So till now we are running the scripts using testng.xml file and all the stuff. So how to do that with Maven and all I'm going to show you. Okay. So fine. So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'll go to the Eclipse ID and first I'll uh, do the first thing that is reducing the number of lines of code in the testng listeners class. That is here we have created my listeners.java. Okay. In the previous session. So in this my listeners.java, uh, let's see if I can reduce any code. Okay, let's see if I can reduce any, any code. So here, what I can do is I can remove this uh, test name. I can make it global and I can use it actually uh, in the upcoming test. Okay, that's one thing I can do. I can make it global, guys. This is one thing I can do and make it global. And here, local declaration, I'll remove. So I don't have to get the test name every time. On test start, we'll get the test name, right? So why to get the test name every time? That's what is the intention. So test name is passed here. That's fine. And here also, I don't have to get the test name again because already test name is there. Okay. Test name is there. We can use the same test name, which is now global. And here also, I don't have to get the test name. It's global. That's fine. Mm, then, so any other place I have to remove the test name. Yeah, this is the place. I don't have to write the test name. So I have removed the test name. Let me see. With this change, is there any effect? Is there any problem? If the scripts are writing uh, running fine, then we are good. I'll run the testng.xml file using run as testng suite uh, or suit. So let's see if the scripts are running, then we are good. Okay. The change I have done is fine, working fine. I'm able to reduce the lines of code. 
whatever the possible lines of code I wanted to change, I'm changing. See, the scripts are running fine. Let's see what will happen at the end. We should get a proper report and all the logs should be uh, written into the extended report. Then we are good. Okay. Screenshot should be taken, embedded into the report. Everything should happen. Then only I can say that uh, that change that I have done is working fine. Okay. Let me cross check. Let all the tests run one by one and we'll cross check. Okay, so which test is running? Let's see. Uh, still login tests are running, guys. Let's see. Uh, still login test. I think that was the last login test. Now such test should run. If I am correct. One of the uh, second such test will fail intentionally. We are failing it. And third test will, is which is depending on the second test will skip. As we already know, one will fail and one will skip from such. Remaining all two will, will pass. Now let's see our report got generated or not. Let's refresh here and uh, screenshot is taken. That's fine. That's working fine. Let's go to the test output folder. Here we have a report. I have to go to the extent reports folder and I have to right click on this report and open it manually guys. You see the browser. You see we are getting the things guys. We are getting proper results. That's fine. So let's see if you see screenshots are getting embedded and all those things are happening fine. Skipping is also coming. Everything is fine, guys. Okay. There's no problem in that. But only thing is that this report I have to open manually by right clicking on this uh, extent report.html file. So, what I will do now is I'll show you one method. Okay. I reduce the number of lines already. So, it's not required. Okay. To reduce anymore. And even we can even reduce one more line also if you want. Okay. Instead of making this test name global, we can do one more thing also. There's another method. So, where you have to, um, is it good or something? I'm just thinking. Yeah. Okay. Let me follow that method. Even one more line will also get reduced with that. So what I'll do is I'll directly, I'll not store this into the test name. I'll directly write result.get name. Okay. Then there's no need of storing into the variable. Two lines, within two lines, we are able to complete. And this global declaration is not required. In every test method, we'll do the same thing. Okay. Here again result dot get name okay wherever the test name is required just write down result dot get name that's it okay so on test studies completed here result dot get name okay like this automatic okay this is another better way to reduce the number of lines okay here here guys okay result dot get name okay any other place we are getting errors so let's see yeah here Result dot get name. Okay. Instead of test name, we are directly writing the result dot get name. Okay. So this is another place. Result dot get name. Done. Now save this and see if there are any errors. No errors are there. That's fine. Okay. This is how we can reduce the number of lines by directly putting result dot get name. Now this will work. So other thing that I'm going to do is uh, Separating the screenshot code. Okay, I'll go to the on test failure method, and here we have the code written for separate uh, for taking the screenshot. This is whatever that I'm highlighting here is the code for take uh, capturing the screenshot and copying that into the screenshots folder here and all those stuff. Okay, so I don't want to put this code here in this uh, on test failure method. Rather, I want to move this code into some some other place. I'll cut this code from here. So that sorry, result dot get name. Where is the code? This is the code, right? I'll cut this code, control X. Okay. So I'll move this code somewhere else, okay? I'll call a method here, okay? Whenever I want to take a screenshot, I'll call a method. That, um, that method I'll create under the utilities.java, okay? Here we are in the my listeners now. I'm creating this reusable method of get screenshot as get screenshot method in the capture screenshot or whatever you can call that method. You can just create one method, guys. Public wide capture screenshot 
so to this method i have to pass web driver driver and uh, then uh, print test name okay i have to pass the test name these two items i have to pass and after that here i'll write down file i'll import this web driver this driver i'm type casting get screenshot as and all those stuff here we can use a test name there's no problem we can use a test name here we can use a test name done any other places i have to modify here destination screenshot path is there this is a path i have to return this path okay i'll tell you why we have to return this path just return this path guys after the screen has been captured and put into the screenshots folder here screenshots folder here okay then i have to uh, return the path of the screenshot okay i have to return the path of the screenshot okay so that path will be received by i'll be calling that method guys okay how to call this method inside this utilities utilities dot capture screenshot i have to say utilities dot capture dot uh, it's not coming utilities dot you say first of all over the most and import this utilities from com dot tutorials ninja dot ua dot utilities package this package and now say utilities dot get uh, where is that screenshot method okay capture okay it's not coming actually mm, yeah it should be a static method guys just create it as static just put static keyword then it will you can get it otherwise you will not get it now you say dot you will get this method okay now whatever the driver i have retrieved right from this on test value from the result like result dot get test class and all those stuff that driver i am passing here and here i have to pass the test name the test name is nothing but result dot get name okay that is nothing but the test name put a semicolon and now this will return you the path path where the screenshot has been captured spring what is the path destination screenshot file path okay screenshot path is equal to write like this okay now everything is fine okay we're just calling the method i have moved the screenshot code into another method and optimize the code okay so that's fine what else is there now i think uh, this should be good then second change is also done guys mm, fine now third change i'm going to do after uh, moving this code third change is auto launching the extended report okay so on finish here i'll write this code guys desktop dot this from java only write desktop dot this from java awd desktop okay get desktop then say dot browse i guess browse yeah dot browse okay this line will automatically open okay if you want, want to automatically open after the ending of the test in the project running of the test in the project okay we can use this line which will automatic we i want to automatically open this extent report which is generated under the test output folder here this is the place the extent report got generated that report i want to open automatically so i have to say here browse method needs okay simply say dot browse again you see it, it, there is uri here it's not url it's uri okay so here but here we have the path of this uh, extent report but here we have to give the uri so what i will do here is i'll get first of all get the path of this html file which is getting generated okay this created how to get the path of this uh, extent report so i'll say string path of extent report is equal to system dot get property and write this path get property user dot dir user dot dir plus right double backward slash under this project under this project under test output folder this folder is directly under the project so i'll say test output test hyphen out pot output folder double backward slash extend reports double backward slash the name of the report is just make sure of the spelling and uh, you see uh, if it is lower case just provide lower case otherwise upper case upper case let us you provide the name okay that's it guys put a semicolon here that's it we are able to give the path of the extent report okay and just give this but here if you give this uh, 
we have to do something like this. We have to say file extent report is equal to new file we have to write and give the path of the extent report here in this file constructor. And now this extent report file dot to URI we have to write, then it will be okay. Now there is a checked exception coming. It's asking you to surround with try catch block, do that. No problem. Okay, just do that. Just surround with try catch block as requested. That's it guys, uh, this will take care of the stuff. Okay, this will take care of the things. Okay. Now let's see, I reduce the lines of code. I separated the screenshot code into the utils uh, utilities class. I'm calling from there and have written this auto launching of the extent reports by using this statement. So this three, uh, after these three changes, it should work fine. I'll delete this test output folder. So it will be created again anyhow, okay, when I run. So what I'll do is I'll close all the stuff and I'll simply run testng.xml file, run as testng suit. Okay, let's see what will happen. The script should run and uh, the report should be automatically opened. Guys, I'm not going to touch the report this time. Okay. The screenshot should be taken embedded and also the report should be automatically opened. Okay. That's important. The last thing is the report should be automatically opened. So which test is running currently? I think the register test, third register test. I think one more register test is there. Let's see. Fourth register test will come now into place. Done. Now login test will start, I guess. Let's start with the login test. First login test is completed. Second login test. Third login test. Fourth. I mean, one title driven test is also there. Let's see, this may be the last login test. Now such test will run. Yeah, second test will fail in the search and third test should get skipped. You see the report this time I didn't launch. It got automatically launched, right? It got automatically launched and we can see all the logs coming up in the, okay. The tests are created here in the report and they're marked as passed. The logs are coming and you can see the screenshot is embedded. It's working fine. Okay. We are getting everything, whatever we have to get. Okay. That means everything has is working fine till here. We are able to succeed. Okay. Now the thing is till now I am running this testng.xml file run as testng suit so test and using testng. I'm running the scripts. What if you see, to go to the next level, I have to run this uh, test, okay? I have to run this test with the help of Maven, okay? I have to run this test with the help of Maven, guys, okay? So what I will do is, first, I'll right-click on this project, okay? So this is what I'm going to demonstrate now. Extent reports part is over, guys. No, Maven part is coming. Uh, every time I'll delete this folder, guys, before I run anything, I'll just delete this, uh, I'll refresh the project and delete this test output folder. So I want to see whether it is getting created every time or not. I'll delete this uh, screenshot, which is created. So everything is fresh now. I want to run this project with the help of Maven now. Okay, I want to run the test with the help of Maven and we are going to face some hurdles, guys. We are going to resolve them one by one. Okay, when we have to run the scripts using Maven instead of testng, I want to run using Maven because in continuous integration, we need to run the scripts using Maven. Then we can go for continuous integration like Jenkins using Jenkins. We can run the scripts and all those stuff. Okay. Before going to Jenkins and other stuff. Okay. We have to make sure we are able to run with Maven and in Jenkins, we will use Maven commands to run the scripts. Okay. That's the reason we have to run the scripts using Maven. So we should not completely rely right click and run as using a uh, test ng. Okay. So Maven actually how the Maven will run the scripts. Maven will look for this form.xml file. Okay. It will not look for testng.xml file. Maven will look for this pom.xml file and run the scripts. Okay. And we'll run the scripts. So right click on the project guys. Okay. When you want to run the scripts using Maven, right click on the project and select run as and select this Maven test option. Okay. There's an option coming in the run as 
that is Maven test. In Eclipse ID, Maven options will come by default. Okay, you don't have to install any plugin or something. Maven will come by default in the Eclipse ID. Okay, so you can you see just uh, install new software because Maven project you created, right? You didn't have, you don't have to install any plugin to create a Maven project. Okay, the same thing here. Just click on already installed. And I, I didn't install any plugin, guys. Okay, but if I search for Maven, I'm getting all this stuff from Maven. This came by default. Okay. Uh, when I installed Eclipse ID, Maven is already there. Okay. So I, I'm able to create the Maven project and all those stuff. Okay. So these options are also coming because of that in Eclipse ID, guys. I don't have to install any plugin for getting these options. Right click on the project and say run as and say select Maven test. You see, it will start. Uh, let's see. Well, I'm uh, you may guess that uh, this test will run, but it will not run. Okay. None of this test will run. We may get some problems, guys. We are going to resolve problems one by one. Okay. We are going to resolve the problems one by one. Let's see what will happen. You see, build failure happened. So, what is the problem for this build failure? Fail to execute goal. Maven, uh, Maven plugins, Maven compiler plugin, test compile on project, tutorials in your project, fatal error compiling, Java language illegal access error. Com class Lombok Java C app Lombok processor in unnamed one you cannot access so and so so and so so and so yeah because does not export all these things are this kind of thing is coming if you get this kind of error you should focus on a keyword known as Lombok okay if you see this Lombok in uh, as an error when you are running that is using Maven okay this project is when you are running using Maven if you are getting some error with these details of Lombok, copy this Lombok from here, go to MVN repository in your browser and search for that same Lombok and search and you'll get this project Lombok or project Lombok, Lombok. Click on this and take the latest version. 1.18 point something that is 24 as per this uh, data and year when I'm recording this video. In your case, if you get any other latest version, you can go with that. No problem. Copy this and go to the pom.xml file in the pom.xml file you just add the dependency at the end okay here just add the dependencies between the dependencies tag and click on save save all this long bug dependency i'm adding to the project now close this now right click again on the project after adding the long libraries and say run as maven test let's see what will happen this time will you get the same Lombok error or you get some other thing let's see Earlier we got build failure. Now let's see what will happen. This time you see surprisingly you got build success, but none of the automation scripts in this login register search got executed. Right? None of the automation scripts in this login search register classes got executed. Zero tests got run. Zero tests got executed. Total time. Build success it is saying there's no Lombok error this time. It's not build failure. No errors are coming. So what may, the, may be the problem? You see, to run the automation test using Maven from Eclipse ID, there are a few rules. One is Lombok, Lombok libraries, we already had it. And second thing is, go to the pom.xml file, guys. In the pom.xml file, you should have this Maven Shootfire plugin. Okay, we should have this Maven Shootfire plugin. Since we have created this Maven project with a template or archetype, we generally call it as the project template that is Maven hyphen, uh, archetype hyphen, Quick start. Okay. Maven archetype quick start template we have used from Apache, right? Because of that, pom.xml file is auto generated with a lot of stuff by default. As part of that auto generation, we also got this build plugin management. All these plugins we got by default. All these plugins we got by default because we created the Maven project with help of by selecting a template that is Maven archetype quick start plugin, a quick start archetype uh, from Apache. Okay. So, I have not added this Maven Surefire plugin, but it came by default because I created the project with that selected template. Okay, in the beginning of the project. So if this is not there, you cannot run your automation scripts using Maven. But this is there. This Maven Surefire plugin is there. Still, there is a problem, right? Now we have the Lombok. Now we have this plugin also in this uh, pom.xml file. Second, second case is also good. Now one more thing is that last thing, last uh, criteria for running your automation test is. Here, your classes having the automation tests should have a keyword known as test. Somewhere in this class name, we should have the 
keyboard known as test. I prefer giving the test at the end of the class name. So I'll right click on this login dot Java and say refactor here and say rename and add a keyboard known as test. Then only Maven will run this test. Click on finish, right click, refactor, rename, just say test, click on finish. Just add this keyboard test to the test class names. That will be good. Click on finish. Now we have login test registered as and such test. Okay. Uh, I'll refresh this project before running this. You see, there's no test output folder and there are no screenshots taken now. Now I'll run this code, guys. I'll run this code. Uh, I'll run this project uh, after changing this to login test, register test, and such test. I'll run this. Right click, run as Maven test. This time, let's see whether the test will run. Okay. All the classes in this project which are having the keyboard test will run, guys. Okay. That means the test inside this login test will run, register test will run, such test will run this time. Using Maven, we are directly going to the classes and executing their tests. Okay, we are not we are not using testng.xml file. Here Maven is referring to pom.xml file and it's identifying the tests which have this uh, uh, keyword test in their classes. Okay, here testng.xml file is out of picture for us. We are not using testng.xml file, rather we are using Maven and uh, we are instructing Maven to run all the classes which have the test keyword. Okay, that's how Maven that's one of the category of Maven, guys. Uh, the classes which are ending with test only will run. You see, uh, all the tests, all the tests will run, guys. Okay, but there's a problem with this approach. The classes will run using Maven, but the report will not be generated. The screenshot will not be taken because there's no attachment to the listeners concept here. In testing.xml file, we have provided the listener tags if you remember, but here we are directly running the classes and their tests using Maven. Maven pom.xml file, pom.xml file is running all the classes which are ending with the test or having the keyword test, right? So nowhere the listeners are in, uh, listeners are connected here. Nowhere the listeners related stuff is connected here. So the report will not be generated, guys. Extend report will not be generated under the test output folder. And also the screenshots will not be taken because those are part of the listeners. So we are almost came to the last, okay? So last but one such test and final test will skip. You see here, it clearly says that out of 14 tests, one got failed, 12 got uh, remain, uh, and one got skipped and remaining all 12 got passed, okay, indirectly. So now let's refresh this project. You see, under the screenshot, there is no screenshot taken and also there is no test output folder. Just refresh here. There's no test output folder coming. So we cannot get the extent report. That's the problem. Another challenge you are facing now, though we are able to run the tests, okay, which are inside the classes having the test keyword using Maven by right click run as uh, Maven test here. The Maven is invoking the pom.xml file and pom.xml file is invoking the classes which have the individual tests having uh, test keyword. Okay, here we are not, here it is not running the testng.xml file. But testng.xml file has a connection to the listeners. So no listeners means no screenshots and no, no listeners means no screenshots and no extent report. That's a problem. How to overcome this problem? To overcome this problem, we have to make this uh, Maven to invoke this pom.xml file and pom.xml file, instead of invoking this classes having the test keyword, it should invoke the exchange XML file. Okay. Pom.xml file should not invoke these classes for running. Instead, pom.xml file should refer to this testng.xml file, should invoke the testng.xml file, and testng.xml file should run these classes. That's the point. How to do that? How to do that? For doing that, guys, okay, for doing that, we have to go inside the pom.xml file. And here, just go to that plugin I mentioned, Maven Surefire plugin. Maven Surefire plugin. Let's go to that Maven Surefire plugin. This is a plugin, guys. This is a plugin. I should not be having this default plugin code. Rather, I have to Google search for that. I'll search for uh, Surefire Maven. I'll write Maven Surefire Test ng like this. I'll search for like this. Okay, Maven search for Test ng. Then main Maven Surefire plugin using Test ng. I'll get this link. Click on that link. Scroll down, guys. Scroll down. Scroll down. Here you see something. Maven Surefire is there. We are referring to a 
testng.xml file, some XML testng XML file there. This plugin from plugin to plugin you copy and go to your this part form.xml file and replace this Maven Surefire plugin with whatever you copy pasted just now from the website. Okay. Organize it well so that it looks good. Uh, this looks good, fine. So now, guys, we are mentioning the Maven Surefire plugin, Maven. To re, uh, Maven actually refer to the pom.xml file. This is actually Maven Surefire plugin actually is there in the pom.xml file only. When you run using Maven, Maven will refer to the pom.xml file. In the pom.xml file, we are clearly mentioning the Maven Surefire plugin to refer to the testing XML file while, while running the test. Don't run the test directly. Rather, use testng.xml file to run the test. That's what we are saying, right? But there is a problem in this. What is the problem? This testng.xml file is not directly under the project. This testng.xml file is under SRC test resources here. Okay, under the project, under SRC test resources, we have testng.xml file. So here, instead of direct, instead of providing testng.xml file, we have to give SRC slash test slash under the project, under the project, under SRC, under test, under resources, we have this testng. So we have to give this kind of thing. Okay. If this testng XML file is not created under the uh, resources folder and directly created under the project just below this uh, XML file, then you can simply give testng.xml file. But if it is meant, if the testng.xml file is under the SRC test resource, we have to give path like this. Okay. Now save this, guys. Now run. This time, when you run this project with the help of Maven, Maven test here, if you are selecting Maven test, Maven will invoke pom.xml file. Pom.xml file will invoke this Maven Surefire plugin to run the test. Maven Surefire plugin will invoke this testing.xml file, which is under the SRC test resources. And testing.xml file has to run all these tests. Okay, that should happen now. Let's see whether it will happen or not. It will not happen, guys. I'll tell you a reason. Okay, there's a problem. When I right click run as Maven test, you see none of the tests will be running. We are doing the things right only, but still the things will not run. Just see, you will get a problem. You see, you got this kind of problem. What is the problem? It will say that you just see the problem, guys. You'll understand what is the problem. Okay. There was an error in the four code process. Cannot find the class in class path. Com dot tutorials ninja QA test cases register class is not there. If you see here, it's not any more register class. It is a register test. So what's the problem here? You should get this idea now. Okay, you're referring to a class known as register, but here register test is there. So if you go to this testing.xml file, still the names are register only, but the class names have been changed to register test. So change the names here, then only it will, it's going to work. Register test, login test, search test. Now click on save all. Now close this, close this, right click. Now do this guys, this time it should work. When you say uh, right click on the project and run as Maven test, that will invoke a pom.xml file. Pom.xml file will invoke the Maven Surefire plugin. Maven Surefire plugin will invoke that, uh, what do you call? The testng.xml file that is referred here. Okay. And testng.xml file, which is referring to these three classes will run the test. This time the test should run. It's all important guys. This is all important. Okay. This is very important topic. In real time, this is what happens. Okay, we have to run using Maven, not using testng. Maven has to invoke the pom.xml file. Pom.xml file has to invoke the Maven Surefire plugin. Maven Surefire plugin has to invoke the testng XML file. Testng XML file has to invoke the classes. Classes have to invoke the tests. This is the process. Okay, this is the process, guys. We have to know this uh, hierarchy. Okay, you see the tests are running now. And also, you'll get the report, screenshots, everything will come now. Because in testng XML file, listener tags are there. The listeners will get the extended report and screenshots for us. So everything is going to work fine. There's still more guys. Okay. It's not the end of the Maven. If it is working fine, there's something more I have to explain about Maven guys. Okay. I'll explain for now. We are running this uh, test from the Eclipse IDE. So once this test are done, once the reports are generated and all, I'll show you how to run the scripts without this Eclipse IDE. We just need the project in our machine. We don't need Eclipse IDE guys. Okay. We'll go to the project location and uh, using the command prompt, we have to run the Maven test. Okay. Using Maven, we have to run, but using the command prompt without the help of Eclipse ID, without having the Eclipse ID, we should be able to run using Maven. How to do that? I'm going to show you next. Okay. That's what is next, guys. Okay. That's what is coming next. That is also very important. You see, the report is automatically generated and uh, 
you see screenshots are coming embedded and all the stuff everything is working fine okay so we came to a very good place where we have run from eclipse id we have run the textng.xml file using maven now by uh, modifying the maven super plugin we provided the path to the textng.xml file and then maven uh, Maven was invoking the pom.xml file. Pom.xml file was invoking the Maven Surefire plugin. Maven Surefire plugin is invoking the SNG.xml file under SRC test resources folder. And that SNG.xml file is invoking the classes that are mentioned in the SNG.xml file. And those classes are running their tests, individual tests, okay? Whatever that are there, the tests that are there in the classes are running, okay? And we got the extent report, screenshots, everything is working fine now. But now my requirement is I don't want to use this Eclipse ID. I don't want to use this Eclipse ID. I'll delete this test output folder again. Refresh this project, guys. Refresh this project once and you'll get the test output folder. Delete this test output folder. I want to do it brand new and uh, delete the screenshot also. Okay, just to cross check everything is working fine. Okay, what I want to do here is I don't want to use Eclipse ID. With Eclipse ID, I can right click on the project and say run as and I'm getting Maven, op Maven options here, Maven test and all. But I don't want Eclipse ID. What I will do is I close Eclipse ID. Before closing the Eclipse ID, I'll go to the project location in my machine. I'll select properties and go to the location of this project in my machine. This is the location of this project in my machine, guys. Tutorials in your project. Go inside this project, guys. Uh, and here, if you can see this form.xml file, we are good. Now close Eclipse ID, guys. There is no need of Eclipse ID now anymore. I'll close Eclipse ID. Without any Eclipse ID, I want to run this project. This is still the automation code, right? This is still the automation code. So it's the same using Maven. I want to run this form.xml file, but this time from command prompt. So what I will do is I'll select this. I'll type CMD guys. I'll type CMD. You are not going to get the solution directly. Okay. Here there is a command known as the MVN test. Okay. Uh, one more thing is when you select this and type CMD here, the command prompt will open at this location where this form.xml file is available. You see, C, QFox drive. Uh, hybrid test engine framework workspace uh, under that project is tutorials ninja project okay under the project is tutorials ninja project guys so at this project location we have the pom.xml file so if you select this path and type cmd and press enter right you will get the command prompt and directly opening this path guys okay there is a shortcut way of opening the command you don't have to say uh, you don't have to go to cd and say cd qf or cd hybrid test engine framework cd tutorials ninja project you don't have to do that simply directly give mvn test command one of the command that we have to use is maven mvn means short form for maven okay mvn test this is the command okay we should not type maven test okay we have to say mvn test okay the commands from the commands when you press enter guys this will invoke the pom.xml file pom.xml file will internally contain that maven surefire plugin in that maven surefire plugin we have provided the part to the testng.xml file which is under the src test resources that testng.xml file invoke the classes which are mentioned in the testng.xml file and that classes will contain the test methods which will be running that should be the process. But when I press enter, it will not happen. It will not invoke. It is instead saying MVN is not recognized as an internal or external command. That means MVN has to be, that is MVN means Maven. Maven need to be installed, guys. For this MVN command to be recognized, you have to install Maven in your machine. And also you have to configure Maven in your machine. That's what is required. How to install, I'll close this command prompt as it is not working fine. So how to download and install Maven. Further guys, just say download Maven, okay? Just Google search for download Maven. You'll get this download Apache Maven link. Go to this page guys, download page of the official website of Maven, that is maven.apache.org. Scroll down here, somewhere you'll find the zip file, okay? Binary zip archive file, Apache Maven. 3.8.6 bin zip is there. Okay, click on the zip file. Okay, let the zip file download. Okay, this is a process to download the Maven guys. Okay, we have to download the zip file from the download page of the Maven website. Once the zip file is downloaded, we'll extract the zip file and uh, we will we'll get a folder guys. That folder we have to copy to some location in our machine. I'll tell you once the zip file is downloaded, I'll show you guys. Okay. So let's wait for now. Let's wait for the zip file to completely download in my browser. It will not take much time, but let's see. Okay, it got downloaded, guys. Finally, I'll show in folder. Uh, I'll go to the downloads folder mostly. I'll extract this folder, guys. Zip file. I'll extract the zip file. Extract all. Click on extract. 
and you will get this zip file extracted. This is Maven zip file, guys. We should extract that. Downloading is done. Uh, now we have to configure the Maven, okay? After download, we have to configure the Maven. So the zip, uh, the zip file got extracted and we got this folder. Inside this folder, if you see the bin folder, that folder you have to copy. You should not copy this uh, outer folder after extracting. Go inside the folder and you'll find one more folder with the same name. And in that folder, you will find the bin folder, okay? So the folder having the bin folder, you copy. And go to some location in your, I generally prefer C drive, guys, okay? Generally go to C drive and paste it, okay? So, this is the one, guys, okay? The, here I paste it, that's okay. Now go inside this folder, guys, where you can see this bin folder and all. Copy this path, copy this path, where the bin folder is visible. And now type, Edit. If you have configured Java, you have to do the same thing for Maven. Edit the system environment variables option. And you'll get this uh, dialog. And where environment variables. And go to the system variables and click on new. And write down Maven underscore home. And paste the path here. Click on OK. And say OK. Say OK. That's it. Next point is go inside the bin folder of this Apache Maven. Now, till the bin folder path, copy. Again, type. Edit system environment variables. Now again, go to this uh, advanced tab, environment variables and system variables. You will find some existing uh, predefined existing uh, system variable known as path. Just click on that edit and here, new and paste it. Okay, till bin folder you have to paste it. Say okay, 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 that's it, done. Now, go to the location where you have this project available, okay? I'm not having Eclipse ID launch. This project location, we already went where form.xml file is visible. Now type CMD here in the command prompt and uh, you will get the command prompt open at this project location where the form.xml file is available. Now type EMVN after downloading the Maven and configuring that way Maven in this uh, system environment variables and all. Now type this command EMVN test. Let's see what will happen. After downloading and configuring, it should work now. You see, it's working now. Right now, Maven is invoking the pom.xml file from the command prompt, and pom.xml file is invoking the Maven Surefire plugin. Maven Surefire plugin is invoking the testng.xml file, which is mentioned in the pom.xml file, and testng.xml file will invoke the test classes, which are mentioned in the testng.xml file. Inside the test classes, we have the tests which are running currently. Okay, this this thing is very important, guys. These connections are very important. Okay. Now, once you get this from the command prompt, it is very easy from Jenkins, okay? Next, uh, in the next session, I'll show you how to do the same thing with Jenkins, okay? How to run this test from Jenkins. From command prompt, we are successful. Till command prompt, we are successful. We are able to run the test. The report will be generated automatically. The report will open in this case also. You don't need Eclipse ID. Without Eclipse ID, I'm running from the command prompt case using Maven. Now, the same Maven command you are going to provide in Jenkins and Jenkins is going to run. So what is Jenkins and uh, how it runs and all those stuff I'll cover later, okay? I'll cover that later in the next session or uh, upcoming sessions, I'll cover that, okay? For now, this is the thing, okay? We'll take it to the next level anyhow, guys, okay? I'll show you with Jenkins and all. Okay, that is running almost at the end. Okay, last but one done. You should get a report. You see, the report is also automatically generated from the command prompt. Everything is happening. Screenshots got embedded and everything is working fine. So this is the power of Maven, guys. Okay, from command prompt also, we can run our automation scripts with the help of Maven. Now, with this capability of running the rest from the command prompt and getting the same results and report and all the stuff, now, the same command that we are running from the command prompt, we have to run from Jenkins, which I'm going to show you next, okay? Which I'm going to show you next, guys, okay? So, fine. But for this session, guys, this much is enough, okay? I have downloaded Maven and configured Maven. I have show you how to run the test from the command prompt. So, this for this session, guys, I covered a lot in this session, and which covers a lot of important things about Maven, okay? Which is very important. In the next session, we'll see the Jenkins also. Okay. So we'll go to the next level like Jenkins and Gate GitHub, all the CI CD things will go next. Okay. Fine. So, guys, uh, so that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Thank you. Bye.
Hello all, welcome to part nine of hybrid test NG framework. In this session, I am going to show you how to integrate Jenkins and auto invoke the automation scripts. Till now guys, we are invoking the automation scripts in a manual way, right? So we have to go to the project and we have to right click on this and say run as either run as Maven test or we have to right click on the testng.xml file and run as testng suite, right? Or we have to open the command prompt and type mvn test command when the pom where the pom.xml file of this project is there. In all the different ways, we are manually invoking the automation scripts to run. The scripts will run, guys, but they are manually invoked. I'll show you. Okay. So here in the pom.xml file, uh, uh, if you have followed my previous sessions, guys, okay, if you have followed my previous sessions in this series, so you would have known that here in the Maven uh, Surefire plugin, we provided the path of the testng.xml file in this pom.xml file. So when I run this project with the help of Maven, Maven is going to invoke this pom.xml file and pom.xml file is going to invoke this Maven Surefire plugin. Maven Surefire plugin is going to invoke this testng.xml file and testng.xml file is going to invoke the, all the classes that are mentioned in this testng.xml file. All these classes will invoke the tests they have inside them okay for example login test have five automation tests created test engine tests they will be running restart test has four they will be running such test has three they will be running okay this is the process right with the help of maven we are invoking the pom pom is invoking the maven surefire plugin in pom.xml file pom. that maven surefire plugin is invoking the test engine.xml file test engine.xml file is invoking these classes these classes are invoking the test they are containing this is a process but what i'm going to add one more layer is so I will invoke this Maven. Maven is invoking pom.xml file, right? I'll make invoke the Maven, Maven with the help of Jenkins, guys. Why? I'll tell you. With Maven, guys, I have to either manually come here, right click, run, uh, right click, run as Maven test. I have to say to for all this to happen. But Jenkins is something like this. Okay. Let me explain some theory about Jenkins, guys, so that you will understand why we have to use Jenkins in our automation scripts and in automation projects. You see. Now the time is around 12.45 guys, okay, it's 12.45 on 5th uh, December 2022, okay, right, at this time, if I want to run the automation scripts, I will go here and right click and run as I may test, I'll say all my automation scripts will run as I already explained. What if, what if I have to run this automation scripts at night 2 a.m., is it possible for me? No, I'm working from morning to evening. So if someone asks me to run the automation scripts in the night, is it possible for me? No, I cannot uh, woke up at uh, night two o'clock because at the time I'll be sleeping guys in sleeping mode and I will not be able to run the automation scripts at that time. Okay. So if you have to, one of the requirement is if you have to schedule running of your automation scripts. Okay at odd timings when you are not available away level to run the scripts that's the problem right when you are not available at the time and you have to run the automation scripts you have to start running the automation scripts at a particular time like for example in the night 2 am it's not possible for us right so it's not possible for us if it's also possible it is very difficult for us right we should wake up in the night uh, 2 a.m. and our sleep will be disturbed and will not be able to run the scripts. Okay. So that's a problem. Next thing is, or you may get a requirement where every day at some time, let's say at 11 a.m., you have to run automation scripts of the project. This is also another kind of requirement. Here also there is a problem. Here time is okay. 11 a.m. 11 a.m. is fine. I'll be able to run the automation scripts at that time. I will not be sleepy. So it's fine. But the problem here is every day I have to run the automation scripts at 11 a.m. Then maybe every day uh, for one month I have done that without any miss. For first one month, I have done that. In the second month, on a particular day, I forgot. I forgot that I have to run the automation scripts, guys. You see, as a human being, we cannot remember sometimes. Okay. Sometimes you can remember, sometimes you cannot remember. So I'm not a kind of machine or someone who can restart that and at uh, 
11 am alarm will ring and i will go and you know right right to run the auto automation scripts that's also not possible there may be possibility where on a particular day i will miss running the automation scripts and my lead or someone above me will come and ask me why the automation scripts results have not been generated if they inquire i'll be the person behind and uh, i'll be saying that i forgot okay i forgot fine so this is another problem guys here it's neither mistake of that person who has not run the automation scripts generally it happens like if something has to do then every day there may be some days where you may forget right or if if you if someone asks you to run this automation scripts at some odd timings okay it may not be possible or sometimes at 11 am you may be in a meeting guys suddenly there was an urgent meeting you went to that meeting and at 11 am you have to run the automation it's not possible for you you may not be before the machine okay so like this different kind of situations will arise guys okay and to overcome these situations we need some kind of tool known as jenkins we'll do give these instructions instead of giving this kind of instructions to the uh, automation engineer or person who is actually running the automation scripts rather if we direct these instructions to a tool like jenkins jenkins will remember these instructions and at that particular given time Jenkins will go and run this automation scripts. Okay. Jenkins will remember this and run the automation scripts, guys. Okay. You can configure Jenkins in such a way that in the night 2 a.m., you have to run the automation. Jenkins will do that. Or you can configure Jenkins in such a way that every day at a particular time, the automation scripts need to run. That also Jenkins can do for us. Such kind of jobs we can assign to jenkins okay in jenkins terminology these instructions that you are giving to jenkins are called as jobs we have to assign these jobs to jenkins and jenkins will do the job for us okay so so hope you understood the concept behind jenkins and why it is required and how it will help us in the things that we cannot do okay then uh like uh now let's do into the go into the practical mode where I'm going to download Jenkins. I'll show you how to download Jenkins, how to configure Jenkins, how to do the other stuff in Jenkins and as a, create the jobs in Jenkins and instruct the Jenkins in, to do all these activities at the required times. Everything I'm going to cover in this session in a practical way starting now. Okay. So let's switch to the practical mode guys. So first I'll open the new tab. Okay. In this new tab, let's type uh download jenkins okay simply download jenkins you just have to type in the google search you'll get this link guys jenkins download and deployment click on that link and you will be taken to this page where you will see download jenkins and this lts version you will see now so here we have the normal version here we have the lts version long-term support version i generally prefer going with the lts version and this is a war file guys dot war generic java package dot war of jenkins okay just click on this in a while in our machine this jenkins dot war file will get downloaded let's wait for the download to finish as you can see the jenkins dot war file has now been downloaded i can go to the location where it is downloaded okay so this is the jenkins dot war file guys i'll copy this jenkins dot war file I'll copy this jenkins.war file and put it anywhere in your machine okay where you want this jenkins war file to be available okay you can copy this jenkins.war file and provide anywhere in your machine guys i'll just prefer providing that under my project somewhere uh, okay any any place is fine guys okay any place is fine i'll say like uh, it's not required that you have to do that in your project also okay it's up to you because Jenkins is something not related because it's not something the automation engineers have to do rather the uh, like other team like DevOps team or okay so any other IT team in your company has to configure this Jenkins but here what I'm trying to show you about Jenkins is for your knowledge purpose okay though the other team actually configures Jenkins for us and we are the only one who will be running our automation scripts on Jenkins okay but we should know the process guys okay though it's not our job we have to know the process so i'll do one thing i'll not uh, create this jenkins in my project because uh, it doesn't make sense okay i'll provide it any anywhere else okay for example 
you will go to one some location in my machine let's say qfox okay here is a place i'll do guys okay i'll just uh, create a folder anywhere in your machine there's no restriction for this i'll say uh, jenkins okay jenkins i'll create and in that jenkins folder you can give any name to this folder no issues i'm paste it control v and i pasted the jenkins war file now we have the jenkins dot war file we have downloaded jenkins successfully okay what I have explained first, we have to what is Jenkins I covered? Okay, why uh, what is Jenkins I'm why it is required? It is covered guys. Second part is downloading Jenkins is covered. Okay, downloading Jenkins. How to download the Jenkins war file? We have to download the war file. Don't download the exe file. Okay, war file will be good. Once you download the war file, now I have to open the command prompt and run a command. Here, this is the path where this Jenkins.war file is available. I'll select the path and type a command known as CMD in the path in place of the path and press enter. You will see that command prompt will open at this location of Jenkins where the war file of Jenkins is available. You see, see it right? Okay, folks. Jenkins, this is a place where the war file is available. So, this is a shortcut for opening the command prompt at the desired location in our machines. Okay, directly select this path, type CMD and press enter. You will get the command prompt with the path. Now, this is a place where Jenkins.war file is available. And what is the command I have to type? Java hyphen jar and the name of this file with the extension that is Jenkins.war. Okay, this is a command I have to type. Now, run Jenkins. How to run? Java in command prompt. Command prompt. Open the command prompt. Get the war file. And I have to write the command Java hyphen jar. Jenkins .war. Okay, like this, you have to type this command. Yes. Now press enter here. It will take a while. Let's wait for this process to complete running from this file and all those things are happening. For the first time, when you open this command prompt and do this, okay, you, it Jenkins, this command prompt need to give a password. Yes, okay, at the end, it has to give a password. You see, it has given the password. That means you have done this for the first time. And you can copy this password from this location. Just select this area, right click, edit, copy. This is a way to copy. This is one way to copy the password or there's other way guys. Either you can copy like this or you can go to this location. See in my location, see users folder, my username folder in that dot Jenkins folder is created just now when we have, okay, run this command. In, inside the dot Jenkins folder, there is a folder known as secrets folder. In that secrets folder, we have something known as initial admin password. There you will find the same password days, okay? So this is from here, from the command prompt, you can copy this password or you can go to this location in your machine that is C, C drive. And in the C drive, users folder, then username folder, then dot Jenkins. In the dot Jenkins, you will find something known as secrets folder. In that you will find something known as initial admin password. Right click on this and say open with and you will get uh, some options and just select some notepad or something. Say OK. You will get the same password, whatever you got in the command prompt, right? The same password. Password. Don't uh, copy any spaces here, guys. Just copy only the password area. Copy this. You see the same password. Lastly, 20524. 205.24 is there. the same password. You can copy from here. OK, this is the location. Now, the next thing is. I will close this browser guys once I'll close this browser and open the browser again. And here by default, sorry, by default, Jenkins will run as a port number 8080. Okay. When you run this command, Java hyphen jar Jenkins dot war, Jenkins will automatically get okay installed. By the end of this process, when the password is coming, right? Jenkins, Jenkins will start running at which port number by default? 8080 port number. So here I'll simply type, this is my machine, right? The machine where Jenkins is there, okay? The same machine only, Jenkins is there, right? In real time, Jenkins will not be configured in the same machine where the project, the automation scripts are written by the automation engineers. Rather, this Jenkins will be part of some other machine, guys, okay? So. In if in case this Jenkins is part of a different machine, then we have to give the IP address of this particular machine. 
okay well jenkins is running but in in our case jenkins i since i don't have multiple machines with me to show you all the stuff i am running the jenkins in my own machine so my machine has an ip address either i can give my own ip address of my machine or in place of that i can give local host local host means my machine's ip address automatically you can find the you can go to the command prompt and type uh, ip config and get the ip address of your machine and type it here or in place of your ip address you can give local host local host means the ip address of the current machine okay simple in that local host ip address at port number 8080 okay when you go to a hotel you will not book the entire hotel right this local host is a com complete machine in this machine this complete computer different softwares will be installed and these softwares are going to run at different port numbers okay so jenkins by default runs as, runs at 8080 port number guys like we go to a hotel and book a room right to in that room only we will stay we will not uh, stay in the entire hotel we'll not room uh, in the entire hotel rather we go to a particular room number like here 8080 port number is nothing but a room number guys okay in my computer machine having a particular ip address in the room number colon 8080 the jenkins will be running by default okay just press enter local host colon 8080 just press enter guys it may take some time for the first time it may take some time guys okay so let's wait you see so getting started sometimes it will come to you like jenkins is loading uh, jenkins is starting up like that kind of messages may come okay if this kind of message doesn't come do one thing is close the command prompt and do the process again okay there may be some times where to get this particular screen it may take a lot of time for you okay in that case what you have to do you have to close the command prompt and repeat the same process java iphan jar jenkins.war again you will get the same thing and once you get this screen then you are good okay in some missions this may not come always guys okay the screen getting started uh, screen may not come so fast it, it will say that Jenkins is trying to launch or something, some kind of launching message will come and this may take time. So if it's taking too much of time, close the command prompt and do repeat the steps, guys. But luckily, if you're getting the screen in the first item, no need to worry, okay? Simply paste the password. What is the password, guys? This is the password, right? I will copy this password and paste it here, Control V and click on Continue button. Now, in the next screen, you will get this customized Jenkins option. We'll get this customize Jenkins option. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, one more thing before we go to this customization of Jenkins, currently Jenkins is running in which port number 8080. There may be some situations where, where in 8080 other software may be running in your machine. Then the conflict will come. So there is one slot 8080 port number where another software other than Jenkins is running. So Jenkins cannot apply and this may not be possible. In that case, what you will do guys, you have to run this Jenkins in the different port number. Okay. So for that, you just see running Jenkins in different port number. There will be some command guys. Okay. There will be command guys. Yeah, this is a command guys. Hyphen hyphen HTTP port number. For example, if you don't want Jenkins to run on 8080, rather you want to run on 9090, you have to say, hyphen hyphen http port okay i'll i'll write down here running jenkins on different port number how to do that instead of giving this basic command java hyphen java jenkins dot var where default port number will be even though you have not specified default port number will be 80 okay of jenkins will be 80 but here if you want to change that if you want to run jenkins on a different port number then the command here will be java hyphen jar same thing uh, jenkins dot var hyphen hyphen http port is equal to give the port number 9191 9192 anything this is a extra thing you have to provide guys okay http port here p is capital you have to make sure is equal to port number you have to give hope you are able to understand okay but for now we don't have any issues and uh, in my machine at 8080 port number, there are no other uh, software running or software processes running. So Jenkins will clearly run on 8080 guys. Okay. So here I have select this install suggested plugins. Okay. So there are two options coming here. After I gave the password and clicked on the continue button, I got this customized Jenkins screen where I am suggested to either install suggested plugins or select plugins to install is coming. Two things are coming. So here 
uh, it will ask you if you want any additional plugins or something what this option but for now for our requirement guys for our requirements it's not required we don't have to go with this path this this default path will be enough the default selection will be enough enough where install suggested plugins whatever the plugins that jenkins is suggesting is more than enough guys select that option once i click on that option you will see that this okay this plugins are getting installed one by one okay we have to wait until all these plugins are getting installed okay let's see one of them to get passed and then i'll pause the screen and then uh, resume the screen recording okay let's wait at least for one of the item to get uh, in green color okay if it's successfully installed plugin one of the plugin is successfully installed you will see a background color like green or something okay you see what now what is going on java mail api something is happening here let's wait let's wait this may take some time for a lot of people guys sometimes uh based on the time when we are uh, kind of installing the plugins right these plugins have to be downloaded from the Jenkins okay, server or something. So it's not in our control sometimes. Some plugins may fail. In that case, we have to repeat the process. There is no other way. We have to repeat the process of installing the plugins until all the plugins get installed. Okay. And Jenkins also, if some of the plugins out of all the plugins uh, have not installed, uh, retry options kind of options will come at the end also. Okay. But hope for all the plugins to get installed uh, in a successful way. In the first go itself let's go for that okay then we are good otherwise we have to keep on trying this for a lot of times okay so let's see what will happen still the progress is here only i'll pass the recording guys if uh, after something i'll resume the recording otherwise it will take a lot of time for you okay as this is the recording i'll pass and resume as you can see, one of the plugin has been successfully installed. You'll get this kind of tick mark and uh, you will see this background color turn into green color. Same thing should happen for the remaining plugins, guys. Let's wait for that. So as you can see, guys, all the plugins have been successfully installed. So it's almost at the end. So it has taken us, us to next screen. All the suggested plugins has been installed. Okay, we are running Jenkins, and uh, we have launched uh, in any browser. We have opened any browser open localhost colon 8080 80 port number okay then select install after uh, provide password that's the first thing provide password then next thing is install suggested plugins after the install suggested plugins is completed then we'll be provided with the screen where you have to create an admin user guys okay first admin user i'll give the username as arun muturi okay password as one two three four five so that i can remember always i provide the same one two three four five as a confirm password and the full my full name is arun space muturi and my email address i'll provide so like this you just remember this username and password you have given guys okay in your case whatever the username and password you have given just remember so we have we are creating the first admin user save and continue create first admin user okay so whatever the username and password you have given you have to remember and this is the jenkins url that we have browsed right localhost 8080 same thing is there i don't want to do any changes save and finish i'll say and now it is saying jenkins is ready your jenkins setup is complete start using jenkins click on start using jenkins and uh, you'll be taken to this Jenkins dashboard. Guys. You can even log out, log in with the same credentials, okay, that I have created just now. 
So this is how the dashboard will look like. Okay. Now what next? So uh, there are a few things that we have to do, guys. After going to the Jenkins dashboard, we have to do few few things. Okay. We have to go to manage Jenkins. Okay. First, we have to go to manage Jenkins. Before creating any job in Jenkins, I, I told you, right, uh, to Jenkins, we have to give the instructions in the form of jobs. But before creating any such kind of jobs, you have to say manage Jenkins and you will be taken to manage Jenkins screen. And here uh, we have manage plugins, global tool configuration, configure system is there. We'll, we'll be going to global tool configuration, the middle option, okay, global tool configuration. Click on that. Once you go to the global tool configuration, it will ask you, to provide few stuff, okay? So here we have to provide something known as Java. This, oh, not everything is required guys, okay? Uh, just do whatever that is required. Here JDK is required. So add JDK you say, and here by default you will get installed automatically, uncheck that. Now here give the name as Java underscore home. Any name you can give, I'll give Java underscore home and here, I need to give the path of the Java home, guys. Okay, I need to give the path of the Java home. As you already know, in my machine, Java is already installed. I'll go to my C drive. Okay, where is the Java installed in program file? 64 bit Java got installed, guys. Java folder under the JDK 17.0.5, where you can see all the bin folders and all. Just copy this path, guys, and paste that. Okay, paste that here. Fine. So, JDK. You have to give like this JDK home, sorry, Java home. You have to give like this. Okay. The path that's it guys. You don't have to do anything. Scroll down again. And here somewhere you will see Maven here. Also click on add Maven again and check install automatically here. A name need to be provided Maven underscore home. Same name you give Maven underscore home name you give. And here you have to give the path of the Maven home that is go to your uh, go to the place. Okay. In the previous session, one of the previous session, I copied the Maven folder into the C drive. If you remember, that is nothing but Apache Maven 3.8.6, right? In one of the previous sessions I have done that. Okay. Copy this uh, path of this Maven home where you can see all these bin folders and all copy that come back here and paste that Maven home here. Now apply once applied, click on save. Okay. That's it. It's done. The global tool configuration is done for Java and Maven. Now what next? The next thing is go to the dashboard here. Again, go to the home that is dashboard. And here either for the first time, if you have, if there are no jobs available, you'll get this welcome screen from Jenkins where you have an option to create a job or from second time onwards or even first time onwards, if you don't want to use this option, there is a new item here. You can do the same thing, create a job or new item is also nothing but creating a job guys. Okay. I'll click on new item guys. In the new item here, enter an item name is coming and we have to give the uh, job name. We have to give some job name and here we can go with the freestyle project, but I don't prefer freestyle project guys. I generally prefer to use Maven, Maven kind of project I prefer, but in this list Maven project is not there. If, when I'm trying to create a job here, I want to select a uh, job template that is freestyle project template you can use or we have to use something known as Maven, Maven project template. How to do that? For that, again, go to dashboard. Since Maven is not coming there while creating the job, first I'll make sure that everything is there. So I'll say dashboard. Again, I'll say manage Jenkins. This time I'll not go to go global tool configuration. Earlier I went to global tool configuration to configure the J Java, JDK and uh, Maven in this Jenkins. Okay. So Jenkins is going to use a uh, Java in my machine and also Jenkins is going to use Maven in my machine, something like that. Okay. Next thing is that here we have manage plugins. Okay. To get that Maven, uh, to get that uh, Maven project option, we have to say manage plugins. So by default, when I initiated Jenkins, some suggested plugins got installed in that suggested plugins, Maven plugin is not there. Okay. Maven plugin is not there. That's why we didn't get an option to select the Maven project template while creating the job. Okay. Now what I will do here is here. I'll say, uh, available plugins. Okay. To install, to search for the plugins. Okay. We have to say available plugins. If they are not installed, you can select the available plugins and just type Maven here. Just type Maven here guys. When you type Maven here, you see some plugin is coming on the top. Okay. These are some list of plugins are coming. The first plugin is matching with this term. 
that is Maven integration is matching, select that plugin and click on install without restart. Don't select download now and install after restart, you will face some problems. Better say install without restart. It will be installed and uh, the Jenkins will not be restarted. Okay, click on install without restart. There is no need of restarting. In the bottom, if you see, you see Maven integration plugin is getting installed. Okay, once I install this Maven integration plugin, when you again go to the dashboard and try to create a job, you'll be able to see the Maven project template. Okay, I'll show you that. That is required for us guys, okay? So it's installing the Maven integration plugin and it's supported plugins are required. It's uh, taken care of. Let's wait for the Maven integration plugin to complete installing. As you can see, the Maven integration plugin has been now installed. I'll go to the dashboard back and I'll click on new item again. And this time, along with the freestyle project template for the job to be created, we are also giving getting Maven project template, okay? So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to give a name for this job. So I'll just give the name as Tutorials Ninja Project Job, okay? Like this, some, some name I'll give. And I'll select the Maven project instead of the freestyle project. We can go with the freestyle project also, but this one is better, okay? So for pom.xml files, take advantage of your pom files and all. This is better, okay? I'll select this Maven project and uh, say, okay. You'll be taken to the job configuration page. We are creating a job guys, but uh, we need to provide some details into the job configuration, okay? The job creation is in progress still, okay? We just gave the name and starting to create a job and we are going to configure the job by giving a lot of other details. So here you don't have to give any description. It's not compulsory. Okay. So if you want, you can explain about what this job is all about here. Okay. This job runs the Selenium, whatever the project we have, we have created, right? Okay. Selenium Java framework project. Okay. Hybrid. Um, Selenium Java hybrid. Hybrid text ng page fact page fact uh, page object model model and page factory framework project like this you can just write something whatever you feel convenient okay according to your needs and then just click on advanced tab in advanced tab once you uh, sorry you have to click on advanced button okay once you click on advanced button you will get this uh, display name, okay? Help the display name. So here none is selected, that's fine. What else is there? One minute, I think I need to get some other thing. General, yeah. Okay. So there is a problem with this uh, Maven project uh, job because it's not asking me to specify the workspace, okay? We are trying to create the job by selecting the Maven project template. But here in the Maven project template, we are not asked to provide the path. So I'll be using this Maven, uh, whatever the Maven plugin I have, in, Maven integration plugin I have installed and whatever the job option I got that I will be using later guys, okay? So not now. That is for the upcoming sessions, okay? whatever the Maven plugin I have installed, that is for upcoming sessions, guys. It's, uh, I'll delete this Maven project template job. Instead, I'll go with a normal template, okay? So the reason behind that is, uh, if you use a normal freestyle project template when creating the Maven, uh, this uh, Jenkins job, then you will be asked to provide the path of your project. But in Maven project template, if you select the, if you create the job by selecting the Maven template, Maven project job template, in that case, it's not asking you to provide the project path. Okay, that's one thing. So what I'll do here is uh, till because it's not required for us, right? So we'll go to the manage plugins again. It's not required. Maven Maven integration plugin is not at all required at this moment. So this is required later days. Okay. So uh, select the install plugins because uh, you already have installed this uh, plugin. So I'll say Maven. I'll type Maven here. Okay. This plugin just now I have installed this, but I don't want to, I want to uninstall this, okay? It's not required at this moment, okay? This is required at later point. I'm not ruling this out, but this is a required later point of time. When it is required, I'll show you. 
uh, how to install again. I will install this Maven integration plugin again. Okay. But now I'm just selecting yes to uninstall. It will be uninstalled from my machine. Once it is uninstalled, okay, go to the dashboard and create new new item. Okay, it's still coming. Let's refresh. It's not got uninstalled. So let me go to the manage Jenkins again. I don't want that plugin to be there now. So install plugins, Maven, integrate an installation pending. Okay. So, so we'll do one thing. I'll log out, guys. Uh, sometimes you have to restart uh, and, uh, you know, kind of restart the browser and say localhost 8080. And again, I have to sign in. Remember the username, Rabin Motori, 12345 is a password. Right. Click on sign in button. Now create a job, new item. Let's see. Still, it is coming, guys. Okay. I don't know what's happening there. Manage uh, Jenkins, Maven plugins, install plugins, Maven. Installing is not happening properly. It's taking me to there. Okay, installation pending. Okay. Okay, if I say Maven here, what's coming? The plugin is not coming because it's already installed. Okay, I'm not able to uninstall, that's okay. Maven. Installation pending, it is saying. It's taking some time or something, I don't know. But uh, let's leave that, guys, okay? It's not worried. Okay, if really required, we'll use it, okay? But now I'm not going to use uh, Jenkins job with, I'm not going to create the Jenkins job with Maven project template. This is required for future purpose, okay? I'm not ruling this out. At this moment, it's not required. Because my project is in my local machine, all the project is in my local machine. Okay. So after I cover the Gita and Git concepts, we have to use Maven at that time. Okay. At that time, I will not be using freestyle project. When your project, whatever the project you have created is in your local machine. Okay. Is in your local machine and this code is not hosted online. Okay. In a central repo, which we have to do with Gita and GitHub that I'm going to cover in the next session. Okay. Don't worry about what is Gita and GitHub that I'm going to cover in the next session. Till then, we have to use a freestyle project only. We don't need Maven project for till that time. I'll give the same name, guys. Tutorials Ninja project job name. And click, click on freestyle project and say, okay. I'm not using Maven project template. I'm using freestyle project template. Now, I again, got the configuration of the job page that we already have. Okay. Got. So... Uh, this job is created. This job is created to run, okay, the project having project uh, in our, uh, in my local machine, in my local machine project from my local machine, run the project from my local machine having, uh, what is that hybrid uh, test and uh, hybrid framework framework okay that is uh, having a uh, test ng we have used test ng selenium java and what is the other thing page object model object model and page factory okay like this okay like this i'll write one simple line i'll click on this advanced button earlier when i clicked on the advanced button i didn't get this use custom workspace option okay if i am using that maven project template while creating this job, I was not getting use custom of custom workspace option, which I was searching. Okay. Uh, but it was not there with the Maven project. So that Maven project template we have to use guys, but at this moment, per my requirement, my code is there in my local machine. It's not there anywhere on the cloud, like Google drive or Google drive is nothing but cloud, right? Sim similar, something like we can host our uh, code into one kind of cloud platform known as GitHub that I'm going to cover later. Like Google Drive is a cloud application. Similarly, GitHub is also a cloud application. We have to upload this code into the cloud. And from there, if you have to uh, use Jenkins to run the automation scripts to in initiate or in invoke the automation scripts, then we are going to go with that uh, project template that is a job template that is Maven project template. But for now, we don't have to do that. Okay. For now, we don't have to do that. This is a normal freestyle project template where you are going to get this use custom option on clicking on that once button i'll select this use custom workspace option here we have to provide the path of the project directory so here is the project guys right click on this project and select properties one you will get this properties for this project dialog and here this is a path where the project is available in my machine 
open click on this option so it will open the project location this is the project go inside the project is copy this project location where you can see all these files copy this project location and come back here come back here to the use workspace option we are configuring the job jenkins job paste it that's it you have to give the path of that project okay now i don't have to do anything here uh, here source code management have to mention as none here because my code is there in my local machine in the machine if my mesh if my code is hosted on the cloud like github as i just now mentioned that i have to go with git but for now none is enough none and freestyle project templates are enough guys i don't have to go with maven template now okay then build triggers i will cover later guys for now don't worry about that build environment also it's not required build steps is required okay build steps we have to go to you can select on the left side also guys these options okay if you directly want to go to general okay this advanced thing where i provided the workspace you can click on the left side option source code management none i mentioned build triggers i'm not going to do anything now build environment okay i'm not i'm not going to do anything now in this build environment and build steps build steps okay in build steps add build step and mention uh so i'm not going to do anything here i am going to select invoke top level maven targets this is the option okay this is a maven i want i can invoke this project with the help of maven because maven will invoke the pom.xml file pom.xml file will invoke the maven surefire plugin maven surefire plugin will invoke the testng.xml testng.xml file will invoke this classes this classes will invoke the test methods inside them that's the process so ultimately this project need to be invoked with the help of maven maven will invoke pom.xml file okay so for that to happen guys here i'll say invoke top level maven targets okay i have to invoke maven and here once you select the build steps as invoke top, top level maven targets select this maven home which we have configured in the beginning of the jenkins configuration from global tool configuration option okay of manage jenkins in the goals you don't have to type the entire goal in the command prompt if you remember in the previous session in the command prompt we have given mvn test but here mvn is not required it's not required to mention in the jenkins job configuration only test part is required here anyhow you are selecting maven here just the remaining part what goal that is test goal okay test means everything will happen cleaning compiling everything will happen test will have happen here okay just mention test and it will run your automation scripts it will invoke the maven it will invoke the maven maven will invoke the pom.xml file okay at this location whatever the workspace location you gave make sure that pom.xml file is visible this is the project location you gave can you see the pom.xml file here that's enough okay maven will invoke this pom.xml file here that's the reason we have to select maven go to the build steps and select maven invoke top level maven targets as maven home and here give the goal as test okay that's it maven home test and uh, this is a path we have given and uh, we mentioned local repository it's not on the cloud okay git means on the cloud now post build actions click on post build actions and just see what is there here uh, i i can get an option to generate a report guys but here uh, that option is not there testng report if i want to generate a testng report i don't have any testng option here okay i don't have any testng publish report kind of option here i'll go with that later guys okay first i will run the scripts without uh, a testng report in this jenkins a, a testng report will be generated in this inside this jenkins guys okay i'll show you okay so the settings are required guys under general we selected uh, advanced button and use workspace path we even provided the description and uh, we selected use workspace path and provide the path where pom.xml file is visible then the source code management we selected none and in the build triggers we have not selected anything build environment we have not selected anything build steps i selected this invoke top level morvan ta ta uh, targets and maven home i selected and i gave the goal as test okay i am post build i am not selecting anything now but i have to select testng option that will come after i install another plugin known as testng results plugin now i'll say apply and click on save done okay go to the this is a project uh, job job related stuff guys you can even go to the dashboard guys you can see the job here okay you can see the job if you want to go to that uh, job page you can click on this you will be taken to the job page where you can see workspace build now and all those options the same options the job options that you are individually seeing here are also available in the dashboard if you see the job here there is an arrow mark click on that the same options are coming you see build now configure workspace delete project rename is coming again you can click on this and you will get the same thing you see rename delete project build now and everything is same either you can go to this page or you can go to the dashboard and select this drop down okay 
and click on build now build now to run this job so to this job what i provided guys when i say build now automatically this job will invoke the maven as per the config as per the configurations or settings given in this uh, job jenkins job okay i mentioned the project location where the code is available where the pom.xml file is available and what what you have to do with that pom.xml file uh, you have to invoke the maven and by running the test right test select this and click on build now that's it okay once you say build now the job will run like this okay you see the scripts need to run now you see it's uh, kind of uh, okay loading so it will invoke for the first time guys you are you cannot wait so go to the job page guys you will find more information there you see here also build is running hash one is coming click on this hash one and uh, go to the console output you will see what's happening now okay you see the tests are running whatever that happens in the command command prompt right while running the maven from command prompt same thing is happening here running the test you see the scripts are running register tests are running on the chrome browser the project is the project automation is being invoked by maven guys okay being invoked by maven still i have to click on build now right i'll tell you some settings or something where you don't have to click on build now okay automatically it will happen at night 2 am if you want to run your automation scripts then what to do okay you see all the automation scripts are running guys one by one Jenkins is not just like this, okay? You connected Jenkins by creating a job, you connected it to the your local automation code, okay, project code. But now this is not enough about Jenkins, guys. It's not enough about Jenkins, okay? There is a lot of other stuff. You can give more uh, instructions to Jenkins where at night 2 a.m. you run the scripts, okay? Every day, this particular point of time, you run the scripts. Like that, you can give a lot of instructions to Jenkins, guys, okay? So let this run, uh, round run, okay? After that, we'll go for the detailed thing about Jenkins. You see, even in your local machine of the scripts got run because of our settings and all. You see, even extent reports got generated here. Extent report got generated here. If anything got failed, screenshots, everything is coming. Reports are coming. System environment details are coming. As we already have configured with the, as we already have configured with the local project, okay? So for now, for now, as you can see, the results came. Uh, this console output, you can see in the console output, the scripts have completed running. There are 14 tests in that one got failed and one got skipped and there are zero errors, okay? Uh, one got failed, but that failed you have already seen skipped. But the report that is generated is belonging to my local project. But what about Jenkins? Is it generating any report? I'll go to this, uh, this tutorials in the job and I'll not see any, uh, you know, kind of, uh, okay. I don't see any test engine results report here. Okay, I'll click on the trend and you will see trend is something like this. Okay, trend is something like this. You will not see anything because only one build has been run. You will not see much trend here. Later, you can see the trend. Only hash one build. One time we have run this. Okay, next time if you want to run that again, you can again go to that and uh, just click on this and say build now again. Second time it will run. But I um, but before that, guys, I want the test engine results. For that reason, what I will do is I will again go to manage Jenkins from dashboard. And here manage plugins is there so here available plugins you search and here click on um what is that um test ng search for test ng guys you'll get test ng results plugin select this plugin install without restore you mention and here scroll down and you'll see that test ng results plugin is getting installed okay install without restart okay i selected install without restart it will be installed and you don't have to restart now go back to the dashboard uh and again this time, build now again. Build now. This time, we should get a report here in the job. Second job is running. Second time, it is running. Use hash2 is running. Click on this. Again, you will see the hash2. You click on the hash2 and click on the console output. You will see what's happening. Okay. This is what is happening in the console output. What the same thing that happens in our uh, Eclipse ID or Eclipse ID output console or in our command prompt, whatever the lines will come, right? The same thing is coming. The scripts will run one by one. The script started running, guys, already. Let all the scripts and this time test engine results plugin should be generated but it will not be generated but there is a reason why it will not be generated just by installing plugin nothing will happen right you just install plugin did you configure the plugin did you configure the job to generate the test engine reports no that's a problem right 
Just let the scripts run and you will not see any report still. Okay, you will not see any report still because you just installed TestNG results plugin, but you have not configured this job to in uh, to after uh, like post build steps like uh, to generate a TestNG report. You have not done that. So despite of this scripts running again after installing the TestNG results plugin, you will not get TestNG report in your Jenkins. Okay. So let the scripts run. Let them run one by one. All the scripts are running, guys. Okay. So yeah, we are almost there, guys. Uh, the last few things are done. Yeah, it's completed. Once you get this report, it's completed, guys. But you see, uh, fourteen. One got failed. We know intentionally we are failing something because I'm intentionally failing. Dependent has got skipped, as you already know from the previous sessions, why it is failing and all. And if you go to this tutorial in the job, uh, you'll not see any test engine report anywhere. Okay. The reason here is job is there. Okay. This job is there. Test engine uh, results plugin you have installed by going to manage plugins and uh, plugin section. But the problem here is you have to select this drop down and before building it again, just have to select this configure option. Click on the configure. You'll be going to the configure page where you are going, giving the instructions for the job. So what you have to do is go to the last step, post build actions. In this, you can even click on this post build actions and come here. And this time, since we have installed the test engine results plugin, you are getting an extra option which was not coming earlier. Select this published test engine results. Okay, the results will be generated here at this location. Okay, test engine results .xml. Okay, so say so click on apply. Save, that's it. Apply and save. Now, you can either build now from here because this is a job we have created, Jenkins job. You can even build now from here or you can go to the dashboard and uh, just drop down and click on build now. This time, the test engine results report should be generated, okay? Third, third, uh, third time it is running, okay? Click on this, third, you can directly go there actually, okay? So don't have to click on job and then click on three. Directly you can click on three, you will be taken there. And console output, you just click, you can see what's going on. You'll get used to it, guys. Okay, a lot of settings are there in Jenkins, but this is not the session for, I'm not taking this session as an entire Jenkins uh, kind of thing. Okay, whatever that is required. Again, we are going to use Jenkins in next uh, Cucumber VDD projects also. We are going to use Jenkins. Okay. Um, so I'll cover something here and uh, a few other things later, guys. Okay, that's my plan. So at this moment, this much is enough uh, about Jenkins. I'll cover basic uh, settings in Jenkins and all those stuff. The scripts are running one by one, as you can see, they are opening the browser and in minimize mode and all those things are happening. You can see here also in the logs, okay, Chrome was started successfully and all those stuff are coming. Login tests are running at this moment. This is also a login test. Most probably such test will start, such test started. Two more, one will fail and other one will get skipped because of the failed test, dependent failed test. Okay, so the report has been generated. You can see everything is fine. Now, along with these guys, along with these guys, okay? If you go to the tutorials in your job, okay? And refresh here, H3, just go to one of the build. Just go to one of the build. You see, apart from console output, you see some one more thing. Okay, we have seen the console output so far. This time, test engine results report also has been generated. Jenkins report, guys. This is okay. Test engine in, in, in Jenkins. If you have to generate the test engine results, this is the thing. And you can see all the details here. Okay, you can see the details of the failure, why it got failed, and all those stuff. Again, go to the test engine results and uh, skip test which which test got skipped. Okay, all the tests which, uh, all the tests hide expandable. Hide or expandable, this is the entire table it seems. And these are the test cases, click on the test cases and uh, let's see what will come. You see, these are the complete test cases. Uh, there is no description for the test case, that's fine. These are the test cases guys, verify registering an account with mandatory fields, verify registering an account with uh, providing all fields, existing email address, filling any details, without filling any details, uh, login with valid credentials, uh, verify login with valid credentials, login, by login with uh, valid. Okay. This is data driven testing three times, three sets of data, as you already know from the previous sessions, have using the same project, invalid credentials, 
invalid email and valid password, valid email, invalid password, login without providing credentials, search with valid product, search with invalid product, other one is skipped. You see, pass, 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 only one failed and remaining one got skipped. Okay, you can see the skip here. Total that got, uh, total are seven here from the login test, da including data driven test, there are seven, search test, there are three. In that, nothing got failed, nothing got skipped. Uh, sorry, uh, in the first seven, nothing got failed, nothing got skipped. In the second search test, one got failed, one got skipped, and remaining one got passed, that means, okay? Out of three, three minus two is one passed. And the uh, last one, everything got passed. So nothing got failed, nothing got skipped, everything got passed. That's it, guys. And uh, uh, what else, what else we have? So this time, guys, we can go to configure again, configure job again, and uh, we have not covered, I have not covered some options here, as you can see. Source code management is same, general settings are same, build triggers. Here, <clears throat> there's an important option here, guys, okay? A lot, every option makes sense here, okay? As part of Jenkins, we have to learn each and every option, that's fine. But I'm not going to too depth in this session, okay? Here, I'll show only the important options in this session. Uh, if I have to cover Jenkins, I have to create a separate uh, playlist, actually, okay? That much big Jenkins is but we'll be covering whatever that is uh, necessary to learn at this moment. Here, build periodically option is there, I'll select this. And uh, here, click on question mark, you'll get a lot of instructions, guys. There's a schedule, okay? Click on schedule. Here, you're getting a lot of options, guys, okay? Here, you're getting a lot of options. Uh, if I want to give Jenkins some instructions, okay? So these are the different instructions, guys. Some examples are also given. Every 15 minutes, if you want to run the automation scripts, this is the code you have to copy paste. Okay. Uh, you can go through this help documentation, guys. It's very big. Okay. It's kind of very big, but uh, some examples with the examples. Okay. So copy this. And uh, this means if I put this here, it will clearly say that uh, 5th December is today's date at 2.51 PM. We have already have done. Next run, it will be at 3.6. That means after 15 minutes. Okay. After 15 minutes at Three, uh, now it's like uh, 252, right? At 251, it calculated that uh, if I give this code here, it will run at 36. That is after 15 minutes, it will, every 15 minutes, it will automatically run, guys. I don't want to give by 15, I'll give something like, uh, uh, let's give three, guys, okay? Three means you see, currently it is like 252 almost, and uh, next we'll run at 254, okay? We can wait for this much of time, not a problem. Now I'll say apply and save. You see, every day at 11 a.m. if you want to run, okay? I have built, I, I'm not going to go to, uh, I'm not going to uh, select this option now. I'm not going to select build now option now. Automatically it will run, guys, okay? Now next bill will happen automatically. Just see, just watch. Maybe it will take some three minutes of time. After three minutes, it will start. After running, again after three minutes, again it will run. So such kind of, I'm, I have already given Jenkins the permissions to run my automation scripts every three minutes. In real time, we don't, don't run the scripts every three minutes, but just to uh, show you practically that we can uh, instruct Jenkins to run my automation scripts every three minutes. If Jenkins can run my automation scripts every three minutes, it can do whatever it I ask Jenkins, right? A lot of settings are there in Jenkins. That kind of code you have to provide into build periodically where you can give every every night at 2 a.m. you can run the scripts. Every day at 11, a, 11 a.m. you can run the automation scripts. Any instructions you can give guys, okay? So go to the configurations of the Jenkins jobs and uh, go to that uh, build periodically kind of options. Okay, build options and then view the settings there. Okay, a lot of settings will be there. You see, the script started, guys. Automatically, they started. I, do, I didn't do any build now kind of thing. It, they automatically started. You see, the script started running also. Okay, the script started running. At 2.54, they are running, as you can see in the timer, in the below of my screen. 254, my scripts are running, guys. This call is built periodically. All my scripts will run one by one. At 254, they are running. One minute, minute is over while my scripts are running. One minute is over, guys. It's now 
started at 254, it's now 255. This is the fourth build that which is running now. As you can see, it's the fourth build. Cash flow is coming in the progress on the left side. Test tutorials and job project job which is running on the fourth build. It's completed, guys. It's completed. I can close this. And uh, yeah, it's done. Refresh once. You see, hash four has come. That's fine. Let's wait for some time. Let's wait for, for some time. And uh, next build will start, guys. Okay. It will automatically run. Every three minutes, it will run. We configured Jenkins job in such a way that to Jenkins, we have provided instructions via the job saying that every three minutes, you have to run this particular project automation code, which is there in my machine. That's what is the instruction I have given. Okay. Every three minutes, this job is going to invoke my automation scripts automatically. Okay. Hope you got some idea about Jenkins. Okay. You don't have to learn Jenkins in depth at this moment, but uh, whatever I'm covering as part of this session is enough for now. Okay. This much is enough guys. Okay. Let's wait for some time. It's 256, 254 it started. The last build hash for has started 254. Now it's two minutes is completed. Now let's wait for some more time. Maybe in one more minute, uh, again, another build will start. Hash by hash five build will start in, in a minute. Okay, let's wait for that. Because I configured Jenkins in such a manner. Okay, until I remove that setting from Jenkins, my scripts will keep on running for every three minutes. And one more thing, meanwhile, is that guys, you should not close this command prompt. Okay, you should not close this command prompt, otherwise, Jenkins will shut down. Okay, you see the build started, guys. After three minutes, the build started. Hash5 is now started. Hash5 scripts, hash5 build scripts are running. Every three minutes, the scripts will run, guys. Okay, that's how I configured. You see, the script started running my you see, as you can see. Let the scripts run. After this running of the scripts, I'll remove that setting because every three minutes if it is running means it will consume a lot of my computer memory and all the stuff. So I have to remove this. Okay. I have to remove this. Just for sake of demonstration, I have done this. But in real time, we don't run the scripts every three minutes. Maybe once in a day or something will run. Or every time a new code is uh, pushed into the uh, code base by the developer application code base by an application developer, then automatically the scripts may run for every build, okay, of the developer build of the application, okay. Like that, we can configure Jenkins, guys, okay. Automatically, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to invoke the automation scripts. Invoking of the automation scripts also is now automatic with the help of Jenkins, okay. Invoking of the automation scripts is also automatic with the help of Jenkins now. That's what you have to understand. This Jenkins will come into CI/CD pipeline, guys. Okay, continuous integration and com continuous deployment pipeline, where the release of the software will happen very fast because every time when the build runs, uh, uh, when the application developer changes something, we can configure Jenkins in such a way that the scripts will run and we can find out what problems are there. So it is helping us to release the software release faster. If there are no defects, the software can be released, right? So let's uh, quickly go to the uh, configure again of this particular job and scroll down a bit and. Uh, Let's remove this build periodically settings. Okay, there are a lot of settings here, guys. Okay, I'll just remove this setting for now. Okay, and apply. Otherwise, it will keep on running. So just see here, guys. Click on question mark here beside the schedule. A lot of examples are there. Okay, a lot of examples. Every 15 minutes, if you want, this is the thing you have to do. Every 10 minutes in the first half of every hour. Okay. So in every hour, first uh, in every 10 minutes. Okay. Once every two hours at 45 minutes. Okay. Once in every two hour slot between 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. This is a code. Once a day on the first and 15th of every month. Okay. Once a day on first and 15th only it will run if you give this code. Okay. You can learn more about this guys. Okay. Uh, morning H8 means morning London time it will run. Okay. Uh, then this one. This one. Uh, butlers do not have a five o'clock, so we run the job again. Okay, H0 30 17. Okay, at uh, five o'clock. This is five o'clock. You can find it out. Okay, copy this part and go here and paste. You'll get the instructions like uh, when it is going to run and all the stuff. Okay, there is that went off. Scroll up. 
it is on 4th december 2022 5 22 at 5th december 5 pm it's going to run okay 5 pm if i give 5 here the next uh, would run at tuesday that is uh, tomorrow at 6 at 5 am it's going to run okay it's 5 am if i give remove this part let's see what will happen 5.51 a.m. Okay. Okay. So this is how, guys, the things can be done. If I give two here, 2.51.48 a.m., something is coming. So if I give, you can experiment on this, okay? You can experiment on this and do a lot of other stuff. Okay. Every day at one time at this particular time, 2.51. Today, 2.51. Tomorrow, 2.51. Day after tomorrow to fifty one, like that we can configure guys. This is called as build periodically. I'll remove it for now. Mm, that's it, guys. The build triggers is important topic. Okay, trigger build remotely, build after projects are built. Developers have pushed the code and then you want to build it. Like that, different options are there. Polling time and all those stuff. Okay. So <clears throat> yeah, it's using a test and XML report pattern. Okay. Uh, available in the project, somewhere else in my project. It's using to generate the report here. Save this, that's it. The test engine is, uh, is there here in the right click. Refresh the project once under the test output folder. It is only coming up. Target. Should file reports. Yeah, somewhere here it will be there, guys. Okay. Test engine results.xml. Just see that sitting here. Go to configure and see the setting to generate that uh, test engine results report. The Jenkins to generate the test engine results report, it's using test engine hyphen results dot XML from my project. Test engine hyphen results. This file is being used by Jenkins from my project itself to generate that kind of test engine reports. Okay, that's how it is configured. Fine, guys, uh, with this, uh, we are done, but uh, let's go to one more thing. Let's go to the job page where you can see an option like trend. Just click on the trend and see this is a trend, guys. This is a trend. It's going on like this. Okay. All the builds are getting failed. First build, second build. And in the next build, if the things are passing, green color will come and all the stuff. Okay. So timeline and trends at what time have run today, all these jobs, everything can be tracked here. Okay. Jenkins is a very big platform, guys. Okay. A lot of settings are there in Jenkins. A lot of configurations are there in Jenkins. A lot of plugins are there in Jenkins. We can add people. I don't want to cover everything in detail in this session. Okay. This session is just uh, a continuation of uh, this one. Okay. Hybrid test engine framework. Here I'm integrating Jenkins for now. If I have to explain Jenkins in detail, I have to take a separate session for that. Okay. But for now, we are understanding whatever I covered is important stuff. Yes. Okay. Regarding Jenkins. This knowledge is enough. Okay. You can even learn more than this, but uh, this is not the right time for me to cover Jenkins in detail. Okay, this much is enough for Jenkins, guys. This much is enough for Jenkins. So that's all for this session. See you in the next session. Uh, we have one more session regarding Git and GitHub. Okay, so Jenkins configuration is over where Jenkins is actually locating my code at my local machine and then running my automation scripts from my local machine. But next, in the next session, I want don't want Jenkins to invoke my automation scripts from my local machine. Rather, I want to push this code, automation code, which is there in my local computer to the cloud like GitHub repository, okay? GitHub kind of a cloud platform is there where I'm going to move my code, push my code there. And Jenkins has to take the code from there because why? Because you see, if um, I'm working from nine to six, let's say my, my job is nine to six, that is 9 a.m. to 6 p.m. And at 6 p.m., at 6 p.m., I'm going to close my laptop, right? I'm going to close this uh, command prompt and all the stuff, okay? So, uh, at 6 p.m., I'm going to close my laptop. Then how come Jenkins is going to locate this project in my machine? My, if my machine is shut down, can the Jenkins access my code in my local machine? No. There's a reason or there's a, there's a case, one of the case where we have to push our code into the cloud so that Jenkins will pick the code from the cloud and automatically run the automation scripts. Whether you keep your laptop open or uh, shut down your laptop doesn't matter guys because the code is now not there only in your local machine after github your code will be pushed to the cloud uh, a cloud repository from where jenkins will cloud will be always 24 by 7. so jenkins can take the code from their invoke the automation scripts uh, from the cloud repo okay so in the next session everything will be clear for you but for now 
our code is in our local machine and in the next session we are going to push our code into the cloud okay fine with this note guys we are done with the current session that is uh, integration of jenkins uh, with this hybrid uh, test engine framework having page object model page factory design patterns implemented along with the data driven framework included so that's all for this session see you in the next session thank you bye hello all welcome to part 10 of hybrid test engine framework in this session i am going to cover the usage of git and github okay so let's get started so guys first let's understand what is the use of git and github okay later i will demonstrate the things practically fine so theoretically i am going to explain first guys okay let's say there is a project guys in a project okay there will not be one person who will be writing the automation scripts or who will be automating the project there will not be one person in a project Generally, there will be multiple people, more than one person, okay, working on the writing of the automation scripts for the project. Let's say there are four people who are writing the automation scripts, okay. These four people are not, not writing the same automation scripts. Rather, the person one is writing the automation scripts of one functionality, person two is writing the automation scripts of other functionality, person three is writing the automation scripts of another functionality, and person four is writing the automation scripts of another functionality. Similarly, we have one more person known as lead guys, okay? The lead of this project, these are test engineers or junior test engineers, senior test engineers, whatever it is, but this person is some kind of uh, like a lead kind of person, okay? Uh, the project test lead, let's say, this is the project test lead and remaining are the junior uh, testers who are working under this, junior or senior testers working under this lead, okay? This is the process. Now guys, so everyone, ev every person here, including the lead has a laptop. Right, these people, let's assume that this is a laptop only, okay, of this person's, okay. So this is the lead's laptop and this is a, a testing is one laptop, testing is two laptop, uh, testing is three laptop, testing is four laptop, for example. So in their laptop, uh, in Eclipse IDE kind of software, IDE, okay, they are writing the code in the, in, this is the work, workspace, you can say, okay, in the workspace or, okay, work location, you can say Eclipse IDE workspace, they are writing the code, okay, for the, for one of the functionality of the project they are writing. Similarly, the other person is also doing the same thing. Okay. So for other functionality of the application, same application, same project guys, for other functionality, the second person is writing the code. Okay. For example, this person is writing the automation script for login. This person is writing the automation scripts for research. This person is writing the automation scripts for search. This person is writing the automation scripts for logout. And even lead is also writing some automation scripts. Okay. Lead is also writing some automation scripts for another functionality like, uh, uh, what you call add to cart or whatever it is, add to cart of the e-commerce application, let's say, okay, for assume, assuming that. But if they are individually, simultaneously they are working, guys, okay, while this person is working on writing the automation script for login functionality, at the same time, the second person is writing the automation scripts for the register account functionality. The third person is simultaneously at the same time writing the automation script for another functionality known as such and so on. Ultimately, they have their own personal laptops or company laptops where they're writing this automation code, but the project is only one. The project automation code should be only one, right? They cannot have individual projects, right? This person having one project, this person having another project. This is not the correct way. They are working on a single project. As collaboratively, they are working and they're collaboratively trying to uh, support the project, okay? Contribute to the project in a collaborative manner. Okay, in real time, this will be the case. There will not be a single person writing the automation scripts. Rather, there will be a group of people, including the lead, who will be writing the automation scripts for the project. Okay, for the application, for automating the application, they will divide the functionalities and they'll keep on writing automation scripts so that collaborative work will become faster and they can complete the writing of the automation scripts a bit faster, right? Instead of individually working. Simultaneously, they are working and they have to, since it is a single project, all this project code should be only one, okay? Ultimately, they have to maintain this code at a centralized repository, right? All these members of the project, including the lead, have to maintain the project automation code of the application at a single location. And this kind of locations are called as central, central repository, okay? Centralized repository or central repository, you have to say. In a single place, they have to maintain the code, guys. They have to, okay? At a single place, they have to put their code. But the problem is, this single place 
or centralized location where its people are, where the members of the project are working and uh, maintaining their code as a single automation code of the application. If the company has decided to give a separate server machine where they can maintain the code, will there be a good option? Like these people having laptop, but they, they cannot maintain the code in their laptops, right? Rather, the company is giving a separate server machine and uh, the company is asking these members to uh, maintain the project level code here. All the code uh, collaboratively should be maintained here at a single place. Single version of the code should be there. Single, uh, single uh, location of the code should be there. Combined code, which is worked by all these members should be see, maintained here, okay? At a single place together, combined, okay? The work of this, all these people should be combined and maintained here at a single location. But if the company gives you a server machine to do that, there is a problem guys. okay? The centralized repository is a separate server machine and all these people are collaborating and maintaining their code at a single place like this. There is going to be a problem if it is a physical machine. The reason behind that is the server machine will not be able to track the version history. Okay, for example, this person has first, okay, for example, this lead person has pushed the code here, okay, has uploaded the code here. Let's say this is a version one of the code. Now the next person, this person one has completed writing the code. Now, if this person is also attaching the code here, this code will become version two. And then this person has uploaded the code version three, version four, version five, like that. The versions have to be maintained, okay, because we don't know which one will do a problem which one will do a mistake. If one of these five people have done some mistake, the entire code will become useless. So that's why this centralized repository should maintain the version history so that if any problem happens with the automation code, because of someone has uploaded, one of the person has uploaded wrong code or they have uploaded wrong, wrong manner, then this server machine should have the capability of reverting back to the previous versions where the code was working fine before this person has pushed, for example, this person has pushed a wrong code and because of that entire code base is got uh, disrupted. In that case, the lead should have an option or the someone who is maintained centralized repository should ha have an option where, okay, which uh, the person should be able to revert back to the previous working code and this person can be informed like, okay, this code is not working fine. Okay, so you have to write it better way and then push. Okay, so such kind of scenario should be, such kind of uh, possibility should be there. Okay, with the centralized repo that cannot be possible with the help of a normal server machine. That is the reason there are a lot of things came into the market. One of the thing is GitHub guys. Okay, GitHub is a cloud repo. Okay, unlike a server machine is going to be a, uh, unlike server machine is going to be a uh, what do you call uh, unlike the server machine is going to be a physical machine. Unlike that, GitHub is a cloud repo. Cloud means internet guys. Like Google Drive is a cloud. Cloud application, Google Drive is a cloud application uh, where the code will be pushed online. Okay. Google Drive is a cloud uh, Google cloud application. Okay. Whatever things, uh, folders creation, documents creation can be done on cloud, that is internet, with the help of Google, uh, Google Drive. Same thing with GitHub base. It is a cloud version of the physical server machine and with the capabilities of the version, version history management. Okay. So versions will be maintained of uh, version history will be maintained. Versions will be tracked. And uh, if there is a possibility of a conflict, okay, for example, uh, initially this person has uploaded the code. Let's assume that. And th this person has downloaded the code and all the other people also have downloaded the code, same code created by the lead. Let's assume everyone is on the same page. Now they're in sync with the GitHub repo, cloud repo, or all these people are in sync with the GitHub cloud repo. Now this person has done with his, uh, his or her task and uploaded the code, okay, attached the code to the existing code in the GitHub. Now, this will become the version two. And these people are, remaining people, remaining three people are still holding the version one code only, including the lead, okay. Now, this person, including the version one with his or her code, tries to upload, there will be a conflict because this code is latest than whatever the this person. This version one plus code is older than version two code. Okay, already this person has changed the code. So what should happen? GitHub will reject that. If you are using a uh, simple physical server machine, the server machine will not know that, will not give any conflict here. But GitHub is very clever that if someone has updated the code, remaining people cannot replace this code, okay? Up uh, upload the code, okay? They have to download the updated code here 
okay they have to download the up updated code here and then attach their code and then upload then it will become version 3 such kind of version management and conflict management will be done by the github kind of cloud repo and everything is on the internet other advantage with the when compared to the physical machine is coming to the physical server machine it may go down okay people may turn it off it may not be available all the time but cloud is always available on the internet right this is it is always available 24 by 7 it is available if your scripts have to run in the midnight the code will be accessible if the scripts are in my local machine if i shut down my machine and go home how can jenkins or some kind of uh, tools will be able to access my code and run the scripts at 2 am or something as instructed it's not possible but if your code is uploaded to the GitHub kind of cloud repo, it will be available 24 by 7 and Jenkins kind of tools will invoke the automation scripts automatically at any point of time. That is 24 by 7. All these are the advantages of the GitHub cloud repo guys. Okay. So and GitHub cloud repo uh, looks something like this. It's it's like, uh, for example, it's like uh, this website guys. Okay. You have to access this website, github.com and you'll be taken and you have to sign in and uh, your cloud repos will be there after you sign in. Okay. Like a Gmail account. Uh, which is there on the cloud. Similarly, GitHub is on the cloud maintaining your repos. Okay. Gmail will maintain all your emails on the cloud. Similarly, GitHub will maintain all your centralized repositories on the cloud. Okay. This is, this is something which will come again. Okay. I'll show you again practically. Now there is one software known as Git software. Guys, okay. Along with the GitHub cloud repo, which I have just now shown you, there is software, another software, which we need to install in our local machines. Okay. Okay. To collaborate with the GitHub repo to move your code from your local machine to the cl uh, cloud github cloud repo okay all these people including the lead have to install a software known as git okay there are two things guys you can install this git software separately or if you already have this eclipse id available in your machine git software comes by default in eclipse id okay so in this session guys i'm i'm trying to focus on okay uh this command line of the git i'll cover later guys okay as part of the upcoming series okay maybe other uh other cucumber or something i'll try to take command line of the git later but for now i'm going to use git as part of the eclipse id okay in eclipse id only we'll have git, so git software by by default okay by default available in the form of plugins and all okay i don't have to get this uh separately install this in this session uh i'm going to show you how to use git with the help of eclipse id okay git with the help of eclipse id i'm going to show you okay git which is coming by default in eclipse i don't have i will not show you how to install this git software separately and uh, running the commands and all, I am not going to show you. In this, we are going to use Git as part of the Eclipse ID, guys. Okay, how to do that with the help of from Eclipse ID, I am going to show you. Okay, that's another thing. And Git is a software, guys. Git is a software uh, which uh, actually has a lot of commands. Generally, if you install it separately, it will have a lot of uh, tasks to be done. Like uh, you can push your code, you can download your code, dump the entire code, update the code. Okay, and a uh, lot of other stuff okay like uh committing adding a lot of things are there with git guys okay that i'm going to show practically in this session from eclipse id the default available git software okay github is a cloud repo and git is a software uh, which uh, will help us in uh, okay moving the code between the local machines and the cloud repos github cloud repo okay so it will be more clear once i make it practical guys okay let's uh let's assume that this person is a lead guys okay let's assume that this person is a lead Okay, so this person has already started working on the project. This person, the lead person has already started working on the project. And this is the project that is ready guys. Okay, this is a project that is ready. Okay, uh, created by this lead person initially. So some automation scripts are already written for login test, restart test and such test by this lead person of the team, lead tester by the lead tester in the team, in the project. Okay, so, so assume that I am the lead. Okay, my name is Arun Motori, right? You already know that I am Arun Motori and uh, assume that I am the lead and this is my local machine. This is my local machine where I have uh, created this framework and project uh, and I automated a lot of automation scripts. So this is the initial task I have done guys. As an automation lead, I have done this as an initial task uh, to st start the project like this, to start the framework like this and remaining, I'll instruct my team members to work on different things later, okay? So login, register, search, there are a lot of other automation scripts they can create and whatever it is, I'll assign that task to the, my team members later. But to get started as a lead, of the project uh, myself Arun Motori as a leader of the project I have in my local machine whatever you are seeing on the screen is a local machine I in, in Eclipse ID I created this framework project and I did the work whatever the work I have did uh, till the previous session is available here guys okay the work is available now this project is created first step is the first step by the lead is uh, just see that uh, steps here guys all the steps okay I'll explain more about this later uh, as a lead 
have created a project in Eclipse ID, guys. As a lead, I have created a project in Eclipse ID. Okay, I did that. Now, what I will do next is, so next thing you have to understand is, let's assume this diagram, guys. Okay, understand this diagram, guys. You see, this is the working directory of the lead, let's assume. Okay, and the next stage is staging area. Okay, this is the remote GitHub cloud repo. I told you, right, ultimately our code, this lead code, whatever the code written should go to the GitHub cloud repo. Okay. To go to this last green color item, black color item is my local machine. Lap my laptop in Eclipse ID, this working directory is there where the code for the project is already written by the lead. Whatever the lead code has to be written, the lead has already written to initiate the project. And this code need to be moved to remote repository, cloud repository known as GitHub. Okay. The, the code has to move to the GitHub repository. Okay. And this is the cloud repository, guys, which I told you github.com and all the stuff. Okay, there the cloud repo will be there. But here the code will not be directly pushed to the cloud repo. The code by the lead, written by the lead, will not be pushed directly to the cloud repo. Rather, this person or lead who has written the code will first add this code to the staging area. Okay, staging area, this person or lead will add the how to add, I'll tell you. Okay. Once it is added to the staging area, once it is added to sta staging area, then in, in the same laptop, a local repository will create, okay? A local Git repository, it's not GitHub guys, a local Git repository will create. So before going to the remote uh, cloud repo GitHub, the code has to go to the staging area. And from the staging area, the code has to move to the local repository. Local means in my local machine, in my computer, Okay, this is the local code. Here in my same machine, computer machine only, I'll create a repository. It's not a cloud repo, it is a local computer repo. Okay, from here, then we are going to push the code. From here, the code is going to go to the GitHub. Okay, this is a process, guys. You'll understand the process more better. First step by step will go. So from working directly to the staging area, from staging area to the local repo, from the local repo to the remote repository, remote cloud repository, that is GitHub. This is the steps. In your computer only, there will be a repository, centralized repository that is called as local centralized repository. From there, you are pushing the code to the remote repository. Okay. This is this is the real centralized. Okay. This is not centralized. This is only for this machine, right? This is a local repo of this machine, which is not centralized. Actually, you cannot call this as centralized, but this one is centralized that other team members also can access this code. Okay. This is a centralized repository on the cloud. But before pushing the code to the cloud, the code from the Eclipse ID working directory has to move to the staging area and to the local git okay this is a process for now so uh, assume that this diagram is for lead okay in the working directory means this is a working directory whatever the project you are seeing is a working directory in eclipse id and this project as i mentioned should go to what staging area to go to the staging area first we have to create this local git repo we have to create this local git repo in the same machine in the same local machine for that eclipse id has comes by default. I told you, right, Eclipse ID comes by this uh, Git software by default to create this local repository on the cloud. Sorry, a local repository in your local machine. We need the Git software. We need the Git software. That Git software is there in your Eclipse ID. Click on this uh, search and uh, type Git. Okay. The moment you say Git, guys, you will get an option like Git repository. Select that Git repositories, guys. Immediately, you'll get this uh, Git repository tab with some options. I'll drag this and uh, just... Uh, Move this here so that you can see the, this is a working directory and this is a Git repository, okay? You see, this is a working directory and this is a Git repository, guys. Now, as I told you, once you can see this tab, the next thing is, what is the, what, what the first thing that the lead will do from the working directory? The lead has to move the code to which, which part? Staging area. How to do that? Using the add command, okay? For that, right click on the project, guys. Right click on the project, okay? Before adding to the local repository, local Git repository here, the, uh, the test lead has to right click on the project and say team option. There will be a team option coming and simply say share. Okay. Simply say share. Share project. Okay. Then in this, when you say, sh when the team leader will right click on the project and say team and share project. Okay. All the steps are here, guys. You don't have to worry. Team and share project here. Configure there is no Git repository. You see here under the Git repository tab. Do you see any Git repository already created for this uh, workspace, workspace project? No, it's not there. Okay. So what I'll do is use or create repository in the parent folder. You see this drop down is not giving anything and uh, there is nothing here. 
uh, this is a project guys this is a project that uh, here it is there in the works workplace okay this is a project in the working directory and from the working directory i need to move the uh, code into the stage uh, from the working directory i need to copy the code into the staging area guys to do that we need the repository here we need to have the local repository here without creating the local local repository we cannot do any other stuff so use or create repository in the parent folder of the project in the parent folder of the project okay so you see under this project location under this project location uh, under this project guys under this project is dot git and uh, a subfolder dot git will be created in that git folder uh, we will have the git repository guys okay so this is a project location and this is a git location git local repository location okay now here there is an option coming like uh, select this and there is an option coming like uh, create repository click on that create repository guys you will have this option selected now click on finish you see already created guys you can see the same project is created as a git repo here local git this is local git it's not the cloud repo it's not github guys it is a git local git repo okay in your local machine only this git repository is there now click on finish just click on finish you see this okay this working directory project is now moved to the uh, it's it's now there in the like uh, a git repo is created for local git repo is created but project code will not be there guys okay let's see whether the project code is there or com tutorials in the qa base okay the project code has already come here into the git repo into the git repo the project code has been copied now this this project code need to be added for example right click on this and say to the staging area we have to move this is a working directory from the working directory we have to move this uh, project code into the what you call staging area using the add okay add to index you say here i provided this guys team add to index to the staging area the things will be gone okay now next thing is commit we have to commit to the local repo guys we have to commit to the local repo so how to commit to the local repo right click on this again select team and there is an option known as commit here click on commit okay this changes uh, this code i am moving into the local repo now okay now local repo it will be committed okay so master of the local repo master branch of the local repo here we have some branches guys okay so master of the master branch of the local repo it will be moved okay where is that again i'll right click i'll say team commit and here you can drag this if you want to see big okay local repo only guys it's not cloud repo these are all the staging you see the previously when i said right click uh, team and add to right add to option right this option uh, add to index at that time what happened was uh, this changes came here guys okay staged staging area the changes are there these changes need to be moved to the local repo local repo so that is possible with the help of committing guys so i have to say right click team commit and you will get you will see the staging changes the staging changes should be gone and committed to the local repo in in your machine itself so but i'll have to provide a message commit message what what is uh, okay as a lead i have created hybrid test ng test uh, ng framework project okay which includes page object model and page factory design patterns okay like this something okay using test ng and the page object page factory i just created uh, have automated uh, automated uh, i have also okay also automated uh, the log uh, the what the test for okay few test cases of few test cases of which functionalities login functionality register account functionality and search functionalities okay search functionalities to initiate the to initiate the automation project to initiate this automation project something okay as a lead i have done my responsibility okay this is a starting step like this i will write some this cannot be this much big you can write in one line also but here I have descriptively write, written this particular commit message. 
before committing it to the local repo. Okay, before before pushing this code into the cloud repo like GitHub, we have to commit to our local repo. Okay, so to the local repo, I'm committing. Okay, the changes will be done to the local repo, guys. Okay, just click on that and say commit, guys. It will be committed. Okay, commit is done. You see, staging staging changes gone. Staging area from staging area, the changes gone to the local repo. Okay, the changes got to the local repo. Now the the local repo has a changes. Okay, the local repo has the changes. You see, master. This master came. You see earlier under the local master was not there. Now master came. Okay. Now the next thing is the next thing is as a lead, we have to create remote remote repo. Okay. Remote cloud repo at GitHub. Okay. Still, my code is there in a local uh, local repo. Here, this is the local repo, guys. This is the local repo. From the staging area, we moved it to the local repo. Okay, this is a local repository, master branch. Okay, from here, I need to push the code, move the code into the cloud repo, cloud GitHub repo. Before that, we have to go to GitHub, guys. Okay, we have to go to GitHub. And here, in this GitHub website, okay, it's kind of free, guys. Both free and paid are there, but uh, for this session, I'll be using the free one. Okay. Uh, there are some restrictions for the paid version. I'll tell you what are the restrictions, but uh, for learning purpose, you don't have to pay any license amount, guys, okay? So only when you want to make your code private, okay, and should not be shared with others, then you have to go for the paid account. But uh, if you are not bothered about whether the code is visible outside and all, okay, other people can access the code, no need to worry, guys, okay? GitHub.com. And I'll click on this. I have to sign up, guys. I have to create an account, but I already have created an account, guys. It's very simple if you click on sign up, guys. You'll be asked email address and password and everything. Okay. It's a very simple process. You see, it will tell you, welcome to GitHub. Let's begin the adventure. Enter your email. Like that, it will ask you guys, but uh, I'm not going to sign up because I already have signed up. You can follow the process for signing up, guys. Okay. It's a very simple process. Okay. But what I'm going to do here is I'm going to sign in directly because I already have an account. Okay. As an Arun Motor lead, I'm going to sign into my account, GitHub account, which I already have created an account for long back. Okay. So how uh, how I'm signing guys? I'm signing into my okay. There's a problem. Any dot motor is email dot com. Okay, maybe the password is wrong. Let me sign in with uh, again. Yeah, this time I gave the password correctly, and this is uh, this is how the GitHub will look like guys. Okay, uh, this is how the GitHub uh, homepage will look like. But uh, what I'll do next is I'll click on this profile icon, and here there's something known as your repositories. Click on that. All my previous created repositories GitHub. Uh, Cloud repositories will be displayed to you. These are the previous created guys. Okay. This one I created uh, 18 hours ago. Okay. So, and till the oldest repositories. But for now, I'll create a new repository, guys. The repository name I'll give as Tutorials Ninja. Okay. Tutorials Ninja. Uh, what I can say. Hmm. So, otherwise, uh, I'll give some name for this, guys. Okay. Hybrid. Hybrid framework, hybrid framework repo. Okay. Tutorials Ninja hybrid framework repo. Like this, I'll create a repository. Okay, I'll share you this repository URL, guys. Okay, in the notes or something, I'll share you this repository URL so that you can easily download the code, automation code. Okay, this is the best way of sharing the code. I'll, I'll be doing that. Okay, I'll share you this Tutorials Ninja hybrid framework uh, code from this place. Okay, from this repo only. Next thing is, so here there are options coming. This is the name of the repository, guys, that I'm creating on the GitHub. This one, uh, GitHub can have multiple cloud repositories. This is one repository that we are currently using as part of the demonstration. Here we have public and private. Private public means you don't have to pay any license amount, but private means you have to go for the license amount, guys. Okay. So the companies, the real world companies, right? They generally go with the private account of GitHub because they don't want the code written by their automation engineers of the uh, uh, of their company uh, to uh leak the code outside outside the company right as per the license agreement and all the code written or automated should not be leaked outside okay so public should be there guys public should be there and uh after public i'll click on create repository guys i don't have to pay any it's free guys for public means it's free my code can be accessed it's an open source now my code is open source and other people can take my code that's the way i'm sh sh uh, saying that i'll share you this repository link so later you can download my this full automation project code using this GitHub uh, repository link, okay? But I'm not going with private, but real com real time companies will go with private like Microsoft or any other company, development or automation, whatever they do, 
Okay, you see the the project code should not be leaked outside, so they have to maintain the code in the GitHub repositories, but it should be private. But here I'll make it public. Okay, and then I'll click on create repository, guys. The repository will be created, guys. The repository will be created, and you got the URL for the repository. You can copy this URL, guys, if you want. You can copy this URL. Okay, and uh, just uh, paste it somewhere here so that you can use it uh, next. Okay, I pasted the uh, I copied this URL of the repository. This is a unique uh, unique uh, URL of your repository, guys. Okay. So from where you can download the code or upload the code or using this repository only, we have to download and upload the code, I'll tell you. A lot of uh, commands given, guys, okay? This is a command line way of doing the stuff. But uh, in this session, I'm not going with the command line. I'm going to use Eclipse ID default kit software, okay? Which is coming with Eclipse ID, for, for which you don't have to remember all these commands. But uh, you can also go with commands. But uh, this commands thing, I'll cover later in the upcoming sessions as part of another uh, framework like Cucumber framework. I'll cover it again. At the time, I'll cover this command wise also. For now, let's go with the Eclipse ID kit wise. Okay. So it which will be more easy to get started, guys. Okay. Fine. So here we got the URL, guys. Uh, after getting the URL, uh, the repository is empty, guys. Uh, this repository is empty. There is no code here. It's an empty repository now. Okay. It's an empty repository now. So what I will do next is after creating this uh, uh, one of the remote repository cloud repo at GitHub. Okay. I copied the repository git URL into this notes. Okay. Notepad. And now have to go back as a lead. I have to go back uh, to my project, right click, uh, select a team. And this time I have to select an option like, uh, is there an option like a uh, remote, remote push guys. Okay. This is option remote push. I have to say, okay. Team remote push to select this push option guys. It will, uh, here we have to provide this URL, whatever the URL I copied, right? That remote repository URL of the GitHub. I have to copy here. After copying that, here I have to provide the authentication. Guys, I have to provide the username and password of my GitHub. I'll provide the username of the GitHub, Arun Motori at the rate uh, mail.com, and my password of the GitHub. Okay. To log into the GitHub, whatever the password I have used, I'm using here. Okay. I'm using the same password of the GitHub account. And I'll click on next. The moment I click on next, I'll get this uh, push reference specification here. I have to select a uh, master, master branch. Okay. Automatically it came. And uh, immediately after, after these two items, master, master are displayed here, there's an option like aspects, click on that aspects. This you have to blindly follow guys. Select this option and click on finish. The moment you click on finish guys, it is again asking for the username and password of the GitHub. Okay. So again, I'll give the username and password. This may or may not work. Okay. So what should we do if this uh, credentials are not working? Even though I'm giving proper credentials of GitHub, it may not work. Okay. If I click on login. Let's see what is happening. Again, it is asking. Again, I'll give the username and password of the GitHub. Okay. Let's see what is happening. Whether it is accepting or not. Let's see. Click on login. I got an error, guys. I got an error. It's saying you are not authorized. You are not authorized. If you are getting this kind of not authorized kind of uh, error in case of this GitHub, when you are pushing your code into the remote GitHub cloud repo. Okay. Say okay, guys. Say okay. Again, start the process. Right click. Team. This time I'll show you solution. Remote push. Again, you'll get the same dialog. Again, you have to paste the git uh, this particular git URL here, whatever you copied. The empty git uh, repository URL at the GitHub, you have to paste. And here again, you have to give the username. Guys. This time, username is same, guys. Username is same, but password will not give, give the GitHub password. Okay. In place of giving the GitHub account password of this website, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this website page. That is uh, this one, guys, github.com settings token. Okay, in the new tab, I'll open. As account is already logged in, it will take you to this tokens page. Github.com settings token. Once you go to this uh, settings token thing, here, I'll delete the existing tokens. I don't want any. Let's see, there are no tokens available. I'll generate a new token here, guys. I'll generate a new token. Here, generate new token, classic. Beta is there, but I'll go with classic for now. So here, note is there. Okay, here, note. Uh, I'll say L token, lead token. Okay. I'm just giving L for lead, L for lead. Okay. Just give some unique name so that uh, you can remember 30 days and you have to select this repo option only. Okay. Remaining all you don't have to select, just select the repo option. After 30 days, this token will expire. For now, it's okay. L token 30 days and uh, repo option you select and click on create generate token. Okay. Click on generate token and the token got generated here. You see, this is the token that got generated. In place of the password, you have to use this token. Copy this token. And come back to the Eclipse ID where the password is being asked. Earlier, I, I provided the password and it's saying that you are not authorized. In place of the password, I'm pasting the 
token token code click on next again the same steps guys again select master branch and click on add specs select this and uh, click on finish if it is asking again is it asking again or pushing it's pushing it has pushed the code guys this time it has not asked again in the only one time i gave that is uh, in place of the password i gave the token security token from my github account okay so you see repository at this repository the code has been pushed earlier before pushing the code okay before pushing the code my repository is empty guys okay there's no files in the you see create a new file like it's saying but there are no files available here okay but now since i have pushed the code at this uh, repository click on close guys okay now refresh this guys refresh this refresh this url now you'll see the project code coming here can you see the project code and who has pushed this code there is an option like one commit you see the files came here guys. earlier this repository was empty and some instructions were given there but now after i have pushed the code from eclipse id with the process i have mentioned like a uh, team remote push give them a code provide the username and password if uh, you are getting authorization error in place of the password you have given the generated token code okay from this page you went and generated the token code in place of the password you gave and finally the code has been pushed to the github repo by the lead okay directly to the master branch this is the master branch you see master branch is being displayed to the master branch we have pushed the code you see complete project code is available here whatever the code that is there in my eclipse id is available here guys okay you can go into src test java and all the stuff will come okay so here is the local repo from the local repo we have pushed the code to the github repo okay till here everything is fine right now who has pushed the code here one commit option is there click on that you will get the commit messages as a lead you see this is the message i have given right while pushing the code committing the code to the local repo as a lead i have created hybrid SNG framework project which includes okay just click on that link guys okay uh, which includes page object model page factory design patterns i also automated the few test cases of login register and such functionalities to initiate this automation project this is a complete code i have uploaded this is a complete code i have uploaded guys you see a lot of files are uploaded initial initial go right this is a lot of files uploaded let's go back to the uh, cloud repo github cloud repo where you can see the project code which is pushed just now by this lead arun motor lead has pushed this code guys initial code now till now everything is fine till now everything is fine so now let's uh, assume the role of till now lead has done the job now testers junior people who are under this lead junior testers or senior testers who are, who are working under the lead as part of the project collaboratively right how they will work once the initial initial portion of the uh, framework and the uh, automation code of few scenarios of a few test cases uh, have been uploaded by the lead into the uh, github cloud repo now the same github cloud repo url this url will be shared with the this cloud repo url will be shared with the team members okay team members by the, to the by this lead now the team members what they will do with this url i'll tell you okay let's say here this is this is a workspace of the lead let's assume i'll change the workspace guys okay i'll switch workspace and uh, i'll say other and create another workspace guys i'll say team members workspace okay uh, let's say this is uh, priyanka workspace okay so one one team member's name is priyanka guys okay so my name is arun and other team member name is priyanka i'll open uh, i'll select this uh, workspace guys i'll select the folder i am launching my eclipse id this is another eclipse id you just see, assume and this is another machine you assume for a while i cannot have multiple machines so i am at least changing the workspace here this workspace is of the lead where lead is working and assume that this workspace is belong to the computer of the priyanka one of the team member who is working under this arm motor lead and uh, assume that this is eclipse id okay after launching this is eclipse id of the which is there in another machine okay the team members machine let the eclipse id launch uh, there will be nothing guys it will be a blank new project blank new thing blank new eclipse id you can say where uh, just now the priyanka has started working guys okay uh, she even doesn't have any code in her eclipse id any project nothing nothing is there but the lead has already pushed the project code to the github cloud repo one of the github cloud repo the lead has already pushed the code now the priyank has newly joined the team okay under the lead now the lead has instructed priyanka to take this url and said that at this particular url the automation code of this particular project that you are going to work or contribute is available the lead has said so what the priyanka will do the priyanka doesn't have the project code just now priyanka has joined the project and uh, 
Priyanka has to get started with working of the automation scripts, writing the automation scripts of one functionality of another functionality of that particular project. But the the work that is already done by the lead is not available with Priyanka. So Priyanka has asked the lead. Lead has shared this particular GitHub URL where the project code is available. Now, how the Priyanka can get this code into this into our local machine? This assume that this is a Priyanka's local machine. Okay, assume that this is Priyanka's local machine. So now, what the team member Priyanka will do is, okay, by using this URL is GitHub URL where the lead has already pushed the code is. Priyanka will also search for this, uh, click on the search in, in her local machine. This is the local machine of the Priyanka guys. Here Priyanka will search for Git, search for Git and select the Git repositories option. And uh, Priyanka also got the Git repositories tab here. I'll just move that tab here so it looks good. So here is a repository, uh, Git repositories tab, but there is no repository available here. Uh, what Priyanka will do is uh, to dump the code that lead has uploaded already into the Cloud repo, GitHub Cloud repo. So Priyanka will select this option like clone a GitHub repository. Clone a GitHub repository. Click on this clone a GitHub repository. And here, whatever the URL that the lead has given to Priyanka, right? Priyanka will copy. Okay. Simple steps, guys. Priyanka will copy. Once copied, Priyanka has to give the username and password of her GitHub account, not the lead's account, not the lead's username and password of the GitHub. Rather, Priyanka has to have her own GitHub account. Okay. What the Priyanka will do, I'll tell you. I'll launch the browser, guys. Okay. So okay, this is a this is of Priyanka's guys. Okay. This is of Priyanka's. Okay. So let's see what will come if I say GitHub, what is coming? Let's see if it is uh, Arun's coming. It's still Arun's guys, okay, not Priyanka's. Okay, let's see. New window. Let's see what option is coming. No. I have some profiles here. Okay, Priyanka profile is there. I'll go to the Priyanka profile. Okay, this is another, uh, okay, um, or we can take another browser also, guys. If I type in, this is a Priyanka's machine, right? In Priyanka's machine, if I am typing uh, github.com, okay, Priyanka's profile I created just to separate my profile with her profile. If uh, you see, the, uh, I'll log out. The Priyanka has her own GitHub account, okay? I'll sign into the Priyanka's uh, GitHub account, okay? So Priyanka is signing actually into the her own. GitHub account, the password of our GitHub account Priyanka is giving and she is clicking on sign in button Again, there is a problem with the password. Let me type the password again. Once signed in, once the GitHub account got signed in, uh, the Priyanka will go to her repositories and see if there are any repositories there. Got it. Uh, are there any repositories here? There are no repositories. Okay. There are no repositories here. So what Priyanka will do is, uh, okay. What Priyanka will do is after logging to her account, you see, there is no repository available with uh, Priyanka. So what Priyanka will do is here, user and password of the GitHub, the Priyanka will give aram priyanka2009 at the rate gmail.com GitHub account of Priyanka and here password of Priyanka. Click on next, select this and click on next. So now in this screen, click on finish guys. Okay. Click on finish. Okay. See what is happening. You see the repo has been created guys. Okay. The repo has been created. And uh, in this, are we getting that master branch? Yes, we got the master branch also. Okay, this master branch will contain the code written by the lead, right? From the GitHub repo, this code has come. Sometimes what happens is uh, when you try to uh, clone this repo, it may ask you for, okay, all those stuff. Okay, that we'll see later, guys. For now, this is fine, right? We got the uh, master repo, which is uploaded by the lead, okay, into our Git repository local git repo into our Priyanka's Eclipse ID machine. Okay. Now what we'll do is here we'll right click. And if you're not able to right click, that's okay. Otherwise we'll go with file and select import option guys. This local repo will move into the uh, workplace. Okay. Work location. So how to do that? Now Priyanka also has to work on this project, right? For that, uh, the code has to be get. So 
write a uh, Priyanka will do something like this file import. Priyanka will say file import. And uh, in this, there's an option like git, expand that git option, projects fund git, Priyanka will select. This project will be copied here, okay, to our working place, working location or working directory, whatever you can say. Existing local repository, you can say. This is a local repository that is now copied from the cloud repo by Priyanka. Existing local repository will be selected. Click on next. Same thing. Click on next. Import existing projects. Click on next. And don't do much changes, guys. Click on finish. You see this git repo, local repo will be down, uh, will be copied into the work, working directory. Okay, in a while, after this process is done, the project will be available in the Priyanka's machine. So Priyanka is a new team, team member uh, who just started working and uh, uh, has taken the code from the, okay, from the lead with the help of this uh, GitHub cloud repo, remote uh, remote repo URL. Okay, expand this project, guys. Complete project will be available. You see, the same project is now there in the Priyanka's machine also. Priyanka don't have to start from scratch. Priyanka, in fact, will take the code from the cloud repo. Okay, that's it. Okay, fine. Do one thing. So after this code has come, now open the any of these files, login test, restart test, and such test are there. Okay, let's let's uh, let uh, let's say Priyanka has worked on this search.java. Such test.java is already written by lead. That is Arun Moturi has written the code here. The code will be there here. Can see the code, right? The code written by Arun Motor is there, but Priyanka has updated this code a bit. Okay, I started working on the such test of, as part of other automation scripts. Let's say this uh, simple comment I will write down, guys. I don't want to take a complex example here. Rather, assume that Priyanka has added a comment. Okay, updated comment. Okay, updated comment. Like that, some comment added. Click on save all button. Immediately, once Priyanka has uh, changed the code, which is written by lead here, Okay, you see there is a greater than symbol coming. That means changes have been done to this project. These changes need to be moved to the staging area by Priyanka. And from that, I have to move to the local repo, right? Local repo. So what Priyanka will do is first to move to the staging area, Priyanka will right click and select team option and say add to index. This is the first step. Now the changes done by Priyanka are moved to the staging area. Okay, that we'll see soon. Next thing is, before Priyanka commits this code into the local repo, what Priyanka has to do is Priyanka has to create a branch here. Okay. Here under the branches, instead of directly pushing, because lead can directly push the code to the master branch. Lead can, this is a main major branch case, master branch where everyone will collaborate the code. But if Priyanka directly pushes the code here, if there is a mistake, if there is a problem with the code that Priyanka is pushing into the master, that will become a problem. So what Priyanka or other team members have to do is uh, they have to take the permission. They have to take the approval of the lead guys. Okay. Before pushing this code into the master branch, this is a master branch where the final code will be there before pushing to the master branch, the Priyanka has to move to a her own branch and that branch link has to be sent to the lead to accept, to review and accept. Okay. So after the lead gives permission only, Priyanka will be able to push the code to, into the master branch. Okay. So if you directly push the code into the master branch, so that is a problem. If everyone pushes the code into the master branch, that's going to be a problem, guys. So instead, what the Priyanka or other team members will be advised by the lead is, lead will ask everyone to write the code, do their work and share that work to the lead first. Don't directly push the code into the master branch. Rather, these people have to share this code to the lead for their review or for his or her reviewer and approval. Okay. Lead leads approval here. I am the lead. Arun Motor is the lead. Priyanka has to share me the code, whatever the Priyanka has written the code, right? That, that code has to share to me. And once I review the code, once I approve the code only, the Priyanka has to push the code to the master branch. That's the thing. So to work, to do that process after adding to the staging, next step is right click on this branches guys, and you will get an option like switch to and select new branch guys. So Priyanka will create a new branch. Instead of pushing directly to the master branch, Priyanka will create a new branch known as, I'll say PR branch. PR stands for Priyanka, let's short form. Okay, just understand, click on finish. You see PR branch has been created. This is in selected state now, this is in selected state. Whatever the code you will commit or do whatever, that will come to the PR branch rather than going to the master branch. Now, right click on the project, Priyanka will right click on the project and select team 
and select uh, commit. Okay, staging is done, committing is being done now. Staging branch branch is created and Priyanka will select commit now. Now, once Priyanka selects commit, this kind of uh, section will come. Okay, you see PR branch. It's not going in the code. The changes done by Priyanka are not going to the master branch. The changes are going to which branch? PR branch that Priyanka has just now created. Here, updated comment. Updated comment in which uh, I'm just doing a small change because I don't want to make the things complex. Updated comment in search dot Java. Okay, fine. And click on commit, guys. This this will go to the PR branch, not to the master branch. Okay. Now, once done, once committed, guys. Okay. Once committed, Priyanka will right click on this. Look into the local branch. The code has gone now. Right click on the PR. Priyanka will right click on the okay uh, PR branch and select push branch. Okay, push branch option. The code will be pushed to the PR branch. I'll I'll tell you before before pushing, guys. If you see here. Here, how many branches are there? Only master branch is there, but PR branch is not there. But here now, once Priyanka right clicks here and say push branch, this kind of dialogue will come. Okay, Git repo and all, merge will come. Click on push. Username and password of the GitHub account of Priyanka will be asked. So Aram, Priyanka, GitHub repo, uh, GitHub uh, account your uh, username and password. So this may not work, okay? I'll tell you what we have to do in this case. Click on login. It will again ask, again give Aram Priyanka. It may or may not work, guys. If it is not working, not because of not authorization, it will not work. Okay. So let's give the credentials again. Login. Click on login. Still not working, guys. Again, it's asking for the third time. Let's see what will happen for the third time. I'll give the password. Of the GitHub account of Priyanka. This time we got not authorized message. So what I will do is I'll repeat the step. I'll right click on the PR branch again. Whatever the code changes that Priyanka has done and push it to the uh, this PR branch. I'll push it again and it lasts for the. I'll click on push and it lasts for the username and password. Here I'll give the username as same. GitHub username I'll give. But password I'll not give password in place of the password. I'll give the security token code of the. This are uh, Aram Priyanka's GitHub account. Okay, I'll go to the Aram Priyanka's uh, GitHub account. And here I'll browse this URL, guys. That is uh, this one, same thing. Okay, github.com settings token. Github.com settings token. I'll give that. Click on this link. Click on this link. So here yeah, I'll delete the existing uh, tokens. I'll create a generate a new token, guys. Click generate new token classic one. Here I'll say PR token. PR token, Priyanka's token, and here I'll select the repo and 30 days it will be the expired and click on same thing that the lead has done in his account. The Priyanka is doing in her account where the in place of the password, we have to pass this uh, personal account token. Okay. Paste this code guys, paste this code and click on login button. What is the problem? Push to as in account cannot uh, connect to any repository. Okay, so say okay. Let's uh, do one thing. Let's right click. Let's right click here. Say team. Okay, there's a problem. Committing is done, right? So, but uh, okay. Push branch. Push. It's asking now. Earlier we got some error, but now Ram Priyanka 2009 at the rate gmail.com. I'll copy this uh, access token and login. Let's see. Okay. Still errors are coming. Cannot connect to any repository. Okay. Uh, okay. So the problem here is there is a problem, guys. The problem is. Now we are giving a proper token and everything, but here the Priyanka doesn't have the permissions. Okay. So what the Priyanka has do has to do is to push this code. Okay. In the GitHub account of uh, GitHub account of the Priyanka need to be added as a collaborator to the lead repo. Okay. That means we have to come to the lead account. Okay. This is uh, that is Arun Motri's account. 
and in this repository after going to this repository click on settings click on settings and then you'll see an option known as collaborators and here we need to add priyanka as a collaborator for this repository then only that will be allowed that's why it's not getting allowed so here let's give aram priyanka 2009 github account with the red gmail.com so i'll invite uh, aram priyanka okay i'll go to the priyanka's machine and here i'll go to the gmail of priyanka so invitation will come to gmail account of priyanka let's wait and here arun motor invited you to this repository and here view invitation is there your priyanka got this message from lead guys okay view invitation accept invitation once the invitation is accepted then the priyanka will be added as a collaborator you see in the priyanka's account github account also this repository is coming now okay the repository is coming also in the priyanka's account now what i will do here is here in the priyanka's account i will also go to this uh, tokens thing already created the token in the priyanka's account right let's go to the same place so that we can see repo in the priyanka's account and here generator token is there i'll click on this token where i can see the where is the code Token. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll say reach and token. And then token. Let's see. Token will be generated. So this is a uh, make sure you are able to copy your token now as you will be able to see it again. Okay. No, no, copy this token guys copy the token of uh, priyanka now come back to the priyanka's eclipse id here now do the same steps push branch and here click on push it will ask for the username and password give aram priyanka since aram priyanka is added as a collaborator into that repo cloud repo which is created by lead that is aram motori now paste the in place of the password give the token secure token created by priyanka here copy this Secure token, access token, and give that in the Eclipse ID. Okay. Give that in the Eclipse ID here. That set instead of password, click on login. The code should be pushed. Okay. You see, into the PR branch, the code has been pushed. Click on close. Now, if you go to the this repository, click on the repository. Earlier, only master branch was there. If you click on this, now along with the master branch, you are getting PR branch. Along with the master branch, you are getting the PR branch. Not only this person guys, but also the lead also will get the same thing. Refresh here. Go to the repo. Uh, okay, let's go to the repo repository. And here earlier only master was there. Now PR branch is also coming. Okay. So what we'll do now is what we'll do now is the Priyanka. After pushing the code, not to the master branch, Priyanka has pushed the code to the PR branch. We will go to the PR branch, select the PR branch here. This is the code pushed into the PR branch. So because Priyanka do, doesn't have the permissions directly push the code into the master branch. So Priyanka has created a new branch, that is PR branch and pushed the code there. And this code need to be reviewed by whom? By the lead. For that, pull request has to be created. Pull request has to be created. For doing that, okay, this branch is one commit ahead of the master. Okay, you can click on this or you can go to the pull request or as recent pushes one minute ago, compare and pull request you can say, you'll be taken to one page guys, okay, updated comment uh, here, the Priyanka will put a message to the lead, okay, how here reviewers are one option known as reviewers are there, Priyanka will click on the reviewers and select the lead as a reviewer, okay, who need to review the code written by Priyanka, lead has to do that, okay, lead name is written under reviewers, hi Arun, Priyanka is writing this, hi Arun, I have updated the search.java uh, with a comment, with a comment, okay, please review and approve, okay, regards Priyanka, like this, Priyanka will do this, okay, Priyanka will write this uh, statement for the changes she has done and uh, say create pull request, this pull request will go to our motor, okay, click on create pull request. Once this is done by Priyanka, let's be here like this only. Review, uh, review requested. The reviewers are nothing but Arun Motori and this branch has no conflicts with the base branch. Now come back to the 
come back to the leads leads account come back to the leads account okay so here pull request click on the pull request and here whatever the pull request generated by priyanka will be there lead will open this arun motor will be opening this and uh, so here if it is a small change uh, arun motor will check the changes okay hi arun i have updated such start java with a command please give and approve commits i'll check the commits and this is the changes done by priyanka updated command okay this is okay priyanka has added the command now lead is not satisfied with this command then lead want to do give some uh, feedback to priyanka so what the lead will do is uh, lead will write here hi priyanka okay please provide more please provide more uh, uh, your code or comment looks good whatever okay in this case i am writing comment your comment looks good okay please uh, add more details uh, details the details to the comment okay regards arun okay like this some feedback it's for the sake of adding this guys okay you can understand right uh, simply say comment okay now now again we'll go to the priyankas and uh, here pull request will go and uh, open that whether the lead has accepted or not the pull request we'll see so hi priyanka your comment looks good please add more details to the comment this is the feedback the priyanka has got now priyanka will go to her machine and uh, we'll go to the search.java uh, where the okay where the where is the comment comment is not there huh? one minute this is a workspace this has been moved here right check out pr branch check out I'll open this let's see comment that uh, priyanka has added it's not shown here okay not this one right sorry i'm opening a wrong page guys okay i have to open this one okay i'm just checking where the comment has gone okay comment is there so here uh instead of opening such as i was opening such page okay so updated comment uh added more details okay let's say priyanka has added the requested details okay i'm not going specific here i'm just writing whatever that is okay save all now the changes have been done to the such test java again priyanka has to push this code changes okay for that priyanka will right click and say team add to index to the staging area this uh, changes will be added okay now once the staging area it is added what the priyanka has already branches there now right click uh, team commit the changes will be committed to which branch not to the final branch to the temporary branch that is a pr branch only so added more details added more details to the comment okay and commit that's it committing is done so committing is done to the pr branch case now the code has to be pushed let's see whether we can push the code from here uh, here remote push you can say okay next push the code to the pr branch only okay push the code to the pr branch add specs select this okay until these changes are approved we should not be pushing to the master branch okay we should be pushing to the pr branch for now okay uh, we gave the other chat branch as pr branch okay which has have the copy of the master branch click on finish here again we have to give the credentials of priyanka aram priyanka so the nine at the rate gmail um, and here we have to give the access token code so here copy this uh, token code of priyanka copy paste here login the code will be pushed okay to the pr branch pr branch the code has been pushed close done go here and uh, now here uh, just go here and see whether the committing is done or not this is a master branch guys change to pr branch and see what changes okay you see added more details to the comment uh, has been added right added more details has been added again go to the pull request priyanka will go to the pull request and open this so earlier lead had uh, lead has asked priyanka to 
add more details. Now Priyanka will do the same thing. Hi, Arun. Okay. Hi, Arun. I have added more details to the, I have added more details to the comment. Please review and accept. Review and approve or accept. Review and approve. Okay. Regards, Priyanka. Like this, Priyanka will add and click on comment. Now the lead will go to the school request and uh, updated comment. And here lead will see this message. Hi Arun, I've added more details to the comment. Please even approve. Then lead will check the comments and see whether uh, expected things are done. Update, added more details. This is the latest one, added more details. You see, yeah, this is fine now. Lead is okay with this, okay? Updated this one to this one, red color thing to the green color thing. Lead is fine with that. Lead will go to the conversation again, full request conversation. And uh, lead will write down. Lead can actually merge full requests, okay? Lead, lead can actually merge the, uh, merge the this uh, PR branch to the, okay? Uh, master branch, lead can do that with the help of this single button press, but other way is like lead can even inform the Priyanka to do that. Okay. Either lead can match the branch, PR branch with the master branch. The changes done by Priyanka will uh, reflect in the master branch. Okay. After match pull request, merging the PR branch with the master branch. Or if uh, our lead wants the Priyanka to do that, to match that. Okay. Hi, Priyanka. Uh, your changes are approved. The changes are approved. Go ahead and match. Okay, match changes to master branch. Like this, lead will say to Priyanka, or lead can also do on behalf of Priyanka. Okay, like this, Arun. Okay, lead can do that, or lead can give Priyanka the permissions to match. Okay, comment. That's it. Now, once this is done, Priyanka will go to this uh, full request in her account and click on this. And uh, Priyanka will get this. Um, Thing I bring your changes are approved. Go ahead and make changes. Once on seeing this message, Priyank will simply click on the match pull request, confirm match, and these changes will be merged to the PR branch. Uh, changes will be matched to the master branch. Okay, master branch. And if this PR branch is no more required, you can delete the branch also. Okay, you can delete the PR branch if it is done. Task is done. Okay. So now let's not worry about that. Click on this link and uh, see to the master branch. The changes you see just now Arun Priyanka has uh, Arun Priyanka has merged pull request. Okay, the la latest merge request has been done by Arun Priyanka. Okay, you see now let's go to the lead account also. Let's do the same thing. Lead will also go to the here and see. Uh, okay, into the, into the master branch, you see Arun Priyanka is there. Okay, Arun Priyanka merge request is there. You can delete the uh, Priyanka can delete the PR branch if she wants. Okay, so this, this is the process, guys. This is how the people will collaborate. Okay. This is how the people will collaborate. Let's see if there is anything that I have to do. Uh, check pull request, create pull request, lead has to approve that. So every member here, guys, now you can see this diagram and understand, guys, there will be uh, team members will be working under the lead. Lead will be pushing the code to the master branch, but these people are not allowed to push the code directly to the master branch. Rather than rather rather than directly pushing the code directly to the master branch by these team members, these team members will share the code for review to this, uh, okay, by creating the pull request to the lead, lead has to approve that, uh, approve the changes or give feedback based on the conversations done, based on the permissions given, these team members will finally match the code or lead can also match the code on behalf of this members if the code looks fine, this change is done by the team members looks fine and finally the code will come to the final repository, final, final GitHub cloud repository, okay, to the master branch, which is a main branch, okay, master branch, fine guys, this is a process, this is a process. So this is a process, but uh, thing is earlier we have used Jenkins, right? Uh, earlier we have used Jenkins. Hope you are able to follow this diagram now. Okay. Uh, working directory, staging area, local repository, GitHub repo. GitHub repo. This is the process. Okay. Okay. So everyone, not only lead guys, uh, but uh, team members have to do an extra step where they have to create another branch. Directly, they cannot push to the uh, master branch directly. First, they have to send, uh, they have to push to the, here in the cloud repo only, they have to push to the, some sub branch like PR branch or whatever the branch name. And from there, after the lead has approved, the code will be matched to the remote branch. Okay. This is called as branching and merging guys. Okay. Branching and merging. I covered everything guys. 
adding coding to the staging area, committing coding to the local repo, send, send pull request to lead as a team member, up, upper code, uh, co uh, after code approval by lead, move code to the remote repository by branching and merging. And can be installed as a, uh, it can be installed as software in a local machine, guys. But in this session, I've used Git as an Eclipse ID plugin. Okay, it came comes it comes Git software comes as default by default. Okay, in Eclipse ID. Okay, so hope you understood everything, guys. The final thing is uh, before we started this session, guys. In the previous session itself, I explained about Jenkins. Okay, where Jenkins was invoking the code which is there in your local machine. Okay, but this time I will I will explain how how to use Jenkins to invoke the code from the GitHub repository which is available on. Uh, GitHub Cloud Repo 24 by 7. Okay, in my local machine, if the Jenkins has to invoke, if I shut down my machine, the Jenkins cannot invoke, right? My automation scripts. So what we are going to do is I'm going to integrate Jenkins to integrate and configure Jenkins in such a way that Jenkins is going to invoke the automation code, automation code that is available on the Cloud Repo, GitHub Cloud Repo, not in your local machine. How to do that? This is the local repo things I have covered in the previous session, but in this session, I'm going to show you how to use Jenkins to run the scripts from the cloud repo. Already installation configuration of Jenkins is done. So it will not take much time guys. Okay. So we'll do one thing. I'll go to the location where I have uh, downloaded that uh, Jenkins.war file yesterday in my PC, C drive, QFox folder I'll go and uh, somewhere here Jenkins folder I created a study if you remember and I placed it Jenkins.war file yesterday. Here I'll type CMD guys. Now my code, uh, now let's uh, sign off from, okay. Priyanka's machine, Priyanka's work is done. I'll close all these Priyanka's things. Only uh, leads, leads machine. Let's assume that this is a leads machine and the leads machine, uh, this is a repo where people are collaborating. This is a final code, okay. You see in this repo guys, form.xml file is there, okay. If I give this repo URL, then form.xml file is accessible. This time we'll go for Jenkins. You see, I opened this command prompt, okay. Here I'll I'll show you again. Just select this path where Jenkins folder Jenkins .war file is available. Type CMD. This command prompt will open this uh, command prompt at this location at the Jenkins folder where Jenkins .war file is available. Here we have to type a command Java hyphen jar Jenkins .war. If you want to run Jenkins at a different port number, I told you yesterday, right? Hyphen HTTP port is equal to. I think this is hyphen hyphen or hyphen. I don't remember, but let's see. What is the thing? Hyphen hyphen guys, not single hyphen. So double hyphen you have to say here. Hyphen hyphen HTTP port is equal to let's say 90, 90, 9191. Okay, 9191. At 9191, this Jenkins has to run. Let's see what will happen. I want Jenkins to run at a 9091 port number. Let's see what will happen. If it is starting, if it is giving the password, we'll go with 8080 only. We'll run at 8080. I'm just showing this command guys. If this is not going to work, if it's not, if it's going to take time, I'll ignore this part. Okay. Jenkins is fully up and running. Okay. That's working fine. So here, uh, port number is 90, 9191. I'll open the Chrome browser guys. I'll simply say local, I'll close all this stuff. Otherwise I'll close all this stuff and simply say local host instead of 8080, I'll say 9191. This time I'm running Jenkins on 9191 port number. Let's see what will happen with this port number. Okay, local host, colon, 9191. Okay, this time it's working fine. Let's wait for Jenkins. It lasts for the username and password most probably. Let's switch. Sign into Jenkins. Yeah, I'm giving Arun Motori. If you remember yesterday when I created an admin account. Okay, so here I have to give the password. One, two, three, four, five is the password I have given. Click on sign in. It will take you to the Jenkins. Uh, dashboard now we have to configure jenkins this is the old uh, job we created with the freestyle project template right in jenkins now i'll create new item and here you see maven i have removed it yesterday I, I told you right when it is required i'll install again i have uninstalled yesterday okay here freestyle project i'm not going to use okay in the previous session i've used freestyle project for the jenkins job but this time to run the script from the uh, github cloud repo one of the cloud repo in github for that, I cannot use this one. Rather, I have to create a new job. New, uh, sorry, rather I have to use uh, that Maven project uh, job template. 
for that i'll go to manage jenkins from dashboard and go to the plugin section i'll go to the plugin section manage plugins and here in the manage plugins i'll say available plugins and search for maven i'll simply maven integration plugin should come let's see maven integration plugin which is not installed will come here install without restart so it will be installed guys maven integration plugin will be installed once it is installed we'll get that option yesterday we installed it but uh, it was need not needed so i have uninstalled it okay we have used freestyle uh, project template only but now it is required to run the code from the github repo so i have installed it now go to the dashboard once it is installed click on new let's create a new job guys you can create any number of jobs here you see maven project template came i'll say uh, tutorials ninja okay tutorials ninja github github job okay something some relevant name i am giving github job and uh, select the maven project this time don't select the freestyle project select the maven project click on okay guys once it is uh, selected okay is selected okay i'll go to the configurations and this time these are uh, maven job configurations here i don't have to do anything here i can give the description as i mentioned yesterday uh, no need to give for no source code management here none and git are there i'll go with git this time git i have to give the github repository url guys how to give the github repository url so what is a github repository url i'll just search for github i'll go to the github account and go to the repositories in the lead account and uh, once this is a repository right uh, tutorials ninja hybrid framework repo which uh, we have created just nine minutes ago copy this url guys copy this url of the github repo from the browser your browser address copy that paste that okay fail to connect to repository error performing git command uh, something something is coming what is the repository url l4 okay there's a problem here clear this let's copy this one let's copy it is not taking that one let's copy this one something this one or that one should be there give that let's see fail to connect it saying not required none is there and we are selecting it uh, branch is master only why this should work actually but uh, it's not working cloud repo copy this paste it here okay is it working or not still i am getting error okay let me check so there may be some problem here guys okay this is not the problem of this url but uh, we need to configure something before doing this so let's go to the dashboard and here say manage jenkins let's go to the global tool configuration and uh, here come to git guys okay git place so here default i'll say git and uh, here path to git executable we have to give the path to the git executable but it's not there in my machine uh, how to get this path set part to get this can be just git or complete path okay so i'll install uh, git in my machine guys okay git software i'll install in my machine git download okay go to the git software download and install download you have to download the latest just click on that link it is getting downloaded so it's asking either us to provide the path to git executable or install automatically means okay i'll just give the path better
okay git client plus git jenkins plus git git installation name default path to git check it check it timeout install automatically okay a lot of other options are there guys but uh, we'll we'll stick to one option just wait let's not worry about that show in folder has it downloaded yeah i'm trying to install it in my machine yes next next yes next 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 don't do any changes click on next 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 install i'm installing it in my machine guys okay let's see what is the process maybe some configuration is missing here we have to give the configuration that's it much nothing much <clears throat> What is this path to get as usual? We'll find it out, okay? Path to get executable C U double Jenkins. Let's see. Tools get something get dot exe. Here only it is there actually. So control F control V. Is there somewhere? Git for Windows code will be installed on each agent in tools kit. MIC 64. Tools kit. Where is this tools kit? I don't know. Let's see. Uh, let's see whether it is installed or not. It is still installing. Finish. Let's go to some drives and see where exactly we can find that git. Uh, see program files, git. Can we find an exe file of git? Okay. Git bash.exe is there. Hmm. Yeah, this mix W64. And in that, they were mentioning some path now. Is that just close it, I guess. Yeah, this is the one. Under bin, we have that. Okay, under bin. We have to go to the bin folder. Under that, we have that. Uh, somewhere git will be there. Git.exe file is there. Let's give this path. We have to give complete or let's see path to get executable we are giving only the path for now and say apply and once applied we'll say save okay let's see what will happen okay this is now let's go to the here close this part let's go to the dashboard earlier we created this job let's say configure and give will give the path of this uh okay this time say git and uh, repository url again still it is giving me the same error and that means it is not working fine okay repository url specify the url or path of the git repository this uses the same syntax as your git clone command 
ओके इट क्लोन कमांड लेट्स टेक दिस राइट डिफरेंट कॉम्बिनेशन नो नो What is this keep plugging? Okay, again it's taking me there. Pipelines. Let me check out. Give the path, but uh, I do have to give the complete path. Dot exe. I don't know. Let's see. We'll do one thing. We'll go to the dashboard again. New. Manage Jenkins, and we'll go to this. Uh, global tool configuration and here give splash it dot exe let's give and say apply and uh, save okay let's go to the dashboard let's go to this configure configure let's give git and paste the url it's not coming or oh, this is not the one not the one copy this url and uh, paste it here now it accepted guys okay this time we are not getting error we have to give dot ex dot git dot exe also okay in that configurations so now it's working fine so fine we have resolved the problem anyhow now here master branch right this is a master branch. You see, master is there. So we have to make sure it is master or not. Sometimes it will be main. We have to be careful about this. After giving this, we have to see whether it is master. Done. Then uncheck this one. I'm not going to do anything here. Three steps. Invoke top level Maven targets. Even here select Maven home and give test as we have done with the previous uh, freestyle project also. Same thing. And uh, root is form.xml file. That's okay. Steps sorry. build form.xml file. Already we gave Maven home test here. Invoke form.xml file is fine. Uh, then as post build, uh, add post build action, publish test change results, and say apply and save. Once it is saved, you can say build now from here, or you can go to the dashboard and build now. This is the, this is the build. Tutorials Ninja GitHub job. Okay, it will refer to the GitHub GitHub code, guys. Okay, it will not refer to your local code. Okay, this local code will not be referred. It will refer to the code at the GitHub. Okay, it will find the pom.xml file. It will invoke the pom.xml file in the GitHub repo here, and uh, pom.xml file invoke the uh, Maven Surefire plugin. Maven Surefire plugin will invoke the uh, what it will invoke. Testng.xml file. Testng.xml file invoke the individual classes. Individual classes will invoke the tests. That's the process. I'll simply say build now and see what will happen. I clicked on the build now. You see, build has started. Let's see whether scripts are running or not. If it is fine, we are good. Okay. This part, guys, I am explaining now. Run scripts on GitHub using Jenkins. Okay. If you want, don't want to wait, just click on this hash one and uh, click on console output. You will see what's happening here. Okay. So the scripts are started running or not, we can see here. This is the final session of this hybrid test engine framework, guys, which have which have included uh, this with the page object model, page factory design patterns. So in the upcoming sessions, we'll go with another framework that is Cucumber BDD framework. For now, hybrid test engine framework having data driven framework in build and page object model page page factory design patterns included. Okay, is covered in this sessions. Okay, in the series of these sessions, as part of this training series, uh, in the next uh, we'll go for the Cucumber BDD part. Okay, next framework will you see scripts are running, guys. Scripts are running from the GitHub repo. From GitHub repository, the scripts are running. The scripts are not running from your local machine. Using Jenkins, Jenkins is auto initiating the automation scripts from the GitHub repo, not from your local machine. Okay, this is what is real time approach. This is how the real time thing looks like. Okay. Jenkins will invoke the pom.xml file in the GitHub repo code and pom.xml file in, will invoke the Maven Surefire plugin 
Maven Shellfire plugin will invoke the testng.xml file, testng.xml file will invoke the individual classes and individual classes will invoke the individual automation tests in them. And finally, you should get the testng results report in the Jenkins. The scripts are being run from GitHub repo now. Even this uh, extent report is also generated with the screenshots and everything. And apart from that, if you go here and see the results, uh, as as expected, a uh, few scripts will fail because we, we intentionally failed them, right? One failure will be there because of the failure, dependent test will skip. Let's go to the job. And here in the job, if you go to the build, you will see something known as test ng results. Okay, click on the results, you will see all the results here. Apart from that extent report, you are also getting the results here. So these are the results. Mm, test cases, you can see all the things that got out of 14. Out of 14. You see, this got passed, this got failed. You got all the tables here from the search, how many got failed, how many got skipped from register, how many, nothing got failed, nothing got skipped, everything got four got passed, seven got passed, okay? So like that, you'll get a kind of test engine results report in the Jenkins itself. So with this note, guys, we are done with our things, okay? We are done with the, our hybrid test engine framework where we have used test engine, page object model, page factory, design patterns, and also we have used we have also included direct driven framework in this project. Now guys, for the people who want to download this project, whatever the project I created, you can download from this GitHub guys, okay? Uh, GitHub repo. I'll share you the URL guys, so you can, uh, you see, download zip. If you say download zip here, I'll share this URL and just go have to go there and download zip here. The, uh, the, the project will be downloaded for you, okay? The repo file I'll give you, this repository URL I'll give you. And you can download it from here, download zip from here. Okay, you'll get that zip file. Okay, the complete uh, project code you will get. This URL I'll share in the notes, guys. Okay, I'll share this in the notes. Okay, so GitHub repo URLs. Okay, you can, you know how to import, right? You know how to import the Git. Just now in this session itself, I showed you, right, as a new project, new person. Okay, if you have to, okay, work on the project. How to get that URL? I imported it, right? You have to go to Eclipse ID, search for Git, Git repositories, okay? And uh, using this Git uh, URL, or this one also I'll give you, this one, using this one is better, okay? You can take from there or directly you can, you can go to this URL and copy from here or I'll directly give you otherwise, okay? Git, uh, instead of giving like this, I'll give you like this, okay? You can directly copy this and then clone this, clone the repo, okay? Into your Eclipse ID, as I've shown you, how Priyanka has done, the same way you have to do, okay? And here I'll create, I'll give you the mind map, guys. I'll attach the mind map here. So this is a complete mind map I'm going to attach, okay? The complete uh, hybrid test engine framework, complete mind map this is, I'm going to share with you, okay? So let me attach it right away so that I'll not forget. Export. Next. Finish. What happened? Yeah. Okay. Give me a second. It will be done. Close. That's it. Let's go to this notes and attach that. Library test ng framework. Complete mind map. I'm attaching on the top of this mind map. I'll give the given the GitHub repo URL using which you can download the project code. Okay. You can clone the project code into your machine. So guys, uh, that's all for this session. In the upcoming sessions, I am going to cover Cucumber BDD framework or any other stuff which will come in between. Okay. So that's it. That's all about the hybrid test engine framework. We'll go for the next framework in the upcoming sessions. So see you guys. See you guys. Bye.